Hi guys. I'm glad to see you back on our channel. This is already the second part of the story I got a system that shows the price of everything. If you missed the previous part, don't worry the link is waiting for you in the description and the pinned comment. Your likes and comments mean a lot to me, as they not only help promote this video but also motivate me to keep creating interesting stories for you. So, don't hesitate to share your thoughts and feelings. Thank you for being with us, and enjoy the video. Is in the last part. Zhang Wanning constantly loses his temper because of Hu Yan. Before meeting Hu Yan, Wanning was considered a young prodigy, becoming the vice president of Qian Group at a young age. However, in the jewelry industry, he found it difficult to connect with top officials and business tycoons, which over time made him arrogant. Recently, Qian Xiao Er's close relationship with Hu Yan irritated Wanning, as he was not accustomed to failure. Therefore, Hu Yan sensed the hostility from him but didn't pay much attention, treating it as background noise. However, Hu Yan's indifference only intensified Zhang Wanming's anger. He accused Hu Yan of deceiving and extorting the old man, using his affection for his teacher. Meanwhile, Hu Yan and Shen Wanching's granddaughter, Shen Moling, exchanged contacts for the money transfer. She transferred him 200,000 yuan. Zhang Wanming's anger grew, and he tried to convince Shen Moling of the irrationality of her spending, but she politely suggested he check the value of the items online. Finding out the price was fair, Wanning felt humiliated. After the grandfather and granddaughter left, Qian Xiao Yi or suggested celebrating Hu Yan's promotion. The group went to the night market by Fairy Lake, where they enjoyed the food. Hu Ji Shaxin, Hu Yan's sister, was puzzled by the closeness of the two women to her brother and couldn't figure out which one was his girlfriend. When her mother called, Hu Ji Yaxin couldn't answer who exactly was Hu Yan's girlfriend since both women treated him well. When Hu Ji Yaxin returned, the table was filled with her favorite dishes. It was a modest family affair, reminiscent of their childhood memories at street food stalls. Even as they grew up, they often thought about those meals when they went without them for a long time. Qian Xiao Er couldn't stop praising the food since she started eating. Qin Zixuan, with her eyes half closed, kept asking her, How is it? Delicious, right? Qian Xiao Er nodded enthusiastically while eating, afraid to waste any time. However, Hu Jiaxi noticed something different. Despite eating street food, Qian Xiao Yi er and Qin Zixuan maintained an elegant demeanor, almost turning the meal into a fine dining experience. Is this the kind of education wealthy families receive Hu Jiaxin thought, realizing she had learned another lesson from them? Ho Yan observed everything silently, believing that his sister had made the right choice. He was sure Jiaxin's lifestyle would change significantly in the future. He had to admit that children from ordinary families, despite good external conditions, lack the depth compared to those from wealthy families. This realization sparked a strong desire in Hu Yan to earn more money, wanting his sister to have a better life. As for Zhao Peng, who had been alone since childhood, he observed quietly. After eating for a while, Qian Xiao Er covered her still flat stomach and exclaimed, I'm so full. I feel like I'm going to burst. It was true that she rarely ate this much. Today she indulged herself completely, unlike Qin Zixuan, who ate little despite loving the food. Modern life is inseparable from mobile phones. Qian Xiao Er, having just wiped her hands, immediately started checking her phone. Her new store had opened today, and many friends supported her, posting videos on social media. The continuous likes attracted Qian Xiao Er's attention. Seeing the fun moments of the day, Qian Xiao Er was overjoyed. Ho Yan, thank you so much. Today you and Shuang Shuan really made me proud. Ho Yan laughed, do we need to be so formal with each other? Qian Xiao Er nodded, I like hearing that. But you don't understand. What happened today will soon reach my dad. He cares about the friends I make and what I do. He even sent a message praising me so I must thank you. She then showed everyone the chat records on her WeChat. Dad Xiao R, even though your shop is small, it reflects your big picture thinking. Well done, I'm proud of you. Xiao E or dad, it's all thanks to my amazing friends. I didn't do much. Dad making the right friends is a sign of your vision and strength. Don't underestimate yourself. Keep it up. Xiao R since I'm so good, what's my reward? Dad I've ordered the sports car you mentioned last time. Xiao R thanks dad. Evil grin. Hu Jixin and Zhao Peng were shocked, realizing that the life of the rich was beyond their imagination. Hu Yang congratulated her, congratulations. Qin Zixuan just smiled, seemingly having anticipated this. Suddenly Qian Xiao Er apologized, Hu Yan, I'm sorry about the situation with Zhang Wanning. Ho Yan shook his head, it's okay. It's clear he likes you. 
He sees me as a rival which is a good sign. In the animal kingdom they fight to the death for mating rights. As long as I'm not in danger, I'm grateful he didn't bite me. Haha. <laughs> Qian Xiao Er threw a paper ball at Hu Yan, you're so bad. King Zixuan explained, you have to understand Xiao Er. Zhang Wanning was arranged by her father to assist and teach her. He's a test of her ability to manage subordinates, which is why Xiao Er can't be too harsh on him. Otherwise her father would think she's not tolerant. Everyone then understood that the glamorous life of the rich was just the tip of the iceberg. Qian Xiao Er cheerfully hugged King Zixuan's arm. I didn't know at first and almost drove Zhang Wanning away a few times. Zhuang Xuan told me everything. Qin Zixuan smiled wryly and shook her head. Qian Xiao Er nonchalantly said, What's the big deal? There are no outsiders here, right? Everyone nodded and smiled. Qian Xiao Er continued, Our Zhuang Xuan is the best. Qin Zixuan shook her head. What's so great? When I first took over the business I was overwhelmed. The things I learned abroad didn't always apply here. Hu Yan helped me, otherwise, I might not have the chance to be Tianhai's successor. Qian Xiao Er suddenly understood, if I poach Hu Yan, I might surpass my brother. Then I could inherit the family business too. She moved her chair to Hu Yan's side and hugged his shoulder. Hu Yan looked awkwardly at Qin Zixuan. Qin Zixuan confidently glanced at Qian Xiao Er. Anything else can be shared, but Hu Yan is mine. No one can take him. Since Qian Xiao Er mentioned Hu Yan, Hu Jigaxin had been watching nervously, hoping to find some clues. Is this the beginning of a declaration of ownership? Qian Xiao Er pouted innocently, Zhuang Zhuan, you've changed. You used to share everything good with me. Qin Zixuan smiled, Yes, I still can and will. Qian Xiao Er's eyes lit up, really? Then give me Hu Yan. Qin Zixuan slyly smiled, I can share things, but Hu Yan is not a thing. Everyone laughed. Qian Xiao Er stomped her foot, seemingly upset. Qin Zixuan added, But if you're in trouble, I can lend Hu Yan to you. Hu Jiaxin widened her eyes, Do rich people really play like this? Won't my brother be exhausted? Qian Xiao Er laughed, That's more like it. Ha ha. She turned to Hu Yan, hugging his arm tighter, Dad finally praised me. How can I run my shop to ensure steady profit? Well Hu Yan pondered. He had many ideas in mind. Each plan he outlined had corresponding figures, something he learned from Qin Zixuan's business plans. After tapping the table for a few minutes, Hu Yan said, Your so-called adult toys are mainly home decorations, office accessories and personal adornments. If it's just for personal use, it's hard to make it big. You're relying on customers stumbling upon your shop and liking something. It's too narrow a path. Qian Xiao Er shook Hu Yan's arm. How can I make people actively buy my stuff? It's not about the money I want to show my dad my achievements. If I make real money, I can pay you a consulting fee. Ho Yan laughed, consulting fee? We're friends, do I need to charge for advice? Qian Xiao Er insisted, no, rewards inspire creativity. This way, you'll feel a sense of accomplishment and come up with better ideas in the future. Otherwise, you'll get lazy. Ho Yan pretended to be surprised, wow, that sounds reasonable. Qian Xiao Er lifted her chin, of course my dad taught me that. Qin Zixuan smiled and shook her head, feeling indifferent, unlike Hu Yan and the others who were more impressed. This was a kind of depth, where friends' ideas dry up because they see no achievements. Ho Yan said, I think you can create a high-end gift shop. Most of the items I've seen are suitable for shop displays or gifts for friends. Qian Xiao Er's and Qin Zixuan's eyes lit up. Qin Zixuan said, That's a good direction. You can hire a team to create detailed plans and marketing strategies. Soon Uncle Qian will see you in a new light. Qian Xiao Er nodded vigorously, I believe so too. When my products become the best gift choice, making money will be easy. Hu Yan, you're amazing. Love you to bits. It was then that Hu Jiaxin and Zhao Peng realized the rich kids they once scorned were actually very perceptive. Often, people dismiss what they can't attain as sour grapes. After all, with such exposure and experiences, how could they be worse off than ordinary families? It defies logic. They were astonished by Qian Xiao Er's performance, but Qian Zixuan was even more amazed by Hu Yan's insights. He grasped the best market trends quickly, something that couldn't be learned from books. Qin Zixuan's agreement with Hu Yan's ideas came from her recent experience struggling with gift giving. In China, the custom of exchanging gifts has a long history, and everyone faces this challenge. If Hu Yan's plan was executed, incorporating famous artisans and rare items, turning Xiao R toys into a unique gift store, it would surely succeed. 
He really is the genius I admire, Qin Zixuan thought. They chatted late into the night before happily dispersing. Originally, Hu Yan wanted Hu Jiaxin to stay with him. However, Qian Xiao Eir insisted that it was inconvenient for two men to live together and that she felt lonely. She wanted Hu Jiaxin to stay with her. Ha Yan agreed, thinking that spending more time with Qian Xiao Eir and Qin Zixuan would benefit Hu Jiaxin. Back at Tianhai residence, Qin Zixuan said she wanted to talk to Hu Yan alone and Zhao Peng sensibly went upstairs. Ha Yan's heart raced, feeling satisfied with his performance today and sensing that Qin Zixuan was too. Is she impressed by my talent? As Hu Yan indulged in his thoughts, Qin Zixuan asked, How's the acquisition plan for Yangcheng Chemical coming along? Did I overthink it? On the highway to Yangcheng, Qin Zixuan glanced at the sleeping Hu Yan. To be honest, she was pretty tired too from getting up early, but she just couldn't fall asleep. The night before, Hu Yan's answer had been exactly what she expected the most promising yet the hardest path. He said he could alleviate her worries, but Qin Zixuan still felt uneasy. After all, Wu Zhanghua had been the factory director of Yangcheng Chemical for decades. His roots ran deep, and he wasn't easy to topple. The intricate relationships within the factory couldn't be dismantled just because Hu Yan said so. Sometimes, Qin Zixuan really envied Qian Jiao Er, who had two brothers and didn't need to worry about inheriting the family business. She could just enjoy life and trust Hu Yan's ideas without a second thought. Unlike Qun Zixuan, who, for the sake of her elderly father and the legacy left by her grandfather and father, had to personally manage everything to take over the company. Qin Zixuan also envied Hu Yan, a fresh graduate who seemed to have an eye for everything around him. His keen insights seemed to pierce through the essence of things. Now thinking back to when Hu Yan got in the car and mentioned drinking with the appraisers last night, Qin Zixuan couldn't help but smile. Hu Yan said they had all been pretty drunk. Questions that were previously too shy to ask were all laid out on the table. Everyone agreed that Hu Yan was a legendary appraiser, and it was a shame he was doing marketing. But Hu Yan explained that he still held his appraiser position and could be consulted any time. That put everyone at ease. But everyone's curiosity lingered on how Hu Yan could see through the surface of objects so uniquely. For instance, a disguised Huang Wali box, his unprecedented stone gambling skills, and the viral video of a treasure hidden in an oil hammer bottle. All of this made the appraisers feel that Hu Yan was both mysterious and impressive. Wan Quanxing said, Hu Yan tell us. It would be beneficial for everyone and the company the underlying message was clear the better we do, the more it benefits you in the future. Ho Yan looked at Wang Quanxing's suggestive expression and guessed he had his own thoughts. But this was a question Hu Yan couldn't avoid. If he didn't answer, it would seem pretentious. But what could he say? telling them he could just see the price of objects wouldn't be believable. People might think he was being dismissive. So, Hu Yan pretended to think seriously and said, Don't mock me for this. We won't. We appreciate it. Right in our field, some people keep their secrets to themselves, leading to a decline in talent. Exactly. Despite advanced technology, this field relies on intuition and dedication. True passion is needed to go far. Pushed to this point, Hu Yan had no choice but to speak but I can't make stuff up either. When I can't be sure, I rely on intuition. Genuine items, even when veiled, still exude a unique aura. Like people, those with real ability don't need to prove it. Their actions naturally reveal their value to those with wisdom. For a moment, the room was silent. Ho Yan felt awkward, thinking his explanation was too mystical, even to himself. When he told Qin Zixuan about it, he naturally left out the part about seeing the prices of things. At this point in his story, Qin Zixuan was also quite intrigued. But Hu Yan didn't expect that. After a while everyone started applauding and cheering. I feel the same way. After handling certain items for a long time, it's like a soul connection. Right. Sometimes you just feel an item is good, but can't explain why. After buying it you slowly discover its wonders. Exactly. Sometimes, things look good, but something feels off. Finally you buy it and realize it's a high-quality fake. Ho Yan laughed and told Qin Zixuan, Honestly, I was just making it up, but they all thought I was their kindred spirit. Isn't it funny? At that time, Qin Zixuan seriously said, Not at all. I also want to know how you discover the value in those items. Especially things like the oil hammer bottle and jade raw materials, which are incredibly challenging. Ho Yan scratched his head. It's really just a gut feeling that tells me they're valuable. Qin Zixuan gave Hu Yan a look, but didn't argue. She thought, is this what it means to be a genius? Now, 
Looking at Hu Yan sleeping soundly in the passenger seat, Qin Zixuan couldn't help but smile. Those stubborn old appraisers were won over by Hu Yan, seeing him as a kindred spirit. Isn't that funny? Thinking of all this, Qin Zixuan suddenly felt her unease fade away. Not long after, she too fell asleep, feeling at peace. When they woke up, they had arrived in Yangcheng. Once the pride of Yangcheng, the vast chemical factory lay sprawling like a giant beast. Qian Zixuan suddenly felt confident that she could revive this long dormant enterprise. As they approached the factory gate, they received an extremely grand welcome. Qian Zixuan was well aware of Wu Zhongkuo's ability to put on a show. Surrounded by people, they walked into the conference room. Notably, when Wu Zhongkuo saw Hu Yan his face momentarily stiffened. After a subtle nod he moved on. He was confident. Gan? Most of the factory's senior staff were his appointees. Even if he had some issues with Hu Yan, he didn't think it would be a big deal. He believed that even after the restructuring, Tianhai Group would still need him at the helm. After all, Tianhai Group was full of outsiders. If they didn't want the boat to capsize they'd have to follow his lead. The price had already been settled, and the county leaders had expressed that securing Tianhai Group was a miracle. It was better than letting the factory go bankrupt and leaving thousands of workers without jobs. Despite his rank, Wu Zhonghua had to heed the county leader's directions. Otherwise, if the factory went under, he'd be solely responsible. With the price settled, the acquisition went smoothly and was quickly finalized. Once the notary announced the result, the once collective factory officially became a private enterprise. After seeing off the officials, it was time to resolve internal conflicts behind closed doors. Qin Zixuan took the stage to speak. I announce that from this moment, Yangcheng Chemical is officially renamed Tianhai Chemical. After a round of lukewarm applause, Qin Zixuan continued, let's get one thing clear. Starting today, the factory will no longer support idle, lazy or incompetent workers. But for those with true ability, we will reward you generously. Anyone who contributes to this factory's success will be richly compensated. Wu Zhongwu was the first to stand up, loudly clapping. Sure enough, the applause became thunderous. The contrast in reactions, as if pre-rehearsed, made Tianhai Group's people take note of Wu Zhongwu's presence. It was a power move against Qin Zixuan. But despite being a woman, Qin Zixuan's indomitable spirit led her to reveal Hu Yan's fifth plan. I have decided on a major overhaul of the leadership team. These words were like a bombshell, instantly stirring the crowd. A major overhaul? Didn't they say our benefits would remain the same? Yeah, didn't Director Wu say our salaries would only go up, not down? It's fine with Director Wu here, we shouldn't be mistreated, right? We've worked here for half our lives. Qin Zixuan raised her hand, and Wu Zhongkuo shouted, Quiet. What's rightfully yours won't be taken away. Don't worry. Sure enough, the crowd quieted down. Qin Zixuan continued, Not only will the leadership change but as I said before, we will not support idlers. Those who relied on connections to get paid without working, sorry. You're no longer employees of Tianhai Chemical. The crowd erupted again. Many of those present were exactly the freeloaders Qin Zixuan mentioned, who had never worked but always reaped the benefits. Many disapproved, but what could they do? Such issues were common in many enterprises. But now, Tianhai Group's strong acquisition, with its first move to cut them off, showed no regard for their backers' feelings. Wu Zhonghua's previously smug face darkened instantly. President Qin, to ER is human. Can't you give them a chance to reform? Qin Zixuan sneered, what gives you the right to speak for them? After Qin Zixuan said, what gives you the right to speak for them, hundreds of workers stood up. What do you mean he can't speak for us? We only recognize Director Wu as our director. Replace him, and we'll strike. Yeah. Not only will we strike, but we'll go to the county government and demand an explanation. I've been injured for this factory. I've sweated for this factory. I've given my youth to this factory. Clearly, these lines weren't improvised. Wu Zhonghua was a master at orchestrating such shows. King Zixuan's face turned icy, so, you're all choosing nonviolent resistance. As soon as she finished speaking, Hu Yan walked up to Wu Zhonghua. Director Wu, don't you need a bathroom break? Wu Zhonghua glanced at Hu Yan, what, trying to bribe me? No way. Let me tell you, I used to call the shots here, and I still do. Don't think that just because you've got Tianhai Group backing you, you can strut around. That's just borrowing power. In the future. Your dad will still have to bow to me. HMP. Ho Yan narrowed his eyes, filled with an invisible menace. Wu Zhongkuo, I think you really need to hit the bathroom. 
you've got too much crap to spew, otherwise you might just make a mess right here. Wu Zhonghua slammed his hand on the table. The last time at the restaurant, Hu Yan had scared him, but he convinced himself it wasn't worth dealing with an ignorant kid. Now however, he was on his home turf. Wu Zhonghua was sure that with one signal, the crowd would trample Hu Yan. It would just be an unfortunate stampede with no clear culprit. Wu Zhonghua roared, you little punk, don't push your luck. What you're doing today might be something you regret for the rest of your life. Believe me. Ha Yan, not wanting to waste more words, took out his phone and showed Wu Zhonghua a perfectly angled, crystal clear photo. It was the picture Hu Yan and his sister took in the underground parking lot of Jinda Mall. Wu Zhonghua's arrogance evaporated instantly upon seeing the photo. But being the seasoned veteran he was, he thought that going with Hu Yan might offer a way out. Once inside the office building, Hu Yan stood by the window, lit a cigarette, and started puffing away without even looking at Wu Zhonghua. Wu Zhonghua lit a cigarette himself and took a few drags before slowly speaking, actually, this is all just a small misunderstanding. Haven't I treated your dad well recently, not giving him a hard time? Don't worry, I'll make sure he's even better off in the future. Without looking at him, Ho Yan tossed a thick stack of documents right into Wu Zhonghua's face. Smack. Wu Zhonghua's face burned with the impact. Just as he was about to explode, he saw several photos fall out from the documents. If Hu Yan had just one photo, Wu Zhonghuo wouldn't be scared. He could claim the woman, Tan Ying, was a worker at the factory and make up any excuse. But now, there was a whole series of photos. The incriminating images were irrefutable and could serve as evidence in court. Cold sweat broke out on Wu Zhonghuo's forehead as he shakily flipped through the stack. The documents were filled with damning evidence misuse of power, embezzlement, selling positions and more. What scared him the most was Tan Ying's signed confession. Tan Ying was famously beautiful and had caught Wu Zhonghua's eye. She had the misfortune of marrying a thug named Wang Erlu, nicknamed Wang the second donkey the Tan family had owed money to the Wang family, and during a debt collection, Wang Erlu had taken a liking to Tan Ying. After marrying her, Wang Erlu soon squandered their wealth but managed to get jobs at Yangcheng Chemical through Wu Zhonghua. In reality, Tan Ying worked while Wang Erlu gambled and enforced Wu Zhonghua's will like a loyal attack dog. But despite all his flaws, Wang Erlu genuinely cared for his wife, always having a hot meal ready for her. When Hu Yan got hold of this evidence, he couldn't help but admire King Zixuan's thoroughness. She had clearly investigated Wu Zhonghua after Hu Yan showed her those photos. What do you think Hu Yan said? We don't even need to go to court. Just send this signed document to Wang the second donkey. Ho Yan made a slashing motion across his neck, indicating Wu Zhonghua would be done for. Wu Zhonghua knew the type of man Wang Erlu was. If he found out Wu Zhonghua had cuckolded him, he'd be out for blood. So, what do you want Wu Zhonghua seemed to age decades in an instant? Hu Yan replied, you've had your fill in this position. Now it's time to face the consequences. If you don't want to lose everything, cooperate with President Qun. Then, Hu Yan flicked his cigarette away without looking at Wu Zhonghua's reaction. He placed another document on the windowsill. Wu Zhonghua saw the name Wu Xiaoshan and crumbled. That was his only daughter, who had never worked a day but earned several times more than others. Returning to the chaotic scene, Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan exchanged a nod. Qin Zixuan took a leisurely sip of tea, enjoying the taste. Soon after, Wu Zhonghua came back. He went to his spot, grabbed the microphone and shouted, Yangcheng Chemical was once the pride of Yangcheng. Why has it come to this? Because of parasites within. Silence. Dead silence. Wu Zhonghua continued, The factory is a state enterprise, our livelihood, our home. But some people have destroyed it. I cannot tolerate this. Now I declare that Wu Xiaoshan and other factory idlers, who haven't contributed, are fired. After a brief silence, the room exploded in chaos. Why? Who do you think you are? Don't think firing your daughter will save you. We're taking this to court. You bastard. Give back our benefits. After everyone had shouted themselves hoarse, Wu Zhonghua raised his hands to calm them. I'll give you an answer. He lifted the microphone again, struggling under its weight. The factory's downfall is my responsibility. Therefore, I resign. The previously noisy crowd fell silent. His daughter was fired. And he resigned. What more could they do? Qin Zixuan then said, Anyone who continues to shout will be removed and fired. Those who knew they were in the wrong quickly followed Wu Zhonghua out, dejected. The rest sat quietly, listening to every word King Zixuan said. They knew Yang Cheng chemical was gone. 
From now on, Tianhai Chemical wouldn't be a place for slackers. That evening, in the director's office at Tianhai Chemical, Qin Zixuan asked Wang Peng, so, what difficulties remain? Wang Peng, the former marketing manager of Tianhai Pawn Shop and Qin Zixuan's right-hand man, had been appointed as the new director after Hu Yan replaced him. Wang Peng thought for a moment, besides some remnants in the leadership, everything else is manageable. Qin Zixuan looked at Hu Yan who nodded and handed Wang Peng a list. These are the people I think are problematic. Keep a close eye on them. If they can change, keep them. If not, replace them. Wang Peng was astonished. How do you know all this? Ho Yan explained, I'm a local. My dad worked here, so I know a lot about these people. In reality, that wasn't feasible. With thousands of employees, how could Hu Yan know everyone? But after Hu Yan's evolution, his eyes could see the fortunes of people and objects. During Qin Zixuan's meeting, his main task was to identify unstable elements. Ho Yan noted everyone's future prospects, marking those who should stay and those who should go. Seeing the detailed list, Wang Peng couldn't help but feel convinced. He had no choice but to comply. Hu Yan had meticulously reassigned everyone to their best suited positions. As long as Wang Peng didn't mess up, Tianhai Chemical would soon become the pride of Yang Cheng again. Those who had once abused their power would deeply regret it. Qin Zixuan said, Wang Peng, handle the personnel adjustments according to Hu Yan's plan. I trust your abilities. Hu Yan made a bet with me. If the output doesn't double next year, he's willing to forfeit all his wages as compensation. Ho Yan was taken aback. When did I say that? I just said if this plan fails you can come at me. But now was not the time to contradict Qin, yes, I said that. But if we succeed, is there a reward? Qin Zixuan replied of course rewards and punishments are clear. Wang Peng, if you fail to implement this, you'll lose a year's salary. Any problem with that? Wang Peng stood up, no problem. However, at that moment, a dissenting voice emerged, President Qin, I think you're being too arbitrary. When Hu Yan arrived, he had already noticed this man. From the moment he got into the car, this man sat next to Qin Zixuan, carrying all her documents in his briefcase. Hu Yan suspected that this man was the one who unearthed Wu Zhongwu's secrets. Hu Yan remembered his name Qin Chu. Thinking back to his conversation with Wang Peng, Hu Yan believed that Qin Chu was another unknown talent trained by the Qin family for Qin Zixuan. Hu Yan noted that Qin Chu's net worth was only 15,000. Normally, someone with such a modest net worth wouldn't be around Qin Zixuan, unless he was like Wang Peng, who had no personal assets. Wang Peng only started accumulating personal wealth after being eliminated from the inner circle. According to Wang Peng, only those in the first sequence had the right to bear the Qin surname, making it easier if they married into the family without changing the child's last name. Ho Yan had scrutinized Qin Chu before. In terms of looks, they were probably on par, though from the way women looked at them, Hu Yan felt he might have overestimated his own appeal slightly. From his observations, Hu Yan noticed that Qin Chu seemed to act like Qin Zixuan's personal secretary, which made him uncomfortable. Qin Zixuan didn't seem to favor Qin Chu, but she valued his opinions. Though she didn't say it, her decisions often involved glancing at Qin Chu for approval. This might have been a subtle challenge, but Hu Yan wasn't sure. Now, Hu Yan had the chance to see if Qin Chu could sway Qin Zixuan's decisions. Qin Zixuan raised an eyebrow, Qin Chu, what do you think is wrong? Qin Chu remained calm, I believe the talent within the factory, having been in their positions for years, are specialized. Making abrupt changes could cause unnecessary losses. Take Hu Yan, our senior appraiser and marketing manager. According to the data, his appraisal skills are unquestionable. However, his marketing abilities remain to be seen since he hasn't taken office yet, and no one has seen his results. Qin Chu's tone was calm and factual, but everyone understood his underlying message Hu Yan, you're overstepping. Isn't managing two roles enough? Leave the chemical plant to the professionals. Hu Yan understood but stayed silent, waiting for Qian Zixuan's reaction. Qian Zixuan glanced at Hu Yan who smiled back at her. She then said, Hu Yan is my special consultant. Your data may be comprehensive, but it only scratches the surface of Hu Yan's capabilities, Ho Yan modestly replied, President Qin, you're too kind in formal settings, he couldn't call her old Qin. Surprisingly Qin Chu didn't seem opposed to Qin Zixuan's words, as if it was unrelated to him. I trust President Qin's judgment, but business is like war. My point is, President Qin should rely on practical results rather than potential. After all, no one has seen Hu Yan's special skills in this area. This hit the mark. 
Qin Zixuan had similar concerns on the way here. Ho Yan's solution to the problem wasn't just about dealing with Wu Zhonghua. Getting rid of Wu Zhonghua was already decided. The real issue was managing the aftermath, particularly the staff. Mismanaging capable and honest employees could have severe consequences, just as employing a treacherous person could dishearten good employees. Ho Yan's method of judging people was something he couldn't explain to others. It was like his ability to see the value of objects no one would believe it. What's your opinion? Qin Zixuan asked, indicating Qun Chu's significant standing in the Qun family. Qun Chu replied, Facts are the basis of all truth. This shouldn't be rushed. We should use conventional enterprise reform methods, keeping the staff and observing them first before making changes. Qin Zixuan frowned, troubled. Qun Chu was indeed sent by the family to assist her and had earned Qin Baozhang's approval, indicating his competence. However, recalling her experiences with Hu Yan, she remembered that despite his sometimes irreverent words, his actions were always reliable. Qun Chu, you're right. Normally your method is safer clearly, she was about to make a turning point. Everyone listened intently. But Qin Zixuan continued, since joining the company, Hu Yan's decisions have brought unimaginable returns. Your method would take over a year to show results. Qin Chu knew well that Qin Zixuan's management term for each enterprise was one year. If she succeeded, the business would fall under her control. If not, the group would reassign it. Failing to show results within a year meant the enterprise wouldn't be under the QN name. Even so, Qin Chu persisted. Not seeing results within a year is within the group's tolerance. But if we follow Hu Yen's chaotic methods, it could be disastrous. Qin Zixuan hesitated, acknowledging Qin Chu's valid point. A newly acquired enterprise not performing in a year was normal. However, if Hu Yan's approach worked, profits could double within a year. If it failed, the losses could be immense. Hai Yan couldn't back down now. Let's do this. If I'm wrong and the factory loses money in a year, I'll resign. Qin Chu sneered, how much are you worth in a year? The factory's investment is 1.3 billion. Ho Yan replied, my annual salary is only about 2 million, but I believe I can help the company earn this amount within a year. If Hu Yan's ability was just to see the current value of things, his statement might seem boastful. However, considering his ability to foresee future trends, he wasn't exaggerating and was actually being modest. Qun Chu laughed dismissively, turning his head away, signaling he wasn't interested in listening. Qin Zixuan suddenly said firmly, Let's make a military pledge. We'll follow Hu Yan's plan. If successful, Hu Yan will get 10% of the shares. If it fails, I'll personally cover the losses and transfer Tianhai Chemical to your name. Qin Chu's face paled, his eyes burning with jealousy. In the small private room of Zhuyang Yang Zizi Hot Pot on Dong Street, Yang Cheng, a steaming copper pot was filled with tender lamb bones, yam, goji berries, ginseng and longan. The table also had two plates of hand-cut lamb chops and a large platter of mushrooms. The windows fogged with steam, and Qin Zixuan, sitting by the window, looked like a fairy out of a painting. Ho Yan thanked the heavens for his unique abilities. Without them, he wouldn't even have the chance to dine with such a beautiful woman. Qin Zixuan handed Hu Yan a piece of lamb bone, autumn can cause stomach issues. Eat more lamb to warm your stomach. Ho Yan was deeply touched. Trust was easy to say but hard to earn. In an age where trust was scarce, the heavens had given him a beautiful woman who trusted him unconditionally. Thank you old Qin. I swear. Before Hu Yan could continue, Qin Zixuan stopped him. Don't make promises lightly. The world changes too fast. Let's just enjoy now. We can deal with the future when it comes. Hu Yan's enthusiasm cooled. Qin Zixuan was right. Like those couples online who seemed perfect but eventually broke up, their past happiness couldn't be denied. Actually Hu Yan said, I don't have stomach issues. Those few days of nausea were because Zhao Peng took home the leftovers from the street food you ate. Hu Yan blushed as he explained how he had eaten Qin Zixuan's leftovers for several days. Qin Zixuan looked at him with interest, making him uneasy. Old Qin, don't misunderstand. I'm not as perverted as you think. I just didn't want Zhao Peng to eat your leftovers. Hu Yan felt his explanation was weak and his voice grew quieter. Qin Zixuan, with a mischievous smile, asked, You could have thrown it away. Why put your stomach through that? Well, Hu Yan scratched his head. I guess I'm just too frugal. Qin Zixuan rolled her eyes at him and continued eating. Whether it was the steam or the heat, her cheeks turned rosy, making her look even more beautiful. Hu Yan stared at her, mesmerized. Qin Zixuan urged him, hurry up and eat. I'm almost full. Old Qin, my family would like to invite you to dinner. Would you honor us with your presence? 
This whole situation started with Hugh Jiaxin. After finishing their meal at the food stall the other night, Hu Jiaxin went home with Qian Xiaoar. Qian Xiaoar lived in a 330 square meter apartment, so it's no wonder she felt lonely. Having Hu Jiaxin over made her genuinely happy. As soon as they got home, Qian Xiaoar opened her wardrobe. Jiaxin, these are all my clothes. Pick whatever you like, don't be shy. Hu Jiaxin was stunned. There were more clothes than in a boutique, and all of them were high end brands. Most of the clothes still had their tags on, showing that Qian Xiao Er hadn't worn them yet. Hu Jiaxin thought, my brother was right. We can't understand the worries of the rich, and we definitely can't understand their happiness. Seeing Hu Jiaxin's hesitation, Qian Xiao Er said, Oh, right, don't look at the ones without tags, I've worn those. The rest, take whatever you want. If you don't find anything you like, I'll take you shopping. No, no, Hu Jiaxin stammered, thinking, I don't understand why such a wonderful, beautiful, and wealthy woman is fighting over my brother. These are all great, but I'm afraid if I wear them, people might think. Qian Xiao Yi rolled her eyes. Are you afraid people will think you're showing off or wearing fake brands? Hu Jixin blushed and nodded. Qian Xiao Yi are pulled out a bohemian-style long dress. This is from a smaller brand, Marguba. If you're worried about being too flashy, start with something like this. It's cheap and easy to get used to. Hu Jiaxin swallowed hard. A summer dress usually worn only a few times cost over a thousand yuan, and it was called cheap? Under Qian Xiao Er's insistence, Hu Jiaxin tried on the dress. It's true what they say, clothes make the person. Standing in front of the two-meter-tall mirror, Hu Jiaxin hardly recognized herself. As she admired her reflection, Qian Xiao Er brought over a pair of silver-gray high heels. There's a saying, without shoes, you're only half-dressed. Indeed, with the high heels, Huji Yaxin looked even more like a goddess. Next, she kept trying on different outfits, discovering a new, beautiful side of herself each time. Sister Xiao Er, that's enough. I can't wear all these. Qian Xiao Er shook her head, no way. You're at the age where girls are the most beautiful. These are all light clothes, worn once and then discarded. The season will change soon. If you don't wear them, neither will I. It would be a waste. Huji Jaxin felt awkward, you make a good point. If you know it's a waste, why buy so much? For a moment, Hu Jiaxin felt sorry for her brother. If he married such a spendthrift, he might go bankrupt. In her mind, Hu Yan was just a poor guy with a 10,000 yuan annual salary. The clothes and shoes Qian Xiao Er casually gave her were worth more than her brother's yearly income. Lying in bed, unable to sleep, Hu Jiaxin looked around the spacious room filled with brand name clothes she had never dared to dream of. It felt like a dream. Not long ago, she thought Qian Xiao Er had given up on pursuing her brother. But now, with Qian Xiao Er being so generous, Hu Jiaxing believed she was still trying to win her brother over. This was the kind of thinking limited by poverty. To Hu Jiaxin, these clothes were this year's new styles. Even if Qian Xiao Er couldn't wear them all, she could easily return them. Her excuse for giving them to Hu Jiaxin was just a way to show interest in her brother. Growing up with her brother, Hu Jiaxin knew he was a good guy but never imagined he could be this charming. Just then, Hu Jixin received a WeChat message, Are you asleep, silly girl? Seeing it was from her mother, she quickly replied, Can't sleep. Why aren't you asleep yet? Mom, we told you to call us back. We've been waiting. Only then did Hu Jixin realize she had missed earlier messages. Mom, after dinner, give us a call and tell us what you noticed. Hu Jixin I was busy and didn't see the messages. Mom, okay, then tell me now. Who is your sister-in-law? Hu Jiaxin thought for a moment and replied, Both women are very good to me and my brother, but it seems they haven't established a relationship yet. It looks like they're both trying. After a moment of silence her mom replied, All right, sleep now. We'll talk tomorrow. When Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan appeared at the chemical plant, Hu Feng Chu naturally reported this to his wife. So Yang Yajun gave Hu Yan an ultimatum to have dinner with Qin Zixuan and the family. In the eyes of Hu Yan's parents, the two beautiful women were competing to date their son. Having a family dinner should be a simple task for Hu Yan. This made Hu Yan anxious, as he finally found a chance to be alone with Qin Zixuan. Would you honor us with your presence? Hu Yan asked nervously. If Qin Zixuan refused, it would hurt his parents' feelings. Qin Zixuan thought for a moment and said, In the next few days we need to recruit more employees. With so many people gone, some fired and changes in management, it won't be done in a few days. Can it wait until after that? Ho Yan was overjoyed, 
Thank you, old Kian. I'll handle the new employee interviews. Don't worry, I'll find the best candidates for you. In fact, the most troublesome part for Kian Zixuan was indeed recruiting new employees. The upper management was partly from headquarters, and some positions were already filled by people Hu Yan had chosen from the existing staff, but hiring new employees was a headache. Any mishap could result in significant losses. Starting a new plant, selecting and training new employees was the hardest part. If Hu Yan could manage this, the acquisition would be complete. Qin Zixuan was pleased. If you handle this well, I won't just have dinner with your family. I'll also get your father promoted and give him a raise. Ho Yan quickly declined. He didn't want his father to work harder, preferring to shoulder the family burden himself and let his parents enjoy a peaceful life. No need, old Qin. Let my dad keep his current position. He's used to it. Qin Zixuan understood immediately. She, too, was working hard so her father could relax. This made her respect Hu Yan even more. He wanted his father to have an easier life and avoid gossip if Hu Fengchun were suddenly promoted. As it got late, Qin Zixuan was tired. Hu Yan drove her back to the hotel and then headed home, knowing he had to go back to Yang Cheng. When he arrived, it was past 11 at night. Hu Yan quietly took out his key, but as soon as he did, the door opened. Hu Fengchun, looking exhausted, asked, why so late? The boss invited me to hot pot for my stomach. How could I refuse? He he. Hu Fengchun smirked all right show off. You're just bragging. Hu Yan took off his shoes and said, you know me best dad. Sitting on the sofa, Yang Yajun said, yes, your mom doesn't understand you. Tell me, who is your girlfriend? Hu Yan's face fell mom, like I said neither. They're just good friends. Yang Yajun thought for a moment and said, I've heard from Jihaxin. They were fighting over you. We're a respectable family. No two timing. Otherwise I'll break your legs. Ho Yan angrily said, Ji Xin is causing trouble without knowing anything. Yang Yejin replied, Don't blame Ji Yaxin. I told her to watch you. We can't have a womanizer in this family. Ho Yan sighed, Mom, I'd love to. But I don't even have the chance. Yang Yajun picked up a slipper, Got a big mouth now, huh? Think I can't control you. Seeing the tension, Hu Feng Chun stepped in, Calm down, Yang. Our son inherited my charm. Being popular isn't a crime. Times have changed. Move aside. You don't drink, you're the king of Yang Cheng. If you drink, the whole city is yours Yang Yajun snapped. Go to bed. Stop causing trouble. I'm just concerned about our son Hu Feng Chun said, sitting on the sofa. Fine I'll be quiet. You two talk. But no hitting. He's an adult now. Let him handle his own affairs. With that, Hu Feng Chun stopped talking and soon started snoring. Yang Yajun complained, you're so carefree. Ho Yan yawned mom. I've been busy all day and woke up early. Can I rest now? If this continues I'll stay at a hotel. Don't you dare Yang Yajun said sternly but still brought him his pajamas. After a good night's sleep, Ho Yan enjoyed the breakfast his mother prepared and headed to the chemical plant. He personally wrote the recruitment notice and posted it at the gate. When Qin Chu found out that the recruitment was left to Hu Yan he felt uneasy. Seeing Hu Yan's recruitment notice, he was furious. Under 40, no educational requirements, just a passion for work this is madness. Qin Chu immediately reported to Qin Zixuan President Qin, are you really letting Hu Yan handle this? He showed her a photo of the recruitment notice. Qin Zixuan looked at it and asked, what's the problem? Qin Chu replied, even small restaurants require at least a high school diploma. Isn't this reckless? Qin Zixuan said, my grandfather had no education and founded Tianhai Group. My father wasn't highly educated, yet you work for him. Even my education is less than yours. Who do you think should decide? Qin Shu fell silent, you're the boss. It's your call. Qin Zixuan continued, truth is often in the hands of a few. Just because everyone does something doesn't make it right. Many talented people don't have degrees. Haven't you heard, the masters are among the people? Education doesn't equal ability. Qin Shu was upset. The fact that Qin Zixuan could say such things showed how highly she regarded Hu Yan. So, Qin Shu left. Even though he had memorized Hu Yan's dossier, he still couldn't understand why Qin Zixuan admired him so much. Unconsciously, Qin Chu arrived at the recruitment site. Yangcheng was a small city, with an average income of less than 3,000 yuan. Therefore, Tianhai Chemical's job advertisement, offering an average salary of 3,500 to 5,000 yuan, along with complete benefits, except for the cafeteria, quickly filled the HR department with applicants. 
The HR manager, who had been sent from Tianhai's headquarters, was now trailing behind Hu Yan like an assistant, looking bewildered. Meanwhile, Hu Yan sat in the HR manager's chair, interviewing 20 applicants at a time. Qin Xu noticed that Hu Yan didn't look at resumes, educational backgrounds, or work experience. He simply observed each applicant. Then he would mark each resume with either a check or a cross. What astonished Qin Xu even more was that Hu Yan often changed the applicant's job preferences. You applied for a material prep position? I think you'd be better suited as an inspector, and the pay is higher. The applicant, of course, was delighted. If you think it's suitable, I'm willing to try. Without further ado, Hu Yan said, Welcome to the Tianhai chemical family. Go pick up your inspection uniform. The applicant thanked him and happily left. Qin Chu was furious. An applicant with years of experience in material prep was reassigned to inspection. And those who applied for inspection were made to do material prep. Was this a joke? Frustrated, Qin Chu returned to Qin Zixuan's office. President Qin, you can't just let Hu Yan do whatever he wants. Qin Zixuan didn't even look up. What's the matter? Qin Chu reluctantly recounted what he had seen. Qin Zixuan smiled. She had seen this many times before and remained calm. Hu Yan's methods can be unconventional. As you noticed, there were no specific requirements in the job ad. But did you see anyone with no experience apply? Even those without much experience applied for security positions. Qin Chu thought about it and realized she was right. He had to admit it reluctantly. Yes, that's true. Qin Zixuan said, People must have self awareness. Do you think those who have no chance would apply for a job here? Qin Chu shook his head. Indeed, getting a salary of three to five thousand wasn't that easy. But Hu Yan arbitrarily changes applicants' job positions. Do you approve of that? Qin Zixuan closed the file she was reading and said, Actually, I have something to discuss with you. Take a seat. Qin Shu sat upright across from her. Qin Zixuan said, Hu Yan believes that these people are not suitable for this work. Some of them are the ones you brought from headquarters. So, I wanted to hear your thoughts. Qin Shu looked through the files and was puzzled. Not suitable? That's impossible. These are professional talents. When he saw one particular file, his face darkened even more. I think Hu Yan is targeting me. You know Qin Ru's capabilities as well as I do. Qin Zixuan replied, I don't think he's targeting anyone. He's just being responsible. When Qin Zixuan first received Hu Yan's proposal, she had her doubts too. But Qin Chu and Qin Ru were adopted by Qin Baozhong from an orphanage and trained to be top talents. This wasn't something Hu Yan would know just from looking at their profiles. What's the reason Qin Chu asked? Qin Zixuan said, if it were any other reason, I might reconsider. But Hu Yan's reason is that these individuals could pose a safety risk. And you know how critical safety is in a chemical plant. It's absurd Qin Chu was really agitated. These are top talents personally trained by the president. How could they pose a safety risk? Do you think they would betray us? Qin Zixuan shook her head. It's not about betrayal, it's about their personal safety. Knowing their loyalty makes it too risky. Qin Chu laughed sarcastically so. Ho Yan is not just an appraisal master but also a fortune teller. This is superstitious nonsense, and you believe it. Qin Zixuan thought carefully before saying, if Hu Yan's concerns were about other issues, I might insist. But these are the president's hard-trained elites. We can't afford to take any chances. So, we have to follow Hu Yan's advice. Better safe than sorry, right Qin Chu asked. Qin Zixuan nodded. Fine. Let's keep one and see if Hu Yan's predictions come true. After thinking for a moment, Qin Zixuan agreed. Okay, I'll respect your decision. You choose who stays. Then let's keep Qin Ru Qin Chu was extremely confident in his sister. After Qin Chu left, Qin Zixuan fell into deep thought. When Hu Yan told her about these individuals posing risks, she found it hard to believe too. But in the end she chose to trust Hu Yan. Hu Yan identified these potential issues by seeing numbers above their heads, indicating poor prospects at Tianhai Chemical. These individuals, being from headquarters and personally trained by Qin Baozhang, were loyal. The black numbers could only indicate safety issues. Ho Yan was conflicted when proposing this to Qin Zixuan, knowing he could become a laughingstock if wrong. But his conscience wouldn't let him ignore potential danger. If something happened, how would he face their families? Not mentioning it would also betray Qin Zixuan's trust. Major accidents could cripple the chemical plant, requiring a complete overhaul. As for recruiting employees, Ho Yan relied on his assistant and the HR department's job descriptions. He matched applicants to positions based on the numbers he saw, 
making it easy to identify the best candidates. Three days later on Friday, after completing the recruitment and personnel adjustments, Qin Zixuan and Hu Yan finally had some free time. The remaining tasks, like equipment inspection and training, were handled by dedicated staff. After a day of rest at home, Hu Yan drove his parents to the Sunshine Hotel after their work hours. The Sunshine Hotel, the best in Yangcheng, was where Qin Zixuan was staying. In the private room, Qin Zixuan personally opened the door. Hello, uncle and auntie. Nice to see you again. Yang Yajun responded enthusiastically. Ho Feng Chun said, Actually, I saw you at the plant, but I didn't want to disturb your work. Qin Zixuan replied, Uncle, at the plant we are colleagues. Here, I'm your junior. Please, just call me Zhuang Xuan. All right, Yishuan Hu Feng Chun smiled broadly. Imagining his co-workers' reactions if they knew he called President King Xuan made him proud. That's my son, truly amazing, just like me. Soon, the dishes Qin Zixuan had arranged started arriving. With the factory issues resolved, Qin Zixuan relaxed and even opened a bottle of red wine. Hu Feng Chun politely declined, not liking red wine and mindful of driving the Alphard. Qin Zixuan didn't insist, raising her glass. I should have visited you earlier, but I've been swamped. If it weren't for Hu Yan, it would have taken another half month to finish everything. I feel so guilty that you had to invite me for dinner, so I must have a drink to apologize. Seeing the table full of delicacies, Yang Yejun and Hu Feng Chun exchanged glances, feeling a bit overwhelmed. Look, you've gone to so much trouble again. From now on, when you're in Yang Cheng, consider it your home. No need to be so formal. With things going smoothly, and a few glasses of wine, Qin Zixuan's face glowed with joy. Great. From now on, I'll consider Yang Cheng my home and you my parents. Ho Yan's parents were overjoyed, feeling like they were getting a daughter-in-law. Ho Yan had never seen his parents so happy, not even when he got into college. They couldn't stop smiling. Yang Yajun's affection for Qin Zixuan grew with each passing moment. After a few more drinks, she was almost ready to ask about marriage plans. Ho Yan nudged his mom, whispering, Mom, she's just being polite. Don't take it too seriously. Why not Yang Yajun, still in high spirits, wasn't pleased with Hu Yan's caution. She said it herself. Why wouldn't it be true? Ho Yan felt uneasy. I've told you, we're just good friends. Please don't overthink it, I'm begging you. Yang Yajun shook off Hu Yan's arm and turned to Qin Zixuan, you seem to be of marriageable age. Do you have a boyfriend? Not yet, auntie. I'm focused on my career right now, Qin Zixuan replied just as her work phone rang. It was Qin Chu. I'm sorry, uncle and auntie, there's something at the plant. I need to take this call. Go ahead, don't worry about us. Qin Zixuan stepped out to answer the call. Qin Chu's urgent voice came through. President Qin, there's been an accident. Someone is injured and is being taken to the county hospital. Don't worry, I'm on my way, Qin Zixuan replied. Qin Chu said, You should go to the plant. We need someone to manage the situation there. I'll handle the hospital. Okay, keep me updated. Returning to the room, Qin Zixuan explained there was an emergency at the plant and asked Hu Yan to stay with his parents. Ho Yan quickly put on his coat, you've had some wine, I'll drive you. Mom, Dad, take a taxi home. With that, Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan hurried downstairs and headed to the chemical plant. As soon as Qin Zixuan got in the car, she called Wang Peng. What exactly happened? Wang Peng replied, It's like this at the end of the day. The newly appointed mechanical engineer felt it was necessary to inspect the equipment immediately to eliminate any safety hazards. After hearing Wang Peng's report, Qin Zixuan's face turned grim. Wang Peng continued, President Qin, it was my oversight. I didn't expect such a major incident to happen right after you handed over the factory to me. I know it doesn't mean much, but I'm really sorry. Qin Zixuan spoke in a tired tone, her earlier joy from dining with Hu Yan's family vanished. It's not your fault. This is my responsibility. Wang Peng insisted, President Qin, this isn't your fault at all. Please don't blame yourself, it's all. Enough, no need to console me. I understand Qin Zixuan interrupted, hanging up the phone. Seeing Qin Zixuan's expression and hearing her words, Ho Yan knew something serious had happened, even though he didn't know what Wang Peng had said. What happened Hu Yan asked, puzzled. This shouldn't be. I made sure to exclude anyone with potential risks. How could something major happen? Qin Zixuan felt deeply regretful but didn't want to lie to Hu Yan. I'm sorry Hu Yan. It's my fault not yours. In fact you deserve credit. Ho Yan was unhappy. Old Qin. What are you talking about? 
if something goes wrong, we face it together. Talking about whose fault it is or who gets the credit doesn't matter. Qin Zixuan forced a weak smile, all right? I hope you won't blame me when you know the truth. Because safety was paramount, King Zixuan had repeatedly emphasized the importance of maintaining safety standards. So, as soon as Qin Ru took over the former engineer's position, she immediately led the mechanical team to inspect the equipment. Qin Ru was diligent and meticulous, inspecting every part carefully. However, the other mechanical engineers didn't understand. The previous mechanical engineer had been a veteran at Yangcheng Chemical. Under his supervision, the equipment had been trouble-free for years. A competent mechanical engineer performs maintenance before issues arise. Thus, the engineers thought Kyung Ru was being unnecessary. But they had to follow her orders. After three hours of non-stop inspection, they were all exhausted and had reviewed most of the equipment. Still, Kyung Ru wasn't satisfied. She had a gut feeling that there was a potential hazard near the reactor. Returning to the reactor area, she indeed found one reactor with abnormal pressure. The most terrifying part was that it was a hydrogenation reactor. Qin Ru acted decisively, ordering everyone to evacuate and locking herself in the workshop. When she found the control button unresponsive, she tried to manually release the pressure, which triggered a burst of sparks. Boom, an explosion occurred. Fortunately, everyone else was safe, but the entire workshop's reactors were destroyed, and Qin Ru ended up in the hospital. After explaining this, Qin Zixuan looked utterly exhausted. The typically stoic woman now had tears in her eyes. Ho Yan felt a pang of sympathy, trying to comfort her. Old Kin, what's done is done. The main thing now is to mitigate the losses and ensure everyone's safety. We should check on Kin Ru's condition at the hospital. If she's okay, then it's not too bad. Suddenly, Ho Yan realized something. Wait, Kin Ru? That name sounds familiar. Wasn't the previous engineer, old son, the one I said was perfectly capable of continuing his job? I'm sorry. Hu Yan tears streamed down Kin Zixuan's face. Hu Yan fell silent, understanding the situation. Even though he could see the reason they had to replace the engineer with someone from the Kim family he couldn't help feeling frustrated. Unconsciously, Hu Yan opened the window and lit a cigarette. He didn't usually smoke around Kin Zixuan, and she noticed his mood. Ho Yan, I'm really sorry. I promise it won't happen again. Ho Yan forced a laugh, it's not really my concern. I've been too stressed these days, and this isn't even my job. I should focus on the pawn shop. They've called me several times. After dropping you off at the factory, I'll head back there. There's a lot waiting for me. King Zixuan didn't know what to say. She understood his feelings and remained silent. Upon arriving at Tianhai Chemical, she arranged a driver for Hu Yan. Ho Yan said nothing, got into the car, and covered his face with his coat. The next day, Hu Yan arrived early at the Tianhai pawn shop, warmly welcomed by the appraisers. Good morning, Master Hu. Come have tea at my place sometime. Ho Yan replied, You're too kind, I'll be sure to visit. Master Hu, could you drop by my place? I have a few items I'm unsure about and could use your expertise. Absolutely. Master Hu, I've written some thoughts down. Could you review them for me? Let's discuss them. I wouldn't dare correct them. Everyone has their own views. Let's just discuss. Everyone noticed Hu Yan was particularly approachable today. Since the last appraiser gathering, everyone had started calling him Master Legend had it that an appraiser who could accurately use intuition was a master. Although young Hu Yan had proven himself to be a master in their eyes, someone who could discern the essence of objects. After greeting everyone, Hu Yan went to his new office. Unlike when Wang Peng was here, someone had thoughtfully set up several antique shelves in his office, displaying the best items from the pawn shop. As he sat down, there was a knock on the door. After inviting the visitor in, a young woman in an office outfit entered. She looked like a fresh graduate, elegant and scholarly, with a charm reminiscent of Shen Muling. She placed a cup of coffee on his desk and bowed slightly, Good morning manager Hu. I'm your secretary Su Mo, you can call me Xiao Mo, I'll be working just outside your office. Let me know if you need anything. Her voice was pleasant, and as she spoke she kept observing Hu Yan, curious about the legendary manager. Ha Yan smiled. Thank you. I understand. Though calm he felt a surge of pride. Now I have a secretary too. By the way please bring me the recent appraisals. I want to review the items the appraisers were unsure about. Yes, manager Hu. Su Mo walked away with an elegant gait, her office outfit highlighting her figure. Ho Yan rubbed his smooth chin, murmuring, having a secretary feels pretty good. After a night of reflection, Hu Yan felt better. 
He rushed back to Jiang Qing, not wanting to face Qin Zixuan. Back at the dorm, Zhao Peng was already asleep. Hu Yan tossed and turned, realizing he was overthinking. She's a high-class lady. Why should she always listen to you? You're just an ordinary guy from a modest family. Despite the discomfort, Hu Yan convinced himself to focus on work and stop dreaming about unrealistic things. Looking at the staff outside his transparent window, Ho Yan felt content. This isn't so bad. I've achieved a lot in a short time. What more could I want? He chuckled, shaking his head. Then his phone rang. It was Hu Ji Yaxin. Bro, are you back? Yes, what's up? Hu Ji Yaxin complained, you were supposed to let me know when you got back. I messaged you several times, and you didn't reply. Were you too busy with Sister Zixuan? Hu Ji Yaxin's words stirred something in Hu Yan. Hu Ji Yaxin, if you keep this up, I'll cut off your allowance. Hu Ji Shaxin felt wronged. Hu Yan. I was just looking out for you with Sister Xiao R, and this is how you treat me. Hu Yan regretted snapping at her. She was his only family in Jiangqing. But hearing her call Qian Xiao R Sister Xiao A rekindled his irritation. Can you stop gossiping? If you keep this up, I'll deal with you. Hu Ji Yaxin felt deeply hurt, taking several breaths to calm down. Fine. I won't care about you anymore. I was going to say that Sister Xiao R is kind, beautiful, and genuine. You'd have an easy life with her. But now, forget I said anything. Hey wait. But she had already hung up. Hu Yan felt awful. Despite her meddling, she meant well. With Zixuan, he felt exhausted. He didn't know that Qian Zixuan hadn't been calm since he left. The explosion had caused significant financial losses. The indirect costs were even higher. The factory would have to shut down temporarily. If Qin Ru died, it was uncertain when production could resume. After handling some matters at the factory and leaving the follow-up to Wang Peng, Qin Zixuan rushed to the hospital. Now, everything hinged on Qin Ru's condition. However, she wasn't optimistic after seeing the explosion site. Upon arriving at the hospital, the surgery was still ongoing. Qin Chu, disheveled with a scruffy beard, no longer looked composed. He sat on the bench, gripping his hair. Originally intending to scold him, Qin Zixuan couldn't bring herself to speak. Qin Shu and Qin Ru were like siblings. Now wasn't the time for blame. How is Qin Ru? Qin Shu finally noticed her. The doctor said it doesn't look good Qin Shu lowered his head. It's all my fault. Qin Zixuan was seething with anger but knew this wasn't entirely Qin Shu's fault. She bore some responsibility as well. You have no idea what we've lost. Qin Shu, visibly shaken, responded, I know. The initial estimate is a loss of over 10 million. With the suspension and follow-up efforts, the indirect losses could exceed 100 million. President Qin, I'll do everything I can to make it right. Please don't worry. Qin Zixuan let out a bitter laugh. You don't understand. I'm not talking about the financial loss to our enterprise. If a person's heart can be measured by money, I would spend any amount to win him back. Qin Zixuan lifted her face slightly, not wanting Qin Chu to see her vulnerability. Qin Chu gritted his teeth and said, I still don't believe it. This is too bizarre. It's impossible, unscientific. Just a coincidence. Qin Zixuan felt exhausted. Talking to Qin Chu about this was just a moment of lost control. How could he understand? Unscientific things happen to him often. Have you ever seen someone who never makes a mistake in gambling stones? Someone who can see the treasures wrapped inside thick coverings at a glance? You've read Hu Yan's profile but you've never worked with him. Isn't this lesson enough? Qin Chu still couldn't accept it. Are you saying that the incident with Kai Li wasn't staged? Qin Zixuan pulled out her phone. Look, this is an appraisal done personally by my father. After watching Kai Li's video, Qin Zixuan, being young, sent the video to Qin Baozhong, telling him that the Hu Yan mentioned was a treasure she had discovered. Qin Baozhong, after watching the video, found it incredible and asked a friend to get some of the broken porcelain pieces from Kai Li. Kai Lai's mentor, Gu Yufen, thought that even if Kai Lai's gesture was a show, the gift was sincere enough. So, she accepted Kai Lai as a disciple on the spot. However, she also wanted to verify the authenticity. After the event, she asked Rong Lao to appraise the pieces, and Rong Lao confirmed they were indeed antique items from over a hundred years ago. When Qin Baoshang requested these pieces, Gu Yufen obliged, knowing the favor had to be returned. Thus Qin Baozhang learned that his daughter had indeed found a remarkable talent. Qin Zixuan showed Qin Chu the appraisal results sent by Qin Baozhang. After reading the results, Qin Chu slumped into his seat. 
he finally understood that what Qin Zixuan cared about wasn't the hundred million yuan loss she was worried about hurting Hu Yan. Hou Yan wasn't someone the Qin family had groomed from a young age. Losing such talent was irreplaceable. I admit Hu Yan is impressive Qin Chu confessed. But do you really think this incident at the factory wouldn't have happened if we had followed his method? Qin Zixuan sneered, I knew you'd bring this up eventually. She handed Qin Chu a stack of documents. Evidence collected by Wang Peng's team. The hydrogenation reactor was operating without displaying any warnings. The manual pressure relief device had been tampered with, and the warning lights had been disconnected. All evidence pointed to human intervention. Even though it was sabotage, the explosion had destroyed all traces, leaving no useful evidence. The surveillance equipment had also been tampered with, and no footage from that day could be retrieved. It was Engineer Sun. It must be him Qin Chu exclaimed. Qin Zixuan nodded. I think so too, but does it matter now? If we had listened to Hu Yan and not forced him into early retirement, would this have happened? But do you really believe someone can foresee the future Qin Chu still argued? Qin Zixuan, exhausted, sat down. The fact is, it happened. The issue is resolving it now. Following Hu Yan's personnel decisions should prevent future problems. But how can I face him? Qin Chu thought for a moment and said, This is my fault. Hu Yan should be rewarded. We can fix this by acknowledging his contributions and disciplining me. I'll apologize to him personally. That's your solution. Qin Zixuan was genuinely angry. You are loyal to the Qin family because you owe us. Hu Yan owes us nothing if anything, we owe him. Seeing her fury, Qin Chu was taken aback. But given the situation, he had nothing to lose. Hu Yan is talented, but he's just a recent graduate. Tianhai and you have already given him so much. Shouldn't he be grateful? Do you think two million a year is a lot for Hu Yan? Let me tell you, the jade ring he helped Kai Li choose is worth over 10 million. Qin Chu was stunned. Watching the video, he could tell the item was valuable but hadn't realized it was worth that much. Moreover, if Hu Yan wanted to make money, he could just go around the jade markets. He could easily make billions a year. Just by picking up overlooked treasures, how much do you think he could earn? And what if he used his eye for venture capital or talent scouting? Qin Chu broke into a cold sweat. Earlier, he thought Hu Yan's claim of covering the company's losses was arrogant. Now he realized he was the one with limited vision. President Qin, the only way is for you to severely reprimand me, and I'll personally apologize to him. Then, reward Hu Yan generously. I'll work to repay the company. Qin Zixuan, feeling helpless, said, I've already apologized and acknowledged his contributions. But do you know what he did after hearing this? She paused, holding her head. He went back to Jiangqing that very night. Qin Zixuan's dejected look left Qin Chu feeling a mix of emotions. Earlier, he had thought Hu Yan wasn't worth taking seriously. Now he realized he couldn't compare to Hu Yan in talent or in Qin Zixuan's regard. A heavy silence hung in the air. After what felt like an eternity, the door to the operating room opened. They rushed over, doctor. How is she? The doctor removed his mask and sighed. We did our best. Qin Chu's knees buckled nearly collapsing. She's alive, but such a good girl she's disfigured. What a pity the doctor shook his head and walked away. Qin Chu and Qin Zixuan exhaled in relief. Qin Zixuan said, I'll take full responsibility for Qin Ru's situation. Once she recovers, we'll find the best plastic surgeon in the world. She'll stay by my side from now on. With that, Qin Zixuan turned and left. Qin Chu sat down, tears blurring his vision. He had never slackened in his efforts, always aiming to help King Zixuan manage Tianhai Group. Now, he understood that King Zixuan wanted Qin Ru to stay as a constant reminder of her mistake. As for him, he could leave, as he was indirectly responsible for the incident. Reflecting on his pettiness when reporting Hu Yan, Qin Shu felt like a clown. Ho Yan, sitting in his office, thought about how his family was the only ones who truly cared for him. They always had his best interests at heart, even if they meddled. He quickly took out his phone and messaged his sister. The weather is getting cooler. Let's go buy some fall clothes tonight. Hu Jixin replied, no need. Sister Xiao Er gave me a ton of clothes. I can't wear them all. Ho Yan suggested, how about I treat you to dinner at the food stall tonight? Hu Jixin responded, no need. Sister Xiao Er is taking me out for lobster tonight. Ha Yan asked, what kind of lobster? Can I have some? Hu Jixin joked, Seeing a freeloader makes me lose my appetite. Hu Yan insisted. I'm your brother. Hu Jixin retorted, not necessarily. A real brother wouldn't treat his sister like this. I'm going to ask mom if I was adopted. Ha Yan replied. 
you're so petty. Hu Jiaxin shot back, freeloader. Ha Yan saw she was genuinely upset and texted Qian Xiao Er, lobster tonight? I don't even know what that tastes like. Qian Xiao E replied, when did you come back? I've been looking for you. Since you're back, let's go to the food stall. I've been craving it for days but didn't have anyone to go with. Honestly, lobster isn't as good as spicy crayfish. I'm already drooling thinking about it. He he hey. Ho Yan made a victory gesture. All right, see you tonight. Qian Xiao E replied, okay. Ha Yan thought, I can't be outsmarted by my sister. Soon after, Sumo returned with a stack of documents. Ha Yan saw they were the unresolved pawn items. After she left, Hu Yan reviewed the files, but they lacked constructive opinions. Disappointed by the photos, which didn't reveal any numbers, he realized his skill was useless without seeing the actual items. However, a pendant photo caught his attention. Before long it felt like he was at the appraisal site, hearing the owner and appraiser discuss it. Suddenly, the pendant displayed a number 1500. Each photo revealed the same scene, and Hu Yan noted the suggested prices for each item. He handed them to Su Mo to share with the appraisers. After a busy day, Hu Yan decided to buy a gift for his sister to make amends. Just as he left the company he received a message from Shen Muling. Hu Yan, do you have time to meet? I need your advice. Ho Yan had a good impression of Shen Muling, admiring her filial piety. Tonight I'm meeting my sister. How about tomorrow? Shen Muling replied, no problem, I'm off tomorrow. See you then. Ha Yan responded all right. Ho Yan drove to pick up Qian Xiao Er and Hu Jiaxin. When Hu Jiaxin saw her brother, she still looked upset. However, Qian Xiao Er immediately rushed over, clinging to Hu Yan's arm, chattering non-stop. Ho Yan, my store is really struggling. Besides the friends who came to support, we've had almost no sales. I followed your advice and repositioned the store, which helped a bit, but I still have problems. Qian Xiao Er had followed Hu Yan's advice to partner with many modern artisans, reducing costs by 30%. This allowed her to keep prices reasonable while maintaining profits. However, she still faced a lack of high-end products. Although Qian's jewelry had many valuable items, giving them as gifts was too expensive. People preferred more subtle, meaningful gifts. After hearing Qian Xiao Er's concerns, Hu Yan said, I can help you solve two problems. Really Qian Xiao Er jumped up excitedly. It's like this. Ha Yan explained, when I was helping President Qin with the acquisition of Yangcheng Chemical, I discovered an abandoned glass workshop in the factory. At the time I didn't think much of it. But coincidentally, during the hiring process, an elderly man applied. The HR department initially turned him away because of his age. However, I figured if he made the effort to come, he must have some skills, so I asked him a few questions. In fact, Hu Yan had noticed that the elderly man's future at Tianhai Chemical was promising, with a bright, expansive path ahead. And guess what I found out? What Qian Xiao Er's eyes widened with curiosity, making her an engaging listener. Hu Yan sighed. It turns out this man is a renowned master of handcrafted glass art. Oh my gosh, Qian Xiao Er understood immediately. This was like a gift from the heavens. Does he demand a high salary? Did you hire him? Ho Yan replied, The surprising thing is, he doesn't want a salary. He only wants a share of the profits. His main goal is to keep this craft alive, as his children refuse to learn it. This is so unusual, Qian Xiao Er said, puzzled. It is strange. When I asked him about it, he said his family's craftsmanship involves high temperatures and his children don't want to learn it. He wants to pass down this skill before it's lost. Actually Hu Yan had faced considerable skepticism when he decided to hire the old man and restart the abandoned workshop. But Qin Zixuan had strongly supported his decision, which allowed the master to stay. Ho Yan felt grateful to Qin Zixuan for her support, though the subsequent incident with Qin Ru had complicated their relationship. So soon your store will have glass art pieces from a master Qian Xiao Er, exclaimed. Exactly Hu Yan said. And as the master passes down his skills, your store will have a range of glass art pieces at various price points. What's the second solution? Qian Xiao Er asked. The second solution is calligraphy, Hu Yan replied. Qian Xiao Er was surprised. You know someone in that field. Hu Yan laughed, actually, you know him too. I do. Hu Qian Xiao Er pointed to herself, looking adorable and puzzled. Remember the elderly gentleman at your store opening? Hu Yan asked. You mean Mr. Shen Wanshen? But he's retired, and he's 80. Is it appropriate to ask him for paintings? Ho Yan gently tapped Tian Xiao Er on the forehead. You're not dumb you just don't like to think. 
Ha Yan thought that if it were Qin Zixuan, she would have figured it out already. Qian Xiao Yi er nodded in agreement. Yes, if it were Suan Yuan, she'd have guessed it. But you know I'm lazy, so just tell me. Ho Yan felt guilty towards his sister. Being with Qian Xiao Yi er was so easy and stress free. She was a healing presence, simple and unpretentious, making him feel at ease. He said. In our province, calligraphers are either Mr. Shen's friends or his students. There's almost no one he doesn't know. And calligraphy often has an inestimable value. Qian Xiao Yi er nodded in agreement. In real life, we often hear about famous calligraphers whose work is worth a fortune, but who has actually bought one. It's mostly given as a gift. If Mr. Shen speaks on your behalf, they'll definitely give him face. These artists are waiting for someone like him to make such a request. So once you start this, your store will never lack for calligraphy and paintings, Hu Yan continued. You've contacted Mr. Shen Qian Jiao Yi er asked. Remember I got his granddaughter's WeChat. We've chatted a few times. I don't think it'll be a problem. It's mutually beneficial, Hu Yan said. By this time, they had arrived at the night market entrance. After getting out of the car, Qian Xiao Yi er suddenly put her hands on her hips and asked, Hu Yan, did you just use that as an excuse to chat up the girl? Hu Yan proudly said, why not? A young, talented and handsome man like me should take every opportunity to meet new people. This response highlighted the difference in his interactions with different people. He would never say something like this to Qin Zixuan. With her he would have said, how could I? With you around I don't notice anyone else. Thinking of this, Hu Yan smiled wryly. If Qin Zixuan asked him now, he wouldn't know how to respond. Their relationship was complicated. Qian Xiao R, with her cheeks puffed up, said, You're ignoring a beautiful girl like me to chat up others? Are you blind? Hu Yan pretended to look around, where is she? I don't see her. Qian Xiao R playfully hit him, while Hu Yan pretended to be hurt. Seeing her brother and Qian Xiao Yi er act like a bickering couple, Hu Jiaxing couldn't help but laugh. Ho Yan, watching his sister's expression, saw that she was finally smiling. He knew everything was fine now. He took out a small, exquisite box and handed it to her. This is for you. Hu Jiaxing thought, might as well take it, and accepted the gift. Qian Xiao R came over, Hu Yan you're so biased, only thinking about your sister. Despite her words, it was clear she wasn't jealous. That was just Qian Xiao Yi's way of interacting. Let's see what it is. Inside the box was a pendant, shimmering with different colors from various angles. Hu Jiaxing didn't know its value, but she found it beautiful and liked it immediately. Any lingering annoyance disappeared. Thanks bro Hu Jiaxing beamed. Qian Xiao R however was shocked. She looked at Hu Yan, her tone slightly envious. Zhuan Yuan is really good to you. This is a top-grade Fulu Shou Jade pendant, isn't it? Qian Xiao Yi er was right. The pendant was crafted from the high-quality jade Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan had acquired in Baisha. Hu Yan had found it in his office drawer one day, realizing that the display shelves and the antiques on them were also arranged by Qin Zixuan. Previously, this would have made him happy. But now, he felt that Qin Zixuan only valued his abilities. Before Hu Yan could say anything, Hu Jiaxin asked, Sister Xiao Ar, what's top grade jade? Is it valuable? Did Xuan Yuan give this to my brother? Qian Xiao Ar pouted, yes I was there when they cut the jade. The raw stone alone was worth 50 million. This finished piece, crafted by a master, is worth at least a few million. Wow Hu Jiaxin was stunned. Bro, I can't take this. It's too expensive. You should give it back to Xuan Yuan. Hao Yan rolled his eyes. Now you see how good your brother is? Keep it. How could siblings possibly hold grudges against each other? It didn't take long for Hu Ji Yaxin to reconcile with Hu Yan. After Hu Yan had chosen a spot and went to buy food, Hu Ji Yaxin's eyes sparkled with curiosity. She cautiously asked Qiang and Xiao R, Sister Xiao R, do you think Sister Shuang Xuan might be interested in my brother, given that she gave him such an expensive gift? Hu Ji Yaxin carefully observed Qiang Xiao Er's expression, and indeed noticed something. Usually carefree, Qian Xiao R showed a hint of concern after hearing Hu Jiaxin's question. Her slightly furrowed brows and puffed cheeks indicated a bit of displeasure. However, after a moment of thought, she said, although Shuang Xuan is my best friend, she is different from me. Having two older brothers I was always raised freely. But Shuang Xuan has shouldered her family's burdens since childhood. It's hard to gauge her personal feelings. Still, knowing her character, Rewarding an excellent employee like Hu Yan isn't surprising. What's odd is the high value of the gift. Unless your brother recently accomplished something significant. 
Ho Jixin was not disappointed instead, she felt a bit of glee. In her heart, Qian Xiao R was the best match for her brother. So, you think sister Shuang Suan isn't really interested in my brother? Qian Xiao Er's brows furrowed again, and she glanced at Hu Jiaxing curiously. Why do you seem happy at the thought that Shuang Suan might not be interested in your brother? Is it that obvious Hu Jixin felt a bit frustrated that even the usually simple-minded Qian Xiao Er could see through her thoughts? Hu Jiaxin thought she was too naive. It's just that I think my brother doesn't deserve sister Suang Suan Hu Jiaxin pretended to be calm. Qian Xiao Ia rubbed her chin and murmured, I've been thinking about things since meeting your brother. It's really uncertain. You know Zhuang Zhuan used to never go out alone with any man. Yet she's eaten at street stalls with your brother more than once. The most surprising thing is, last time here. I jokingly said I'd steal your brother. She actually got upset. In the past she always let me have whatever I liked. What seemed like a simple situation to Huji Yaxin became confusing again after Qian Xiao Er's analysis. When Hu Yan returned, he brought some snacks for the two ladies. They didn't talk further, possibly because they were hungry and focused on eating. After finishing, there was still plenty of time. Ho Yan took his sister for a stroll around the night market. Although the night market was similar to others, it occasionally had unique items. After all, Jiangchong was an old city that attracted many visitors. After walking for a while they hadn't found anything special. However, they did come across an interesting scene. A large crowd gathered around a man and a woman, with an old man playing drums and gongs on the side. It was a traditional street performance, a folk art rarely seen nowadays. Dear folks if you have money please support us with some if not, your presence is enough. My sister and I are not very skilled, so please give us your guidance. This is interesting, very interesting. Both Qian Xiao Er and Huji Shaxin exclaimed, eager to watch, having only seen such performances on TV. Even Hu Yan vaguely remembered seeing monkey shows and street performances when he was very young, now just a blurry memory. Ho Yan protected the two girls, slowly pushing through the crowd to find a good spot while watching over them. At this point, the performing brother picked up a large knife and started spinning it, making a whirring sound. His sister took a bundle of bamboo chopsticks, spread them out, and threw them into the air. As the knife flashed, the chopsticks were continuously cut and fell to the ground. The crowd erupted in applause. An expert in the crowd commented, That's a real mountain opening knife, not a prop. It must weigh 50 or 60 pounds. To wield it so skillfully requires true talent. Is this legal? Isn't that a controlled weapon? They're just performing, trying to make a living. Don't talk nonsense. Compared to the average person, Hu Yan's discerning eye saw everything clearly. He could tell that the bamboo chopsticks were all cut in the middle, likely of uniform length. The old man then picked up a ceramic bowl and walked around the crowd. People tossed in a few coins, some giving three or four, others ten or twenty yuan. Those without money felt embarrassed and moved back to give better spots to those who paid. Of course there were also those who looked disdainful and neither paid nor moved. The old man looked dejected, as if he hadn't earned enough to cover their lodging expenses, feeling disheartened. The girl picked up the fallen chopsticks, about to pack them away. Ho Yan said, young lady? Could you sell those chopsticks to me? The girl, around 17 or 18 years old, with slightly tanned skin from long hours in the sun but a bright sparkle in her eyes, smiled and said, No need. If you like them I'll give them to you sir. Hey hey ha the girl's words made Qian Xiaoar and Hu Ji Jiaxing giggle. Sir Hu Yan was a bit taken aback, shaking his head. He took the half-chopped chopped chicks from the girl and said, Watch me perform a trick. The girl was surprised, and the young man beside her warily hit her behind him. Ho Yan looked around the area but couldn't find a suitable spot. The crowd began to murmur impatiently. What's he doing? Don't cause trouble, they're just trying to make a living. What's this guy up to? Just another monkey show. Move along. You're blocking the view. Ho Yan felt a bit anxious too. Seeing the young man glaring at him while holding the knife, he smiled and said, Brother, don't misunderstand. I'm just trying to do a trick for everyone. The young man relaxed a bit, seeing that Hu Yan seemed harmless. Could I borrow your knife? The young man became wary again. Feeling a bit exasperated, Hu Yan suddenly thought of an idea. How about this brother? Can you hold your knife flat, blade up? Let's perform together. You keep the earnings. If we don't make any money, I'll give you a thousand yuan. Deal. Although unsure of Hu Yan's intentions, Qian Xiao Er found it amusing and immediately shouted, Do it. If it's good, I'll give a thousand yuan. Hu Ji Yaxin, not wanting to disappoint her brother, boldly said, 
I'll give a hundred. Hu Yan bowed to them and said, Thank you for your support. Watch this. Amid the laughter of the crowd, Hu Yan gathered the chopsticks and signaled the young man with the knife. The young man cooperatively held the knife flat. Hu Yan placed the chopsticks on the blade, showing the neatly cut edges to the crowd. After a brief silence, the crowd erupted in applause. Bravo! Excellent skills! Amazing! Truly a master! Exceptional! Simply exceptional! The old man, experienced and quick to adapt, immediately picked up the bowl and walked around again. This time he was all smiles. The smallest denomination in the bowl was a twenty, with very few tens. Some people, lacking cash, asked others for change, saying, Give me some cash they don't have mobile payment. Such great skills shouldn't be watched for free. This is real national art. The young man wielding the knife was puzzled. He couldn't see what was special about Hu Yan's skills. The girl seemed to have an idea, looking hesitant. Ho Yan pulled out a handful of money from his pocket, not much, just a few hundred yuan kept for emergencies. Placing the money in the bowl, Hu Yan said to the bewildered young man, still holding the knife, brother, impressive skills. I just wanted everyone to see clearly. Giving the young man a thumbs up, Hu Yan walked back to his original spot. Qian Xiaowar immediately grabbed Hu Yan's arm saying, Hu Yan, you're amazing. How did you figure it out? Ho Yan smiled. The eyes of an appraiser are not like those of ordinary people. Qian Xiao Er nodded. Meanwhile, the girl in the performance picked up a sword, bowed to the audience, and began to perform a sword routine. Ho Yan felt that the girl's swordsmanship was even more impressive than her brother's knife skills. However, he couldn't pinpoint exactly why it was so impressive. This was Hu Yan's biggest challenge. While he could identify valuable items, he couldn't always explain their significance. Even when he could, it was often based on his historical knowledge from school. In terms of expertise in antiques and artifacts, he was still very green. As he focused on the girl's swordsmanship, he again experienced that peculiar sensation of seeing through time, like he had with the photo earlier. Ho Yan's eyes seemed to travel through time, seeing a little girl practicing under an elderly man's guidance. The old man said, this sword technique is called the curved bamboo sword technique, created by our ancestor Yao after observing how bamboo bends but doesn't break in the rain. In an instant, Hu Yan experienced the girl's entire training process as if it were his own. As he watched the girl's performance again, what had seemed mysterious now made sense. Is this? Tracing back to the source. Ho Yan could hardly believe it. When he looked at the ceramic bowl again, he saw a high price tag of 80,000 yuan. Focusing on the bowl, he realized it was from the Republic of China era, a well-crafted piece from the civilian kiln, though not an official one. Ho Yan told Hu Ji Yaxin and Qian Xiao Er to stay put and quickly left. When he returned, the girl had just finished her routine and was bowing to the crowd. Despite her skill, her performance didn't garner much attention compared to her brother's. Sweating slightly, the girl felt embarrassed, her performance even less appreciated than her brother's. Few people gave money. Unconsciously, the girl looked at the returning Hu Yan. Not wanting to disappoint her, Ha Yan stepped into the circle, saying, let me perform another trick. The crowd burst into laughter. Ha Yan never expected to be so warmly received by everyone. However, some newcomers in the crowd looked puzzled. Others around them quickly explained the impressive scene that had just unfolded. Immediately, the newcomers were intrigued and joined in the applause. Imitating the siblings' gestures, Hu Yan cupped his hands in greeting to the surrounding crowd. He noticed a spark of admiration in the girl's clear eyes. Just as the girl was about to step forward to join him, Hu Yan pointed at her and said, Don't move! Confused, the girl stood still, not understanding his intention but following his instructions. Hu Yan held a flour sack he'd bought at a high price from a nearby vendor selling egg pancakes. He focused on the ground. This was an old ghost market from the Qing dynasty, quite a distance from the street food area. To preserve its historical atmosphere, the ground wasn't paved with bricks or asphalt, but regularly covered with sand. Ho Yan carefully sprinkled white flour around the girl. If it weren't for the previous impressive chopstick trick, the crowd might have chased him away again. But now, instead of chasing him away, they eagerly awaited what miracle Hu Yan would perform next. With unwavering focus, Hu Yan scattered the flour. As he reached a certain point, the crowd noticed a faint green glow mixed with the flour. As time passed, the previously puzzled Qian Xiao Er suddenly covered her mouth and exclaimed, Oh my, it's a painting. Qian Xiao Er's sweet voice and attractive appearance drew everyone's attention. Look, look. Qian Xiao Er jumped up and down, 
pointing at the flower-covered ground where Hu Yan was working. Around the girl delicate bamboo stalks began to appear, swaying gracefully in the flower Hu Yan had scattered. The girl stood in the center, at the base of the stalks, surrounded by bamboo branches and leaves swaying in the imaginary wind, resilient yet unyielding. Snap! 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 Flashes from cameras and phones illuminated the scene, as people captured this incredible moment. Some recorded videos to share on their social media. The old man picked up the ceramic bowl again, bowing to the crowd, hoping for their generosity. This time colorful banknotes reds and greens were tossed onto the vibrant green bamboo scene created from flower and glow powder. The serene, idyllic scene had gained a touch of worldly wealth. The performers, however, didn't mind at all. They smiled with genuine happiness. As the crowd cheered, a piercing phone ring interrupted. Hello, police. I suspect someone here is using a controlled weapon. Yes, at the ghost market near Fairy Lake. The crowd became agitated. Who the hell does that? We hardly ever see such folk art anymore. Killjoy. What's their problem? They're full but don't think about others. Damn it. Disgusting. They weren't harming anyone with the knife. What's the fuss? Let's disperse. We won't get to see this again. Let's go home. At least it was worth coming today. Sigh. The performers were confused by the crowd's sudden anger. Ho Yan quickly pulled the old man aside and asked, Have you ever encountered this before? The old man shook his head, and the girl explained, We've always performed in the countryside and never faced anything like this. Ho Yan said, You'd better leave quickly. If the police come, they'll confiscate everything. The family hurriedly packed their things, glancing at Hu Yan for help. Hu Yan said, Just pack up. Leave the rest to me. Trusting Hu Yan unconditionally, the family followed his instructions. Hu Jiaxin and Qian Xiao R also helped. Hu Yan personally took the money bowl, making sure the old man kept the money. They quickly packed and ran to Hu Yan's car. Hu Yan started the car just as a police car passed by, narrowly missing them. In the rush, Qian Xiao R and Hu Jiaxin ended up in the back seat. The girl who performed with the sword sat next to Hu Yan. As the car drove away, the girl's stomach growled. She blushed and lowered her head. Feeling safe, Hu Yan first dropped Qi and Xiao Wan and Hu Jiaxin home. Then he took the family to a noodle shop near his place. Let's eat first. Once we're full, we'll figure out what's next. Grateful and without any better ideas, the family nodded and followed Hu Yan into the noodle shop. The shop was affordable and quick. Soon three bowls of noodles, a large plate of chicken, and a few side dishes were served. The girl asked why Hu Yan didn't order a bowl for himself. He said he'd already eaten. The brother ate ravenously, clearly very hungry. The old man quietly ate his noodles. The girl, although hungry, ate more delicately. Ha Yan, not hungry, noticed the family felt uneasy and offered them the chicken and side dishes. The old man and the brother accepted the food with thanks and ate heartily. When he offered food to the girl, she looked at Hu Yan and shyly said, You should eat some too. Hu Yan replied, I'm really not hungry. Seeing the girl's shyness, Hu Yan asked the brother, who had nearly finished eating, where are you from? The brother said, We're from the mountains near Bai Shan. We've always lived there. My sister was smart and got into university, but we had no money. So my dad and I came with her to help earn her tuition. It turned out the family name was Yao. The brother was Yao Gang and the sister was Yao Ru. They had lived in a secluded, idyllic village in the mountains. The Yao village had a rule boy stayed to guard the home while girls had to marry out, ensuring they stayed connected to society. Yao Ru a bright girl, not only excelled in her family's martial arts but was also a top student in the area. Despite a five to six hour commute to school, she remained passionate about learning. She eventually got into Jiangcheng University, hoping to use her knowledge to improve her village's conditions. Seeing the modern world firsthand only strengthened her resolve. Although she had read about such advancements, seeing them in person was far more impactful. Ho Yan couldn't imagine how Yao Ru managed to excel in such an environment. Reflecting on his own educational journey, he felt a sense of inferiority. Hu Yan said, What a coincidence, the girl sitting behind me earlier is my sister, and she also got into Jiangcheng University. You'll be classmates. What are your plans now? Performing can only be a temporary solution. Yao Gang, with little schooling, didn't understand. We made quite a bit today. We can save up for her tuition. Ho Yan explained, First, using those weapons is illegal. Even if you switch to props, the novelty will wear off, and people will lose interest. Yao Gang sighed. It's hard to make a living in the city. 
Back in our village we can get by with some effort. Here, everything costs money. Sigh. Yao Ru looked at Hu Yan with her clear eyes, silently asking for his advice. A him Hu Yan said, My suggestion is for the old man to go back home after a few days. If Yao Gang wants to stay he should find a job. As for Yao Ru you should apply for financial aid. I can help with the money. The three exchanged glances but said nothing. Overwhelmed by Hu Yan's generosity, the old man pulled out a cloth bundle, counted some money, and handed it to Yao Gang. Pay for the meal and give half to him. Yao Gang nodded and went to settle the bill. Clearly the old man didn't fully trust Hu Yan, fearing ulterior motives. Ha Yan smiled and shook his head. Yao Ru with pursed lips said, Big Brother Hu, I'm sorry, our father doesn't want to owe too much. He's afraid we can't repay it. Hu Yan nodded, I understand. When Yao Gang returned, he placed a wad of cash, a mix of big and small bills, in front of Hu Yan. This is for you. Ha Yan thought for a moment and said, I'll take it. But you need money now. Consider this a loan. Pay me back when you can. Yao Gang's eyes lit up, but before he could take the money, the old man pressed it down with his pipe. Young man, we appreciate your kindness, but we can't accept it. Ho Yan didn't insist and put the money in his pocket. You can stay at my place tonight if you trust me. If not, I'll find you a hotel. The siblings looked at their father who hesitated, then said, Thank you, nephew. Hu Yan led the family upstairs to his apartment. As he opened the door, they were stunned and hesitant to enter. Old Hu, why are you back so late? Zhao Peng's loud voice came from inside. Seeing Zhao Peng lounging in shorts on the sofa, Hu Yan quickly said, We have guests. Put some clothes on. Ho Zhao Peng hurried to his room. Miss Qin is here, and you didn't tell me not seeing outside, he assumed it was Qin Zixuan. Hao Yan didn't bother to explain, taking out spare slippers from the shoe cabinet. Change your shoes and come in. Okay Yao Gang was the first to enter, followed by the old man and Yao Ru. Zhao Peng, now in pajamas, came out and froze when he saw Yao Ru. Uh, old Hu. Aren't you going to introduce me? Hu Yan shook his head. This is my roommate, Zhao Peng. And this is Mr. Yao Yao Gang, and Yao Ru Zhao Peng quickly stepped forward to help with Yao Ru's bag but underestimated its weight, nearly falling. His face turned red. With a strained back, Zhao Peng looked at Hu Yan. Old Hu, you set me up? Why didn't you warn me it was so heavy? Ho Yan was speechless. Even if he wanted to warn Zhao Peng, he needed time to do so. Zhao Peng had dashed off as if running a 100-meter race. Shaking his head helplessly, Hu Yan watched Zhao Peng ask Yao Ru, Are you guys from some film crew? Those props are quite heavy no wonder Zhao Peng now viewed Hu Yan as someone who mingled with the elite. Yao Ru shyly smiled, Brother Zhao, you misunderstand. We're not from a film crew, we're from the mountains. Zhao Peng immediately gave a thumbs up, impressive. Your acting skills are top notch he chuckled. Let me tell you, at a friend's wedding, I saw a famous star. I think, even compared to her, you're just as beautiful. I'm sure you'll be a big hit in the future. Zhao Peng's praise left Yao Ru speechless and bewildered. Ho Yan took the bundle from Mr. Yao and led him and Yao Gang to the southeast room. It was designed as a senior's room during renovations, with a traditional tatami style. Hu Yan thought Mr. Yao and Yao Gang, used to sleeping on heated brick beds, would find it comfortable. You two can stay in this room they nodded and thanked him. Then Hu Yan led Yao Ru to the adjacent guest room. This room was originally prepared for my sister, but you can stay here for now. Both bathrooms have showers. You must be tired, so wash up and get some rest. With that, Hu Yan left without hesitation. Standing outside, Yao Gang was startled. However, Hu Yan didn't mind. If Hu Ji Yaxin were in a new environment, he would probably act similarly. Seeing Hu Yan return so quickly, Yao Gang felt a bit embarrassed. To avoid any awkwardness, Hu Yan took Yao Gang to the bathroom and explained how to use the shower, which bottle was shampoo, and which was body wash. Zhao Peng, watching, was puzzled. Once the Yao siblings went to shower, he approached Hu Yan and asked, Old Hu, are they really from the mountains? What do you think Hu Yan recounted his encounter with the Yao family to Zhao Peng? Zhao Peng pondered. I used to think my childhood was tough, but I had no idea there were people who've seen so little of the world. Ho Yan sighed. Yeah, what do we have to complain about? We have so much already. They'd heard stories of people in remote areas who couldn't get enough to eat or wear warm clothes, who never left the mountains. Such tales had always seemed distant. Given the wasteful lifestyle in the city, with so much food thrown away, 
Suddenly, Zhao Peng declared, I'll never waste food or money again. Ho Yan nodded. Sometimes waste was unintentional, but often it was deliberate. Thinking about how the Yao family had savored every drop of their noodle soup, Hu Yan felt a pang of guilt. After a while Yao Gang came out, and Mr. Yao went in to shower. Chatting with Hu Yan for a bit, Yao Gang soon became sleepy. Mountain people without electricity usually went to bed early. Hu Yan let Yao Gang sleep. When Yao Ru emerged, Zhao Peng was stunned. Even Hu Yan couldn't believe his eyes. After her shower, the tan on Yao Ru's face and hands had vanished. Before them stood a fair-skinned, radiant young girl, with skin like porcelain. Yu Zhao Peng pointed at Yao Ru, momentarily speechless. Yao Ru approached Hu Yan, asking Brother Hu, Do you have a basin? I want to wash our dirty clothes she was holding her family's dirty laundry, having changed into clean clothes before showering. Ho Yan led her to the laundry room, showing her how to use the washing machine and explaining the process. Yao Ru nodded, absorbing the instructions. When Hu Yan finished, she softly said, The color on my face and hands was from a herbal paste my dad told me to use for protection. Really Hu Yan was surprised. He prided himself on his sharp eyes but hadn't realized it wasn't a tan. Yao Ru retrieved a bamboo tube from her bundle, opening it to show Hu Yan. This is a herbal concoction that makes the skin look darker but actually protects it. Regular use prevents tanning. Ho Yan thought, is this some kind of natural face mask? As he wondered, a number appeared in his mind 250000. Meaning, the contents of that bamboo tube, if sold as a face mask, would be worth at least 25,000 yuan. Ho Yan suddenly asked, I saw Mr. Yao carrying a large sack. Are those herbal pills? Yao Ru nodded. Yes, there are family's traditional herbal pills. They not only strengthen the body but also treat rheumatism in our damp mountain climate. Could I see one? Yao Ru fetched a pill. He Yan asked, You plan to sell these, right? Yes, Yao Ru replied. We plan to sell them, but on our way here people called them fake miracle pills. So, we stopped trying. I'll save some for school and send the rest back with my dad. How much were you planning to sell them for? 15 yuan each Yao Ru said. I based the price on similar herbal products I read about, which usually cost dozens per box. Ho Yan was shocked, as he saw the actual value as 350 yuan per pill. Meaning, Yao Ru had not exaggerated their effectiveness and had been quite modest. In modern society, with material needs largely met, chronic conditions like neck and shoulder pain were common due to poor habits and stress. Using his discerning eye, Ho Yan saw that these pills were perfect for treating such chronic ailments. Ahem. Little sister Yao Ru, here's the thing. Without a proper production license, selling these pills is illegal. You shouldn't try to sell them. Yao Ru bit her lip but nodded reluctantly. But Hu Yan continued, I believe in your product. If you have more, I'd like to buy them. Set your price, but don't undersell them because the ingredients are precious. To mountain folk, these herbs were easily obtainable. But to urban dwellers they were invaluable. Brother Hu, you decide the price Yao Ru said. He Yan held up three fingers. Yao Ru's eyes widened. Thirty? Isn't that too expensive? Ho Yan internally sighed, I mean three hundred. Is that okay he genuinely didn't want to profit from them? No Yao Ru shook her head. You've already helped us so much. Tonight you helped us earn over a thousand yuan. How can we charge you so much? Realizing he needed a different approach, Hu Yan said, I'm an appraiser for a pawn shop. Buying valuable items is my job. The money comes from the company, not me. Your herbal pills are worth this price. Yao Ru hesitated, then said, I'll ask my dad after he finishes his shower. Afterwards, she began cleaning the apartment. Though initially tidy, Hu Yan and Zhao Peng had let things slide over time. Efficiently, Yao Ru cleaned every neglected corner. Watching her, Zhao Peng felt awkward and grabbed a mop to help. Oddly, though Zhao Peng had been smitten by her beauty, he now kept his distance, not daring to get close. Even a friendly smile from Yao Ru made Zhao Peng blush. After Mr. Yao finished his shower, Yao Ru spoke with him briefly. The old man gave her some instructions and went to bed, telling Yao Ru to sleep early too. Hu Yan assumed Yao Ru had discussed the pill prices with her father. So, what did he say? Yao Ru looked embarrassed but replied, My dad said city folks can be cunning. They might offer something good first, then cheat us later. Whether you're good or bad, we shouldn't take advantage of you. So 15 yuan per pill. She bowed deeply to Hu Yan. I know you're a good person. You have a keen eye. 
Those pills could cover my tuition and living expenses for a year if sold at 300 each. Thank you but I must listen to my dad. Possibly due to nerves, she occasionally slipped into her rural accent. Ho Yan was momentarily speechless. He hadn't expected such strong integrity and had simply wanted to avoid exploiting them. He planned to keep some pills for his parents, give some away, and sell some to break even. A good person Hu Yan thought, you're the one seeing the best in people. Enough cleaning for tonight. Let's talk more at my company tomorrow. Yao Ru nodded but finished her cleaning before bed. Zhao Peng sat on the couch, dazed. Ho Yan yawned, time for bed. I can't sleep. I never imagined such a beautiful, kind girl existed. Ho Yan smiled knowingly. Zhao Peng wasn't implying Yao Ru was more beautiful than Qin Zixuan they were equally stunning in different ways. The next morning, Hu Yan got up to find the entire apartment impeccably clean and organized. Surprisingly, Zhao Peng had woken up early and brought breakfast. Initially, Zhao Peng wanted the Yao family to eat first. However, Yao Ru insisted on waiting for Hu Yan to join them. After a quick wash, Hu Yan joined everyone at the breakfast table. Mr. Yao, it's quite simple to solve the problem of little Ru's tuition. The old man paused, holding his UTAO. Go ahead. The bowl you use to collect money while performing is actually an antique. It's worth quite a bit, enough to cover little Ru's tuition. If you're reluctant to part with it, there are other solutions too. As for other solutions, Hu Yan thought of co-signing a student loan for Yao Ru. Mr. Yao clearly had no idea that the bowl he used daily was valuable. That thing is worth money? How much? Hu Yan replied, it's hard to say exactly, but it should be worth several thousand, more than enough for tuition and living expenses. Ho Yan knew he wouldn't lose out by buying it himself, but he feared Mr. Yao might think it was charity, which could cause misunderstandings. The old man pondered for a moment, still finding it hard to believe, but nodded cautiously. After breakfast, Hu Yan drove the Yao family to Tianhai Pawn Shop. Coincidentally, Wang Quanshan was on duty that day. After exchanging greetings, Hu Yan briefly explained the situation. Mr. Wang, I'm a bit biased since they're friends. Please handle this. Mr. Yao handed over the ceramic bowl. Wang Quansheng put on white gloves and carefully examined the bowl. He held it up, inspecting the color, then turned it over to check the base and tapped the side with his finger. A Republic-era imitation of an official kiln bowl, with a thick, well-preserved patina. Though it's an imitation, the craftsmanship and glaze are excellent. It's worth several thousand. Realizing Hu Yan was present, he added awkwardly, with Master Hu here, who am I to say anything? Ho Yan waved it off, because they're my friends, I'd prefer you set a fair price. Understanding, Wang Quanxing nodded, the standard price is 48,000 yuan, but for Master Hu, we'll buy it for 56,000 yuan. He wasn't undercutting them. Pawn shops had their own rules, and they couldn't operate without profit. The price was generous because of Hu Yan. The Yao family was stunned, finding it hard to believe that a common household item was worth so much. Mr. Yao's voice trembled. Are you sure you're not joking with this old man? Wang Quansheng smiled and shook his head. If it's acceptable, we can sign the contract now. Cash or transfer, your choice. The old man, unsure, looked at Hu Yan. Ho Yan suggested, how about this? First, let little Ru get a bank card. Put some of the money there for her tuition and expenses. The rest can be managed by you and Yao Gang. The old man nodded, and they signed the sales contract with the pawn shop, receiving 56,000 yuan in cash. Seeing the money, Mr. Yao finally felt at ease. Next, Hu Yan helped Yao Ru get a bank card and deposited 30,000 yuan, leaving the rest with Mr. Yao and Yao Gang. Then, Hu Yan had Yao Ru buy a mobile phone for better communication with her family. After storing his number in her phone, he told her to call him if she needed anything. The Yao family parted ways with deep gratitude. By now, it was almost noon. Hu Yan had planned to meet Shen Moling at a cafe on South Street at noon so he drove there. Arriving half an hour early, he was surprised to find Shen Moling already waiting. I didn't expect you to be here so early. Shen Moling was equally surprised, I had nothing else to do, so I came early. I didn't expect you to be early too, senior Hu. I just finished helping a friend, and came straight here. Honestly, Hu Yan rarely visited cafes during his college days, and wasn't sure what to order. After ordering a random coffee they began chatting. Shen Moling asked, Senior Hu, are you always this busy, even during breaks? Not really busy. Just happened to run into something Hu Yan briefly explained the situation with the Yao family. Shen Moling was moved by the story of how the Yao family walked most of the way.
performing to make money. By the way, can you help little Ru get financial aid? Given her situation, it shouldn't be too difficult. Shen Moling thought for a moment, considering her circumstances, it shouldn't be a problem. They also discussed issues related to Qian Xiao Er's store. Shen Moling agreed it shouldn't be a problem. After wrapping up their conversation, Shen Moling shared her own matter. My grandfather deeply respected Mr. Zheng Dafu, who mentored him. Many of his students collected work stamped with Gu Min Yang Weiquan remembering Mr. Zheng's struggles always breaks his heart, so he asked me to sell those items. Ho Yan understood that Shen Moling trusted him to fairly assess the collection, knowing some pieces were genuine while others might not be. No problem. Bring them to our shop, and I'll ensure you get a fair price. Shen Moling nodded. I trust you. After chatting a bit more, Shen Moling opened her phone and asked, Senior Hu, is this you in the video? Ho Yan took the phone and saw the video of his performance at the ghost market the previous night. Yes, that's me. I hope it didn't make you laugh. Shen Moling shook her head, not at all. I genuinely admire you. While I might have just given them money you showed them how to earn it. That was the Yao family right? Yes, that was them. I didn't think much at the time. They have real talent, but lacked a way to captivate the audience. After Hu Yan explained, Shen Moling looked at him with admiration. Most people wouldn't have the discernment to help in such a way. How did you notice the precision of those chopped chopsticks? And your painting of bamboo in the rain was incredible. It's a pity it was ruined. Ha Yan modestly replied, It wasn't my painting skills. It was actually the marks left by Yao Ru's sword dance. Shen Moling was in awe, murmuring, Our culture is filled with such incredible talents. Preserving these treasures isn't easy. I wonder if they will last for future generations. Hu Yan also fell silent, eventually saying, It's hard to say. With advancing technology, many things will change. Like Jin Huidui, once so beautiful, now almost forgotten. After parting ways, Hu Yan, having woken early, planned to rest at home. As he approached Tianhai Garden, he saw a familiar figure standing alone. Hu Yan stopped the car, rolled down the window, and asked, Why are you here? Where's Mr. Yao? Seeing Hu Yan, Yao Ru's face lit up with excitement, then dimmed. My dad and brother went back. I didn't know where to go, so I. It turned out, after saving enough for tuition, the Yao family decided they were out of place in the city, where everything cost money. Even a meal last night cost over a hundred yuan, making the city seem like a money pit. They decided it was better to go back, collect herbs, and make pills to sell to Hu Yan for some income. Yao Ru had bought their return tickets and saw them off with reluctance. Not knowing where to go, she felt lost in the unfamiliar city. Ho Yan invited her into the car and started the engine. Have you eaten yet? Yao Ru shook her head still caught in her homesick feelings. Ho Yan thought it might be inappropriate for her to stay with him and Zhao Peng, both single men. He took her to eat, then brought her to Qian Xiao Er's shop. Qian Xiao Er wasn't there, probably busy elsewhere. Ho Yan called her and explained Yao Ru's situation. Qian Xiao Er readily agreed to help, so Hu Yan left Yao Ru with Hu Jiaxin. Back home, Hu Yan finally had a chance to rest. Checking his phone, he found updates from Hu Jiaxin and Qian Xiao Er about last night's videos, which he had liked. He now noticed a comment from Qin Zixuan. Ho Yan's keen eye never disappoints. Reflecting on recent events and the encounter with the Yao family, Hu Yan felt a sense of calm. He replied, Good horses are common, but good judges are rare. Thanks to President Qin for the support. Exhausted, Hu Yan fell asleep on the sofa. Unbeknownst to him, Qin Zixuan was deeply moved by his reply. The term President Qin seemed to widen the gap that had once been closing between them. Waking up at 4 p.m., Hu Yan was startled by the ringing of his phone. Seeing an unfamiliar number, he was annoyed but answered, worried it might be a persistent telemarketer. Is this Hu Yan? The voice sounded familiar. Who is this? Ha ha ha. It's only been a few days and you don't recognize my voice? It's Zhang Wanming. Hu Yan was surprised. Why would Zhang Wanming call him? Sorry I just woke up and didn't recognize you. What can I do for you? Zhang Wanning spoke very politely Brother Hu, I must apologize for my past mistakes. Can we meet for a drink? Let me make it up to you. Ho Yan thought. 
If Zhang Wanming has changed his ways, I'll write my surname backward but recently. Hu Yan's mindset had subtly shifted. Mr. Zhang, just tell me what you need. As expected, Zhang Wanming chuckled awkwardly and said, Prosperity Antiquities is lucky to have an appraiser like you. Getting to know you is an honor for me. I have some items I'd like you to appraise. Clearly, Zhang Wanning wanted to redeem himself where he had previously failed. At that moment, Zhao Peng returned. Seeing Hu Yan on the phone he stayed quiet. Ha Yan said sure where shall we meet? Near your neighborhood. You pick the place. Let's go to Donggang Seafood. The crabs are in season. Zhang Wanning felt a pinch but agreed, having no other choice. Upon hearing Donggang Seafood, Zhao Peng's eyes lit up. Wow, old Hu, Seafood, can I come? Ha Yan thought it might be better not to face Zhang Wanning alone. No problem but Mr. Zhang is paying. Vice President Zhang, the blind one Zhao Peng looked disappointed. Ho Yan laughed, what's the problem? We can eat without guilt. Besides, we need to learn to deal with different people. It's part of growing up. Zhao Peng pondered Hu Yan's words and agreed. All right, let's enjoy his treat. Exactly. Let's enjoy it. The two changed clothes and headed to Donggang Seafood. At the restaurant's reception, they asked for the room reserved by Zhang Wanning and went up. Zhang Wanning hadn't arrived yet, but as experienced as he was, he had already arranged for a pot of premium Westlake Dragon Well tea to be served. Zhao Peng, remembering a previous awkward dining experience, suggested, Old Hugh, shall we look at the menu? Ho Yan immediately understood Zhao Peng's intent and asked the waiter to bring the menu. Xiao Peng asked, Old Hugh, what should we order? I haven't tried most of these dishes. Ho Yan, not having tried much himself except for a lobster once with Qin Zixuan, thought for a moment. I think it's wise to order strategically. Don't go for the most expensive dishes, but the next best ones. Zhao Peng agreed. After sipping half a pot of tea, Zhang Wanning arrived. Seeing Zhao Peng, he was initially surprised but then greeted him warmly. Welcome. I see Brother Hu didn't consider me an outsider and brought Zhao Peng along. Great. Hu Yan added, of course, we're old acquaintances. Zhang Wanning carefully placed his leather case on an empty seat, took off his coat, and said, Order whatever you like, don't be shy. Sure. I've never been shy Zhao Peng's bluntness made Zhang Wanning awkward. When the waiter brought the menu back, Hu Yan said his rehearsed line while looking at it, Yang Cheng Lake Hairy Crabs. Zhang Wanning's heart pounded, and he broke out in a cold sweat. He had said to order freely, and now he couldn't take it back. But Hu Yan continued, Yang Cheng Lake Hairy Crabs aren't that special. Let's go with the local Jin City crabs. Get the largest ones, so we can eat more. Relieved, Zhang Wanning wiped his brow and, despite his displeasure, said, Brother Hu, you're too modest. But you're right, you have good taste. Most Yangcheng Lake crabs are fake. The waiter wasn't pleased. Our hairy crabs come with a code you can verify online. Zhao Peng, having learned a lot recently, said, Just because something has a code doesn't mean it's genuine. Even online products with codes can be fake. The waiter fell silent. Xiao Peng's remark pleased Zhang Wanning. Brother Zhao, I like the way you think. You're a friend worth having. Xiao Peng smiled. Thank you, Mr. Zhang. Hey, Zhang Wanning pretended to be offended. Call me Brother Zhang if you really consider me a friend. No more formalities. Ho Yan thought. Clearly, he's worried about the waiter looking down on him. How vain. Zhao Peng laughed. All right, Brother Zhang, I'll count on you from now on. Ho Yan nodded internally. Zhao Peng wasn't stupid, he had just seen too little of the world. Zhang Wanning waved Brother Hu, continue ordering, don't be shy. Two and a half pounds of lobster. Zhang Wanning nearly fainted. Luckily, Hu Yan continued, too expensive. Honestly, smaller lobsters taste better. Zhang Wanning nodded repeatedly, his relief evident. He couldn't justify such an expense for Hu Yan and Zhao Peng. After ordering two dishes, Hu Yan handed the menu to Zhao Peng. Zhang Wanning patted Zhao Peng's shoulder, don't be shy. I won't. I'll just order what I like. Zhang Wanning, confident that Zhao Peng's limited experience would result in cheaper orders, felt reassured. Zhao Peng ordered, I like this, fried ribbon fish. Three pounds. Zhang Wanning was thrilled this dish would save him money. Brother, you should order things you can't normally get. Zhao Peng agreed, true, so I'm ordering Jiang ribbon fish, not something you get every day. Zhang Wanning was petrified. What he thought was a cheap order turned out to be premium Jiang ribbon fish. Three pounds? That was over a thousand yuan. But he had to maintain his composure, laughing. 
That's more like it. Ha 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 ha. Zhao Peng, thrilled to see Zhang Wanming's reaction, enjoyed the moment. Also, steamed grouper. Zhang Wanming could barely smile now. Zhao Peng's two dishes alone had cost 2,000 yuan. Having ordered premium dishes, Zhang Wanming felt he had to match up, ordering three dishes and a soup, totaling over 3,000 yuan. Combined, the meal cost over 10,000 yuan, excluding drinks. The waiter happily took the orders and asked, What would you like to drink? Ho Yen said, Seafood goes best with white wine. Three bottles of Wuliangji, the 10 year one. Zhang Wanming's smile froze, his face contorted in discomfort. Once the orders were placed, Zhang Wanming sighed in relief. After some small talk, as the dishes arrived, Zhang Wanming raised a glass, I'm delighted to know you both. Cheers. They drank, and Zhang Wanning thought, this is costing me hundreds, but if Hu Yan helps me, it'll be worth it. After a few drinks, he placed the case on the table. Brother Hu, can you check these items for me? Opening the case, it revealed some exquisite porcelain bowls and plates. Prepared for this, Hu Yan put on gloves and used a magnifying glass, though his sharp eyes were sufficient. The act was more for show. Seeing Hu Yan's seriousness, Zhang Wanning was pleased. Brother Hu, you're so meticulous. Don't worry, I won't forget your help. Ho Yan modestly examined the items, genuinely impressed. These are wonderful. Where did you get them? Such items are rare. Hearing this, Zhang Wanming relaxed completely, his smile reaching his ears. Really good? Not fakes. Absolutely genuine. There are several authentic Qing Dynasty official kiln pieces here. Definitely worth collecting. Come on, brother. Let's drink to that. In his excitement, Zhang Wanning drank almost two bottles of Wulianji himself. After a few drinks, Zhang Wanning warmly bid farewell to Hu Yan and Zhao Peng. This was the most harmonious interaction they'd ever had. Satisfied, Zhang Wanning whistled as he got into a taxi. Watching the taxi drive away, Zhao Peng scoffed. What a stroke of luck for that guy. Hu Yan shook his head, smiling. Luck? It's not that easy. I'd be surprised if he doesn't lose tens of thousands. Zhao Peng looked puzzled. But old Hugh, you said those were genuine antiques, some even from official kilns. How could he lose money? Ho Yan explained, if he truly loves them and keeps them, it's not a loss. But I suspect Zhang Wanning wants to resell them for a profit. He doesn't have the right mindset for a collector. Zhao Peng was even more confused. What do you mean? Hu Yan continued, those items are genuine, mostly from civilian kilns, with a few from official kilns. They're from the Qing dynasty but unfortunately they're all from after the Jianfeng Emperor. Zhao Peng, who had been wide-eyed and confused, nearly burst out laughing. Tricking someone is an art. Actually I didn't trick him it was his own greed. You know as a history major from Jiangcheng University, I have some basic knowledge. He explained how glazed ceramics had been around since the Eastern Han Dynasty, developing through the Sui and Tang Dynasties with intricate designs, and reaching high craftsmanship during the Five Dynasties. The Song Dynasty, with its high GDP, saw unparalleled porcelain quality, making surviving official kiln pieces priceless. With time, techniques improved, and by the Ming and Qing dynasties, porcelain became even more spectacular. However, post Qian Long, as the empire declined, so did porcelain quality. Post Qianfeng, during the invasion of the Eight Nation Alliance, the country was in ruins. Porcelain from that era, mostly export wares, were mass produced and often of poor quality, Zhao Peng said. So, old Hugh, you really played him well. When you said not much left in the country that was hilarious. Not much here but plenty abroad. Hugh Yun justified, I didn't trick him. They are genuine Qing dynasty pieces. He didn't ask about their value, so I didn't mislead him. I think some people can be turned from enemies to friends, but only if there's mutual benefit. Otherwise it's just a dream. Zhao Peng nodded vigorously. I used to think I could follow in your footsteps, make money from antiques. But now I see, relying on luck to get rich is foolish. Actually I have an idea Zhao Peng lit a cigarette, taking a deep drag. Working a job for a few thousand a month, even with insurance, it's hard to save enough for a house without family support. I want to start a business but I don't know what to do. Plus, I don't have the capital. Seeing Zhao Peng's dejected look, Hu Yan felt bad. Zhao Peng had always been optimistic and diligent, even if his job wasn't ideal. He never complained and always did his best. Ho Yan thought Zhao Peng would do well, even if not hugely successful. But Hu Yan's rapid success made Zhao Peng anxious. Hu Yan's friends, whether Qin Zixuan, Qian Xiao Eier, 
or the celebrity Kai Lai, made Zhao Peng feel inferior. The only girl Zhao Peng felt comfortable around was Yao Ru, who he initially mistook for a minor celebrity. When she revealed her true beauty, he distanced himself again. Understanding Zhao Peng's feelings, Hu Yan remembered his own self-doubt when his ex-girlfriend dumped him. Not being able to provide a future for a loved one is a painful experience. Ha Yan decided, if you want to start something, I'll invest some money. Zhao Peng's eyes brightened, then reddened with emotion. Old Hu, we'll be brothers for life. He hugged Hu Yan tightly. Ho Yan punched him playfully, don't get me into trouble. Zhao Peng, confused, still had tears in his eyes. What? Ho Yan said, I can tolerate you staying with me, but keep your distance. I still want to date. Zhao Peng laughed through his tears, all right? I'll keep my distance. I don't want to cramp your style either. That night, Hu Yan slept soundly, but Zhao Peng couldn't. He'd been thinking about starting a business ever since he boasted about Hu Yan being a top appraiser. A colleague, from a wealthy family, kept pestering Zhao Peng to introduce him to Hu Yan. With the Kai Li video going viral, Zhao Peng faced daily pressure from this colleague, who saw Hu Yan as a gold mine. Zhao Peng finally blurted out his business idea while drunk. He expected Hu Yan to tell him to wait until he gained more experience and connections. Instead, Hu Yan agreed without hesitation and even offered to invest, which deeply moved Zhao Peng. He cherished his friendship with Hu Yan more than anything, even more so now. On the way back, Zhao Peng explained how someone wanted to partner with him, leveraging Hu Yan's expertise. The deal offered Zhao Peng a 30% stake without investing a dime, simply because of Hu Yan's support. Hu Yan, however, insisted on a 50% share, ensuring they had control. Zhao Peng, excited about the prospect of being his own boss, couldn't sleep, knowing Hu Yan's involvement guaranteed success. The next day Hu Yan went to work early. His secretary Su Mo had prepared and printed out the backlog of issues for him. Noticing she hadn't left, Hu Yan asked, anything else? Su Mo smiled, Mr. Hu, since you're new, we thought of hosting a welcome party so everyone can get to know you better. It'll help with your work. Hu Yan smiled, sounds good. Ask everyone for their opinion, but I'll pay for it. Su Mo, thrilled, exclaimed. Thank you Mr. Hu, she skipped out causing a wave of cheers outside. Ho Yan smiled, accepting these youthful displays without feeling the need to assert his authority. Though he had just attended an appraiser's welcome party, another one for the marketing team was planned for Friday night. Given their younger demographic, it made sense to schedule it before the weekend to avoid work disruptions. After handling his tasks, Hu Yan gazed out the window, feeling grateful for his blessings. Without his sharp eyesight and meeting Qin Zixuan, he might still be among the bustling crowd below. He took out two gifts, pressed the call button, and Su Mo appeared. Send these packages to Yang Ching. Two days later, Ho Yan received a call from his mother. Yan, what kind of medicine did you send me? Good medicine, of course. How do you feel after taking it? Yang Yejun said, I slept well, but the next morning I was covered in black sweat. It smelled awful. Were you playing a trick on your mother? Ho Yan chuckled, having experienced the same thing. And after that, well, my back pain and neck stiffness from years of desk work are gone, and my skin looks much better. Ho Yan touched his face, not noticing any difference, perhaps due to his youth. Maybe I should raise the price if I sell this medicine. No wonder Hu Yan had such thoughts. These days, many people can afford to treat their ailments. There are dozens of medicines in major pharmacies that claim to treat neck, shoulder, back, and leg pain. Massage parlors and therapy centers are everywhere but who has truly heard of someone completely curing such pains? Even surgeries often only provide temporary relief, with symptoms returning even worse than before. Having tried the Yao family's pills himself, Hu Yan felt noticeably lighter and more energetic, even though he didn't have those symptoms to begin with. Otherwise, he wouldn't have risked letting his parents try them. Yang Yejun mentioned that Hu Feng Chun's chronic back and leg pain had significantly improved after taking the pills. A few more doses might even result in a complete cure. Examining one of the pills closely, Hu Yan used his keen observational skills to recall the process of its creation, identifying each herb and its name. After researching online, Hu Yan found that similar formulas existed, but the difference lay in the age of the herbs used. The Yao family, located deep in the Baishan Mountains, collected pure, naturally grown herbs without any environmental pollution. It's no wonder the pills were so effective. The decline of traditional Chinese medicine wasn't due to the formulas themselves. Despite the loss of many valuable recipes, most formulas for common ailments remained intact. 
The difficulty lay in the immense demand, leading to a severe shortage of natural herbs. Most herbs on the market were artificially cultivated. Think about it ginseng, polygona multiflorum, and rhizoma polygonidae, among others, were often farm substitutes. Tiger bones were replaced by other animal bones, and synthetic substitutes replaced many near-extinct biological ingredients. How effective could traditional Chinese medicine be under these conditions? Indeed, when Hu Yan re-examined the pill, its value had jumped to 500 yuan, with a wide red price range indicating its growing demand. Initially valued at 350 yuan as an untested product, its price rose after preliminary clinical validation. Perhaps, as more people benefited, the price would skyrocket. Ho Yan also tested the herbal paste for his face, finding its effects surprisingly good. This made him consider the martial arts skills the Yao siblings had. If the medicine was genuine, the martial arts likely weren't just for show either. From then on, Ho Yan silently memorized and occasionally practiced the techniques he observed from Yao Ru. While not aiming to become a martial arts master, it was a good way to stay fit and protect himself and his family. A week later, Ho Yan noticed his physique becoming noticeably stronger and more balanced in the mirror, bolstering his confidence. One day, shortly after arriving at work, Su Mo knocked and entered. Mr. Hu, there's a commotion at the appraisal section. Someone specifically asked for you. He Ho Yan thought for a moment and guessed what it might be about. Sure enough, at the appraisal section, Zhang Wanning was arguing with Wang Quanxing and others. Why do you say it's worthless? Hu Yan said these are valuable items. You must be blind. Wang Quanxing, respecting Hu Yan, replied, The items are genuine and valuable, but late Qing Dynasty porcelain is priced accordingly. Please wait for Master Hu to explain. Ho Yan arrived and, seeing Zhang Wanning, quickened his pace. Mr. Zhang, why didn't you notify me? Zhang Wanning huffed, Ho Yan, are you playing games? I paid a deposit for these items and had you appraise them. You said they were good, but now everyone says they're worthless. Ho Yan seriously asked, Did anyone say they were fake? Zhang Wanning shook his head. Did anyone say they weren't good items? Again, Zhang Wanming shook his head, then couldn't help but say, Good items that aren't valuable, what's the point? Ho Yan sighed, Mr. Zhang, that's not fair. If you like something, can you really put a price on it? For example, if you buy a new car for a million yuan, it depreciates by at least 30% in a year. Right. That's true, Zhang Wanning nodded. But what does that have to do with these items? It's the same Hu Yan explained. People buy cars knowing they depreciate because they like them. The same goes for antiques. Even if they're expensive, collectors buy them out of passion. Smiling, Hu Yan looked at Zhang Wanning, implying he hadn't deceived him. If you truly love them, keep them for decades. They might become treasures. After reflecting, Zhang Wanning thought, you tricked me. However, needing Hu Yan's help, Zhang Wanning pulled him aside, lit a cigarette for him, and said, Brother Hu, help me out. He Yan took a deep drag and asked, how? Zhang Wanning, glancing around to ensure no one was listening, whispered, You're in charge here. Can't you just decide the price? Ho Yan nodded, then shook his head. It's not that simple. If I approve a purchase that doesn't sell or sells at a loss, I'll face consequences too. Zhang Wanning winked, Brother Hu, I know how it works. Each appraiser gets a couple of mistakes a year without penalty. Help me out here, and I'll make it worth your while. In reality, this was nearly impossible. Like car insurance, if you don't have any claims, your premium goes down the next year. If you do, it goes up. Appraisers who make few mistakes get promoted, while those with frequent errors might get fired. This system prevented appraisers from manipulating the process. Zhang Wanning, desperate, continued, You're already a top appraiser and now a manager in the marketing department, favored by President Qin. One mistake won't hurt you. I spent all my savings on these items. If you don't help, I'm ruined. Ho Yan thought, he's trying to bribe and guilt trip me. Feigning difficulty, Hu Yan said, Mr. Zhang, this would indeed cost me little. But it would betray President Qin's trust and damage my reputation. A single mistake can be a lifetime stain for an appraiser. Zhang Wanning sighed deeply, Brother Hu, I know it's hard for you. If I have no other choice, I'll have to sell my house to cover this. He picked up his case, ready to leave. Wait Hu Yan called out. Is it that serious? Zhang Wanning sighed, I got greedy and bought a batch of fakes. By the time I realized the seller had disappeared. Chairman Qian only cares about results, not the process. So I sold my car and used my connections to buy these so-called imported antiques. Who knew? Ho Yan understood. 
After the loss at Qian Xiao Ear's shop opening, Zhang Wanming must have tried to recoup his losses by extorting new suppliers, leading to this mess. Ho Yan, appearing sympathetic, said, Brother, I know how hard it is to buy a house in the city. Tears in his eyes. Zhang Wanning regretted his actions deeply. Hu Yan gritted his teeth, Brother Zhang, how much did you pay for these items? Zhang Wanning showed five fingers. 50,000 Hu Yan said, that's manageable. I can cover it. Zhang Wanning shook his head, brother, it's five million. I'm ruined, he squatted down, covering his face in despair. I can't cover five million, Hu Yan said. Zhang Wanning stood up, gripping Hu Yan's hand, brother, just name a price. I'll be grateful forever. Hu Yan thought for a moment, these items are worth at most 50,000. What Zhang Wanming was shocked. Your appraisers weren't lying. They said the most they could offer was 35,000. Even to a discerning buyer, 50,000 is the max. Hu Yan nodded. They wouldn't lie to you if you mentioned my name. What do I do? Zhang Wanming paced in circles. Hu Yan bit his lip, brother Zhang. As a friend, I'll cover 120,000. Zhang Wanning, stunned, hugged Hu Yan tightly. Brother, I owe you forever. Hu Yan said, We're friends. I don't want to hear that again. Good. Good. Brother Zhang Wanning patted Hu Yan's shoulder hard. Let's sort this out. Returning to the appraisal area, Zhang Wanning said, Master Hu appraised these at 120,000. Prepare the contract. Everyone was stunned, looking at Hu Yan. Without explaining, Hu Yan called finance. Soon, the contract was signed, and 120,000 was transferred to Zhang Wanming's account. Thinking he had outsmarted Hu Yan, Zhang Wanming felt triumphant. He had bought the items for 50,000 and concocted a story with the seller to fool Hu Yan, planning to ruin him afterward. But Hu Yan remained cautious, aware that this deal might have been Zhang Wanming's trap. After Zhang Wanming left Tianhai Pawn Shop, he quickly hailed a taxi. The taxi sped through the city, stopping in front of an unfinished building. No one would have guessed that on the third floor of this abandoned structure lay a hidden den. Though the place was unrefined, with waterproof paint on the walls and high-end carpets covering the floor, it was furnished with leather sofas, rosewood tables, and shelves lined with countless artifacts. A bald man with a deep scar running from his forehead to his ear sat behind a desk. As Zhang Wanming entered, he respectfully greeted him, Brother Scar. Scar brother saw Zhang Wanming's expression and knew things had gone well. Is it done? Zhang Wanning nodded, giving a thumbs up. You truly live up to your reputation, Scar brother. You're the best. Scar brother waved dismissively. If it was that easy, then that Hu Yan guy isn't much of a threat. Maybe I overestimated him. Zhang Wanning immediately flattered, well, it's not just about him. No one in Jiangcheng can stand up to Scar brother. Hu Yan should feel honored. He never imagined I'd enlist someone who preys on appraisers like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Scar brother didn't seem too impressed by the flattery. Taking down an unknown young guy isn't something to be proud of. Did you bring the items? Zhang Wanning patted the briefcase beside him. You won't believe it but he wanted this case. I didn't give it to him, no matter what. Before Zhang Wanning could finish, Scar Brother's face darkened. He grabbed the briefcase, opened it violently, and then collapsed into his chair. What's wrong? Scar Brother Zhang Wanning asked, noticing the change in Scar Brother's expression. Suddenly Scar Brother leapt up like a wild beast, swung his arm, and slapped Zhang Wanning hard. Slap. Zhang Wanning saw stars, then fell to the ground before he could understand what had happened. Scar Brother picked up the briefcase and slammed it down on him repeatedly. Crash. Bang. Accompanied by Zhang Wanning's cries, Scar Brother, what's wrong? I did exactly as you said. Please stop. What did I do wrong? Today I'll make sure you understand why you're dying. Meanwhile, back at the pawn shop, the appraisers were left in a daze after Zhang Wanming's departure, all eyes on Hu Yan. Master Hu, please explain what you just did. None of us understand. Most nodded in agreement. Only Wang Quanxing patted Hu Yan's shoulder. Little Hu, I think you've made a mistake this time. But don't be upset, we all learn from our mistakes. Ho Yan smiled and shook his head, arranging the bowls and plates he liked. The rest of you can take these home as souvenirs if you want. Ha! Huh. Everyone was stunned. Wang Quanxing waved his hand urgently, Little Hu, you can't do that. Even if you made a mistake, the items have to be accounted for in the inventory. Otherwise, it's a serious violation that could get you fired and ruin your reputation in the industry. The other appraisers nodded in agreement. Little Hugh, everyone makes mistakes. Just be more careful in the future. Hao Yan smiled, ready to explain, but Wang Quansheng pulled him aside. Don't say anything. 
after ensuring no one followed he continued, I did something similar when I was younger. To help a friend, I bought some items. The company didn't pursue it, but I was stuck in the same position for eight years. If you speak up, even if the boss wants to forgive you, they might not be able to. I know you're a good person who values loyalty. Sigh. Wang Quanxing stomped his foot. Do you know what happened to the person I helped? Ha Yan shook his head. He cut ties with me. Never spoke to me again. That's called a grudge over a small favor learned from this, little Hugh. Ho Yan couldn't help but laugh. Is this how serious it is? I went from being called Master Hugh to Little Hugh just like that. Ho Yan didn't avoid the other's gazes and said, If I bought something that's worth ten times the purchase value, will the company reward me? Everyone heard him and nodded, though they were confused. Wang Quanxing stomped his foot in frustration, Little Hugh, stop dreaming. There is such a rule, but it doesn't apply here. Which of these porcelain pieces is that valuable? Ho Yan scratched his head, who said the porcelain was valuable. If it were, I wouldn't let you take it home. Do I look like a fool? A moment of silence followed as everyone recalled that Hu Yan had said the porcelain wasn't valuable when he arrived. So why did he buy it? Even if he overpaid for a friend, it wouldn't be by such a large margin. Typically, even for a friend, the price wouldn't exceed the market value. Clearly, the maximum selling price for the porcelain was 50,000. So why did Hu Yan buy it? Ho Yan lifted a blackened branch, actually, I bought this. Everyone was even more puzzled. A hundred thousand for a few branches? These branches were used to separate the bowls and plates to prevent them from colliding. Everyone saw them when Zhang Wanming brought the items, but no one paid attention. Now, with Hu Yan's reminder, they remembered. During the contract signing, Hu Yan had included every item, including the branches, in the inventory. Although Zhang Wanming sensed something, he refused to part with the briefcase, claiming it was a keepsake from his late father. So, when Hu Yan removed the bowls and plates, he carefully arranged the branches back in place. Ho Yan even said, These should be fine now. If not, I won't take them. Eventually, Zhang Wanming agreed. During the contract signing, Hu Yan took photos and had them printed, listing all items, including the branches. Realizing this, the appraiser's eyes lit up. Wang Quanxing was the first to rush over. Let me see this treasure. He examined the branches closely noticing only the lacquer and a grain of rice stuck to one. What is this? I don't get it, Ho Yan said. Initially, I didn't understand either. It was a feeling, like missing out on a treasure. I checked everything carefully except these branches. So I used a crab claw to scratch one, discovered something, and stuck the rice grain there. In reality, Hu Yan had immediately recognized the branch's extraordinary value. Before meeting Zhang Waming, Hu Yan had sensed something was off. Someone like Zhang Wanming wouldn't seek his help unless there was a catch. Jiang Qing had other appraisers, and despite Hu Yan's achievements, he wasn't as renowned as veteran appraisers. Therefore, when Hu Yan saw the branch's value, he thought of bait. In the antiques world, there are butchers who set traps for appraisers, using bait to lure them into buying seemingly worthless items mixed with treasures. Wang Quanxing, still skeptical, asked, This looks like an ordinary branch. What is it? Ho Yan carefully removed the rice grain and rubbed the scratch spot. A faint fragrance filled the air, refreshing everyone. Wang Quansheng's eyes widened, his hands trembling. This is agarwood. Ho Yan laid out all six branches, each as thick as a child's arm, weighing around ten pounds. This is thousand-year-old agarwood from Annam. Given its rarity and quality, it could easily fetch millions in today's market. Sweat poured down Wang Quansheng's face in shock. The other appraisers exchanged wry smiles, feeling a bit unworthy of their titles. Ignoring their thoughts, Hu Yan said, If no one wants the porcelain, I'll take it all. Don't be silly. These may not be worth much, but they're still worth something. Better to take them than leave them. The late Qun porcelain was quickly divided among them. After everyone left, Wang Quansheng sneaked away to call Qin Zixuan. Miss Qin, I have to report something about Hu Yan. He recounted the events in detail. Initially, Qin Zixuan wasn't too concerned. Ho Yan's success wasn't surprising given his abilities. What's the problem? Wang Quanxing, trembling, said, It's a trap within a trap. A killer targeting appraisers has emerged. Qin Zixuan's heart skipped a beat. When Wang Quanxing returned from making his phone call, a group of appraisers were still gathered around Hu Yan, seeking his insights. Even though the Anim Agarwood was valuable, it was hard to believe it could fetch over 10 million. Ho Yan knew this question would come. He was flipping through a book at the time, a biography of Pai, 
the last emperor of the Qing dynasty. He had asked his assistant, Su Mo, to bring it over. Hou Yan pointed to an old photograph in the book and asked, What do you see here? Everyone crowded around to look. It was a photo of the teenage Puyi, dressed in traditional attire. The appraisers were puzzled, their faces full of questions. Wang Quansheng, who had just returned, pointed to a pile of branches beside Puyi in the photo and exclaimed, Is it these? These branches look almost identical. Hou Yan nodded. When I saw the branches I had a feeling I'd seen them before, and I remembered this photograph. Of course, Hu Yan was bluffing. He had realized the true value of the branches by using his tracing origins ability, which revealed their history. In the photograph, Puyi was standing in the Imperial Incense Workshop, where royal incense was made. According to the Compendium of Materia Medica Agarwood has strong antibacterial properties and numerous health benefits. It was a top-grade medicinal material often used in the Imperial Court for incense. Although it was just an old photograph, it proved the origin of these Agarwood branches. In the antique world, provenance significantly increases an item's value. An artifact with a documented history is worth much more than one without it. For example, two identical items from the Kangji period might differ greatly in value if one was used by Kangji himself. With the evidence that these six agarwood branches were used in the imperial court, their value skyrocketed. Paws erupted, and many were impressed. It seems we need to be more meticulous in our studies. Indeed. Ho Yan is so young yet so accomplished. He noticed something as insignificant as branches in a photo. Truly admirable. It's not just about talent but hard work too. We must step up our game, or we'll be left behind by Master Hugh. Ho Yan felt a bit embarrassed by the praise. Without his unique ability, he wouldn't have discovered the treasure hidden under the paint. He modestly accepted the compliments, said his goodbyes, and returned to his office. No sooner had he sat down than his phone rang. It was Zhang Wanning. Ho Yan, can you return the items I pawned? His voice was muffled, as if he had something in his mouth. Ho Yan replied. I don't have the authority to do that. By the way, can you speak clearly? It's hard to understand you. There was a moment of silence before Zhang Wanning answered. My face is swollen. My tongue has blisters. It's hard to speak. Ho Yan, please have mercy. If I don't get those items back, people will die. Ho Yan chuckled. Vice President Zhang, I took a risk to help you. Saying this now is really disappointing. After another pause, Zhang Wanning said, I'll pay you double. Ha Yan retorted, Are you insane? Those items have already been given away. What? The branches, did you give those away too? Branches? Oh right, those branches and the packing material. I gave them to a scrap collector for firewood. Zhang Wanning's phone slipped from his grasp. When he picked it up, Hu Yan had already hung up. Brother Scar, Hu Yan said he gave the branches to a scrap collector for firewood. A slipper flew at Zhang Wanming's face. Idiot. You believe that? I have your property deed. You have one month to get those branches back, or I take your house. Zhang Wanming's face turned ashen. He smacked his lips but couldn't say a word. Days ago, he had been drinking with a group of traders, venting about how Hu Yan had tricked him. One of them mentioned that there were people who specialized in deceiving appraisers. That's when Zhang Wanning met Scar Brother. Initially, Scar Brother didn't take it seriously. But when he learned Zhang Wanming was a vice president of the Qian Corporation, he saw an opportunity. Scar Brother proposed a plan. He didn't know the branch's true value but had acquired them along with other valuable Qing Dynasty items for 1.5 million yuan. Over the years he used these branches as bait to trap appraisers. Each time, the appraisers thought they were getting a bargain. Scar Brother even managed to sell the branches to one appraiser for 800,000 yuan. This scheme had never failed him until now. Ho Yan, after hanging up, immediately informed Wang Quansheng about Zhang Waming's call, instructing everyone to keep quiet and claim the branches had been given away. Shortly after, Zhang Waning called again. Ho Yan, you know what's going on. Give me those branches, or you'll regret it. Ho Yan, growing impatient, retorted, Thank you, Vice President Zhang, but I'm fine as I am. You should worry about yourself. Before Zhang Waning could respond, Hu Yan hung up and blocked his number. He then called Qian Xiao Yir. Hey Qian Xiao Yir, got a minute. Her sweet voice replied, What's up, Hu Yan? Ha Yan explained Zhang Wanming's situation, leaving out no details. Qian Xiao Yir was furious. I knew he was trouble. I'm calling my dad right now. After hanging up, Hu Yan smiled, thinking, Try to trick me, will you? This is what you get, Vice President Zhang. When Hu Yan left work, he found Zhang Wanming squatting by his car, looking miserable. His once sharp suit was dirty and torn, 
and his face was swollen and bruised. Seeing Hu Yan, Zhang Wanming stood up, Hu Yan you're ruthless, blocking me and getting security to keep me out. Are you not afraid of bad karma? Hu Yan wanted to punch him but restrained himself, aware of the security cameras. He calmly replied, Vice President Zhang, respect others to be respected in return. Zhang Wanning, confused, thought, you've done this to me, and you want respect. Ho Yan continued, sorry, but with your mouth full, I can't understand you. Feeling choked, Zhang Wanning couldn't find words to respond. Ho Yan started his car, and as he began to drive off, Zhang Wanning threw himself onto the hood. Ho Yan, if you don't give me an explanation, this isn't over. Ho Yan rolled down the window. Do you think I should let you scam me, lose my job, and ruin my reputation? Zhang Wanming, you're delusional. Hu Yan added, I've already called the police. If you don't move you'll end up in jail. Sure enough, the sound of police sirens filled the air, and Zhang Wanming's face turned deathly pale. Hearing the piercing sound of the siren, Zhang Wanming furiously punched the hood of Hu Yan's G-Wagon. Hu Yan! You've got guts! Just wait, if I can't deal with you, Scar Brother definitely will. With that, Zhang Wanning turned and ran. By the time he disappeared, the police had arrived. After Hu Yan explained the situation and provided the footage from his dash cam to prove he wasn't making a false report, the officers asked why the conflict occurred. Hu Yan explained that Zhang Wanming had sold items to the pawn shop and then taken kickbacks. Such incidents were not unheard of to the police, so they took his statement and prepared to leave. Suddenly, one of the officers said, The suspect's name is Zhang Wanming? Isn't he from Qian Corporation? Ho Yan thought, I was waiting for you to say that. If you hadn't remembered, I would have reminded you. Feigning annoyance, Hu Yan replied, Yeah, it's him. We used to have meals together. Who knew he'd turn out to be such a scumbag? The police nodded, advising Hu Yan to stay safe before leaving. In the following days, life returned to normal. At the end of the month, Hu Yan received his paycheck over 300,000 yuan including base salary and performance bonuses. Sales commissions were calculated annually, otherwise, he would have earned even more. During a chat with Qian Xiao Er, Hu Yan learned that Zhang Wanming had fled. However, given the damage he caused to Qian Corporation, it was unlikely he could evade capture. With Zhang Wanming no longer in Jiangqing, Hu Yan felt somewhat relieved. Hu Yan wasn't worried for himself but feared Zhang Wanming might target Hu Jiaxin. He frequently visited her during this period, Initially, Hu Jiaxin thought her brother had finally developed feelings for Qian Xiao Er. However, she eventually realized he was there to protect her. The concern and affection in his demeanor deeply moved her. Unbeknownst to Hu Ji Shishin, Hu Yan had secretly instructed Yao Ru, who spent time with her daily, to inform him immediately if anything suspicious happened. Knowing Yao Ru's skills, Hu Yan was confident she could handle any threat. To show his gratitude and because it was useful, Hu Yan asked Yao Ru's family to send more medicinal pills and natural face masks. This time, Hu Yan demanded 5,000 yuan per liter for the face masks, saying otherwise, he wouldn't trouble them. Yao Ru had no choice but to agree, deeply moved by Hu Yan's kindness. During this period, Yao Ru had become like a sister to Hu Ji Shaxin and Qian Xiao Er. Wearing the clothes Qian Xiao Eger gave her, she was so beautiful that even Hu Yan couldn't help but look away. Yao Ru, a girl blessed with both intelligence and a kind heart, always blushed when she saw Hu Yan. Grateful and considerate, she often helped clean Hu Yan's home. Ho Yan felt inadequate compared to her. When he learned that Yao Ru was admitted to Jiangcheng University, he thought it would be good for her to watch over Hu Jiaxin. Knowing that he would inevitably make enemies in his line of work, he just didn't expect it to happen so soon. In early September, Jiangcheng University started its new semester. The day before, Hu Yan picked up his parents from the train station, mildly scolding them for worrying unnecessarily since he was around. When he started college, he had to go alone because his parents thought it was close enough. Hu Feng Chun explained that Hu Jiaxin was a girl, and they wanted to ensure her safety. Unlike Hu Yan who they believed could benefit from more experiences, they wanted to protect their daughter. Hu Yan, now more mature, understood their concerns. Facing many challenges had helped him grow. After settling Hu Jiaxin and Yao Ru into their dormitory, they all had a meal together. Partway through, a stranger tapped Hu Yan on the shoulder. Hu Yan didn't recognize him and felt uneasy. Given recent events he was on high alert. Remembering Zhang Wanning mentioning someone named Scar Brother before fleeing, he suspected trouble. Sure enough, before Hu Yan could speak, 
the stranger showed him a series of photos on his phone images of Hu Yan with his sister, Qian Xiao R, Yao Ru, his parents, and even Zhao Peng. It was clear they knew about his family and friends, indicating they had ulterior motives. The stranger, sporting a shaved head except for a patch on top, had a fierce look with tattoos on his arms. Our brother Scar wants a word with you. Three more men emerged from another alley, led by a bald man with a scar running from his forehead to his ear. Greeny, you brought him. You're Scar brother. Scar brother nodded as he approached Hu Yan. Yes, I'm Chen Tianlin. Got this scar in a fight when I was a kid. People call me Scar brother now. Scar brother lit a cigarette, scrutinizing Hu Yan. Didn't expect someone so young to outsmart me. Impressive. Get to the point. I have family waiting Hu Yan replied calmly. Scar brother chuckled. I like your guts. Here's the deal either return my items or work for me. If you join me, those items are yours. What do you say? His men brandished retractable batons, their metal glinting ominously. Ho Yan laughed. Sorry, Scar brother. I like my current job. The items are with my company I don't have the authority to return them. Talk to the big boss if you want them back. Hu Yan turned to leave. Get him Scar brother shouted, throwing his cigarette down. Ho Yan noticed two more men blocking the alley. He remained calm saying, I've recorded everything. If you don't let me go, you know the consequences. Scar brother smirked. You think you can walk away? As his men advanced, Hu Yan pulled out a set of cutlery he had taken from the restaurant, throwing it at them. The men instinctively dodged. Taking advantage of the distraction, Hu Yan sprinted down another alley, quickly losing his pursuers in the maze-like old neighborhood. He reached a busy street and called the police, handing over the recording when they arrived. Returning to the restaurant, Hu Yan walked back slowly to avoid arousing suspicion. Meanwhile, Scar Brother was livid. You let him get away. Useless. As they caught their breath, Scar Brother ordered, Pack up. We need to lay low. One of his men argued, Boss, that guy's trained. We couldn't catch him. Scar Brother snapped, No excuses. Move it. Just then, a dozen young men in tracksuits surrounded them. A tall man cracked his knuckles. Running? I give you ten seconds. Sweat poured from Scar Brother. Who are you? The young man put his foot on Scar Brother's chest. We're the Kian family's bodyguards. Scar Brother was stunned. Can we talk this out? Money's no issue. The young man twisted his neck. Our boss said potential threats must be eliminated. You're lucky you didn't hurt Mr. Hugh. Otherwise, you'd be dead. Now, turn yourselves in. Scar Brother immediately called the police to surrender. As Hugh Yan returned to the restaurant, his phone rang again. It was Qin Zixuan. Hugh Yan, are you okay? Hao Yan felt a bit conflicted but calmed himself before replying. Thank you for your concern, Qin. I'm fine. I'm with my parents, having dinner. Qin Zixuan responded. That's good. You take care of them and don't worry about anything else. I'll handle it with that, she hung up. Hao Yan was puzzled. Handle what? As he approached the table, his family noticed him. Why did it take you so long? Your friend is really inconsiderate, dragging you out during a family meal. You should avoid such friends in the future Yang Yajun's teacher instincts kicked in. Ho Yan smiled apologetically, got it mom. I'll block him. Yang Yajun glared at him, you've grown up. You should think twice about your actions and the people you associate with. Distance yourself from those you don't like. Don't make enemies. Despite his mother's nagging, Hu Yan felt comforted. He nodded sincerely, understood mom. I'll be careful. Yang Yajun, pleased with his response, piled more of his favorite dishes on his plate. Yao Ru kept her head down, eating only the food in front of her. Hu Jiaxin, being naturally kind, kept adding food to Yao Ru's plate. Knowing Yao Ru's story, Hu Jiaxin felt an urge to share all her good things with her. Unaware of her own feelings, Hu Jiaxin thought Yao Ru would make the perfect sister-in-law. Seeing Hu Yan was almost done eating, Yang Yajun asked, Yan Yan, where did you get those pills and face masks? Your father and I feel much better, and my skin looks five years younger. Hu Yan had noticed but hadn't boasted about it, especially with Yao Ru present. He didn't want her to know he gave her products to his parents and paid for them. He kept winking at Yang Yajun, but she remained oblivious. Yao Ru, noticing Hu Yan's discomfort, looked at Yang Yajun and said, Auntie, if you mean the face masks that make your face dark, and the pills wrapped in wax paper, those are from my family. I'll have them send more. Yang Yajun, already aware of Yao Ru's story from Hu Jiaxin, insisted on inviting her to dinner, knowing Yao Ru would be too shy to come otherwise. Xiao Ru, 
such precious things can't be free. If you care about us, sell them to us, she said. Hu Fengchun agreed, yes, those pills cured my back pain after so many failed treatments, we can't take them for free. Yao Ru blushed, but her voice was firm, brother Hu, sister Jiaxin, and sister Xiao Er have helped me so much and given me beautiful clothes. How could I charge you? Yang Yejun gave Hu Yan a look that said, I messed up your turn. Ho Yan sighed, Xiao Ru. I sell those pills for a high price. How about this the ones for my parents are free, but I'll pay double for the ones I sell. Yao Ru's face turned even redder, no I can't agree to that. Seeing her discomfort, Hu Yan relented alright I was just joking. Do whatever you think is best, okay he decided to help her in the future, treating her like a little sister. Yao Ru finally breathed a sigh of relief and nodded. Yang Yajun and Hu Fengchun looked at Yao Ru with affection. Back at Hu Yan's apartment that evening, he left some packed food for Zhao Peng, who hadn't returned yet. Since agreeing to start a business, Zhao Peng had been busy comparing rents and budgeting investments, working tirelessly. That night, after his father who had drunk a bit, went to bed early, Hu Jiaxin took Yao Ru back to Qian Xiao Er's place. She had grown accustomed to living there but mainly wanted to keep Yao Ru company. Yang Yajun and Hu Fengchun understood and supported this, not insisting their daughter stay with them. Seeing they were alone, Yang Yajun pulled Hu Yan to the sofa, touching his head. Son. Ho Yan's heart sank. Whenever she used that tone it usually meant trouble, a lingering fear from his school days. Son, what's on your mind? Tell me. Hu Yan was confused, what do you mean? Yang Yajun smacked his head, your marriage. Your dad and I are close to retiring and want grandchildren. Rubbing his head, Hu Yan replied, I'll leave it to fate. Yang Yajun, clearly unsatisfied, said, you used to be close with Zixuan and Xiao R, and we like them both. Now, there's also Yao Ru. Are you trying to upset me? Mom, we're just friends. Zixuan is my boss, don't bring her into this. Xiao Er is a good friend, and Yao Ru has been through enough. Let's not make things harder for her he said, a hint of frustration in his voice. Understanding her son Yang Yejun asked, Did you have a fight with Zixuan? Ho Yan sighed, Mom, please stop calling her Zixuan. It's Qin. Yang Yejun huffed, she stayed at our home for half a month, and I called her Zixuan every day. She never complained. Why are you upset? She stayed at our home for half a month. Hu Yan was shocked. Covering her mouth, Yang Yajun realized she had let it slip. Just don't tell her I told you. Blame it on your dad if she asks. Impressed by his mom's quick thinking, Hu Yan agreed. All right, but tell me why she stayed. Yang Yajun recounted the story. The night after Hu Yan returned to Jiangcheng, Qin Zixuan showed up at their door with luggage. Yang Yajun and Hu Fangchun were stunned into silence. Qin Zixuan smiled auntie, uncle, didn't you say to treat your home as mine? If I'm not welcome, I'll leave. Before they could respond, Yang Yajun quickly invited her in, of course come in. Ho Feng Chun added, we're just surprised. It's an honor to have you here. Qin Zixuan entered, saying, uncle, auntie, please call me Zixuan. If you don't treat me as an outsider, call me by my name. Feeling proud, Hu Feng Chun agreed, all right Zixuan. Yang Yajun settled Qin Zixuan in, and she expressed her intention to stay, helping out as a way to repay Hu Yan's dedication to the company. She began staying with them, keeping the house spotless and even cooking dinner, though her initial attempts were modest. Quickly improving, her cooking surpassed even Yang Yajun's, but she continued treating them with utmost respect. Hu Feng Qun, initially eager to brag at work, chose to stay silent, simply smiling more. Upon hearing this, Yang Yajun sighed, she treated us like her own parents. What's her motive? Hu Yan was equally puzzled. Why would she do this? No matter how much I earn for the company, it's insignificant compared to their vast business. What's the point? Reflecting on Qin Zixuan's recent call and her insistence not to worry, he wondered, could it be? Lying in bed, Hu Yan found it hard to sleep, his mind filled with questions. Hu Yan's parents stayed in Jiangqing for two days. During their visit, Hu Yan took them to several tourist spots and bought them a few sets of autumn clothes. Originally, Hu Yan wanted to drive them back, but Yang Yajun refused, citing the cost of gas compared to train tickets. In truth, she was more concerned about Hu Yan balancing work and spending time with them. Understanding her concern, Hu Yan bought them train tickets and saw them off. As they were about to leave, Yang Yajun kept reminding Hu Yan, I won't interfere with your choices. All the girls are nice. But remember, don't hurt their feelings. Ho Yan smiled wryly. 
he still couldn't figure out his position in Qin Zixuan's life. Ho Feng Chun, puzzled, asked Yang Yajun. A few? Aren't there just two? Yang Yajun scoffed, you must be getting old and blind. Didn't you notice how Yao Ru looks at Hu Yan? She doesn't blush when looking at others. Ho Feng Chun thought for a moment, and then laughed. That's my boy, takes after his old man. Stop bragging. If I hadn't been blind back then, you'd still be a bachelor. Hu Yan watched his parents bicker from the train window, shaking his head with a smile. They truly were a comedic pair, losing all sense of decorum when arguing. As the train pulled away, Hu Yan waved, watching the two people who loved him most in the world fade into the distance. Life soon returned to normal. Hu Jiaxin started school, and Hu Yan no longer frequented Qian Xiao Yi's place. Days settled into a routine of devising marketing strategies, solving problems for the appraisers, and working on the business plan with Zhao Peng in the evenings. Time flew by, and two weeks passed quickly. One day Qian Xiao R called, complaining that Hu Yan hadn't visited her in a long time. Ho Yan explained he was busy, but Qian Xiao Ye insisted they meet on Sunday since Hu Yan had to work on Saturday. On Sunday Hu Yan dressed in a casual sports outfit, complete with running shoes, and drove to Qian Xiao Yi's store. Upon entering, he saw both Hu Jiaxin and Yao Ru there. You're all here, he exclaimed. Yao Ru blushed and nodded. Hu Jiaxin ran over and hugged his arm. We had nothing to do, so we came to help Xiao Er. She says we're her lucky charms, and business is always good when we're around. Ho Yan looked around the store, which was indeed bustling with customers, many of them college students from the nearby university. After chatting with Hu Jiaxin for a while, Qian Xiao Er appeared. Ho Yan, it's been ages. I missed you, she said, giving him a hug which drew envious glances from others. She was followed by a young man, whom she introduced as Wan Linchuan, the executive director of Jiang Qing. He's the new advisor my dad assigned to me. Ha Yan nodded politely, nice to meet you director Wan. Wan Linchuan, who appeared to be in his late twenties, greeted him warmly, nice to meet you, manager Hu. I've heard a lot about you. Qian Xiao R, bubbling with excitement, led Hu Yan to a tea table and poured him some fragrant tea. You won't believe it. Hu Yan, she said. Since implementing your strategies and leveraging my family's resources, do you know how much I've earned this month? Ha Yan guessed. A hundred thousand. She beamed. One hundred and fifty thousand. Ha Yan nodded, impressed. That's remarkable, especially in these times. Your small store is almost as profitable as a mid-sized jewelry store. Wan Linchuan chimed in, indeed. I've been reprimanded by the higher-ups and told to learn from Miss Xiao R. She often credits you saying her store would have failed without your help. Ho Yan noticed a hint of skepticism in Wan Linchuan's tone but didn't press the issue. Instead he modestly replied, it's all due to Xiao Er's hard work. I just offered some advice. Qian Xiao Er shook her head, don't be modest, Hu Yan. Here she said, handing him a check, this is 20,000. It's not much, but I promised you a commission. Wan Linchuan's eyes flashed with envy. Miss Xiao Er, you're too generous. Friends helping friends shouldn't be about money. Ho Yan agreed, exactly. If I took money for giving advice, I'd have to pay for all the clothes and jewelry you gave Hu Jiaxin and Yao Ru. You treat them like sisters. Qian Xiao R argued. That's different. Jiaxin and Yao Ru are like my sisters. Giving them things makes me happy. But you Hu Yan, you didn't just offer advice. You provided valuable resources. She pointed to the high-end merchandise section of the store where fine art, calligraphy, and crafts were displayed. Many of these items were sourced through Hu Yan's connections, particularly from the master restorer at Tianhai Pawn Shop, a recognized expert in Jiang Qingxing's antique circles. Hao Yan insisted, it's the same. I consider Ji Shi Xin and Yao Ru as family, and I'm just helping a friend. Unable to convince him, Qian Xiao Er sighed and changed the subject. Hao Yan wandered over to the high-end merchandise section, admiring the calligraphy and paintings. As he examined the pieces, he used his special ability to trace their origins, recognizing the works of various renowned artists. An elderly man nearby was also scrutinizing the art, offering insightful commentary that impressed everyone. Immersed in the beauty of the calligraphy, Ho Yan felt his own skills improving, as if he were learning from the masters. As he reached the end of the display, he murmured, I didn't know she was so skilled in calligraphy. The elderly man perked up, young man, can you identify the artist of these pieces? Hu Yan humbly replied, I think I can. A young man nearby scoffed, Oh really? Even our president couldn't identify them. You think you can? Seeing the young man mocking Hu Yan, the
The elderly man scolded him, Chirui, don't be rude. How many times have I told you that our country is full of talented people? We live in prosperous times where young talents emerge. How do you know this young man doesn't have the skill? The young man, named Chi Rui, slightly bowed and said, Yes, President, I understand although he said this, the disbelief in his eyes was evident to everyone. Chi Rui was actually a distant relative of the elderly man, Chi Ming Shan, the vice president of the Calligraphy Association. After graduating from college, Chi Rui couldn't find a job that matched his major. So, through family connections he approached Chi Ming Shan, who had retired but still held considerable influence from his time as the head of the Cultural Bureau. Chi Mingshan suggested that Chi Rui join the Calligraphy Association to broaden his connections and gain some experience. Relying on Chi Mingshan's reputation and his own calligraphy skills, Chi Rui quickly gained a small amount of fame within the association. He didn't believe his success was due to Chi Mingshan's influence and took the flattery he received seriously. Especially after seeing three stunning beauties in the store, Chi Rui lost interest in calligraphy. Seeing Hu Yan so close to these beauties, Chi Rui, who considered himself well-educated and handsome, couldn't help but feel jealous. Ho Yan, recognizing Chi Rui's petty attitude, decided not to engage. Nowadays there were too many people like Chi Rui who relied on their connections, yet didn't realize that in crucial moments, those connections often wouldn't help. It's similar to the concept of marriage being a balanced relationship people won't help you out of pure goodwill unless you have something valuable to offer in return. Chi Rui, still full of himself, taunted. This friend, since we are all in the calligraphy world, I'd like to hear your insights on these works that even the president couldn't identify. Ho Yan shook his head, unwilling to engage with such a person. However, Chi Ming Shan, being perceptive, noticed that Hu Yan's previous behavior wasn't feigned. Young friend, since you seem knowledgeable, why not share your thoughts? Seeing Hu Yan ignore him, Chi Rui sarcastically added, Let's see you identify these well known calligraphers' works first. I bet you can't even do that. Before Hu Yan could respond, Hian Xiao Er, irritated by Chi Rui's attitude, said, If Hu Yan didn't recognize them, these works wouldn't be in my store. Chi Rui, feeling more irritated, retorted, Let me tell you, I'm part of the Calligraphy Association. These works are by my seniors. Even I don't recognize all of them. How could an outsider like him know? Who is he trying to fool? Chi Rui's goal was to elevate his status by emphasizing his association with the Calligraphy Association, which he believed held great prestige. His refined attire contrasted sharply with Hu Yan's casual sportswear, further fueling his arrogance. Despite being the same age, Hu Yan dismissed Chi Rui as immature, still clinging to his connections. But seeing Qian Xiao are in an awkward position, Hu Yan decided to intervene. Pointing to one of the calligraphies, Hu Yan said, This piece, with its weighty strokes and mature technique, must be the work of Mr. Xu Zimo. Chi Rui fell silent, and Qi Ming Shan praised, Excellent. Xu Zemo indeed has such a style. Though his blunt personality often causes him trouble, those who know him can't help but admire him. His calligraphy is unique. With a glance at Qi Rui, Qi Ming Shan seemed to be saying, See, I told you young people should avoid arrogance. Qi Rui, seeing Hu Yan correctly identify ex Xu Zemo's work, was taken aback but quickly returned to his skeptical stance, thinking, Yi Xu Zemo's style is so distinct anyone could recognize it. Ignoring Qi Rui, Hu Yan continued, Old master, you're too kind. Mr. Su's style is just very recognizable. Qi Mingshan nodded approvingly, it's rare to see a young man not flaunt his talents. Very commendable. He gestured for Hu Yan to continue. Hu Yan then pointed to another piece, this one, with its bold and unrestrained strokes, must be the work of Mr. Wan Shigong. I didn't expect him to honor us with his presence. Qi Mingshan once again praised, what keen insight. Ignoring Chi Rui's darkening expression, Ho Yan accurately identified all the works on the wall, leaving only the two pieces even Chi Ming Shan couldn't name. Chi Rui, now visibly displeased, couldn't believe that someone younger than him could possess such keen insight. He rationalized that Hu Yan must have just repeated what Chi Ming Shan had said earlier. Humph Chi Rui scoffed. I thought there was something special, but it turns out you're just good at repeating what you heard from the president. His words swayed the onlookers, as not everyone was truly knowledgeable about calligraphy. Having listened to Qi Mingshan's assessments, they began to doubt Hu Yan's abilities. Even Wan Linchuan, who had initially seemed supportive of Hu Yan, now remarked to Qian Xiao Er, Hu Yan is quite impressive, being able to remember the president's words while talking to us. That's quite a feat. Qian Xiao Er, who had initially thought Wan Linchuan was better than Zhang Wanming, 
was now frustrated. She hadn't expected Wan Linchuan to subtly undermine Hu Yan. Qian Xiao Er, unable to tolerate the situation, retorted, Hu Yan's judgment has never been wrong since I've known him. Who are you to judge? Wan Linchuan, taken aback, fell silent. Qian Xiao Er's words were also directed at Qi Rui, making him even more irritated. Determined to prove Hu Yan wrong, Qi Rui challenged, If you're truly skilled, identify these two pieces that even my uncle couldn't. Listening and repeating is easy. Fed up, Hu Yan decided to end the argument. All right, let's make it interesting. If I can correctly identify the authors of these two pieces, you buy all the calligraphies on this wall. Qi Rui, confident that it was impossible, agreed, thinking, there's no way he can do it. And if you lose, Qi Rui asked. Ho Yan smiled, if I lose, I'll buy all the calligraphies as a gesture of support for Xiao R's store. Qi Rui, skeptical of Hu Yan's financial ability, sneered, can you even afford it? Just as Hu Yan was about to respond, a cold yet melodious voice interjected, if Hu Yan loses, I'll buy not just the calligraphies but everything in this store. The voice was so refreshing and calming that it seemed to instantly cool the autumn heat, bringing a sense of tranquility. Chi Rui, about to question the speaker, froze when he saw who it was. Before him stood Qian Zixuan, exuding an air of regal beauty that instantly silenced him. Qian Xiao Er rushed over. I've missed you so much. Why are you back so late? Qian Zixuan, unfazed, openly admitted, I had to resolve issues with the acquisition of Yang Cheng chemicals due to deviations from Hu Yan's plan, causing significant losses. I couldn't return until it was settled. All the while, she kept her eyes on Hu Yan. Ho Yan, recalling his parents' words about King Zixuan staying at their house, felt a mix of emotions and couldn't find the right words. Qin Zixuan, maintaining her gaze on Hu Yan, said, I don't shirk responsibility. I owe you a formal apology she then slightly bowed, I'm sorry. Recalling his mother's words about Qin Zixuan's behavior at their house, as well as the encounters with Sun Jihaki and Lu Lili, and the unconditional trust she had shown him just now and throughout their past interactions, Hu Yan felt the knot in his heart begin to unravel. He was about to say, Old Qin, you're too kind when Qin Zixuan's assistant, Qin Chu, stepped forward and gave Hu Yan a deep 90-degree bow. Mr. Hu, it's all my fault, and it has nothing to do with President Qin. I don't deserve to be her assistant, and I've already resigned. I will work in my field of expertise to make up for the losses for Tianhai. Before I leave, I hope to get your forgiveness. With that, he bowed deeply again. The atmosphere, which had been quite good, was now colored by Qin Chu's actions, leaving Hu Yan with an indescribable feeling. Qin Zixuan had originally not wanted Qin Chu to do this, but he had insisted on seeing Hu Yan before he left. Despite Qin Zixuan repeatedly telling him there was no need to apologize to Hu Yan, Qin Chu felt guilty seeing Qin Zixuan take all the responsibility, leading him to apologize sincerely and publicly. This made Qin Zixuan feel frustrated, knowing Hu Yan's pride. Qin Chu's actions could be seen as someone else taking the blame, ruining her gesture of taking full responsibility. As expected, Hu Yan said with a smile, You don't owe me anything then looked at Qin Zixuan and added, President Qin, you're too kind. Tianhai belongs to your family, and I'm just an employee. I'm still relying on you for a job. Everyone could see the change in Hu Yan's demeanor. The sudden shift made Qin Chu feel deeply aggrieved. He didn't mind suffering himself, but he couldn't bear to see Qin Zixuan suffer. This was why he had acted as he did. Seeing Hu Yan's sarcastic tone made Qin Chu lose his temper. Hu Yan, do you know how much President Qin values you? Do you know how guilty she feels about this? You're just being arrogant. Before Hu Yan could respond, Qin Zixuan couldn't hold back any longer. Qin Chu, stop. You're only making things worse. Turning to Hu Yan, she said, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have let him come. Ho Yan was at a loss for words when Chi Rui, seizing the moment, chimed in. So, Hu Yan, are we continuing? Everyone's waiting. Ho Yan, grateful for the distraction, replied, Sure, we can continue. You doubt my ability to buy these paintings, and I get that. But let me tell you, even without anyone's help, I can afford them. And if I really didn't have the money, the owner here is my friend. I could even buy them on installment. Right? Xiao Er? Qian Xiao Ye said, take them all if you like. After all you brought them here, and you refused the 20,000 I offered you. Chi Rui's mouth twitched. Refused 20,000? Are you kidding me? Ho Yan looked at Chi Rui and asked, if you lose, can you afford to buy these paintings? I did some quick math. 
15 paintings, including one by Shen Wanching, total over 2 million. Chi Rui's face paled. While he had some family wealth, 2 million would be a serious blow. He looked imploringly at his uncle, Chi Mingshan, who shook his head and said, Given the circumstances, I'll share the burden with you. But remember, if you lose, we're done. Chi Rui knew what his uncle meant. Once the favors were used up, there would be no more. He calmed himself, confident that Hu Yan wouldn't be able to identify the two paintings his uncle couldn't. I have a suggestion. Since my uncle has spoken, you should be reassured, Chi Rui said. Hu Yan nodded. Go ahead. Chi Rui proposed, if we have a bet, the prize should go to the winner, right? Hu Yan clapped his hands. Fair enough. The loser buys all the paintings and gifts them to the winner. Agreed. Agreed, Chi Rui said, pointing to the crowd. You all are witnesses. Good Hu Yan pointed to the two paintings. These two pieces have a touch of Master Shen's style but lack his mature strength. They seem poised and heavy but hide a delicate softness. If I'm not mistaken, these were done by a woman, likely a disciple of Master Shen. That's nonsense, Chi Rui exclaimed. I've studied calligraphy all my life. These characters are powerful and clearly written by a man. Claiming they have Master Shen's style is absurd. Master Shen is known for his slender gold script, praised for its elegance and charm. These characters resemble stell inscriptions. Simple and clear. It's obvious you're going to lose. Stell inscriptions are powerful, clearly written by a man, yet you claim a woman wrote them. Ridiculous. Chi Rui's professional critique even made Chi Ming Shan doubt Hu Yan's reasoning. Ho Yan responded, the artist is practicing stell inscriptions to enhance their strength, which will help them learn Master Shen's style later. Absurd Chi Rui scoffed. You clearly don't understand calligraphy. Even with stell inscriptions, the difference between men and women is obvious. This piece is too strong to be written by a woman. You're definitely going to lose. Have you heard of the Jinhui Heap? Hu Yan asked. Masters of this style are adept in both painting and calligraphy, excelling in various scripts. Do you think they practice so many scripts just for fun? Chi Rui shook his head. Impossible. There's no one who excels in multiple scripts anymore. If you lose, accept it. These paintings are mine now. Ha Yan smiled. It seems I need to bring out the author to convince you. Chi Rui sneered. Don't bluff. You know the author. My uncle couldn't even identify them. Stop pretending. Ignoring him, Hu Yan called out to Shen Moling in the crowd. Please welcome our calligrapher MS, Shen Moling. Shen Moling was stunned. She had arrived earlier but stayed quiet, watching Hu Yan's performance. She was amazed by his ability to identify the authors of all the works. Shen Moling had dedicated her life to calligraphy. Her goal was to create perfect pieces and surprise everyone. But no one had recognized her work until now. Hu Yan had pointed out her mistakes, giving her a moment of clarity. Seeing her dazed expression, Hu Yan apologized, I'm sorry if my words were harsh. Shen Moling shook her head. No, thank you. If not for your words I might have continued down the wrong path. Chi Rui was stunned. The girls Hu Yan knew were all exceptional. But now, his focus was on winning the two million worth of paintings. He accused, so you hired someone to pretend. Chi Ming Shan, recognizing Shen Moling, said Moling, what brings you here? Chi Rui felt the world closing in on him, realizing the game was up. Shen Moling, dressed in loose casual clothes and carrying a large bag with several scrolls inside nodded politely to Chi Ming Shan, who had greeted her. Uncle Chi, I'm here to deliver some calligraphy. Chi Ming Shan nodded in understanding. No wonder I wondered who could gather so many works. So it was you. Shen Moling smiled lightly, but did not elaborate. Actually Shen Wanching had mentioned this to Chi Ming Shan before, but not in detail. Chi Ming Shan had initially declined the offer. Unlike other calligraphers, he held a high position and had a son in business, so money was not an issue. Hence, Shen Wanching did not insist. Now, Chi Rui was feeling utterly deflated. Even so, he decided to make a last-ditch effort. He walked over to Chi Ming Shan and whispered, Uncle, have you ever seen this lady's calligraphy? This was a redundant question. If he had seen it, would he not have recognized it? Chi Ming Shan shook his head. I know her status, but I have never seen her work or heard that she is proficient in calligraphy. Chi Rui thought, even my uncle hasn't seen it so this person might not have real talent. The author of these works must be a famous calligrapher in Jiang Cheng. No matter how high her status, it doesn't prove the works are hers. Who knows? She might have some undisclosed relationship with Hu Yan and is helping him win this $2 million bet. To Chi Rui Hu Yan surrounded by a group of stunning beauties must be someone with extraordinary talent, 
possibly even capable of charming Shen Moling into obedience. Looking again at the rare beauties around him, Qi Rui felt deeply envious. Ho Yan, just because you say it's her work, does that make it true? Ho Yan was taken aback. After all this, you still don't believe it. Even if Miss Shen herself admits it, you still won't believe it, Hu Yan questioned. Qi Rui sneered. Anything can be a lie in this world. Who knows what kind of relationship you have with Miss Shen? She might be helping you win this $2 million bet. He emphasized relationship with a particularly sarcastic tone, making his meaning clear to everyone. Yang Yu. The girls found Chi Rui's behavior infuriating and despicable. But being young women, they could only swallow their frustration, knowing that defending themselves would only make the insinuations worse. Ho Yan, equally angry, was about to retort when Shen Moling spoke up. Uncle Chi, is this person really from the Calligraphy Association? Sigh. It seems even people of poor character can be considered cultured in the calligraphy world now. Her disappointment was evident, making Qi Ming Shan feel a burning shame. He knew he had reached his position not through outstanding work, but through his former authority, which had helped the calligraphy association in many ways. Moling, rest assured, from today, he has no association with the calligraphy association. Uncle, Ai Qi Rui began. Qi Ming Shan raised a hand to silence him. You needn't say more. I once thought you had some talent, despite your arrogance. I advised you many times. You listened politely but never changed. Remember, in life, character is paramount. Turning to Hu Yan, Qi Mingxian said, Young man, we lost. I'll buy these calligraphies. A treasure deserves a worthy owner, and these works suit you. Qi Rui was utterly dejected. He couldn't believe he had lost. The calligraphy showed a strong, seasoned hand, not the work of a young woman, he insisted. Uncle, Punish me however you see fit, but you said yourself that the writing reflects the person. This work is clearly from someone over 40, not a young woman. You said so yourself. Qi Ming Shan was stumped. Well, perhaps my judgment was off. The world is full of talent, and there may indeed be such prodigies. His uncertainty was clear to all. The only one who could prove the work's authenticity was Shen Moling herself. Even Hu Yan couldn't force her. Cornered, Shen Moling gritted her teeth and took off her backpack. Since you don't believe I have no choice but to prove myself. She set up her brush ink and paper, intending to write. As she laid out the materials, Hu Yan stepped forward to help grind the ink. After calming herself, Shen Moling closed her eyes, and when she reopened them, her demeanor had transformed. The gentle scholarly aura was replaced by the focused intensity of a martial artist. She began to write vigorously, her brushstrokes powerful and precise. Striving defeats sloth, righteousness overcomes desire. Excellent Qi Ming Shan applauded. Qi Ru Wai was deflated, struggling to believe that such powerful calligraphy could come from Shen Moling. How is this possible? Ho Yan smiled. Moling, you're truly diligent. I never expected you to practice Bajiquan to improve your calligraphy. These words reflect your own determination. Surprised Shen Moling asked, you could tell that. Ho Yan nodded with a smile knowing his tracing to the source ability revealed even the hidden details of her training under Bajiquan Master Xu Baolin. Qi Mingshan then asked, May I borrow your brush and ink? Still amazed by Hu Yan's insight, Shen Moling handed him the brush. Qi Mingshan laid out the paper and wrote, Know your strength, guard your humility. After finishing he addressed Qi Rui, These words complement Shen Moling's advice to you. I hope this lesson is more impactful than my previous teachings. Realizing the hidden meanings in both sets of calligraphy, Chi Rui's arrogance crumbled. He took the words with him, leaving in a daze. Watching him leave, Chi Mingxian murmured, I'm sorry for not shaping you into a better person. Hopefully this lesson will teach you more than my words ever did. Turning to Qian Xiao Er, Chi Mingxian said, Young lady, as the owner here, I'll transfer the money immediately. Qian Xiao Er looked to Hu Yan who, recognizing Chi Mingxian's good intentions, said Master Chi, This was just a friendly bet. There's no need to take it seriously. Qi Mingxian smiled. You're a remarkable young man, sharp-eyed and considerate. Let's talk more when we have time. He then turned to Qian Xiao R. I won't go back on my word. Please, accept the payment. Unsure Qian Xiao Er looked at Hu Yan again. Ho Yan, after a brief thought, said, Master Qi, your nephew's actions are his own. Let's not blame you. If you feel we were wronged, perhaps you could leave a few calligraphies for Xiao Er's store. That would be more than enough. Qi Mingxian laughed heartily. What a generous young man. We'll definitely stay in touch. I'll leave some calligraphy pieces, and you must give me your contact information. Seeing Hu Yan's strategic thinking, Qian Xiao Eor was deeply grateful. 
His actions ensured the store's long-term benefits and eliminated potential conflicts with the Calligraphy Association, paving the way for future collaborations. Sure enough, the calligraphy pieces, including Shen Wanching's work, were soon bought at high prices, leaving the store nearly empty of art. Even Shen Moling's pieces were sold, much to her delight. After writing several pieces, Qi Mingshan said, I'm getting old. I'll send more from home later. Everyone agreed, appreciating his dedication. Qian Xiao Eir knew this meant consistent high-quality additions to her store. The incident concluded successfully, leaving Qian Xiao Eir's store with boosted sales and reputation, much to the future surprise of her father. At this moment, the exhausted Qi Mingshan looked at Hu Yan with burning eyes and said, Ho Yan, my young friend, it seems we've become friends through conflict. Come, evaluate my work. Ho Yan smiled helplessly and said, President Qi, you're really putting me on the spot. It wasn't that Hu Yan was being difficult. Qi Mingshan's calligraphy was proper and orthodox, making it hard to praise or criticize. However, Shen Moling was watching expectantly, and even the nearby art enthusiasts were eagerly awaiting Hu Yan's comments. Qi Mingshan, ever the shrewd character, added with a bit of exaggeration, you wouldn't keep us all waiting with bated breath, would you? Ho Yan had no choice but to say, all right, I'll just say a few words. If there's anything inappropriate, please don't hold it against me. Qi Mingshan shook his head with a smile. You're being evasive. I'm telling you, if you don't point out the flaws in my writing, I won't leave today. Ho Yan laughed, all right, President Qi, you'd be an honored guest we couldn't ask for. Ho Yan then carefully examined Qi Mingshan's calligraphy. It was smooth and delicate, intricately composed, but it lacked a certain essence. This Hu Yan hesitated. I'm not sure if I should say it. Speak freely, Qi Mingshan urged loudly. All right. Ho Yan sighed. Your calligraphy is the exact opposite of Shen Moling's. Shen Moling's writing is rounded on the inside but square on the outside. Yours, however, is square on the inside and round on the outside. For Shen Moling, the roundness is natural. But for you, the squareness is natural. Both of you are making the mistake of abandoning your true nature. Ho Yan's words left the audience puzzled, but both Qi Mingshan and Shen Moling fell silent, their brows furrowed in deep thought. Qian Xiaoer nudged Hu Yan, did you go too far and offend them? Ho Yan spread his hands, I had no choice. If I didn't tell the truth, I'd lose respect. But offend them? I don't think they're that petty. After a moment of silence, Shen Moling's eyes brightened. She bowed deeply to Hu Yan. Thank you for your guidance, senior. I understand now when Hu Yan previously critiqued her work, saying it appeared dignified but contained gentle subtleties. She had some insight but couldn't grasp the essence. Now, with Hu Yan's reminder, she understood. It's like acting some are versatile and can play any role convincingly. But the highest achievement is always winning an award for being true to oneself. Imitating others, no matter how well, lacks soul. Only by forging one's own path and style can one become a true master. Shen Moling didn't say more she wanted to capture the feeling immediately. She grabbed a brush, and Hu Yan quickly began grinding ink. Shen Moling, after brief contemplation, moved fluidly and confidently. The character's inner round, outer square appeared, harmonious and natural. Bravo! Ho Yan couldn't help but applaud. The characters, in the clerical script, exhibited a resilient toughness that mirrored Shen Moling's personality. Her dedication to practicing the difficult Shu Jin style, despite her family's inability to master it after Elder Shen Wanching, demonstrated her perseverance. She never gave up, hoping that hard work would compensate for any lack of talent and allow her to carry on Elder Shen's legacy. However, the difference in personality meant Shen Moling couldn't capture that iron bone spirit. So, she trained in martial arts, appearing gentle and serene on the surface but training with the rigor of a man in private. After writing the characters, Shen Moling exhaled deeply, her eyes moist as she looked at Hu Yan. I never realized that writing could be so liberating. Before, it was just a duty, a tradition to uphold, bearing too many burdens. Now I know that writing should be an expression of passion, a reflection of one's true inner world. Ha Yan nodded with a smile. What you need now is practice. When you can fully express your emotions, you'll become a true master of calligraphy. I don't think it'll take long. Shen Moling bowed deeply in gratitude. Thank you, senior. Ho Yan quickly stepped aside. I don't deserve this. You do, Shen Moling said, somewhat emotionally. Calligraphy was a shackle for me. Now it's wings. What my grandfather couldn't teach me, you've taught me. You deserve this. Hu Yan shook his head repeatedly. You're overpraising me. As they were at an impasse, Qi Mingshan suddenly seemed to wake up from a dream. I understand now. Quick, bring me a brush. 
Ho Yan handed the brush to Qi Ming Shan, who focused intently on the paper, his eyes devoid of any distraction. After a long time he slowly began to write. He wrote in running script Shen Ma Fu Yun floating clouds. Ha 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 after finishing, Qi Ming Shan laughed heartily. I've never felt so free in my life. Others might not understand, but Hu Yan knew Qi Ming Shan's feelings. Qi Ming Shan had always been a rule-abiding person, diligent in his work. Even in retirement, he maintained the same disciplined approach. Working within the system required such behavior. But now, in retirement he should enjoy life with a detached and open-minded perspective. Ah Qi Ming Shan sighed deeply. I've played a part in ruining Qi Rui. If I'd had this realization earlier I wouldn't have taught him this way. Qian Xiaoer interjected, that guy is arrogant. I think the best way for him to learn is through life's hardships. Let society teach him. Unexpectedly, Qi Ming Shan agreed, nodding, you're right. I think so too. If I had put my pride aside and let him struggle in society, he would have matured through those experiences and been grateful to me. Now, he probably resents me. But it doesn't matter. Just like in writing. I should express myself freely and not care what others say. Hao Yan gave a thumbs up, well said. Qi Ming Shan patted Hu Yan on the shoulder, you're the wise one, seeing through life at such a young age. I wonder which lucky girl will marry a talented young man like you, ha ha ha. Qi Ming Shan's laughter was loud and hearty, and several pairs of beautiful eyes were observing Hu Yan's shy side. They found his current expression the most endearing, far more interesting than his usual confident and mature demeanor. While everyone was engrossed in the lively scene, Qi Ming Shan also bowed deeply to Hu Yan, showing him the same half-teacher salute. Hu Yan quickly supported him, this is too much. Qi Ming Shan smiled magnanimously, there's nothing too much about it. Knowledge is no respecter of age those who achieve it are teachers. You've not only taught me about writing but also about life. My future days will be much happier because of you. Your contribution is invaluable. He then looked at Shen Moling. We used to practice writing now we will call it enjoyment or stress relief. How many people understand this joy? All thanks to you, Master Hu. How can you still be modest? Ha Yan scratched his head, smiling foolishly, causing a burst of laughter from the crowd. Hu Jaxin and Qian Ye Xiaowar couldn't help but hug Hu Yan's arms, seeming even happier than Hu Yan himself. After the laughter died down, Qi Ming Shan sighed deeply. Today is the happiest day of my life, but I have one small wish. I wonder if Master Hu could fulfill an old man's wish. Ho Yan nodded, you're still strong and healthy, far better than me. Qi Ming Shan laughed, are you deflecting? Ho Yan quickly waved his hands, I wouldn't dare. If I can do it, I absolutely will. Great Qi Ming Shan clapped his hands, my wish is to see a piece of your calligraphy Master Hu. Is that possible his eyes were filled with earnest anticipation. Ho Yan's heart sank. I've been caught off guard. Evaluating others' work is one thing, but my own skills. Sweat beaded on Hu Yan's forehead. However, his recent insights into various calligraphies made him eager yet hesitant. Seeing Hu Yan's hesitation, Shen Moling took a step forward, bowed slightly and said, Master Hu, please don't hesitate to instruct us. Hu Jiaxin was also puzzled. She only remembered Hu Yan practicing calligraphy in elementary school. His recent confident critiques had already surprised her. She believed his eye for detail had improved since becoming an appraiser, but writing itself was a different matter. Yet, at this moment, Qi Ming Shan was already grinding ink for him. Shen Moling had neatly laid out the rice paper and pressed it with paperweights. Ho Yan's face flushed as he said something unexpected. Xiao Er, bring me Jing Dafu's eight breakthroughs fan. I need another look. Ha. Huh. Even those closest to Hu Yan were stunned. Is he planning to learn on the spot? Hey. Hey Qian Xiao Er hesitated but complied. Ha Yan spread out the fan, his eyes fixed on it as if glued. Time passed quietly. The only sounds were people's breathing and the street vendors outside. Inside the small curio shop, there wasn't a single distracting noise. Ha Yan stared at the fan for several minutes, then closed his eyes and thought for several more minutes. Finally he opened his eyes abruptly, handed the fan back to Qian Xiaor, stretched his arms, and relaxed his muscles. His posture resembled someone reluctantly forced to paint like Zhu Zhishan in the presence of Tang Bo Hu. Everyone felt a sense of impending disaster. However, Yao Ru sensed a hint of her family's martial arts in Hu Yan's movements. Shen Moling felt as if Hu Yan had practiced Baji Quan. Ho Yan, cornered like Zhu Zhishan, shouted, and took the brush from Qi Ming Shan. His movements were wild and uninhibited, like a madman, vigorous and dynamic. The character's momentum like breaking bamboo appeared under his brush. Before anyone could judge the quality, 
Hu Yan laid out another sheet of rice paper and wrote decisively unmovable like a mountain. Next, heaven rewards diligence. Then, things forget themselves desirelessness is strength carefree. Bright future add flowers to the brocade. Eight pieces of calligraphy, each in a different style. Shen Moling and Qi Ming Shan were astounded, while Hu Yan continued. The final piece left everyone speechless. At first, no one knew what Hu Yan was doing. He began by outlining various sections on the rice paper. Gradually, different broken objects appeared. There were broken porcelain jars, charred manuscripts, shattered fan surfaces, old tiles, torn papers, fragmented rubbings, tattered handkerchiefs, and oracle bone fragments. Each of these eight old objects bore a different style of calligraphy, each style profoundly captivating. This is Jin Huishi. This is a lost cultural treasure. Qi Ming Shan's voice trembled with emotion. He was both excited and involuntarily moved. What Hu Yan displayed was a lost art that people could never have imagined seeing again. The most challenging part was the rubbings, as the background was black and the characters were on white paper. However, even so, the inscription on the rubbing matched the quality of Shen Moling's earlier calligraphy. In fact, the ancient, weathered feeling of the inscription made it seem as if it had truly been rubbed from a stone tablet. In other words, Hu Yan's inscription looked more like it was carved rather than written with a brush. This was truly astounding. Even the usually calm and serene Shen Moling couldn't help but tremble. What Hu Yan was doing was the lifelong dream of Elder Shen Wanching. Elder Shen had dedicated his life to mastering one style of calligraphy, but had only scratched the surface of others, never reaching the level of a true master in those. And mastering multiple styles of calligraphy to such a high degree was what made Jin Huishi so difficult. Most people spend their lives mastering just one style of calligraphy and still struggle to reach a master's level. To master several styles simultaneously is an even greater challenge. Unknowingly, Shen Moling was in tears. Qi Ming Shan's eyes were also moist. What they saw wasn't just Hu Yan's work but a lost cultural treasure rediscovered. Ho Yan's mastery of this technique meant his future potential was limitless. Once the relevant authorities learned that there was a successor to this intangible cultural heritage, Hu Yan would be considered a national treasure. Even Qin Zixuan was stunned. She had always thought of Hu Yan as a genius, but now she felt as if she were in a dream, finding it all too unreal and hard to believe. Unconsciously, Hu Yan had completed all his works. Now, he finally understood the exhilaration that Qi Ming Shan had felt earlier. It was liberating. The feeling of pouring all one's emotions into a piece of work, experiencing a sense of complete release, spread through his entire body. Stretching lazily, Ho Yan noticed everyone staring at him as if he were a monster. Feeling a bit embarrassed, he said, I couldn't help myself. Sorry for the spectacle. Then he glanced at his work with some regret. This brush was too large for Jin Huiji. I forgot to switch brushes. Oh well, it's just for fun. Enjoy the show but don't take it too seriously. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ho Yan laughed awkwardly, finding no one to join in. He wondered, have I reached the point where I'm so talented that I have no friends unconsciously? He said this out loud. Qian Xieor, quick to react, piped up of course. You're good at everything, so of course you have no friends. Her playful tone helped everyone relax a bit. Qi Ming Shan looked at Hu Yan with newfound admiration, as if seeing him for the first time. What luck I've had today to meet such a treasure. Seeing Qi Ming Shan's intense gaze made Hu Yan uncomfortable, and he even took a few steps back. Oh, old Qi, I'm a normal, decent man. You're quite old seeing Hu Yan's reaction, Qi Ming Shan felt both amused and exasperated. You. What should I say? Everyone burst into laughter. Shen Moling also looked at Hu Yan with intense admiration. Hu Yan glanced around, then at his calligraphy. Did I write all this? He scratched his head. Ha ha ha. I think it's not bad. Why are you all looking at me like that? I told you I couldn't write. Ha. Huh. Everyone was speechless. Finally, Qi Ming Shan broke the silence. All right, if you can't write, then I've wasted my entire life, he sighed, shaking his head. Hu Yan looked at Shen Moling. Shen, do you think my writing is okay? Shen Moling bit her lip and bowed deeply again. Master Hu, I want to become your disciple and learn the art of Jin Huishi from you. Please don't think I'm foolish. What Hu Yan was stunned. Are you kidding? I was just doodling. You want to learn this? Qi Ming Shan didn't know what to say. Excessive humility is arrogance. Hu Yan, you're getting carried away. Hu Yan thought, what do you mean, getting carried away? This is my first time drawing this. However, seeing the eager and sincere look in Shen Moling's eyes, 
Hu Yan was at a loss for words. Well, if you want to learn, I'll teach you when I have time. But let me make it clear I might not know what I'm doing, so if I teach you wrong, don't blame me. And I'm not starting any classes, we'll just study together. Great Shen Moling nodded with a smile. You are the teacher whatever you say goes. Suddenly Shen Moling blushed and asked, Master, can I have this painting as your first disciple? Qi Mingshan immediately reacted. Hey Hu Yan, I'm old and don't know how many years I have left. Young people have plenty of opportunities. Why not give this painting to an old man like me? He even hammered his waist for effect. Shen Moling pursed her lips but her eyes clearly said, You sly old fox. Ho Yan felt caught in the middle, unsure of what to do. Qian Xiaoer chimed in, Hu Yan, if you let me display this painting in my shop, I'd be so proud. Please give it to me she mimicked a child's pleading, complete with a face cradling gesture. Ha Yan was speechless. At this point, someone suggested, why not auction it off? The highest bidder gets it. Shen Moling immediately said, no matter how much others bid, I'll add an extra 10,000. My grandfather would be overjoyed to know this skill has been preserved. Ha Yan understood Shen Moling's thoughts, knowing that Shen Wancheng's lifelong regret was not mastering Jin Huiji. Why not give it to Shen? Old Shen is much older than you Hu Yan said to Qi Shan. Qi Shan looked sorrowful. My father is over 90 and also a fan of Jin Huiji. Actually, I've been coming here often to see that fan. I already took photos but if I could bring a painting back it would mean the world to him. Shen Moling clenched her teeth, thinking, this old fox is indeed cunning. I'll tell my grandfather everything. Hao Yan pondered for a moment and said, How about this? Since I painted it in Xiaoer's shop, it goes to Xiaoer. Qian Xiaoer jumped up and hugged Hu Yan's neck. Ye Hu Yan still loves me the most. Ha Yan shook his head helplessly. At this moment, Qin Zixuan felt a pang of jealousy toward Qian Xiaoer. In just a month, she had grown distant from Hu Yan, while Qian Xiaoer had become even closer to him. All right, Hu Yan said, glancing at Qian Xiaoer. It made perfect sense to favor her she helped take care of his sister and Yao Ru. Anything else wouldn't be fair. Looking at Shen Moling and Qi Mingshan, Hu Yan said, Don't be disappointed. I'll paint two more pieces for you both when I have time. Okay. Qi Mingshan slapped Hu Yan on the shoulder hard. Good boy. I knew I wasn't wrong about you. You're great. Hey he was so happy he rubbed his hands together like a child. Shen Moling's initial anger towards Qi Mingshan faded replaced by admiration for Hu Yan. Qian Zixuan strode confidently up to Hu Yan. Old Hu, I want one too. Hu Yan was taken aback. He had never seen Qian Zixuan act so coy. Caught off guard, Hu Yan nodded twice. Hu Jiaxin joined in brother. I want one too. Hu Yan playfully pinched her nose. All right, whatever I have, I'll give to you. Everything I paint from now on is yours. Hu Jiaxin stood with hands on her hips, satisfied. Remember, no girlfriend of yours can take my place. Okay. Everything's yours Hu Yan pinched her cheek. Humph. Always teasing me Hu Jiaxin pretended to be angry. A soft voice suddenly asked, can I? Have one too. Hu Jixin hooked her arm around Yao Ru's of course. What's mine is yours. He has no choice but to agree. Everyone laughed, envious of Hu Yan's close-knit family. At that moment, a man with a bundle, dressed as a farmer, approached. Excuse me, I see you all like calligraphy. I have a piece here. Can you tell me if it's valuable? If it is, I'd like to sell it. As calligraphy enthusiasts, everyone perked up at the mention of a good piece. Show us. Yes, let's see it first. Is it a family heirloom? When the man unfolded the calligraphy, Qi Ming Shan gasped. This is. Zheng Gufan's work. He leaned in for a closer look. Wonderful. Zheng Gufan's legendary life has overshadowed his calligraphy but his writing is definitely masterful. Ha Yan didn't examine the calligraphy closely, as his trained eye didn't need to. Instead, he found the seller suspicious, his eyes shifty. How much do you want for it? Hu Yan asked. The man held up five fingers. Fifty thousand. The man shook his head. Five hundred thousand. The man shook his head again. Five million. The man nodded. Ho Yan waved his hand dismissively, stop looking. Even if it's genuine, it's not worth five million let alone this fake. The man dressed as a farmer immediately grew indignant. If you can't afford it, don't speak. What makes you say this is fake? Look here, these are the seals of appraisal masters. Their valuation is 5 million. The onlookers crowded in for a closer look, and sure enough, the seals of many appraisers were present, confirming its authenticity. 
Even Qi Mingshan, who believed it to be Zheng Gofan's genuine work, looked at Hu Yan in confusion. Shen Moling also furrowed her brows with her expertise, she too thought it was authentic. Everyone now looked at Hu Yan expectantly. Despite the seals of other appraisers, they trusted Hu Yan's earlier display of skill and doubted the painting's authenticity. The inscription read Countless flowers shine upon the sea and sky, flowing water and high mountains know my heart. To Brother Jin Ji, from Taishang, Zheng Gofan. The seals included Tishang Zheng Gofan's seal and several collector's seals. The painting was on paper, measured 168x39 cm x2, and was a seven character couplet in ink on floral paper. Hao Yan pointed at the painting and said, Actually, it's easy to tell if this is genuine. Just look it up online. This piece was auctioned off by Tai Long Auction House in Hong Kong four years ago. The hammer price was 2.3 million, even though Zheng Gofan's works have appreciated over the years. This genuine piece wouldn't fetch 5 million. Everyone quickly searched on their phones and found it to be true. Since the genuine piece had already been auctioned, this one was undoubtedly fake. The crowd was disappointed and began criticizing the man dressed as a farmer. You're a scammer. Luckily Master Hugh is here, or someone might have really bought it. I hate these kinds of people the most. Two of my friends have been scammed before. Think about it, making money this way, can you spend it with a clear conscience? The man holding the painting remained defiant. These are the seals of appraisal masters. Are you all blind? Don't you recognize the seals? You're trusting this young man over experienced appraisers. Ho Yan replied, my surname is Hugh, but I'm not making this up. The seals on your painting are from appraisers who were active a few years ago. Ask around and find out what happened to them. Some curious people looked up the names on the seals and eagerly showed the man. Look, this person was caught for fraud and is in prison. This one was expelled from the collecting community and lost his qualification as an appraiser. And this one. What? You mean these appraisers are all frauds? But I spent a lot of money to get on that show the man collapsed to the ground crying. This has been in my family for generations. How can it be fake? I don't believe it. I wouldn't have brought it out if my child didn't need money for university. Seeing his despair, the crowd stopped mocking him and turned their anger toward the fraudulent appraisal shows. As the man refused to leave, drawing more onlookers, Qian Xiaoer tried to explain and persuade him to leave but couldn't. Ha Yan said, Your child needs money for school. I'll buy this painting. The man immediately stopped crying, Are you serious? How much? Hu Yan replied, 20,000. Take it or leave it. The man thought for a moment, and then agreed, fine. I'll sell it. It was clear that at this point, he was willing to take whatever he could get. Ho Yan paid him 20,000, despite Hu Jiaxin's attempts to stop him. She was frustrated but didn't say more after it was done. Yao Ru, meanwhile, sympathized with the man. After the man left and the crowd dispersed, Qi Ming Shan asked Hu Yu Yan, Master Hu, I don't understand why you did this. 20,000 is no small amount. If you were helping him, a few thousand would have sufficed. Hu Yan thought, indeed, old people are wise. He replied, if even you couldn't tell the calligraphy was fake, don't you think it's worth the price? Qi Ming Shan hesitated, in terms of calligraphy, it is worth that much. But since it's a forgery, it's not worth anything. He was right. The forger was skilled, and without the intent to deceive, their work would be valuable. Shen Moling nodded in agreement. This kind of plagiarism is detestable. So, no matter where you sell it, it won't fetch a good price. Ho Yan suddenly laughed, every action has its cause. Don't you think it's strange that such a skilled calligrapher would resort to forgery? Thinking about it, they realized it made sense. Why would someone capable of such exact replication forge another's work? Yes, Wai Qi Ming Shan asked, eager to know what Hu Yan was hinting at. Ho Yan chuckled, I have to thank you for this treasure I acquired. Treasure? You said it was fake. And why thank me? Ho Yan smiled mysteriously, laid the high-quality imitation of Zun Gufan's calligraphy on the table, and had Hu Jiaxin fetch a spray bottle. He began to evenly spray water on the calligraphy. Once the paper absorbed enough water, he gently patted the surface. Yao Ru was startled by how Hu Yan's movements resembled the rhythm of her family's traditional martial arts. Shen Moling was even more convinced that Hu Yan had trained in Baji Quan. Everyone watched intently, curious about what Hu Yan was doing. Ho Yan didn't speak, his focus entirely on the painting. After spraying and patting three times, he took a deep breath. This is the moment of truth. He then cut away the mounted edges of the painting, revealing the original, ancient-looking rice paper beneath. 
To everyone's amazement, Hu Yan gently shook the paper, and it separated into two layers, revealing another identical painting underneath. This again. You think two identical paintings are valuable Hu Jiaxin said indignantly. While others remained silent, their thoughts mirrored hers. However, Qi Ming Shan and Shen Moling gasped simultaneously. The one underneath is the original. What Hu Jiaxin's eyes widened. Qi Ming Shan's hands trembled as he verified the authenticity. Hu Yan, it seemed, was a miracle worker. Although the forgery was skillful enough to pass as genuine without a comparison, the real piece had a distinctive soul and personality that stood out to experts. Why? How Qi Ming Shan muttered and thralled. Ho Yan said, You might think I'm cruel for paying only 20,000 for the genuine article. Qi Ming Shan shook his head, In the antique world, it's all about agreed transactions. Money exchanged, no debts remain. Hu Yan shook his head, no matter what you think. I wouldn't have offered just 20,000 if his story were true. But that man was a plant hired by Qi Rui. Qi Rui? Impossible, Qi Ming Shan exclaimed. Ho Yan asked, What's Qi Rui's specialty in calligraphy? Regular script, similar to Zheng Gofan's, but not as good as this forgery. You're wrong. He intentionally hides his true skill, which is about 70% similar to Zheng Gofan's. Why? Stop keeping us in suspense, Qi Ming Shan urged. Ha Yan laughed. Why were you so excited when you saw this painting? Qi Ming Shan didn't answer. Ho Yan continued. Because you were the one who initially sold it. You didn't understand its value then, and although you had it appraised, the appraiser made a mistake. And, and it sold for only 40,000. That was Qi Rui's first major profit. When it later auctioned for nearly five times that amount, you felt guilty and have been indulgent towards Qi Rui ever since. Qi Ming Shan sighed and nodded. At the time, he was too busy to deeply study calligraphy and missed its true value. Seeing it now, he felt it was an opportunity to right a past wrong. Ho Yan added, Qi Rui is much shrewder than you think but very narrow-minded. This trap was set for you. You're lucky, old Qi. If I weren't here today you'd have paid two million to settle your conscience, right? That's why I said, thanks to you. Qi Ming Shan, who had the money and was indeed thinking of paying, had to admit, you're right. That incident has been a burden on my mind. I wanted to help my distant cousin but I didn't expect this. Ignoring Qi Ming Shan's sigh, Shen Moling asked, Master Hu, how did the fake painting become real? At this point, everyone was eagerly watching Hu Yan. Hu Yan knew what they wanted to know. If it weren't for his ability to trace the origins of things, even he wouldn't have believed such a thing was possible. Now that there are no outsiders here, you all want to know not only how the fake painting became real, but also why the real painting was hidden beneath the fake one, right? Everyone nodded eagerly, their curiosity evident. This was something beyond anyone's imagination. Let me explain Hu Yan began. It turns out, Qi Rui was indeed a resourceful person. When he needed money, he thought of selling this ink flower scroll from his own home. However, he was reluctant and feared it wouldn't sell for a good price. Somehow, he heard that a top calligraphy master could write with such strength that the strokes would penetrate the paper, leaving an identical copy beneath if the paper was split. So, Qi Rui found a skilled craftsman, an expert in restoring ancient paintings and calligraphy, to split the painting in half. The first revelation was about to unfold, and everyone held their breath. However, the legend didn't come true. After splitting the painting, Qi Rui was dismayed to find only faint traces beneath, far from the expected result. Wait, Qi Ming Shan interrupted. We can see the painting right here. How can you say it was a failure? Ho Yan replied, Be patient. I'm explaining the painting's origin. The skilled craftsman advised Qi Rui to give up, but Qi Rui refused. So, the craftsman suggested a different approach having a calligraphy expert trace over the original. Qi Rui had been practicing tracing this ink flower scroll all along. This time, the craftsman had him copy traces, writing directly over the original with the paper layered on top. With his foundational skills, Qi Rui practiced multiple times until he achieved the best result. The craftsman then provided Qi Rui with paper and ink from the same era, and Qi Rui wrote this version of the calligraphy. Ha Yan picked up the fake painting that had covered the real one. This is the one Qi Rui wrote. But how did the real one appear underneath Qi Ming Shan asked, unable to contain his curiosity, echoing the thoughts of everyone present. Ha Yan held up the genuine piece. This genuine piece was the original lower layer that had only faint traces. Although faint, the rhythm and essence of Zheng Gofan's writing were still there. When Qi Rui traced it using identical ink, the ink from his tracing seeped through after I moistened it. The ink permeated and brought out the original painting. 
He picked up the calligraphy that Chi Rui had written over. See, the ink on this piece has noticeably faded. Everyone examined it closely and found it to be true. The realization brought a round of applause for Hu Yan, whose clever methods earned genuine admiration from the crowd. Originally, everyone thought this was the painting Qi Mingshan had sold for Qi Rui, but it turned out to be a discarded layer that Hu Yan had turned into a genuine piece. If anyone else had bought it, it would have remained a fake forever. Suddenly, Qian Xiaowu's curiosity got the better of her, and she asked, Uncle Qi, what happened back then that made Qi Rui willing to sell such a precious painting? Qi Mingshan sighed deeply. At the time, Qi Rui had a girlfriend who complained about his lack of money. But Qi Rui couldn't accept this. So, he took the ink flower scroll from home. As we've just learned from Hu Yan, it was only part of the scroll, likely restored by the master Hu Yan mentioned, making it look flawless. I paid for an appraisal and helped him sell it. Qian Xiaowu was puzzled. Would Qi Rui really sell a painting for a girl? It doesn't seem realistic. Hu Yan smiled. I think he cared more about his pride than the girl. Isn't that right, President Qi? Qi Mingshan nodded. Once Qi Rui had money, the girl didn't mention breaking up again. They got engaged shortly after. But at the engagement party, Qi Rui publicly declared that she was too materialistic to be his wife. What a jerk. They deserved each other. Exactly. Shen Moling suddenly asked Hu Yan, can a top calligrapher really create a painting that can be split into two identical pieces? Ho Yan nodded, yes, the best can even split it into three. But each part would still be considered fake, so it's not a desirable practice. Everyone nodded in agreement. Qin Zixuan asked, so this painting still has flaws? Ho Yan nodded, yes, but after being restored by the original master craftsman, it would be indistinguishable from a genuine piece. Qin Zixuan frowned. After all this time, it's hard to say if that person is still in Jiangcheng. How do we find him? Ho Yan smiled, he's easy to find. His original name was Tao Deyu, but due to his skills in restoring antiques to the point of creating indistinguishable fakes, he changed his name to Tao Meiyu, meaning no virtues. What? It's Master Tao Qin Zixuan exclaimed. Ho Yan nodded, yes otherwise, how could I guess all this? Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Ho Yan's explanation had been so detailed it was as if he had seen it happen firsthand. Now, they understood it was because of his connection with Master Tao. Actually Hu Yan had seen it all firsthand. But he made it seem like it was information shared by Master Tao to maintain his credibility. Just as everyone was marveling at Hu Yan's ability to deduce these events from what Master Tao had supposedly told him, Qin Zixuan's face reddened. Hu Yan, I have a request. Can I buy this painting from you after it's restored? It's my father's birthday soon, and he's a big admirer of Zheng Gufan. Ho Yan had never seen the usually composed King Zixuan look so bashful, and he found it endearing. Of course, no problem. Just pay me the 20,000 I spent, Hu Yan said, maintaining a business like tone that made King Zixuan's face pale. She bit her lip and said, I want you to say it's a gift from you. Ho Yan's heart skipped a beat, recognizing the underlying sentiment in her request. You should have said so earlier. It's only right for me to give a gift to your father. Don't mention money, or I'll get mad. Qin Zixuan's cheeks flushed with relief, knowing that Hu Yan understood her intentions. The tension between them melted away with a simple old kin. She cast a charming glance at Hu Yan, her earlier worries dissipating. Hu Yan, grinning widely, said, Old kin, you're too polite. Recently, I found a top quality jade pendant in my desk drawer. It must be from you. I haven't done anything special to deserve such a gift. Suddenly, a man standing behind Qin Zixuan spoke up, President Qin, didn't you say that jade was for your mother? It's worth millions, crafted by a top master. How could you give it to a mere manager? Hu Yan's face darkened. He had noticed this man before, always lingering around Qin Zixuan like an unwanted shadow. Now, he was even more irritated. Qin Zixuan frowned. Qin Tian, I don't need you to tell me how to manage my affairs. Hu Yan's contributions to the company are beyond your imagination. Actually, Qin Zixuan had intended to give the jade to her mother. But after the incident with Yang Chan Chemicals, she felt guilty toward Hu Yan and decided to place the jade in his drawer. Qin Tian immediately bowed an apology. I'm sorry, President Qin, I spoke out of turn. He then stepped back, standing next to Hu Yan but further from Qin Zixuan, which made Hu Yan feel slightly better. Qin Zixuan's response was impeccable, leaving no room for criticism. But as soon as Qin Tian moved closer, he muttered, A manager at a pawn shop? We have hundreds of those at Tianhai. How significant can his contributions be? 
Ho Yan had to give him credit. This guy has some nerve coming over here just to annoy me. He scrutinized Qun Tian, and what he saw made his heart churn. Qin Tian's real name was Wu Hao. He was a potential heir in the Qun family, with dual doctorates from Cambridge, handling over 20 complex issues for Tianhai Group. He had managed nearly 50 billion in investments, generating over 20 billion in profit. Someone who had contributed so much had the right to look down on Hu Yan, who hadn't achieved as much. Time and position limited Hu Yan's influence. Even his role in acquiring Yang Cheng chemicals was just as a consultant. Despite his frustrations, Hu Yan had to admit Q and Tian's worth, but then Qin Zixuan said, Don't think I didn't hear you. If Hu Yan were in your position, he'd outperform you a hundred times over. You've made eight mistakes. Hu Yan hasn't made a single one. His lack of seniority and not being groomed by the Qin family is the only reason he's not in a higher position. Qin Tian bowed again. I'm sorry, President Qin. I'll work harder for Tianhai in the future. He then turned to Hu Yan. I apologize, Manager Hu, for my inappropriate remarks. Ho Yan forced a smile. Manager Hu, the title he once took pride in now felt like an insult. Qin Tian's seemingly humble apology was filled with veiled contempt. And why was Qin Zixuan taking him to meet her family? What was her real purpose? To make me work harder for Tianhai. Hu Yan's feelings were mixed. As Hu Yan stood there conflicted, Qin Tian looked self satisfied. Qin Zixuan raised her arm, revealing a fair, flawless wrist accentuated by a dark leather strap. It's already 5 o'clock, Qin Tian. Time for you to clock out. Qin Tian's smug expression vanished, replaced by one of discomfort. Qin Zixuan didn't look at him, oblivious to his change in demeanor. Ho Yan, it's been a while. Let's have dinner together and then head home. Ho Yan, who had been feeling down, perked up immediately upon hearing Qin Zixuan's words. He eagerly agreed, casting a triumphant glance at Qin Tian. Qin Tian, who had been about to say goodbye, stopped. President Qin, the chairman instructed me to look after you until you get home. Qin Zixuan's voice turned cold. I'm over 20. Do I need someone to teach me how to eat dinner? Qin Tian was at a loss for words and awkwardly replied, then. Please take care, President Qin. Ha Yan smiled and said, don't worry. I'll take good care of old Qin. He moved a bit closer to Qin Zixuan. Qin Tian glared at Hu Yan before leaving in a huff. After Qin Tian left, Qian Xiaor looked at Wan Linchuan, mimicking Qin Zixuan. Wan Linchuan, being more perceptive, said, Miss Xiaor, it's getting late. I'll head home now. Qian Xiaor nodded. Qin Zixuan, having not been back to Jiangcheng for a while, chose a restaurant she had been missing. In the nearly 100 square meter luxurious private room, Yao Ru, who had never seen such a scene, appeared very uneasy. She had been dragged along by Qian Xiaor and Hu Jiaxin. Yao Ru initially wanted to go home, but Hu Jiaxin insisted that if Yao Ru didn't go, she would accompany her back. Qian Xiaor wouldn't hear of it and directly pulled Yao Ru into the car. Hu Jixin held Yao Ru's hand and whispered, Actually, it's my first time in a place like this too. But don't be nervous. Sister Xuan looks cold but is very kind-hearted. Just like Sister Xiaor, she's a good sister to us. Qin Zixuan had also been observing Yao Ru for a while. Even without makeup, she felt that this shy girl in front of her was the only one who could rival her in looks. After ordering, Qin Zixuan asked Hu Yan, Old Hu, doesn't my skin look better now? Thank you. Thank me for what? I didn't do anything Hu Yan feigned ignorance. Qin Zixuan smiled, that all natural face mask is amazing. I thought I didn't need such things but after using it once, I couldn't stop. I wondered who was so kind to send me such a good thing. Later, I saw the same product in your bathroom. She looked at Hu Yan with a half smile. Ho Yan coughed, a ham. Maintaining good relationships with colleagues is normal, right? Isn't that right, everyone? To his surprise, no one sided with him. Qian Xiaor pouted, Zhuang Xuan, you have a great subordinate. Unlike mine. Zhang Wanning fled from his crimes, and Wan Lin Chuan seemed okay before, but compared to your Hu Yan, he's far behind. Apparently they had discussed the face mask before. Qian Xiaor was using it too. Sitting next to Qian Zixuan, Qian Xiaor whispered, Shall we swap? Qian Zixuan laughed. Sure. Qian Xiaor was stunned. Really? That's great she hugged Hu Yan's arm. Old Hu, you're mine now. Don't worry I'll treat you well. He Yan shook his head with a wry smile. Qian Zixuan said. Who said we were swapping Hu Yan? You suggested swapping subordinates but didn't specify who. I'll give you Qin Tian. 
He's a double doctorate from Cambridge. Qian Xiaoer pouted, Xuang Xuan, you can't do this to me. Qin Tian dares to bully both you and Hu Yan. How can you expect me, so gentle and weak, to handle him? She then playfully changed her expression and clung to Hu Yan's arm. I want Hu Yan, she refused to let go. Qin Zixuan shook her head with a smile. Recently, the issues with Tianhai chemicals had stressed her out. The more urgent the situation, the more she longed for Hu Yan's reassuring presence. No matter the difficulty, once she handed it to Hu Yan, she could focus on what she enjoyed without worry. But with others, like Qin Chu or Qin Tian, they would only say, President Qin, I think we should handle it this way and wait for her decision. Hao Yan, on the other hand, would tell her the best course of action. She trusted him completely. Only once did she doubt him, and it cost her dearly. She was still haunted by the thought of Qin Ru almost dying. If that had happened, she wouldn't have recovered easily. Just then, the food and drinks arrived. Qin Zixuan poured herself a glass of red wine and raised it. Thank you all for your company. It's wonderful to have you. Everyone could see that Qin Zixuan's words were heartfelt. The dinner was harmonious and without interruption. Hao Yan felt he had found the old, old Qin again. Or maybe, since the time she invited him to Qin Baxiang's birthday party, he had already let go of his resentment. However, Qin Tian's words still echoed in his mind. His current position in Tianhai group was indeed insignificant. Without Qin Zixuan's support, it would take him years of hard work to stand before Qin Baoxiang on his own merit. This reminded him of Zhao Peng's earlier struggles, which mirrored his current predicament. On the drive back, Qin Zixuan, having had a bit to drink, looked particularly radiant. If it weren't for recent events changing his mindset, Hu Yan would have teased her. But today he remained silent. As they reached the building, Qin Zixuan suddenly stopped. Old Hu, don't forget to draw a Jin Huiji for me. Hu Yan nodded blankly. Qin Zixuan added, two pieces. One for my father's birthday, one for my own collection. No problem Hu Yan agreed, then realized something was off. Didn't you say you were giving your father Zheng Gofan's calligraphy? As they entered the elevator, Qin Zixuan smiled. That's your gift. Your Jin Huishi is my gift. I want my dad to know you're unique. By the end she couldn't meet Hu Yan's eyes. When the elevator stopped, Hu Yan said goodbye to Qin Zixuan in a daze, standing at his door. I am. Unique. Suddenly he jumped up in excitement. I am unique. Ha ha ha. As he was celebrating, the elevator door opened, revealing Qin Zixuan's embarrassed but amused face. She saw Hu Yan jumping around and couldn't help but cover her mouth to suppress her laughter as she stepped out. Hu Yan, blushing, said, Old Qin, missing me already. Qin Zixuan rolled her eyes. I left my house keys at the office. I need. Before she could finish, Hu Yan eagerly said, I get it. Do you have your ID? Qin Zixuan was puzzled. I just need you to come with me to the concierge to get the spare key. Why would I need my ID? Hu Yan coughed, feeling mortified. He wished he could disappear. Realizing what he had implied, Qin Zixuan's face turned red. She glared at him. I meant, with your ID, I could open the door. But since you have a spare key at the concierge, there's no need for that. Understanding dawned on both of them as they silently walked to the concierge. Their hands accidentally brushed against each other, and they quickly pulled away, each apologizing. Sorry. Sorry. They looked at each other and laughed, breaking the tension. This time, the old Hugh and Qin were truly back. Returning with the key, Ho Yan felt much lighter. No matter what the future held he cherished these moments with Qin Zixuan. Old Qin you're not getting any younger. What kind of boyfriend are you looking for? Qin Zixuan looked at him. Whoever you think suits me, that's who I'll look for. Ho Yan scratched his head. You're asking me about your own matters. He had hoped to get a clearer answer but found himself stumped by her response. We're best friends now, right? Shouldn't you help me with my lifelong decisions? Ho Yan looked at her mischievous eyes thinking, she's too clever. I need to find a way to outsmart her. Feigning nonchalance, he said. If you follow my advice, find someone like me talented, handsome and understanding. Qin Zixuan looked soft and gentle, so different from her usual demeanor. I wish. Ho Yan's heart raced, sensing her next words. But I fear such a talented person might not see me. A mere businesswoman, as worthy. Hey Hu Yan thought, this girl is too hard to deal with, her intelligence too high. Anyone who looks down on you is blind. Qin Zixuan playfully said, maybe. But what if I make a mistake and they leave me? Hu Yan felt his face flush. Then they're foolish and will regret it. 
Just then, they reached Hu Yan's door. The elevator opened. Qin Zixuan's large eyes fixed on him. If it were you, would you regret it? The elevator doors closed. Standing by his door, Hu Yan looked at himself in the mirror, chiding, being cautious got you nowhere. You blew it. He hadn't responded because admitting his feelings could make future interactions awkward. Despite Qin Zixuan's attractiveness, Hu Yan didn't want to be a doormat. Now he was left stammering, unable to say more. As soon as Hu Yan pulled out his key, the door opened. Zhao Peng stood there with a half smile, his expression full of mixed emotions envy, admiration, curiosity. Understandable. But why was there a hint of pity? Seeing Zhao Peng's strange look, Hu Yan asked, What's up? Why do you look so weird? Zhao Peng rubbed his face, trying to calm himself. He put his arm around Hu Yan's shoulder. Old Hu, life's fair. If you're blessed in some areas, it's okay to have shortcomings in others. Huh? What are you talking about? Hu Yan asked, confused. Zhao Peng chuckled. I'm not trying to pry, but I heard some noises from the foyer earlier so I took a look. He saw Qin Zixuan coming out, blushing, saying she had forgotten her keys at the office. Then Hu Yan asked her if she had her ID, and they both went into the elevator. Sorry old Hu, for interrupting. You know living next door I might have disturbed your moment. Maybe the environment made you nervous? These things are mostly psychological Zhao Peng patted Hu Yan's shoulder. Don't worry. Just keep exercising and stay positive. It'll get better. What? What are you talking about? Hu Yan was bewildered. Zhao Peng gave him a disdainful look. Come on buddy, there's no need to be embarrassed. I saw you asking Qin Zixuan for her ID. What else could it be for? Zhao Peng sighed. But you were too hasty. It's normal to underperform in an elevator. Ho Yan held back for a long time. Do you believe I'll beat you up right now? Zhao Peng scoffed. What? Are you going to silence me because I know too much? I won't tell anyone. Get lost Hu Yan snapped. Even if I wanted to, do you think she would agree? You think old Qin is just anyone? She's the daughter of a listed company's chairman. Zhao Peng's eyes widened. Oh no wonder you're so frustrated, you didn't succeed. Well that's better than I thought. At least I know you're not. Incapable. Hey hey, hey. Ho Yan glared at Zhao Peng. We just went to the concierge to get a spare key. Zhao Peng clicked his tongue. What a pity, what a pity. You were too hasty. She might think you're not even human for not taking the chance. Really Hu Yan felt uneasy. Of course. She gave you a chance, and you didn't seize it. How disappointed must she be? Especially someone of her status, gathering the courage to give you a chance. And you just went to get a key? You might as well have someone led a camel through the desert for you. Zhao Peng's words made Hu Yan feel worthless. In truth he had always been conservative in relationships, even with Sun Jiaqi. Forget it, it's already happened. Zhao Peng shook his head in frustration. Opportunities like this won't come easily again. The more Hu Yan looked at Zhao Peng, the angrier he got, so he decided to take a shower and sleep. Early the next morning, Hu Yan waited at the company's entrance. He wanted to see if Qin Zixuan was angry with him as Zhao Peng had suggested. At 8 o'clock, Qin Zixuan arrived at the company with Qin Tian in tow. Morning, old Hu. Ho Yan felt relieved Zhao Peng's scenario hadn't come true. Morning, old Qin. Ho Yan thought, Zhao Peng you idiot. Old Qin would never be like that. Had breakfast? Want to join me? Qin Zixuan nodded. Sure, let's go. The two headed to the breakfast shop across the street, leaving Qin Tian behind. Qin Tian stomped his foot in frustration and entered the company. Qin Zixuan ordered her usual favorites, and Hu Yan did the same. After a while Hu Yan asked, Old Qin, does Qin Tian follow you around every day? Qin Zixuan sighed. It's a proposal from the board. He's supposed to assist me, but I feel he's more there to supervise and assess my abilities. Hu Yan frowned. Qin Tian is one of your family's protégés, right? Why would he side with other shareholders? Qin Zixuan explained, it's also my father's idea. In his eyes, Qin Tian is exceptional, just like Qin Chu was. Hu Yan thought for a moment. What about me? Am I exceptional? Qin Zixuan hesitated, then said, I told my dad about last time, but he didn't believe such miraculous things were possible. He thinks it was just a coincidence, so it's hard to compare true ability with luck. She looked at Hu Yan apologetically. Ho Yan shook his head. It's not your fault. I'm grateful for your trust. After all, not many would believe such a story. Only you supported me unconditionally. Although there was a hiccup with Qin Ru, 
I know you were under pressure from Qin Chu. Qin Zixuan gave Hu Yan a playful glance. Glad you understand. Don't worry, I won't let it happen again, Hu Yan replied, indirectly answering her question from the previous night about whether he regretted it. Though not a direct I regret it, the message was clear. Qin Zixuan understood his meaning and didn't mind. She had too many people around her who either obeyed her every word or arrogantly assumed they knew better. Ho Yan's independent thinking was refreshing. After breakfast, Hu Yan returned to his office, where his secretary, Su Mo, knocked and entered with a worried expression. What's wrong, Su Mo? Why so upset? After working together for some time, Hu Yan appreciated Su Mo's professionalism and cheerful demeanor. Seeing her troubled now was unusual. Su Mo placed a stack of documents on Hu Yan's desk. Mr. Hu, the new consultant, Kyun Tian, said your marketing strategy is short-sighted, with haphazard price changes that pose significant risks to the company. Our department's performance has soared under your leadership, and everyone's bonuses will increase by 50%. But with Qin Tian's interference, I'm worried it will affect everyone. Ho Yan's face darkened. Got it. You can go back to work now. Su Mo nodded and left. It was clear that Qin Tian was holding a grudge from the breakfast and last night's events, taking it out on Hu Yan's marketing department. Ho Yan read Qin Tian's directive to halt his marketing strategy and draft a new plan within 24 hours, or everyone's bonuses would be cut. Ho Yan slammed the notice on his desk in frustration. The staff outside glanced over whispering among themselves. Ho Yan picked up the phone and called Qin Zixuan. What's up, old Hu? President Qin, Qin Tian ordered a halt to my marketing strategy, saying it's flawed. He wants a new plan within 24 hours. Frankly, I'm out of ideas. Maybe you should have Qin Tian give us a lesson on marketing. I got it, Qin Zixuan replied and hung up. Ho Yan's message was clear I'm done. If he's so good, let him do it. I'll go back to being an appraiser. Qin Zixuan looked at Qin Tian. Did you order the marketing department to stop their strategy? Qin Tian nodded. Yes, I think Mr. Hu's approach is unscientific and will harm the company's image and growth in the long run. Qin Zixuan calmly said, I know. But Hu Yan says his plan is the best. Qin Tian scoffed. He thinks it's the best? A history major? He's just being arrogant. Qin Zixuan remained unfazed. Since you're the expert, you should have a better strategy. Here's the deal I'll put Hu Yan on leave. If you can prove him wrong, I'll send him back to the appraisal department. Qin Tian was overjoyed. President Qin, you're wise he thought, I'm the company's top talent. Hu Yan is nothing compared to me. The president must be humoring him. Her family would never see him as an equal. HM thief. But Qin Zixuan continued, but you need to convince everyone. You'll take over the marketing department this month. If you can match or exceed Hu Yan's results, I'll commend you to the headquarters. But if you fail, you'll bear the losses and return to where you came from. Qin Tian hesitated. President Qin, isn't that a bit rushed? Can't we? Qin Zixuan cut him off. Hu Yan improved the department's performance immediately. No extra time needed. You're more professional, so I trust your ability. Go ahead. Qin Tian was stunned. He had been so focused on undermining Hu Yan that he hadn't reviewed the department's previous performance. No matter. I refuse to believe a history major can outdo me. I've spent years honing my skills in marketing and investment. I'll show him who's superior. With renewed determination, Qin Tian left to prove himself. As he walked out confidently, Qin Zixuan smiled slightly. At 4.30 in the afternoon, Ho Yan and Qin Zixuan were sitting in a cafe, leisurely sipping coffee. Are you satisfied with what I did? Qin Zixuan asked. Hu Yan nodded. That's exactly what I wanted. If he's truly better than me, I'll accept it. But if he's not, he shouldn't be meddling. Qin Zixuan smiled knowingly. I figured you'd think that way, so I acted accordingly. I bet Qin Tian is currently struggling with your performance records. Indeed, at that moment, Qin Tian was staring at the financial reports, comparing the data from before and after Hu Yan took over. As he examined the figures, he muttered to himself, impossible. This just can't be. Arbitrary price changes should damage the brand's reputation. How did Hu Yan manage this? There must be some trick. Leaning back on the sofa, deep in thought, Qin Tian called out, Su Mo. When Su Mo entered, her face was sullen, clearly not giving Qin Tian any respect. However, Qin Tian didn't care he didn't plan to stay long enough to worry about these details. Print out the sales contract files for me, and highlight the repeat customers. Su Mo nodded. Yes, consultant Qin. Soon she brought him the materials. As expected, Qin Tian found several names of frequent buyers. 
Qian Zonglai, Wu Yao Zong. Usually, when signing sales contracts, both parties' contact information is recorded. If a buyer ends up with a fake item, Tianhai Pawn Shop guarantees compensation, which is one of the reasons for its top reputation in the industry. However, contacting customers without a valid reason is generally prohibited. Yet, Kim Tian quickly had his direct subordinates investigate these individuals. Trading company presidents, antique collectors, celebrities. So these are your backers, Hu Yang Qian Tian mused, searching for any resources he could use. Unfortunately, having never worked in Jiang Changcheng, he was unfamiliar with the local contacts. Using out-of-town customers might alert Qin Zixuan. But Qin Tian decided to leverage Hu Yan's previous connections and regular clients to fight this battle. Noticing that the items Hu Yan increased the prices for sold faster, a sinister smile crept across Qin Tian's face. Su Mo? Consultant Qin, what do you need? Raise the prices of the overstocked items by 20% and display them prominently. While chatting with Qin Zixuan, Hu Yan received a message from Su Mo. He handed his phone to Qin Zixuan. After reading it, Qin Zixuan asked, Will this work? Buyers are smarter now they don't make impulsive purchases like they used to. Hu Yan shook his head. Qin Tian is quite cunning. Sorry, no offense. Here's the thing our goods are like real estate. Regular customers buy when prices rise, not when they fall. When I raised prices they kept rising after the purchase, so even if they paid more, they felt it was worth it. But what Qun Tian is doing will not only ruin my reputation but also tarnish Tianhai Pawn Shop's name. Qin Zixuan nodded in agreement. You anticipated he would do this, didn't you? Ho Yan chuckled. Of course you know me well. Understanding my opponent, I figured Qian Tian would be eager to prove himself. So, he'd likely choose a strategy that would both undermine me and benefit him. This approach was his best bet. Qin Zixuan laughed. You're quite crafty yourself. Hey. I prefer to call it the right way. Ho Yan pulled out his phone and opened a WeChat group. These are regular customers who often buy from our shop. Over time we've built a good relationship, and they've had positive experiences. Qin Zixuan saw that Hu Yan was the group admin. Ho Yan posted an announcement, saying that he would be busy with other matters, and that someone else would be handling marketing. This was true, without undermining Qin Tian. But the group's reactions showed Hu Yan standing among these customers. If Hu Yan's not around, I'm not buying. Exactly. Last time I bought something when Hu Yan wasn't there, it depreciated. I learned that antiques aren't always appreciating assets. Hu Yan is an honest seller. I can't vouch for anyone else. Everyone trusted Hu Yan's integrity. Qin Zixuan nodded. You didn't disappoint me. My grandfather always said that business starts with personal integrity. If you can't be trusted, your business won't last. My father built Tianhai Group on that principle too. Hu Yan nodded in agreement. Soon, the group became active with discussions about the new price hikes at Tianhai Pawn Shop, with many asking Hu Yan for advice. Hu Yan sighed. Trust is fickle. He messaged the group from today, I won't be involved in pawn shop sales. Please make your own judgments. Sorry. Then he closed the group. Qin Zixuan saw this and approved. Hu Yan hadn't resorted to underhanded tactics he stayed true to his principles. What do you think will happen with Qin Tian managing sales? Ho Yan didn't need to think much. When he saw Qin Tian during the handover, he knew the outcome. Qin Tian was destined to fail. He might do well initially, but soon he'll slip up. Then, I'll probably have to clean up his mess. Qin Zixuan looked apologetic. Sorry for putting you through this. If we manage to send him back, I'll treat you to a big meal. Hu Yan responded seriously, I won't let you down. Qin Zixuan laughed and handed him a proposal. Can you review this? Hao Yan could tell at a glance that it was feasible. Qin Zixuan's business acumen was not developed overnight. She had a natural sense for hot and sustainable industries. For instance, her proposal for Yang Cheng Chemicals showed promising prospects, and the glassware workshop Hu Yan suggested would become a fashion trend in the coming years. Reading the proposal was a matter of respect and protocol. After reading, Hu Yan said, This will work especially in Jiangcheng. Besides cutting-edge tech, the most profitable sectors are education, healthcare, and beauty. The proposal involved leveraging the natural face masks and all-purpose medicinal pills Hu Yan had introduced to start a high-end skincare and wellness chain. Qin Zixuan nodded. Exactly, but first, we need to secure exclusive sales rights from Yao Ru's family and apply for patents. Can you handle the negotiations? Hu Yan thought for a moment. I'll try. Qin Zixuan gave him a knowing look. You'll succeed. 
That girl blushes every time she sees you. Have you done something to her? Hu Yan felt his face heat up but joked, Can't help it if I'm talented and handsome. It's natural to attract attention. Qin Zixuan didn't deny it. Hu Yan's talent was indeed remarkable. It was no wonder he attracted admirers. What kind of girl are you aiming for? Hu Yan was taken aback. Was that a compliment? Qin Zixuan anticipated that Hu Yan's answer would likely be, Someone like you so. Before Hu Yan could respond, she continued, I heard you've practiced martial arts. Ha Yan asked, who told you that? The incident with Scar Chen and his gang the other day I said I'd handle it. During that time, Hu Yan nodded. He had thought about it later. He realized that reconciling with Qin Zixuan so quickly also had to do with this connection. After all, the fact that Qin Zixuan could arrange personal protection for him was something Hu Yan hadn't expected. I've just practiced some self-defense. Qin Zixuan persisted. The person who told me is one of Tianhai's top experts. He said you have a solid martial arts foundation, so there's no need to be modest. Ho Yan hadn't planned on confronting Scar Chen's group. He wasn't afraid of the consequences he had the right on his side. To be honest he was quite nervous at the time. But thinking they were just after money, he decided to take a gamble. Winning would mean everything was fine losing would cost him around a million, which he could afford. He could make it back in a few months. What surprised Hu Yan was that when he charged forward, the actions of the two interceptors seemed to slow down. Instinctively he used a move from Yao Ru's martial arts, Willow in the Wind and instantly broke free. At that moment, Hu Yan was quite excited. He felt that with his skills, he could have easily taken down those men. But he didn't want to worry his parents who were waiting at the restaurant, so he didn't test his limits. Later when he saw the connection between calligraphy and Bajiquan while watching Shen Moling write, Hu Yan realized something profound. His eyes had truly evolved, and this evolution was remarkable. Beyond tracing the origins, he had gained the ability to mimic and integrate skills. Ha Yan summarized his abilities. First, appraisal determining the value of any item including a person's current assets in a given environment. Second, trend predicting the price fluctuation of any item including people. Third, trace origins seeing through the history and background of objects and people. Fourth, mimic and integrate mimic using trace origin to replicate the crafting process or skills of an item. Integrate combining similar skills to select and learn the best. For example, after observing multiple people's calligraphy, Hu Yan could write in a way that combined all their strengths. With Jin Huiji, having only seen Zheng Dafu's work, he could mimic it. With such abilities, mastering anything at first glance was a given, removing all worries. However, mastering everything doesn't always translate to making a lot of money. For instance, even if Hu Yan knew the experiences and investment processes of prominent figures like Lao Ma, he couldn't replicate their success. He could only replicate techniques, not their outcomes. Ha Yan pondered for a moment and said, Can you keep a secret? Qian Zixuan became interested. Tell me. Ha Yan said, To be honest, I haven't practiced martial arts for long, but I learned things very quickly. Qian Zixuan rolled her eyes. I don't believe you. Mastery in any skill requires extensive effort. You're already doing well there's no need to exaggerate. Ha Yan knew she wouldn't believe him. Then how do you explain a recent college graduate knowing so much? Qian Zixuan furrowed her brow. It was indeed unusual. His appraisal skills were flawless, his martial arts were on par with top fighters, his calligraphy was praised by masters, and he could create Jin Huiji, a skill long lost in painting and calligraphy. Additionally, his stone gambling skills were unparalleled. As Qian Zixuan pondered, Hu Yan continued. Whether you believe it or not, I need your help. Qian Zixuan looked at him. Go on. I need you to help me find a Jin Huiji collector and study their works. Why Qin Zixuan asked. Ha Yan replied. It's for you. For me? I didn't expect you to try and please me Qin Zixuan teased. Ho Yan laughed. I'm serious. I've only learned Jing Dafu's techniques recently. Real connoisseurs will recognize that. If I don't learn properly, what I give your father would be a high quality replica. Qin Zixuan understood. It was like how no matter how well Qi imitated Zheng Gufan's calligraphy, it was still a replica and not valuable. If Hu Yan created a Jin Huiji piece for Qin Zixuan's father, considering his status and connections, there would definitely be experts who could spot a replica, which would be embarrassing. Initially, Qin Zixuan wanted to showcase Hu Yan's unique skill, but now it could backfire. You're very thorough, but do you really think you can master other masters' techniques in less than a week? Ho Yan nodded confidently. I'm sure I can not only learn but also innovate and create my own style. Even Qin Zixuan, who had immense faith in Hu Yan, 
found this hard to believe. However, due to the trust built from past experiences, she decided to go along with his plan. After all, if it failed, it wouldn't be a big loss. All right, Q and Zixuan agreed. My father himself is a Jin Huiji collector. He was very impressed when he found out you identified the gift Kai Lai gave Gu Yufeng. He has several friends who are collectors too. Where do we start? Ho Yan thought for a moment. Let's start with your father, but it's best if he doesn't know, to avoid misunderstandings. Qian Zixuan nodded, her face slightly flushed. That evening, as Hu Yan and Qian Zixuan took the elevator together again, there was no forgotten key this time. Hu Yan thought it was a pity. Just as he entered the house, Zhao Peng rushed over. Old Hu. I've secured a place for our business. It's in the Antique Street. We've already put down a deposit of 10,000. Antique Street? Which shop Hu Yan asked? Qianjian Residence. Ho Yan was surprised. What a coincidence. Was the previous owner Zhao Baxiang? Yes. How did you know Zhao Peng asked? Ho Yan laughed. I interviewed at his shop back then. That's where I met old Qin's grandfather and started on this path. Such a coincidence? Seems like we made the right bet. It's your lucky spot. Hey. Seeing Zhao Peng so happy, Ho Yan didn't say much. It indeed was his lucky spot, where he discovered his eyes' abilities, changing his life. But just because it was lucky for him didn't mean it would be for Zhao Peng. Looking at Zhao Peng's fate, it was shrouded in darkness. The most terrifying part was seeing a red streak turn black a bad omen. Did you follow my advice on the partnership? Hu Yan asked. Zhao Peng sighed. Well, my partner is quite generous. The initial investment is estimated at 350,000. He's letting me invest 150,000 for a 49% share. Pretty fair, right? Ha Yan wasn't convinced. Any other conditions? To save costs, he'll be the legal representative and will privately sign a contract for my 49% share, Zhao Peng said awkwardly. Ha Yan shook his head. You're setting yourself up for a scam. Zhao Peng was puzzled. But we already agreed. Bullshit Hu Yan snapped. I'm telling you, Zhao Peng, I'll transfer you 200,000 right now. Just remember, if you get scammed, don't say I didn't warn you. Zhao Peng's face fell. Old Hu, I was just joking. Enough Hu Yan interrupted. Tell me about the operation plans. Zhao Peng explained how he had boasted about Hu Yan's expertise, securing future procurement and sales responsibilities. Ho Yan's mouth twitched. You've practically made him the boss without him doing anything. Not really Zhao Peng countered. He'll handle inventory, cash register, accounting, and managing the storefront. Ho Yan was speechless. That's basic management, not what an owner should focus on. Your tasks are what employees do, and profits don't come from those tasks. Zhao Peng shrugged. What should I do? We already agreed. Ho Yan thought carefully. Zhao Peng was pitiable. If things went south, he would sell everything to repay. So, I suggest you back out. I'll cover the deposit. Consider it a lesson. We can collaborate another time. Sounds good, but Zhao Peng hesitated. You know how I am about saving face. I already promised. Ho Yan sighed. Brother, survival is more important than face. When you learn to let go of your pride, you'll have grown up. Using money earned without pride to gain respect is true success. Ho Yan didn't say more. Learning to walk means stumbling sometimes. Without his special eyes, he might be in Zhao Peng's shoes. If Zhao Peng ever realized his partner was a scammer, Hu Yan knew how to make them regret it. Ho Yan transferred 200,000 yuan to Zhao Peng's account, considering it a lesson for his friend. He didn't expect to get the money back he saw it as paying for Zhao Peng's education. Moreover, Hu Yan thought Zhao Peng would learn a lot from this experience. The next day Hu Yan was in Qin Zixuan's car, heading to Shengqing, the headquarters of Tianhai Group, about 400 kilometers from Yangcheng. With a driver arranged by Qin Zixuan, Hu Yan enjoyed a relaxing trip, chatting with her about work and life. The driver occasionally glanced at Hu Yan through the rearview mirror, looking curious. In his 20-plus years, he rarely saw Qin Zixuan smiling so much in a single day. Even Qin Zixuan herself was surprised at how relaxed she felt around Hu Yan. Perhaps it was because, no matter the problem, Hu Yan always had a solution. They both fell asleep during the three-hour journey, waking up as they arrived. Qin Baoxiang's house was on a mountain near the edge of Shengqing, five kilometers from the city center. This area, surrounded by nature, was a true villa far from the city's noise. After driving up the mountain, the car stopped in front of a standalone villa near the summit. Qin Zixuan explained that her father had moved here when the headquarters relocated to Shengqing, 
while her grandfather still lived in the old house in Jiangcheng. Qin Zixuan herself seldom visited, as her parents were often not home due to her father's deteriorating health, but constant involvement in managing the group. As they approached the villa, a middle-aged man opened the door, looking surprised. Miss, why didn't you tell us you were coming? It would have made the chairman very happy. Qin Zixuan smiled. Uncle Qin, I'm just here to pick up some things and we'll leave soon. If they knew, they'd insist I stay. So please don't tell them. Uncle Qian nodded. I understand. If the chairman finds out, I'll have to explain. Qin Zixuan nodded and entered with Hu Yan. The first thing Hu Yan noticed was an outdoor swimming pool stretching from the front yard to the back. The pool was shaded by vines in the back, providing sun protection and a touch of ancient charm. The yard, filled with various flowers, seemed to follow some hidden principles of feng shui. Ho Yan, not well versed in these things, refrained from commenting. The villa's interior was decorated in an antique style, with redwood and rosewood frames providing natural insect repellent scents. This explained the lack of flies or mosquitoes, only bees and butterflies remained unaffected by the wood's aroma. Inside, the luxurious yet understated decor captivated Hu Yan. The rosewood display shelves held a variety of antiques, easily worth over a billion yuan at a glance. He wondered what other treasures might be in the private collection room. Make yourself at home. I'm going to change and grab a few things, Qin Zixuan said, heading upstairs. Hao Yan sat on a redwood chair, feeling the smooth, rich texture. Even without using his special vision, he could tell these were valuable antiques. The villa's items were priceless, and Hu Yan realized that in this prosperous era, most treasures were already in the hands of collectors like the Qin family. Even the smallest items like ashtrays, teacups, or brush washers, were rare treasures that would be the centerpiece of any antique shop. As Hu Yan admired the collection, he overheard a conversation between Uncle Qin and the driver in the yard. Any trouble during the trip Uncle Qin asked. The driver replied, it was too quiet. When Mississippi was in school, there were occasional incidents to handle. But since she returned from abroad, it's been uneventful. Watching her work every day is boring. Sigh. Uncle Qin said, it's a peaceful time now but stay vigilant. If something happens it'll be too late. The driver agreed. Ho Yan realized that Qin Zixuan had always been under discreet protection. He was relieved he hadn't acted impulsively around her, as the driver could have made things difficult for him. The driver added, you're right. People are more civilized now, and Mrs. Skills are impressive few could match her. Ho Yan thought, I see. If I had tried something inappropriate, Qin Zixuan herself could have handled it. Uncle Qin suggested sparring to keep the driver's skills sharp. Ho Yan then realized the driver was Qin San, whom Qin Zixuan had mentioned. Qin San joked, no way. I plan to surpass Qin R. Though, he beat me badly last time, so I've been cautious. They began sparring, and their movements were so swift that Hu Yan couldn't follow at first. Using his special vision, he slowed their actions and saw their training histories replay in his mind. It felt like he was learning alongside them. After a while, Qin San started to struggle, while Uncle Qin seemed to get stronger. Hu Yan noticed weaknesses in Qin San's stance, particularly his right leg and left side. Though Qin San sensed Hu Yan's gaze, he continued his usual technique. When Uncle Qin exploited these weaknesses, Qin San stumbled and conceded defeat, praising Uncle Qin's prowess. Uncle Qin handed Qin San a towel, advising him to temper his aggressive style to improve. Qin San nodded, acknowledging his flaw. They both glanced at Hu Yan, who had observed their match. Qin San introduced Hu Yan to Uncle Qin, who acknowledged Hu Yan's potential and noted his impressive appraisal skills. Uncle Qin asked, Are you interested in martial arts? Hu Yan modestly replied, Just a bit. Uncle Qin emphasized the importance of heart and mindset in martial arts, lamenting how traditional skills were fading in peaceful times. Hu Yan agreed, noting how modern values often overshadowed traditional ones. Uncle Qin appreciated his insight and suggested Hu Yan spar with Qin San to hone their skills through practice. Though initially reluctant, Hu Yan agreed, feeling challenged by Uncle Qin's words. Qin San, eager to test Hu Yan, immediately attacked with a fierce charge, catching Hu Yan off guard. Actually, when Qin San and Uncle Qin sparred, Qin San occasionally used this boxing technique. According to Hu Yan's recollection, Qin San learned it from a retired soldier, who was likely a very skilled special forces operative. This style of boxing is direct and effective, truly embodying a man's fierce spirit. Hao Yan was surprised that Qin San immediately used this fierce boxing style against him. As Hu Yan focused, Qin San's movements seemed to slow down, 
and Hu Yan instinctively countered with moves as if he had practiced Bajiquan for years. A head on clash. The collapse punch of Bajiquan. Even in such a direct clash, no martial art would typically counter fist with fist. Ha Yan sidestepped and deflected Q and San's straight punch, then quickly twisted his wrist to grab Q and San's. Uncle Kin exclaimed, Excellent. This Bajiquan has over 10 years of power, impressive. While Uncle Kim was speaking, Kyun San and Hu Yan had already exchanged several blows. Their fierce moves looked much more impressive than when Kyun San had sparred with Uncle Kyun earlier. At some point, Kyun Zixuan had arrived at the doorway. Initially, Kyun Zixuan looked worried, but after Hu Yan and Kyun San had exchanged over 10 rounds, her frown finally relaxed. Walking over to Uncle Kyun, Kyun Zixuan asked, Uncle Kyun, who do you think will win? Uncle Kyun replied, Normally, Hu Yan would win. Qian Zixuan was puzzled, oh, why do you say that? Uncle Qian laughed, you're worried because you care. Qian Zixuan blushed instantly. Uncle Qian coughed lightly and said, this Hu Yan is remarkable. Despite his young age, he has mastered Bajiquan, military boxing, and another style I can't identify. He has the power of over 10 years. What's more, his Tai Chi, Singyi, and Bagua skills are as formidable as mine. It's truly baffling. Oh? So skilled King Zixuan asked, then why did you say Qin San would win? Has Qin San been holding back against you? Hold back against me even though Uncle Qin was older, he seemed displeased by the notion. He doesn't have the right. I meant if it were a life and death fight, Hu Yan would surely lose. The boy is good-hearted but too kind. He had many chances to seriously injure Qin San but held back. You know what Qin San has been through. If they were deadly enemies, Hu Yan would probably be down already. Qin Zixuan nodded, reluctantly agreeing. Qin San's ruthlessness was indeed unmatched among the Qin family bodyguards. Uncle Qin, if I told you that Hu Yan only recently started learning boxing would you believe it? Uncle Qin frowned, looked at Hu Yan's movements carefully and shook his head. Impossible. Strange. You noticed it too Qin Zixuan asked with a smile. Uncle Qin's face twisted with confusion, indeed strange. His understanding of boxing seems almost on par with mine. The strange thing is, I thought he was holding back. But after watching for a while, I see it's his body's flexibility that's lacking, as if he can't achieve the desired effect. This is very odd. Qin Zixuan nodded. She had practiced martial arts since childhood because Qin Baoxiang said it's better to rely on oneself than others. So, she was quite skilled herself and had a keen eye. Initially, she had the same thoughts as Uncle Qin. However, she had heard Hu Yan mention he had just started learning martial arts not long ago. Now, it seemed Hu Yan hadn't lied. Anyone who has truly practiced martial arts knows the extensive basic training required. Not only must the legs be flexible, but other parts like the arms, shoulders, waist, and wrists must also be flexible to perform moves smoothly. Hu Yan could clearly see the weaknesses in Kyun San's every move, but his actions were always just a bit off. After a hundred or so moves, Kyun San withdrew, shaking his head. No more, no more. I won't fight you again in this life. It's too frustrating only those involved knew what they were facing. During the hundred moves sparred with Hu Yan, Qin San felt every move of Hu Yan's was his nemesis. In all his years of practice, Qin San had never been so frustrated. With you around I can slack off when misses around Qin San said, showing generosity without any sense of defeat. Uncle Qin asked Hu Yin San, what do you think? Qin San shook his head. Sigh I really am a frog in the well. The world is vast and full of wonders. I believe if Hu Yan hadn't held back, he could have taken me down with one move. Uncle Kin looked at Hu Yan, what do you think? Hearing Kin San's evaluation of him, Hu Yan couldn't believe his ears. Uncle Kin, did he just say that about me? I felt like he was overwhelming me, barely letting me breathe. Moreover I felt Kyun San was very slippery. I could have hit him if I had just been a bit quicker, but he always managed to dodge. Hearing Hu Yan's words, Kin San was also stunned. You mean you thought of it but didn't manage to do it? You weren't holding back? How? How is that possible? Uncle Kin laughed heartily, so it really is like that. Genius. A genius. I've seen it all in my life. Ho Yan and Kin San were both bewildered, while Kin Zixuan smiled silently. Uncle Kin beckoned Hu Yan, let me show you a move. Practice it well for a month, and in a month, Kin San won't be able to withstand a single move from you. What Kin San was shocked. Uncle Kin, you can't do this. There should be an order. You have such amazing skills, and you won't teach me but teach Hu Yan. Uncle Kin laughed, 
It's not that I won't teach you it's that you already know it. Unfortunately it's useless for you. I don't believe it Kyu and San shook his head vigorously. All right, I'll teach it right here. Listen if it helps. Uncle Kyun turned to Hu Yan first, don't rush to practice boxing. Focus on your flexibility. Do you know how to stretch? Ho Yan thought for a moment. In all the martial arts he had traced, this was a common step, though the methods varied slightly. He had practiced before but hadn't paid much attention to it. With Uncle Kyun's reminder, Hu Yan understood. The feeling of lack of control was due to inadequate flexibility. I understand. Thank you, Uncle Q and Hu Yan bowed deeply in gratitude. Qin San was even more bewildered. Uncle Qin, is this your secret technique? How is this any different from not teaching? Every martial artist stretches. As he spoke, Qin San suddenly fell silent. Being too involved, he had been awed by Hu Yan's exquisite techniques, thinking them hard to counter. Now, thinking carefully, Hu Yan's accommodating moves were just not precise enough. The root cause was Hu Yan's inadequate flexibility. It Qian San felt devastated. He had been defeated by a novice. Uncle Qian patted Qian San's shoulder, don't be upset. Honestly, once Hu Yan improves his flexibility, even I won't be his match. So powerful Qian San, despite his words, felt slightly relieved. Then wouldn't even Qian Air be no match for Hu Yan? Uncle Qian laughed, not just Qian Er. Even that person might not be able to defeat Hu Yan. At this point, Qin San looked at Hu Yan with a completely different expression. Ho Yan, meanwhile, was wiping sweat with a white towel. Feeling awkward, Qin San noticed neither he nor Uncle Qin had moved who handed him the towel. Moreover, wasn't that Miss's own towel? Thinking about it, he decided to let it go. The Qin family nurtured them based on aptitude, and in today's world martial arts had declined. Qin San had no interest in studying and he was of no help in the family business. His only role was security. Initially he felt indignant, but now seeing Hu Yan he realized Hu Yan was far superior in many ways, no wonder mistreated him differently. Feeling sour, Qin San sneaked away to smoke. Qin Zixuan told Uncle Qin something and then took Hu Yan to the backyard. Two young men patrolling there stood up respectfully and called Miss. Qin Zixuan nodded and led Hu Yan to a heavy iron door. She unlocked a small door revealing a password lock. Without hesitation, Qin Zixuan entered the code. Understanding the situation, Hu Yan turned around. After hearing the door open, Hu Yan turned back. Come in Qin Zixuan led the way, and Hu Yan followed closely. After entering they descended several flights of stairs. The interior was lined with natural stone walls. The shelves were filled with various antiques and paintings. Many items Hu Yan had only seen in books or online some he hadn't even heard of. Our family started with pawn shops, so I took over a pawn shop first. These items were collected by my grandfather and father over the years, representing our family's growth. My father often locked himself in here to remind himself of the hard work behind each item. Motivating himself not to slack off, Qian Zixuan trailed off. After a long pause she sighed. Sigh I used to not understand why my father worked so hard despite our large business. But after managing some companies I realized. In business if you don't advance you retreat. Many seemingly invincible business empires can fall with one wrong step. Qin Zixuan seemed to be speaking to Hu Yan yet also to herself. Sensing Qin Zixuan's mindset, Ho Yan listened quietly without interrupting. After Qin Zixuan had been lost in thought for several minutes, she said. You look around yourself. The Jin Huizui series of collections is in the northeast corner she pointed with her white finger. Hu Yan nodded and walked over. Qin Zixuan then left seemingly feeling pressured by the place. Upon reaching the northeast corner, Hu Yan was dazzled. Truly the collection of a great connoisseur. It included almost all existing Jin Huizui refined calligraphy and paintings, all categorized clearly. Thus, Hu Yan immersed himself in the retrospection of each master's works. Actually, ever since Hu Yan discovered his eyes were undergoing a transformation, he had spent a lot of time studying in the Tianhai Pawn Shop's collection room. However, compared to Qin Zixuan's family's private collection, those items were clearly inferior. Old master Qin Baoxiang had managed to gather almost all the surviving works of Jin Huizui masters. Each piece Hu Yan traced back to its origins left a deep impression on his heart. Fortunately, this skill, unlike martial arts, did not require physical flexibility. Ordinary strength and body condition were sufficient. In about an hour, Hu Yan had examined all the Jin Huizui calligraphy and paintings. But he didn't leave immediately after all, opportunities like this were rare. 
Next, he reviewed the Jinhui Zui carved works, mastering the techniques and essence as well. He still had no intention of leaving, because the rows of famous calligraphy and paintings made him reluctant to go. Since the quality of calligraphy and painting greatly affects Jinhui Zui works, Hu Yan examined all the calligraphy works first. Then he moved on to the paintings, both realistic and freehand styles. Interestingly, Qin Baxiang had specially designed niches with bamboo curtains for some renowned pieces, likely to protect them from dust while maintaining ventilation. After viewing several genuine masterpieces, Hu Yan's taste and knowledge naturally evolved. Even so, when he pulled back one of the bamboo curtains, he was stunned. It's a work by Tang Yin, a master of both calligraphy and painting. Excited and fresh from his recent martial arts integration, Hu Yan accidentally broke the bamboo curtain with his uncontrolled strength. However, he didn't dwell on it. A bamboo curtain breaking wasn't a big deal. He immersed himself in Tang Bohu's landscape painting, which also featured Tang Bohu's inscriptions. Ho Yan studied it for a long time. When he finally snapped out of it, he saw a food box nearby. Famished, he opened the box and started eating while still gazing at the painting. After finishing his meal, Hu Yan dived back into the master's works. He then settled into a routine studying when full, eating when hungry, and resting when tired. This cave-like room, built into the mountain, had modern ventilation, but it was impossible to tell day from night. Once Hu Yan had reviewed everything valuable in the Qin family's collection and learned from it, he remembered the bamboo curtain he had torn. Realizing the curtain was crafted by a master, Hu Yan was at a loss for how to repair it. Without suitable materials, fixing it was impossible. Seeing the study area equipped with ink paper and brushes, Hu Yan surmised that Qiu and Baoxiang must enjoy practicing calligraphy and painting here. Hu Yan picked up a brush, and memories of various master's techniques flooded his mind. He carefully recalled and savored the techniques until he felt ready to start. Before long, he had drawn a new bamboo curtain on a sheet of paper. Satisfied with his work, he hung it where the original curtain had been and disposed of the broken bamboo pieces. Worried about being seen on surveillance, and causing a misunderstanding, Hu Yan thought it best not to take anything out. He then went to the iron door and knocked. This was the method Qin Zixuan had told him before she left, as it couldn't be opened from inside. After a long wait, no one came to open the door. Having lost track of time while studying, the wait now felt excruciatingly long. After a while, Hu Yan received a message from Qin Zixuan. Hang in there a bit longer I'm with my parents right now. What? They're back? How long have I been here? Hu Yan realized it was crucial not to let Qin Baoxiang and his wife see him without notifying them first. Qin Zixuan replied with a face-palming emoji. It's been three days. Every time I saw you so absorbed I didn't want to disturb you. I've heard that true geniuses enter a state of forgetting themselves and the world when they study. Learning twice as fast. I used to think it was nonsense. Now I know. There really are monsters like you. Playful. Hu Yan three days? No wonder I visited the bathroom so many times. I thought my kidneys were failing. Mischievous sorry. I hope I didn't interrupt anything important. Qin Zixuan it's fine. Spending these three days with my parents made me realize that nothing is more important than accompanying them. I should thank you for giving me this opportunity. Happy. Ho Yan sees the chance to say, stick with me, and even if we're just fooling around, it's the right thing to do. Want to consider a long-term companionship? Picking nose? Qin Zixuan if I keep talking to you, my mom will suspect I'm in love. I have to go. Bye. Ho Yan puzzled, wondered, is dating not normal in her family? Bored, he studied some items he hadn't examined before. Though he didn't know their use at the time, he later realized how precious Qin Zixuan's opportunity was. All forms of art are interconnected. An appreciation for beauty is cultivated over time. Ho Yan again lost himself in the sea of art and fell asleep without knowing when. When he woke up, Qin Zixuan was sitting not far away, watching him. As soon as Hu Yan opened his eyes, Qin Zixuan looked away. After being immersed in the master's art, Hu Yan saw Qin Zixuan differently. Perhaps fewer people approached her not because of societal harmony or manners, but because. Such a woman made most men feel unworthy. When did you come Hu Yan's mouth felt dry in the enclosed space, making his words slightly incoherent. Qin Zixuan, seemingly nervous, replied, I've been here for a while. Have you been sleeping in the chair these past few days? There's a lounge chair over there. I was so engrossed in the antiques that I didn't realize when I brought the chair over, or when I fell asleep in it Hu Yan explained, feeling a bit foolish but truthful. Immersed in something, one often forgets many things and acts on instinct. Qian Zixuan pouted, showing off again. 
I'm serious. When you see my Jin Huizui work, you'll understand. This time, King Zixuan didn't argue but asked, When can you master it? My dad's birthday is in half a month. Hu Yan replied without hesitation, Now. Qian Zixuan was clearly shocked. She had never seen someone like Hu Yan, almost sleeplessly studying antiques for three to four days. Many calligraphers and painters who had visited her home would often stay for long periods, feeling they hadn't fully grasped the masterpieces. But could Hu Yan really master it in three days? If so, could he still be called a genius? Qin Zixuan's eyes sparkled as she suggested, How about you paint now? Is that okay? I'm not feeling insecure, just worried you might lock me in here again. Before, I lost track of time studying. Now that I'm done, staying here would be torture Hu Yan was honest. Qin Zixuan shook her head, It's fine, I'll keep track of time. My parents are at the company and won't be back until the evening. All right then Hu Yan saw that Qin Zixuan had brought a food box and decided to eat first. Then, he went to the drawing table. Qin Zixuan naturally began grinding ink for Hu Yan. After the ink was ready, Hu Yan picked up the brush, dipped it in ink, and, after some thought, began drawing. Each broken item came to life under Hu Yan's brush. Although Qin Zixuan understood Jin Huizui well, her unique perspective on many artworks was shaped by her family background. Like a famous appraiser in Chinese history, often telling people seeking his expertise, it doesn't seem right, it's not like what we had at home. Those unaware of his identity might think he was boasting. But actually he was Pu Yi. This expertise comes from long-term immersion in a specific environment. Qin Zixuan grew up in a similar setting. Her insight though not at a master's level, was far superior to the average person. For her, Hu Yan's Jin Huizui drawings were like seeing the real objects in front of her. Leaping off the paper. That's what it meant. Like modern 3D art, but more refined and profound. Each broken object appeared with a sense of historical wear. If Qin Zixuan hadn't witnessed it, she would have thought the painting was an ancient masterpiece created through immense effort. Yet, Hu Yan's work took less than half an hour. What Qin Zixuan didn't mention was that the paper Hu Yan used was imperial court paper, each sheet of valuable antique worth tens of thousands. Combined with Qin Baoxiang's antique brush and ink, this painting could easily be mistaken for a Qing dynasty relic over time. Thirsty while painting, Hu Yan absent-mindedly drank from Qin Zixuan's half-finished water bottle. Qin Zixuan blushed but didn't speak, fearing she might disrupt his creative flow. Her gaze on Hu Yan subtly changed. Seeing Hu Yan near finishing his work, she was momentarily entranced. All the broken items had fragments of characters on them. Together they raid you live upstream, I live downstream. Day by day I miss you, though we drink from the same river. After reading it, Qin Zixuan immediately thought of Hu Yan drinking her bottled water. He did it on purpose. Then she looked at the last two lines I hope your heart is like mine, never failing our love moreover, Hu Yan had swapped I and you in the first line, clearly hinting at the vast differences between their families. Suddenly, Qin Zixuan turned and ran away. Ha Hu Yan was left with a headache. He quickly messaged Chu and Zixuan, you promised not to leave me locked in here alone. Sad face. For a long time, there was no reply. He sent another message it's so stuffy in here. Still no reply. Send another. Maybe not. Hu Yan felt he was being too timid. Oh well, timid it is. With nothing else to do. Hu Yan picked up a brush and began to write. After running out, Qin Zixuan felt her heart might burst out of her chest. Other girls her age might have had several romantic experiences by now, but Qin Zixuan was clueless about romance. Since kindergarten boys like Qin San had always been around her. Anyone daring to take her toys would get beaten up. As she grew older, it got even worse. She remembered a boy giving her a note in sixth grade. Qin Zixuan thought he was too childish and wrote back advising him to focus on studies. But before she could give it to him, he transferred schools the next day. In middle school, a tough guy tried to block her path at the school gate. Before he could finish speaking, Qin San beat him up badly. In high school, a top science student confessed to her after their exams, flaunting his nearly perfect score. Qin San then slapped him in the face with Qin Zixuan's nearly perfect literature score. In college, Qin San became even more direct, scaring off any boy interested in her. When she went abroad, he scared off the foreign students too, not letting anyone get within 10 steps of her. Holding her flushed face, Qin Zixuan stomped her foot. She was so angry. Qin San had erased any chance of her having normal interactions with the opposite sex. But she couldn't blame him he was just following orders from Qin Baoxiang, who was overly protective of his only daughter. 
After starting work, she was either surrounded by subordinates or older men, leaving her with no romantic experiences. Whether it was heaven's blessing to Hu Yan or to her, since Hu Yan was appointed by her grandfather, Qin San didn't dare mess with him. Thus, Hu Yan was the only peer she could interact closely with. Qin Zixuan didn't know what to do next. Noticing the patrolling bodyguard's strange looks, she hurried back to her room. Lying on her bed, she stared wide-eyed, feeling lost. She heard the WeChat notifications but didn't dare check them, fearing a blunt confession from Hu Yan. What should I do? What should I do? Suddenly, she thought of her best friend. She quickly messaged Qian Xiao Er. Zhao Er. What does it mean if someone drinks your leftover water? Shortly after, Qian Xiao Er replied, simple, they were thirsty. Qian Zixuan felt exhausted. I mean, if it's someone of the opposite sex. After a while, Qian Xiao Er replied, then they were really thirsty. Qin Zixuan was extremely tired. I mean, if he drank your water, how would you feel? Hey, he. You should have said so earlier. Well, it depends on who it is. If it's my brother, I'd scold him. If it's a stranger, I'd have Xiao Wu beat him up. He he Xiao Wu was Qian Xiao Er's bodyguard. Qin Zixuan sighed again, not a relative or a stranger. What if? It was Hu Yan. What would you do? Impossible, Qian Xiao Er replied firmly. Old Hugh is meticulous and shy he'd rather die of thirst than drink my water. He always avoids me when I hold his arm, blushing. So cute. King Zixuan wondered why communicating with people could be so difficult. Just as she was about to give up on talking to this alien Qian Xiao R sent another message. Xuan Xuan did old Hugh really drink your water? Could he like you? Was it accidental or deliberate? What exactly happened between you two? Five consecutive questions. Though not explicitly made Qin Zixuan sense a bit of jealousy. Could it be? The Qin Zixuan thought about how Hu Ji Yaxin went to work for Qian Xiao Er and even stayed at her place. Later, when Hu Yan helped Yao Ru, Qian Xiao Er also recruited him. Suddenly, Qin Zixuan felt quite isolated. And this seemingly carefree Qian Xiao Er was using such high-level tactics? Is this the famous saying about keeping your best friends at bay? But now wasn't the time to hesitate. No, just like you said, Hu Yan is so timid and meticulous, he wouldn't drink my water even if he were dying of thirst. I was just asking, what if someone like Hu Yan drank your water, how would you feel? After a while, Qian Xiao replied, I'd drink his water. Smirking face. Qin Zixuan blushed, not talking to you anymore, you're being naughty. Qian Xiao replied, next time, I'll try giving Hu Yan my leftover water. Qin Zixuan bit her lip, feeling very conflicted. After a long time, she finally decided to check Hu Yan's messages. To her surprise, there was nothing romantic or heart racing. Qin Zixuan was annoyed. Stuffed? Stay stuffed. Coward. After thinking for a moment, she sent Hu Yan a message. Would you drink Qian Xiao Er's leftover water? Feeling like a genius, Qin Zixuan believed she handled it perfectly, despite her lack of romantic experience. Sitting obediently on her bed, she waited for Hu Yan's reply. One minute passed, no reply. Two minutes, still nothing. Three minutes. Ten minutes. Qin Zixuan started gritting her teeth, thinking that Hu Yan was avoiding the question made her stomach hurt. But she kept telling herself, he must be tired and fell asleep. Not knowing how much time passed, Qin Zixuan fell asleep. At noon, Uncle Qin called Qin Zixuan to lunch. Qin Zixuan ate mechanically, finding no joy in the meal. After eating she wanted to take food to Hu Yan but was afraid. After a brief psychological struggle, Qin Zixuan decided to check on him. Seeing Hu Yan sleeping soundly on the lounge chair, she breathed a sigh of relief. So, he really fell asleep and wasn't avoiding me. Watching the sleeping Hu Yan, Qin Zixuan no longer felt nervous and studied his features. Memories of their time together played like a movie in her mind. So ordinary, yet so magical. Thinking of all the things Hu Yan had done, only magical could describe it. As she mustered the courage to cover Hu Yan with a blanket, she noticed a painting on the drawing table. The blanket slipped to the floor as Qin Zixuan's trembling fingers brushed the paper. It was a realistic painting, meticulously detailed. A perfect profile of a woman in a soft dress, outlining her figure beautifully. She stood by a large window, looking at the bustling crowd below. She seemed aloof and stunning, yet also lonely. Someone far away was secretly sketching this scene. The beautiful woman was unmistakably Qin Zixuan, capturing her essence perfectly. Her usual authoritative demeanor was vividly portrayed, 
along with a subtle loneliness only those who knew her well could detect. The distant figure sketching her, though in the background, bore Hu Yan's likeness. Interestingly, under his pencil, it was also Qin Zixuan, from a different angle. Other details matched her office. The balance of detailed and simplified elements was perfect. The overall composition was impeccable. Most importantly, the painting used traditional techniques to depict modern subjects, avoiding the awkwardness of ancient portrait styles. It was as if Qin Zixuan's figure had been perfectly miniaturized and placed on the paper. Sai, your talent is intimidating, Qin Zixuan murmured. Perhaps she had long known she liked Hu Yan, but each surprise from him made her feel the gap between them was enormous. No matter how highly she thought of him, it felt like she was only seeing a fraction of his potential. She never knew when Hu Yan would again display his extraordinary talent. In front of him, her only confidence seemed to be her looks. Yet proud women often feel that men who like them for their appearance aren't good men. Qin Zixuan was no exception. She wanted to be loved for her talent, her heart, and her higher qualities. But compared to Hu Yan, these seemed increasingly inadequate. If she couldn't be sure of Hu Yan's feelings now, it wasn't an issue of emotional intelligence, but intelligence itself. She admitted her emotional intelligence was lacking in matters of the heart, but she was confident in her intellect. Thus, as she looked, her eyes grew moist. Sadly, her moment of sentiment was short-lived as she noticed more paintings beside it. One depicted a girl practicing swordsmanship in a bamboo forest under the rain, her graceful stance and beauty only matched by Yao Ru. A lump formed in her throat, feeling very uncomfortable. Next was a perpetually sweet-smiling beauty, unmistakably Qian Xiao R, looking even more adorable than in person. Qin Zixuan felt her cultivated composure slipping away. She wanted to wake Hu Yan and scold him. But then she saw a piece of calligraphy underneath. Fallen flowers are like rubies, green plums are small. Swallows fly, circling the green water around homes. Blown away by the wind, willow fluff dwindles. Where in the world can't fragrant grass be found? Inside the wall, a swing outside a path. A girl on the swing, laughing, as passers-by outside admire. The laughter fades. The silence grows. The loving are troubled by the unfeeling. Is this meant to infuriate me? Qin Zixuan felt so wronged. Qin Zixuan felt incredibly sad and wronged. Tears streamed down her face. It felt as if something that rightfully belonged to her had suddenly been taken away by someone else. Before experiencing this herself, she used to scorn women in online videos fighting mistresses, thinking, it's your man who can't keep it together, why blame the other woman? If it were me, I'd beat up the scumbag instead. But now she couldn't blame Hu Yan. Instead she felt a growing resentment towards Qian Xiao Er and Yao Ru. Women. Qin Zixuan shook her head with a bitter smile realizing she was just as conventional as anyone else. She stared at the three paintings, lost in thought. After a long time, a different feeling began to rise within her. The other two paintings had only one main subject. But in her painting there were two people, and it was depicted from the perspective of the person secretly watching her. The one sketching her was Hu Yan himself. What did this mean? Qin Zixuan's heart raced, and a radiant smile appeared on her tear-streaked face. Wiping her tears, she suddenly noticed Hu Yan was awake, staring at her in confusion. Yu Hu Yan asked, bewildered, are you crying or laughing? Qin Zixuan wiped her reddened eyes and playfully said, none of your business then she turned away, why didn't you reply to my messages? Hao Yan replied, it was you who didn't reply to mine he showed her his phone. My battery died, I didn't see your messages. How could I reply? Qin Zixuan seemed to cheer up and turned to look at Hu Yan. Do you think Yao Ru is very beautiful? Hao Yan nodded, yes, when I first saw her practicing swordsmanship, I was amazed. Such a natural beauty in the city, moving as if she were in a serene forest. I was so impressed I just had to draw her. Hao Yan spoke so naturally that it left Qian Zixuan at a loss. And. Do you think Qian Xiao R is very pretty? Hao Yan nodded again, yes Xiao R is always so optimistic. Her genuine happiness can lift anyone's spirits. When you're around her, you forget your worries. That's why she was the second person I drew. Qin Zixuan was confused. I thought boys were supposed to sweet talk girls. Am I hearing the wrong things? She bit her lip. Do you like them? Hu Yan scratched his head. Like them? Yes, I like them. Qin Zixuan felt her heart sink. Hao Yan continued. Artists tend to capture things they find beautiful, things they like. Even when depicting something sad, it's something unforgettable. Qin Zixuan sighed with relief realizing he was talking about the artist's perspective, not romantic feelings. 
What she didn't know was that Hu Yan was internally sweating, thinking, good thing I'm quick-witted. Back then, he was bored and eager to showcase his newly learned skills. Initially, he wanted to draw Qin Zixuan directly, but his personality made him hesitant. So he drew Yao Ru first, thinking it turned out well. Unable to resist, he then drew Qian Xiao Eir. But when it came to drawing Qin Zixuan, he truly lost himself in the process, pouring out his emotions uncontrollably. Without realizing it, he drew himself watching her from afar. In fact, this had happened before. Hu Yan had once secretly drawn Qin Zixuan, but it turned out so badly that she looked like a horror movie character. Thinking of this, Hu Yan couldn't help but smile. Seeing his strange smile, Qin Zixuan felt deceived. What are you smiling about? Oh, I was just remembering an old drawing Hu Yan thought of his earlier, crude drawing compared to his current, near photographic work, and felt a sense of accomplishment, smiling broadly. But Qin Zixuan had no idea what he was thinking. She just felt something was off. Show me that drawing you mentioned. The original is in my dorm in Jiangqing. I have a photo on my phone, but it's out of battery. Qin Zixuan didn't say a word. She pulled a power bank from her bag and handed it to him. After charging his phone, Hu Yan saw Qin Zixuan's message. Would you drink Qian Xiao Eir's leftover water? Hu Yan panicked. Did she realize I drank her water on purpose? Pretending not to notice the message, he found the photo and showed it to Qin Zixuan. She stared at it for a long time. Is this Sadako? Ah uh, Hu Yan was speechless. Hey, why does the background look like the one in the recent painting Qin Zixuan huffed, old Hu? I think you're deliberately making me look bad. Seeing her pouting face, Hu Yan felt a sense of surreal nostalgia. That drawing was from when he first started working at Tianhai Pawn Shop, secretly drawing Qin Zixuan. Back then, the gap between them felt insurmountable. Now, here they were, chatting casually. Life truly was strange. Actually I spent a long time on this drawing because back then, I couldn't draw at all Hu Yan explained awkwardly. Qin Zixuan blushed. She stood up. We should go back before my parents return and we get stuck here. Hu Yan nodded, what about these paintings? Qin Zixuan realized they couldn't let Qin Baoxiang see them. Take them all. I'll keep them safe. Hu Yan was puzzled, why you? They're my paintings. I need to review and color them later. Qin Zixuan stomped her foot, I don't care. I'll keep them. Okay, okay. Okay. On the way back, Hu Yan slept almost the whole time. Qin Zixuan understanding, didn't disturb him. Back in Jiangcheng, she told Hu Yan to rest at home while she went to the office. When Hu Yan returned to his dorm, he found Zhao Peng there. The table was cluttered with documents. When did you become so diligent? Zhao Peng replied, with the store about to open, there's a lot to do. You were away, so I had to plan the future development myself. Check out these plans and see if they're okay. He handed a stack of papers to Hu Yan. Yawning and stretching, Hu Yan lethargically reviewed Zhao Peng's ambitious business plans. A bunch of useless paper. Zhao Peng was upset. Old Hu. That's harsh. I spent days on this. You barely looked at it and dismissed it. Hu Yan thought. I didn't need to look to know it was trash. He shook his head. Your store is just a small antique shop and not a big company. Your plans are overcomplicated. Focus on identifying your customer base and targeting products accordingly. Then ensure good service. It's simple. You're overthinking it. Trying to cater to everyone means you capture none. After drinking a glass of water he continued, how much are you investing? High-end antiques can cost millions, even billions. Stocking them doesn't guarantee sales. Save your effort. Zhao Peng slumped, disheartened. Starting a business is tough. What we learned in school isn't much help. I'm completely confused now. I was confident before, but now I don't know what's right. This is common for first-time entrepreneurs. Ho Yan wanted to help Zhao Peng learn but knew leaving him entirely on his own would lead to failure. I'll give you some direction Hu Yan began. Don't just mimic other antique shops. That street is declining, filled with fakes. It's a dead-end business model. Look at online bestsellers. Focus on those items to at least break even. I'll help you source some genuine items occasionally for higher profit. Xiao Peng nodded enthusiastically. That's a good plan. He immediately started researching popular online items. Modern homes and businesses often need decorative pieces, contributing to the success of businesses like Qian Xiao Weir's. Though Zhao Peng's shop couldn't compete with her prime location, they could target a different market segment. Ha Yan didn't want to spell out every detail, as it might foster dependence. 
He had learned this from Qian Zixuan, who always did her own research and planning before consulting him, ensuring she stayed proactive. In the evening, Hu Yan received another message from Qian Zixuan. Why haven't you replied to my last message? Hu Yan sighed, women were indeed troublesome. In the desert, I'd definitely drink it. Qian Zixuan sent an angry emoji, I meant in normal circumstances. Hu Yan oh well, Xiao R would surely bring me a bottle. Qin Zixuan gritted her teeth, feeling a pang in her stomach. The next day, Hu Yan visited the appraisal department at Tianhai Pawn Shop. Qin Zixuan had given him some time off, so he was just dropping by to greet everyone. The appraisers now had a very good impression of Hu Yan, greeting him warmly. Master Hu, why don't you stay with us in the appraisal department? It's more secure to earn a living with your skills. Yes, why get involved in the mess over there? With your keen eye, you'd have the best prospects here. Ho Yan just smiled and nodded, not committing either way. Wang Quansheng pulled Hu Yan aside. Xiao Hu, if you ask me, you should listen to everyone and come back. Ho Yan smiled, why? Are you worried I won't do well in sales like Qun Tian does? Wang Quansheng nodded, to be honest, the sales department has been booming lately. Many of the stock items have been sold at higher prices and sales are going well. Right now the sales team is praising Qin Tian to the skies. Hu Yan said, that's normal. The items sold at higher prices often see an increase in value. Some buyers have noticed this trend, so naturally the items sell well. Wang Quanxing nodded in agreement. Hu Yan continued, but do you think this will last? Wang Quanxing hesitated before saying, it's hard to say. Some items were bought by former appraisers who left, and some were overvalued when they were acquired. So, it's a 50-50 situation. Do you think you can win? The bet between Hu Yan and Qian Tian had become widely known, which was why the appraisers were urging Hu Yan to come back. Ha Yan smiled, let's say half of the items sold start to decrease in value after being purchased. What do you think will happen? Wang Quanxing thought for a moment, that would definitely be a problem. Since he's following your previous strategy, and the items are labeled as highly recommended by senior appraiser it wouldn't just cause public backlash against our pawn shop. We, the appraisers, might also take the blame. Ho Yan smiled, what if I told you that over 90% of the items he raised prices on will drop in value? What would you think then? Wang Quanxing was stunned. Without saying more, Hu Yan greeted everyone and left. After leaving Tianhai Pawn Shop, Hu Yan picked up Zhao Peng. They had arranged to meet Zhao Peng's business partner that day. They met at a restaurant near the Antique Street. Zhao Peng called his partner, and soon a tall, slightly dark-skinned middle-aged man arrived. Hello. Hello, he shook Hu Yan's hand firmly. My name is Wang Dong. I've heard a lot about you. I've been busy but now I finally get to meet you. You are indeed talented and promising. Hu Yan smiled. Brother Dong, you're too kind. We have much to learn from you. Wang Dong waved his hand. Oh, I don't know much. I just have some spare money and don't know where to invest it. Zhao Peng mentioned his close friend as a top appraiser at Tianhai Pawn Shop, and I got interested. He introduced the slightly plump woman with him. This is my wife Wu Yuan Yuan. Wu Yuan Yuan warmly extended her hand, hello brother Hu. I've heard so much about you. Ho Yan shook her fingertips briefly sister Yuan, you're too kind. After chatting briefly, Hu Yan found Wang Dong quite agreeable, though Wu Yuan Yuan seemed a bit materialistic, dressed in all name brands. It seemed Wang Dong wanted to find something for his wife to do. Indeed during the meal, Wang Dong mentioned they had been married for eight years without children but had a good relationship. Wu Yuan Yuan was anxious and had tried artificial insemination several times, spending tens of thousands with no success. Wang Dong, worried about his wife's well-being, wanted to open a store for her to pass the time. Hu Yan felt he might have been overthinking things. The meal went well, and Wang Dong made it clear he was busy with work and often away, so Zhao Peng and Wu Yuan Yuan would manage the store, with Hu Yan helping when possible. Zhao Ping presented the business strategy approved by Hu Yan, and Wang Dong agreed. The plan was set. Back at Tianhai Garden, Zhao Peng asked. What do you think? Aren't they nice people? Ha Yan nodded. They seem fine now. But in business partnerships, many things can go wrong. It's good to stay cautious. Zhao Peng nodded but didn't seem to take it to heart. Ha Yan decided he would have to keep an eye out for Zhao Peng. He suggested selecting mid-tier products from Qian Xiao Yi's suppliers as those had been market tested and were well received. After calling Qian Xiao Ar, she readily agreed. They sourced second-grade glass crafts from Yangcheng Chemical Glass Workshop, and Hu Yan found other suppliers for the rest. 
Ho Yan also planned to create some paintings and calligraphy to help Zhao Peng's store stand out, though he didn't tell Zhao Peng this. Zhao Peng wasn't aware of Hu Yan's artistic skills. Nowadays, Hu Yan's works could sell for around 100,000 yuan each, but he told Zhao Peng they cost 20,000 each to avoid hurting his pride. Even if sold through official channels, Hu Yan's works would net about 30,000 yuan after all expenses. That evening, to thank Qian Xiao Er, Ho Yan and Zhao Peng invited her to dinner. Ho Yan also wanted to complete a task assigned by Qin Zixuan. Since the weather had cooled, and this was a formal thank you dinner, a seafood barbecue restaurant seemed fitting. After searching they chose the newly opened Ultimate Grill chain near the university town, convenient for Hu Ji Yaxin and Yao Ru. After booking a private room, Hu Yan sent the location to Qin Zixuan and the others. Soon, three beautiful women arrived. Qian Xiao Er hugged Hu Yan's arm, Old Hu, where have you been? Why didn't you come to play with me? Hu Yan, still not used to Qian Xiao Er's enthusiasm, blushed and said, Zhao Peng was starting a business, and I was busy with work. Qian Xiao Er's best trait was her willingness to believe what she was told, so she smiled at Hu Yan without any displeasure. It had been a while since Hu Yan saw Hu Ji Yaxin and Yao Ru. University seemed to have matured Hu Ji Xin, who now wore light makeup, looking even more beautiful. She hugged Hu Yan's other arm, clearly affectionate and missing him. Jiaxin, if you date don't choose someone far away. I don't want to have to travel miles to see you. Hu Yan's words made Hu Jiaxin happy. Right. I wouldn't leave you or our parents. I'll settle in Jiangcheng. You earn the money and buy me a big house, and I won't get married. Dream on Hu Yan replied but then asked, which place do you like? Tianhai Garden is nice. And so is Qian Xiao Er's Jin Yuan. Hao Yan's face fell, you overestimate me. I can't afford those places. I'm not in a hurry. You can save up. Hao Yan pinched her cheek, you're really taking advantage of me. Everyone laughed. Hao Yan had learned to be more sociable, handling Hu Jiaxin effortlessly. Only Yao Ru stood a bit away, head down and blushing. At the table, Hu Yan sat between Qian Xiao Er and Yao Ru. After thanking Qian Xiao Er for her help, which she dismissed as nothing compared to what Hu Yan had done for her, he quietly discussed his concerns about Zhao Peng and asked her to help guide him. Qian Xiao Er readily agreed. As they ate, Hu Yan asked Yao Ru about her university life, if she had any difficulties, urging her to speak up if she did. Yao Ru, feeling out of place, was startled by Hu Yan's attention. And no, everything's fine. Jiaxing takes care of me, and Xiao Er gave me lots of clothes. There's nothing wrong. Ho Yan, used to Yao Ru's shyness, explained, Our boss, Zhuang Xuan, wants to develop your family's medicine. Don't worry, the price will be fair. He shared his ideas with Yao Ru, who listened quietly, occasionally nodding. Ho Yan saw the look on Hu Jiaxin's face. But he felt innocent, wondering if his newfound social skills were completely wrong. Did I do something wrong? What Hu Yan didn't know was that since Yao Ru started attending Jiang Chong University, she had shown extraordinary talent. She was not only the beauty of her department in college, but also an academic genius, a model of diligent study in university. Hu Ji Shaksin, always close to her, knew Yao Ru best. Yao Ru's hard work was driven by her desire to follow in someone's footsteps. Although that person didn't show amazing talent in college, he became exceptionally brilliant after entering the workforce, shining like a comet. He relied on his abilities, not his family or connections, to achieve success and showcase talents that others could barely keep up with. Although Yao Ru never said it, Hu Jiaxing knew that person was her brother, Hu Yan. Yao Ru had seen Hu Yan's impromptu painting at Qian Xiao Er's shop, which had shocked everyone, including her. In her innocent mind, Yao Ru believed that Hu Yan had worked tirelessly during college, accumulating knowledge and skills that led to his later success. So she studied hard every day, hoping to catch up to him and one day follow in his footsteps. Ho Yan, despite his extraordinary vision, didn't make a habit of prying into people's privacy. How could he know Yao Ru's thoughts? So, he ignored his sister's constant reproach and continued discussing business with Yao Ru. In essence, what he needed from Yao's family wasn't much. First they needed to sign an authorization agreement allowing Tianhai Group to use their ancestral formulas. After that, things became easier. The Yao family only needed to provide a few key natural ingredients, and Hu Yan, having mastered the production methods, could handle the rest in the factory. But the crux of Qin Zixuan's plan was to secure not just the natural skincare mask and occupational disease remedy formulas, but all the Yao family's formulas. 
Qin Zixuan believed that as a martial arts family, the Yao family must have several valuable recipes. Indeed, this was true. Almost every martial arts family, even those immersed in the modern urban flow, had their own unique medicinal formulas and techniques for bone setting and massage. However, due to the scarcity of natural medicinal ingredients, these formulas had lost much of their effectiveness. The lack of potent, aged herbs had been one of the reasons for the decline of traditional Chinese medicine. Sure enough, when Hu Yan asked, Yao Ru shared several practical formulas, with abundant main ingredients available in her hometown. As expected, Yao Ru herself knew various massage techniques. Hu Yan, following Qin Zixuan's instructions, asked, Can your massage techniques be taught to others? Yao Ru thought for a moment and bit her lip. If it were before, my father wouldn't have agreed. But after going to university and learning a lot, I think such traditional culture shouldn't be kept within one family. It should be shared to help more people. Ho Yan nodded vigorously, you're right. Our country has grown strong, and during the National Day, we saw flags waving everywhere. That's not due to one person but the collective effort of our entire nation. Yes Yao Ru said, lifting her head slightly. When I watched the parade the other day, I couldn't help but cry. I'm so lucky to live in this era. Gaining courage, Yao Ru looked at Hu Yan and said, Can you help my fellow villagers? Go ahead Hu Yan encouraged her to speak. It's like this Yao Ru explained that girls from Yao's village had to marry out. Despite being hardworking and skilled in martial arts, they struggled in modern society without education. They couldn't open their own massage shops without medical licenses and faced harsh conditions in massage parlors. Even with their skills, they worked the lowest jobs, and some of Yao Ru's friends had to collect scrap to survive in the outskirts of Jiangcheng. Returning home wasn't an option due to village rules girls had to work and marry out to introduce potential partners to the village's young men. Ho Yan said, that's no problem. We can hire them. With their skills, they'll get better treatment. Thank you. Thank you Yao Ru was visibly moved. Ho Yan added, not only that, but the girls from your village can also come to our company to learn. Once they come of age, they can work for us. Their families can help Yao's father collect herbs, improving everyone's lives. In a few years, when we have more funds, we can build a road to your village, making it less isolated. Yao Ru's face lit up, her eyes sparkling. Brother Hugh, you think just like me. I chose to study architecture because I wanted to design a road to my village. Ho Yan nodded. Building your hometown with your own hands is a great dream. I hope you achieve it soon. Everyone applauded, genuinely happy for Yao Ru. In today's society, many people lose their ideals to the pursuit of money. But someone like Yao Ru, with pure intentions, inspired admiration and respect. Zhao Peng raised his glass, whether or not I become wealthy, I hope to help when you build that road. Thank you Yao Ru stood and bowed to Zhao Peng. Thank you Brother Peng. Don't mention it Zhao Peng stood up too. Little Ru, your dedication to your dream is admirable. Cheers. Everyone stood up, raising their glasses. Count me in. A and me. Hu Jiaxin hugged Yao Ru. I'll use my dowry to help build your road. Thank you. Thank you all Yao Ru though choked up, was clearly very happy. Afterwards, Hu Yan and Yao Ru discussed visiting her fellow villagers during the National Day holiday. Hu Yan called Qin Zixuan in front of everyone. Qin, everything's settled with Yao Ru. You can proceed with your plan. Also, I've agreed that the girls from Yao's village can work at our company. They have good skills. Qin Zixuan no problem. I'll start negotiations tomorrow. Knowing Hu Yan was with Yao Ru and the others, Qin Zixuan briefly instructed him and hung up. Earlier, when Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan had discussed this, she had already eyed a cosmetics factory. It was a Korean-owned enterprise that went bankrupt due to boycotts a few years ago and still owed bank loans, making it easy to acquire. With the deal sealed, everyone was in high spirits. Hu Yan and Zhao Peng drank a few more glasses. Qian Xiao Er, who also had a few drinks, was now blushing and looking at Hu Yan with half-closed eyes. Old Hu, I think you're getting more handsome. Do you have a girlfriend? If not, maybe I should make a move. She even lifted Hu Yan's chin playfully. Despite the alcohol, Hu Yan blushed, stop it. Everyone's watching. He and Xiao Er, either genuinely drunk or pretending, handed Hu Yan her half-finished drink, Old Hu, I'm drunk. You finish this for me. Hu Yan immediately thought of Qin Zixuan's message, could they be testing me? Seeing his hesitation, Qian Xiao Er pouted. What? Are you afraid I'm dirty? I've never had a boyfriend, my first kiss is still intact. Flustered. Hu Yan said, Xiao Er, you're drunk. Maybe we should call it a night, and I'll take you home. 
No way Qian Xiao are pouted like a child, I want you to help me drink, I still want to drink more. Drink more Hu Yan pointed to himself, why should I drink for you? Help me drink a few so I can take a break Qian Xiao Er said coquettishly. I'm too happy to go home early. Hao Yan having no other choice, drank her glass in one gulp. Qian Xiao Er delighted, poured another, old Hu, you're the best. Let's drink. After downing another beer, Qian Xiao Er barely sipped hers and passed it to Hu Yan again. Thinking one more wouldn't hurt, Hu Yan drank it. Qian Xiao Er clapped her hands in joy, and before he knew it, kissed him on the cheek. Everyone laughed and cheered. Hu Yan, covering his face, was in shock. He had heard of guys getting girls drunk to take advantage, but now he was the one being plied with drinks and kissed. Am I easy to bully? Hu Yan felt upset but then laughed. No, it's not that. It's just that I'm too damn charming. The next day, when Hu Yan and Yao Ru arrived at the scrapyard on the outskirts of the city, they couldn't believe their eyes. Mountains of waste piled high, with rows of shabby houses nearby. A small, murky river flowed in front of these makeshift homes, its water dark and foul-smelling. The stench was unbearable even from a distance. Qian Xiao Er and Hu Ji Jiaxing covered their noses, while even Zhao Peng thought this place was unfit for human habitation. After getting out of the car, Yao Ru led the way, with Hu Yan and the others following behind. Seeing Yao Ru, or perhaps because she had informed them beforehand, three girls around 20 years old waved and ran over. After greeting Yao Ru, she introduced them to Hu Yan and the others. This is Kai Lan, Jia Zhu, and Ji Fang Shu. Some other sisters are out collecting scraps, and will be back later. From Yao Ru's introduction, they learned that the person managing the place was Liu Xu the boyfriend of a girl from Yao Jia village named Wen Yu. Liu Xu had a leg disability, which allowed him to stay during several rounds of inspections, but it was likely that the area would still need to be redeveloped soon. Yao Ru's fellow villagers were all quite good-looking and delicate, though not as striking as Yao Ru herself. They had just arrived and were shy, curiously glancing at Hu Yan and the others and whispering to Yao Ru. After being invited into one of the houses, Qi Lan poured hot water for everyone. Zhao Peng looked around and, despite being an orphan, had never seen such a dilapidated place. They sat on old paint buckets with cushions, which even Hu Yan found uncomfortable. They exchanged looks but remained silent. Given their life experiences, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Even Qian Xiao Er's usually cheerful face was now devoid of a smile. She had never seen or imagined a place like this or people living in such conditions. Her eyes were wet, unable to meet the eyes of the residents. Perhaps she felt that her pitying gaze would disrespect these people who maintained their smiles despite living in such a place. Hu Ji Shaxing clung tightly to Yao Ru, holding her sleeve as if afraid Yao Ru might run away. Ho Yan, deep in thought, looked around the room, occasionally stopping to examine something closely. Through the conversation between Yao Ru and the girls, they learned that Liu Xu was originally from another province and had struggled in Jiangcheng for many years, experiencing many hardships. Later, he got into a fight and broke his leg. Unable to do heavy work, he started collecting scrap. When Yu met Liu Xu at a construction site shortly after leaving home, Liu Xu had taken care of her, and soon they were together. When Yu, with her kind heart, would take in fellow villagers who had nowhere to go, provided they didn't mind the filth, Ku Lan and the others, unfamiliar with Jiang Cheng, stayed to guard the piles of scrap. Those who had been there longer went out to collect scrap and returned to help sort it. However, they made very little money, just enough to eat and drink, and gradually learned about city life. When Yao Ru mentioned finding them jobs, the three girls were overjoyed. Third sister, did you find big sister and second sister? Yao Ru shook her head sadly. It turned out Yao Ru had two older sisters. They had come to Jiangcheng years ago, forced out by village rules, losing contact soon after. Their father had visited Jiangcheng Xing several times but couldn't find them. Hao Yan had heard about this from Hu Jiaxin before. Yao Ru would go out searching whenever she had time but only had childhood photos of her sisters to go by. Hao Yan had thought about checking with the police but hadn't had the time due to his busy schedule. After Yao Ru finished talking with the girls about their job arrangements, they were very grateful to Hu Yan, who felt a bit embarrassed. You don't have to be so polite. Xiao Ru is like a sister to me. Besides, you are well suited for the jobs. If you can find more villagers we will hire them too, with good wages. Q Lan, the more outgoing of the three asked, is there a place to live? Hu Yan nodded of course, there's an employee dormitory. I live there too. Q Lan's eyes lit up in food. Hu Yan nodded again. 
the employee cafeteria serves at least four dishes and a soup. The three girls exchanged excited looks, their eyes shining. Ho Yan continued, it's even better than you think. The dorms have hot water all day, uniforms are provided, and you get eight days off each month. There's also overtime pay, after training you'll receive professional qualifications. When your contract ends, if you don't want to stay or move away, you can open your own therapy clinic. The girls were wide-eyed, speechless. Xie Azhu held Yao Ru's hand. Third sister, if you hadn't brought this news, we'd think it was a scam. Everyone laughed. Ho Yan, seriously, added, when you start earning, be careful. Only lend money to family and Xiao Ru, no one else. The girls nodded solemnly. After chatting for a while Hu Yan asked, Is this your room? Ji Fang Xu nodded, It used to be Wen Yu's room. After she got married we moved in. Hao Yan nodded and casually picked up a dirty, oily string of beads from a tray. This looks nice. Can I buy it? Qi Lan said, Brother Hu, you've helped us so much, just take it. I found it in the trash, how can I sell it to you? Ho Yan smiled, thanks and wrapped the beads in a tissue, putting them in his pocket. He also took some broken porcelain pieces and small dishes, noting the time. It was already noon, so he invited Yao Ru and the girls for lunch, but they insisted on staying to watch the place. Ho Yan ordered takeout for them, and promised to pick them up for work in a few days. On the way back, Hu Yan asked about the place. It turned out Lu Xu had bought it with compensation money after his leg was broken in a fight. Unable to do heavy work, he started a scrapyard. Although the construction department had pressured him to clean up, Lu Xu's disability and ownership of the land meant they couldn't push him too hard. However, Lu Xu knew it couldn't last. Hao Yan told Yao Ru, tell Lu Xu he should get proper permits and renovate the place. I'll cover the costs. But Yao Ru shook her head, Lu Xu is very proud. He wouldn't accept that. Hu Yan suggested, then tell him I'll invest. Yao Ru called Lu Xu who agreed but insisted on giving Hu Yan only a 30% share, with plans to buy it back when he could. Seeing Yao Ru's apologetic look, Ho Yan laughed. You silly girl, I would help him even without shares. Everyone laughed, making Yao Ru blush. Ho Yan genuinely wanted to help Lu Xu, but he also had a motive. The scrapyard might contain valuable items, making it worth his investment. Just as Hu Yan was about to take everyone to lunch, Qin Zixuan called saying there was an issue with the acquisition. Hu Yan dropped them off at the shopping district and drove to East City. An hour later, Hu Yan arrived at the TNU Cosmetics factory, where Qin Zixuan was waiting. He called her, and soon, she and her team came out. True to her usual style, Qin Zixuan had refused the factory's invitation to a drinking session. Once in the car, she gave Hu Yan the name of a restaurant, and he started driving there. What happened? Hu Yan asked. Qin Zixuan sighed, it was going well initially. The factory's scale and equipment were decent. But then complications arose. When they heard Tianhai was interested in an acquisition, they wanted to include their products in the deal. It turned out the factory had closed recently, leaving a large stock of finished products, semi-finished products, and various raw materials. It was nearly impossible to ship these back to their home country, as the cost would be almost equal to the value of the goods. Therefore, the sellers demanded that Tianhai purchase these items. They argued that since Tianhai also produced cosmetics, these materials would be useful. Although the price was low, Qin Zixuan intended to create her own brand. Keeping those products would mean integrating them into the Tianhai brand, which would make Tianhai reliant on the original factory's technology. Essentially, the sellers were not just trying to offload leftover products they wanted a stake in Tianhai's success. Their condition was to provide free technology and only require salaries for the core technical staff. However, they wanted 15% of the operational profits. In other words, without investing anything, they wanted 15% of the new factory's profits. Ho Yan laughed, typical of them to be so sneaky. But I have a way to deal with them. Qin Zixuan, feeling troubled, perked up at this. What's your plan? Ho Yan asked. Is it true that only products made using their technology and raw materials will require giving them a share, while those made entirely with our technology and materials will not? Yes, they're confident that our products won't surpass theirs. They believe we'll still rely on their products. This way we'll cover the costs while they do nothing and still earn 15% of the profits. It's infuriating, Qin Zixuan said, feeling frustrated. Hao Yan shook his head with a smile, Qin. You're overthinking this. You're worried our own products won't be good enough and want to use theirs as a safety net. Qian Zixuan admitted, yes, 
That's why I wanted to acquire this factory. Otherwise their facilities and products are of no value to me. Building our own factory would be more cost-effective, though it would take longer. Ho Yan said. I believe our products will be successful. Based on this we have two options. Wait. How do you know our products will succeed? Qin Zixuan interrupted. Ho Yan explained, because I have all the formulas from Yao Ru's family. The key ingredients are only two main herbs which are common in Yao Jia village and some remote areas, especially the natural face mask, which I call rejuvenation serum, even a small amount added to basic skincare products has excellent effects. Qin Zixuan nodded, I've tested that. Just as you said, the serum works wonders when added to non-chemical skincare products she glared at Hu Yan. But she Yao Ru gave you all the formulas, she must really trust you. Ho Yan rubbed his nose, unable to explain that it was his eyes that revealed the formulas. He quickly changed the subject, I think the TNU CEO has a backup plan. They're confident in their products, but if our products outperform theirs, they have another layer of protection. I thought of that too. The core production process of the rejuvenation serum must be handled by reliable people. Ho Yan nodded, that's easy. Make Yao Ru the supervisor and recruit a few of her trusted villagers as assistants. Qin Zixuan agreed all right, what are the two options? Ho Yan said, first we can agree to their terms, but we'll sell the products in their country first. I heard their brand is quite popular there. The CEO is in debt due to past issues, so building a new factory back home is not feasible. This made sense. If they couldn't run the factory successfully in China, they wouldn't be able to do it back home, where costs were higher. Qin Zixuan thought for a moment, I get it. You're saying that if their brand becomes popular again in their country, our compatriots will start looking for it here. By then, the brand will be revived in our market too. This could work. Easing the resistance against their brand, and then selling it domestically. They might consider this. Ho Yan continued, exactly. So, if we take this route, we need exclusive rights to the brand in our country. Yes. We can't revive the brand only for them to use it to compete against us with imports. Ho Yan nodded, precisely. I doubt they'll agree, as it blocks their biggest market and doesn't align with their interests. And the second option. Ho Yan said. The second option is to cooperate but give them 30% or even 40% of the shares. However, they must cover the costs of the factory acquisition, products, and staff salaries. King Zixuan shook her head. On the surface, this seems like a win for us but it's a huge loss. If people know it's partly owned by us, they'll support it unconditionally if the product is good. Reviving the brand would be easy. And giving them 30 to 40 percent is a steal. They'd agree in a heartbeat and might even ask for more under the pretense of making up for their losses. Ho Yan smiled, then give it to them. As long as it's not more than half. But we should negotiate a bit and make it look real. Kyun Zixuan still didn't understand. What are you thinking? Nothing complicated, Hu Yan said. I'm just confident in our products. Seeing him being mysterious, Qin Zixuan glared at him, spit it out. Ho Yan chuckled. The key is their existing formulas and raw materials. Realizing his point, Qin Zixuan said, You mean we just don't use their products and raw materials at all? We use our own, hold a press conference, and make it clear that this is now our brand. They won't get a penny, right? Ho Yan nodded. Exactly. Creating a new brand from scratch is harder than reviving an existing one. Qin Zixuan smiled, that's quite sneaky. But I like it. They've scammed us enough in the past. I have no problem tricking them this time. Ho Yan nodded actually, this is an old trick they've used. Many of their personal care products are based on our technology, bought cheaply and sold back to us at high prices. At most, we're only tricking their CEO, not their people. Qin Zixuan nodded true. But when people know the truth, will be seen as heroes she beamed with excitement. However, she soon identified a problem. But the issue is we can't replicate their product's texture, appearance, and scent exactly. Ha Yan said, leave that to me. I've mastered their formulas. We just need to remove harmful substances like gutter oil, artificial colors, paraffin, methylparaben, ethylene urea, propylene glycol, urea etc. Qin Zixuan laughed. So, their remaining raw materials and products are indeed useless. Feeling better, Qin Zixuan continued. I've always wondered why so many people spend money on harmful products. We have many good, affordable domestic products, yet they go ignored. Hu Yan chuckled, fear of aging I suppose. Realizing Qin Zixuan's mood had soured, as beauty-conscious women often dread aging, Hu Yan quickly changed the topic, speaking of which, 
Have you noticed foreigners buying clam oil in bulk while we buy expensive foreign cosmetics? This brightened Huan Zixuan's mood again. Ho Yan seized the moment, clam oil is effective because it's focused and natural. Why don't we create a dedicated, high-quality skincare product for our people? Excited, Huan Zixuan said, tell me more. If it works, even if it doesn't make money, I'll do it. Actually, Hu Yan's idea was quite simple. Regardless of which collaboration plan the CEO of Tianyu Cosmetics chooses, Tianhai can first use the fact that Tianyu was acquired by Tianhai to clear any negative sentiment. Then, they can establish their own brand. However, Hu Yan thought that due to the huge profits involved, the CEO of Tianyu would be unlikely to pass up the temptation of nearly half of the shares. After all, with Tianhai's reputation in the domestic market, coupled with the original advantages of the Tianyu brand, even with only 30% of the shares, they could completely surpass the previous output value of Tianyu. After finalizing the details, Qin Zixuan felt much better. By the way, I heard from Qian Xiao Er that you drank her leftover water, and not just once. Is that true? Qin Zixuan asked, looking angry, but it was obviously an act. Since seeing the paintings Hu Yan made, Qin Zixuan had basically understood his feelings. However, women are naturally possessive in these matters, and Qin Zixuan was no exception. Ho Yan shook his head vigorously. How could that be? I'm not in the desert, why would I drink her leftover water? Are you sure? Qin Zixuan asked suspiciously. Hu Yan swore, I swear, it never happened. Then I'll call and ask her, Qin Zixuan said, starting to make the call. Soon, Qian Xiao Er answered, What's up, Xuan Zhuan? You said Hu Yan drank your water, but he says he didn't. What's going on? Ho Yan was speechless. He never understood the bond between girlfriends who could share everything. For men, this seemed impossible. Imagine two guys hugging each other the thought alone gave Hu Yan goosebumps. Drinking together was fine. But sharing a drink? Unthinkable. Yet, among women, this happened often. This whole conversation seemed pointless to him, but to Qin Zixuan and Qian Xiaowar, it was a serious matter. Qian Xiao Er replied, I didn't say it was water. It was leftover wine. He drank several glasses. He's so considerate. My dad even said he must come to my mom's birthday in a few days. I was just about to call him when you did. Qin Zixuan's face darkened, and she hung up with a terse okay. Then, she looked at Hu Yan as if he were a criminal. What's the matter? Hu Yan feigned ignorance. Explain yourself, Qin Zixuan demanded. Ho Yan chuckled. Explain what? She just said I didn't drink her water. But the wine Qin Zixuan was getting agitated. That's different. Wine isn't water. If a girl can't finish her drink, Shouldn't a man help out Hu Yan said. Qin Zixuan suddenly felt like she might be overthinking. Ho Yan continued, haven't you heard the song? Quick, fill the cup and let's sing out loud. Good friends, good friends, let's enjoy the night. Dreams change us, making us cherish the shoulders of friends. Sunshine always comes after the rain, shining over the land. Let's hold our heads high and learn to be strong. Like the friend's liquor burning in my heart. Warming me, making me not take things to heart. That's a friend's drink. How can you not drink it? Besides, I'm single there's no one to misunderstand, why not? Qin Zixuan turned away, frustrated. After a while, Qin Zixuan seemed to calm down. She said, Qian Xiao Er said it's her mother's birthday in a few days. Her dad insisted you come. Are you going? Of course why wouldn't I? I'm a single guy with nothing better to do. No one will be jealous or misunderstand. Why not go? Qin Zixuan felt a pang of frustration clutching her stomach. Hao Yan parked the car in front of the restaurant Qin Zixuan had chosen. As they got out, she couldn't help but ask, Have you eaten? No, I was just about to eat with Yi Zhao Er and the others when your call came. I had to rush over. Qin Zixuan stomped her foot, All right, stop talking and get out. Hao Yan parked the car and slowly walked over to Qin Zixuan, who had been waiting. She seemed to have something to say, but stopped herself several times, and Hu Yan pretended not to notice. This was a place Qin Zixuan liked. She had let her team handle their own lunch. Initially, she wanted to hear Hu Yan's plan, and his ideas did satisfy her. But she had also hoped to spend some time alone with him. Somehow, talking about drinking water and wine had soured the mood. Reflecting on it, Qin Zixuan realized Hu Yan hadn't done anything wrong. After all, a man should help a girl who had too much to drink, right? In the end, she concluded that she was overthinking it and being petty. Feeling better, she ordered several of Hu Yan's favorite dishes once they were seated in a private room. Ho Yan noticed and felt happy but didn't show it, pretending to check his phone. 
He was actually looking at the items he got from Lu Yu's shoes scrapyard. When the dishes arrived, Qin Zixuan couldn't help but ask, What are you looking at so intently? Oh, this Hu Yan handed her the phone. She frowned at the images, What is this? It looks so old and worn. Ho Yan explained, It's a small find. This bracelet is genuine Hainan Huangguali, stained with oil and paint. It must have accidentally fallen into some paint. The owner mishandled it, and it ended up like this. Later, someone who didn't know its value discarded it. Ho Yan had traced the bracelet's history. It wasn't just a Huang Guoli bracelet but a precious heirloom. Its original owner was Guo Songling, a renowned general under Zhang Zulin, who later turned against him due to dissatisfaction and became a national hero after being killed by the Japanese. Ha Yan decided to keep the bracelet. Other items included Kang Shi era porcelain shards and Qing Dynasty porcelain dishes, all valuable despite their condition. These finds were why Hu Yan wanted to help Lu Xu. The items were worth over a million yuan in total, excluding the bracelet, still worth hundreds of thousands. Helping Lu Xu was just a small favor. Are these things valuable? King Zixuan asked. To me, yes, they're worth about a million, which might not be much for your monthly allowance, Hu Yan said honestly but it didn't sit well with Qin Zixuan. As the food was served, Qin Zixuan kept serving Hu Yan his favorite dishes, but he remained focused on his phone. Eat, while it's hot she urged. Finally noticing the food, Hu Yan said. Thanks Qin, you're so thoughtful. Qin Zixuan's mood improved slightly, and she hummed softly. Hu Yan, are you in such a hurry to make money she asked. Hu Yan nodded of course. I come from an ordinary family. If I don't work hard, how will I afford to get married or take care of my sister? Qin Zixuan played with her food, unsure what to say. After a while she asked tentatively, What if people think you're Qian Xiao Er's boyfriend when you go to her mom's birthday? Ho Yan responded, So what? I wouldn't mind. As long as Qian Xiao Er doesn't, it's fine. Qin Zixuan silently noted that Qian Xiao Er seemed inexperienced in relationships, like herself. If she were more astute, she might have already made a move on Hu Yan, given his laid-back attitude. What if Qian Xiao R wanted to be your girlfriend, and her family approved she pressed. Finding the situation amusing, Hu Yan teased, then what choice do I have? I'd have no reason to refuse. Not hungry anymore, Qin Zixuan dropped her chopsticks, fuming. The food is great. Qin, you should eat too. You've lost weight recently Hu Yan said, oblivious. Biting her lip, Qin Zixuan thought, and it's all because of you. Qin Zixuan's mind kept replaying Hu Yan's words I'm a single dog anyway, it's no loss for me. Anyway, I'm. She wanted to declare her territory immediately, so no one else would dare to encroach. But for now, she couldn't. She hadn't yet completed the family and group trials, so she didn't have the right to make her own choices. Qin Zixuan silently vowed, once I pass these trials, I'll announce that this annoying guy is mine, no one else can have him. Lost in her thoughts, she suddenly saw Hu Yan's hand holding her chopsticks in front of her. Don't fool around, just eat properly. You're too thin it doesn't look good. Qin Zixuan stared at Hu Yan, then smiled without realizing it. She quickly turned away, not letting him see the tears in her eyes. But nothing escaped Hu Yan's keen eyes. Finally, Qin Zixuan happily finished her meal. Some things can't be forced. She understood that even though neither of them said anything, things were as they were. No one could change it. What needs to be faced must be faced. Why get tangled up in immediate gains and losses? Cherishing the present was what mattered now. Although Hu Yan didn't know Qin Zixuan's struggles, he felt the same. That's why he couldn't bear to see her unhappy. He had vowed not to be a pushover but he could still be a warm-hearted man. He he. Men always find ways to justify themselves. With the burden lifted, both felt much lighter. Qin Zixuan asked, What gift did you prepare for Xiao Er's mother? Need any advice from me? Instead of answering directly, Hu Yan asked, Aren't you going? Qin Zixuan replied, I'd like to, but you know, the acquisition of the cosmetics factory will take some time. Ho Yan pretended to be disappointed. Oh, I thought you'd go. That way people might mistake us for a couple. Wouldn't that be great? Dream on Qin Zixuan shot him a glance but couldn't help smiling. What if that happened? What would you say? I'd pull you close and announce my ownership making sure no one else tries anything. P.F.E.T. Qin Zixuan couldn't help but laugh, just imagining the scene made her happy. She wanted to say more but couldn't find the words. That's just how she was. When Hu Yan played dumb she disliked it. When he teased, she couldn't give a definitive response, feeling it wouldn't be fair to him. 
So conflicted. My, by the way, by the way, after a while, Qian Zixuan said, the reason Xiao Yi's father invited you is that he saw the painting you gave her, the one with the intricate collage. Unlike my family, whatever Xiao Er likes, her father supports. Seeing your talent and hearing about your abilities, he probably already sees you as a future son-in-law. Qin Zixuan subtly expressed how she differed from Xiao Er. Nervously, she watched for Hu Yan's reaction. To her surprise, Hu Yan said, "Oh, then I just won't give her another collage painting, right?" Qin Zixuan was stunned. That's not what I meant. Gathering her courage, she asked. I mean, if her family already sees you as a future son-in-law, what would you do? Well, the treatment should be pretty good, right? I wouldn't be losing out. He he Hu Yan chuckled. Qin Zixuan really didn't know how to deal with this cheeky guy. Talking wasn't helping, so it seemed best to clear her schedule and go with him. That way she could see what tricks he might pull. After finishing their meal, Ho Yan drove Qin Zixuan back to the cosmetics factory and then went to buy professional paintbrushes and paints. The paintings he did at Qin Zixuan's place still needed color. He promised to finish them soon and hand them over to her for safekeeping. Ho Yan went to the most renowned shop in Jiangcheng, recommended by Shen Moling, called Mo Jiang Zhai. It was a place with a classic, cultured atmosphere. The last time, Hu Yan had bought his brush, ink, paper and inkstone here. As he walked in he coincidentally bumped into Shen Moling. Master Hu, what brings you here? Finished your work. Ho Yan rubbed his nose, feeling a bit awkward. He had promised to teach Shen Moling to paint collage but kept saying he was busy. Now they met face to face. He <laughs> he. Well I just finished some work and needed some painting supplies. That wasn't entirely untrue. He had just finished some tasks. Painting supplies? Didn't you get everything last time Shen Moling asked? Ha Yan replied. I didn't get everything I needed last time, so I'm here to buy more. With Shen Moling accompanying him, they walked around the shop. Ho Yan's keen eyes could immediately tell the quality of the items. Soon, he selected what he needed and paid. As he left, Shen Moling followed. Just as Hu Yan was about to get in his car, Shen Moling mustered the courage to ask, Teacher, may I come with you to watch you paint? How did you know I was going to paint? Shen Moling smiled, As an art enthusiast, I could tell you were in a hurry to buy supplies, so you must be eager to paint. Judging by how quickly you shopped, you must be in a hurry to get home and start painting, right? Hu Yan looked at her, thinking, this girl is too sharp. Few men liked women who could see right through them. But for Hu Yan, it didn't matter. He had promised, after all. You're smart. I was just going to invite you over. I have some time today. He opened the car door and gestured for her to get in. Shen Moling happily got in, thinking, it wasn't easy, but I got what I wanted achieving her goal was what mattered most. Ho Yan drove back to Tianhai Garden and, to avoid any awkwardness, called Zhao Peng first. When they reached the door, Zhao Peng opened it. Oh Shen Moling. Come in. She nodded, hello Senior Zhao. Entering, Hu Yan noticed the house was tidied up, clearly in anticipation of Shen Moling's visit. Ho Yan got straight to the point, I don't have time to teach you collage today. I need to color some paintings I promised to someone. Shen Moling didn't mind at all, take your time, Master Hu. I'll just watch. Ho Yan smiled and nodded. Zhao Peng served them some hot water. After letting Shen Moling settle in, Hu Yan went to change into comfortable clothes and brought out the three paintings he did at Qin Zixuan's place. Shen Moling, holding a cup of hot water, nearly dropped it when she saw Hu Yan unfold the paintings. Luckily, her martial arts training kicked in, and she steadied herself. Hot water splashed on her hand, but she didn't notice. Hu Yan quickly grabbed a napkin to help her, then used a cold, damp cloth on her hand. Why so careless? Sorry, Shen Moling said, flustered. Your paintings are so beautiful I lost control. I didn't mean to cause trouble. No problem. As long as you're not hurt. Hu Yan placed a high chair by the desk for her to watch comfortably. Zhao Peng. Curious commented. I didn't know you had this talent, Hu Yan. Ho Yan said, There's a lot you don't know. This will be your main source of income. But don't tell your partner it's my work, or I'll stop giving you paintings. All right, no problem, Zhao Peng agreed. How much do we pay you? How much should we sell them for? Ho Yan replied, I'll give them to you for 2,000 per square foot. You can sell them for 5,000. Zhao Peng, sipping water, almost choked. What? Shen Moling, Faster than anyone, move to shield Zhao Peng's spray. Sorry, Shen Moling. Let me get you a change of clothes. No need. 
I'm fine, she said quickly. Ho Yan handed her a clean jacket. This is freshly washed. Wear this while your clothes dry. She nodded and quickly changed, not wanting to miss anything. Returning, she heard Zhao Peng complaining, 2,000 per square foot. Are you serious? Before Hu Yan could reply, Shen Moling said, Master, can I buy them for 4,000? Xiao Peng looked at them both, confused. Are you serious? Ignoring him, Hu Yan told Shen Moling, This batch is promised to Zhao Peng. I'll paint one for you, free of charge. Shen Moling bowed. Thank you, master. Ha Yan sighed. Call me Hu Yan or Big Brother Hu. Enough with the master stuff. All right, Big Brother Hu. But in my heart, you'll always be my teacher. Ha Yan shook his head and began mixing paints. As Shen Moling watched, she turned to Zhao Peng. If Big Brother Hu keeps painting for you, let me pick some first. What? You're serious about buying? But it's expensive. Yes. It's a bargain. In a few years they'll be worth 30,000. I'll talk to Grandpa about buying all of Hu Yang'an's works. Zhao Peng was dumbfounded. Zhao Peng stood still for a long time, looking at Shen Moling's serious demeanor. It didn't seem like she was joking. Considering his own business, Hu Yan wouldn't play such a joke. So Zhao Peng did the math in his head. Taking Hu Yan's current painting as a reference, it was about 9 square feet. This means Hu Yan's price to him was 18,000. If he sold it for 45,000, he would make 27,000. After sharing with his partner, he'd still have 13,000 left. One painting could earn him four months' salary. Zhao Peng wasn't stupid, he knew the profit margin on the calligraphy Shen Moling sold to Qian Xiaowar was only about 30%. But Hu Yan was giving him 60% profit. Old Hu. Aren't you being too generous? Zhao Peng couldn't help but blurt out. Chase Shen Moling signaled, then whispered, Don't disturb Big Brother Hu. Zhao Peng quickly covered his mouth. Sorry, I. Ho Yan said. It's okay. Just step back a bit and don't spit on the painting. Zhao Peng obediently took several steps back, his nervousness making Shen Moling smile. Ho Yan said. I'm just helping you set up your business. You know how busy I am. At most, I can paint four pieces a month for you, minimum two, depending on my schedule. Zhao Peng was excited. Old Hu, this isn't fair to you. Ho Yan shook his head. Between brothers there's no such thing as fairness. Zhao Peng sighed. But Wang Dong and his wife aren't your brothers. If they treat you like a brother, they're my brothers. If they hurt you, I won't let them off no one doubted Hu Yan's determination. Zhao Peng continued to sigh. What can I say? You don't need to say anything. I offered to partner with you but you refused. Zhao Peng was speechless for a moment, then said, I didn't know you would put in so much effort. Hu Yan continued to color the painting. It's nothing. Maybe I'm overthinking. Even without my input, you might still make money. I wouldn't have to work this hard. Zhao Peng clenched his fists, his voice choked. I will work hard. He turned and went to his room, leaving Shen Moling to watch Hu Yan paint. Hu Yan started coloring the scene of Yao Ru practicing swordsmanship in the rain. The original black ink outline had already impressed Shen Moling. But when Hu Yan added color, the entire painting transformed. Ho Yan's use of color created a sense of depth and layering. Each bamboo leaf stood out, and the shading was perfect. The painting seemed to come to life, almost as if it were three-dimensional. Especially when Yao Ru's figure was colored, she appeared vibrant. The lush green bamboo around her also seemed more lively. Shen Moling had met Yao Ru, a shy yet beautiful girl, and seeing this portrayal, she felt Yao Ru's inner strength and resilience, just like bamboo standing firm in the storm. Even the raindrops on Yao Ru and the bamboo were depicted with intricate detail. Shen Moling lost track of time, mesmerized as the perfect painting unfolded before her eyes. When Yao Ru's red lips appeared, contrasting with the green, Shen Moling was stunned. Finally, when Yao Ru's eyes were colored, revealing her inner strength and determination, Shen Moling felt her heart pound and hands tremble. As Hu Yan stretched after finishing the painting, Shen Moling snapped out of her trance. Master quickly stamp it, otherwise it will come to life. Don't be so dramatic Hu Yan smiled and shook his head. He took out his prepared stamp and marked the painting. The stamp read 3,000 years a phrase Shen Moling instantly understood. Born and not dead for a thousand years, dead but not fallen for a thousand years. Fallen but not decayed for a thousand years Hu Yan was symbolized by this enduring phrase. Shen Moling was overwhelmed, Master, your work will surely be immortal. Selling it for 5,000 per square foot is. Well. Ho Yan replied, you flatter me. I'm just an unknown artist. 
This price is already high. Do you think many people truly understand art? Most are just pretending to appreciate it. Shen Moling nodded silently. Ho Yan was right. Many artists lived in poverty, their work only becoming valuable posthumously. Art isn't easily understood by the masses. However, Hu Yan's unique eyes allowed him to price his work accurately. Most people his age wouldn't dare charge such high prices. As the saying goes, even good wine fears a deep alley. If endorsed by famous experts, the price could skyrocket. Yet time has shown that some works praised by experts fade away, while unknown pieces can shine brilliantly. Ho Yan continued coloring the other two paintings. Shen Moling watched in awe. The portraits of Qian Xiao Ye are in Qian Zixuan deeply moved her. The most astonishing part was Hu Yan's self-portrait in the distance, secretly painting Qin Zixuan. Despite being a small figure, Hu Yan's presence was vividly real. Even more incredible was the detailed depiction of Qin Zixuan by the painted Hu Yan. It was almost identical to the main painting. Shen Moling couldn't resist using a magnifying glass from her bag to examine it closely. The closer she looked, the more perfect it seemed. Finally understanding Hu Yan's intentions, Shen Moling couldn't help but admire his skill. Big brother Hugh, master she began, I have an unreasonable request. Ho Yan, finishing his work, sipped tea and shook his head. I can't. All three of these paintings are already reserved for Qin Zixuan. She provided the materials including the expensive paper. Shen Moling had to compromise. Then could you paint a similar one for me? Ho Yan thought for a moment. I could, but I don't have such good paper. Shen Moling's face lit up. I have some. Wait here, I'll go get it. Ha Yan couldn't stop her and let her go. Exhausted, he just wanted a bath and some sleep. But he had agreed, so he would follow through. Less than half an hour later, Shen Moling returned. Zhao Peng opened the door, and Hu Yan woke up from his nap. You're back. Air back. I'm sorry, master. I couldn't help myself after seeing your work. I apologize for disturbing your rest, she bowed deeply. Ha Yan sighed. I told you not to be so formal. Sorry, I forgot. Ha 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 Zhao Peng laughed heartily. Ha Yan just shook his head. Shen Moling handed him the paper. Hu Yan unfolded it. Wow. You sure you want me to use this? I'm a bit scared. Zhao Peng asked, what's so special about the paper? This is golden millet paper a famous Song Dynasty paper. Even Emperor Kang Shi was reluctant to use it. Later, Emperor Qianlong wasted quite a bit Hu Yan explained, shaking his head. Is it valuable? Absolutely. This sheet alone is worth about a hundred thousand. Big brother Hugh, don't worry about the paper's value. Your work is priceless to me Shen Moling said earnestly. All right since you like it so much, I'll do it Hu Yan began to think. As he worked, a serene and elegant figure with scholarly charm emerged on the paper. Hu Yan painted Shen Moling drawing a collage, fulfilling her dream. Seeing this, Shen Moling couldn't hold back her tears. This was her dream to finish what her grandfather couldn't. Lost in the moment. Shen Moling wondered if she was in the painting or the real world. When Hu Yan mentioned that the value of the golden millet paper exceeded a hundred thousand, Zhao Peng was in a daze. As Hu Yan sketched Shen Moling, gradually filling in the details, Zhao Peng found the whole process increasingly incredible. To him, his best buddy seemed like a stranger with such immense talent. Only by recalling everything Hu Yan had done for him could Zhao Peng believe that this gifted and slightly infuriating person in front of him was indeed Hu Yan. No one else would do so much for him. After Hu Yan finished the painting, Shen Moling went to the restroom and returned with a hot, wet towel, handing it to Hu Yan. Big brother Hu, you've worked hard. Hu Yan smiled, do I really look that old? When I see your work, I can't help but call you my teacher. Also, I'm afraid you'll forget I'm your student Shen Moling said, her sincerity making Hu Yan look at her with newfound respect. Well, do you like the painting? Shen Moling nodded eagerly, more than like it. This is my dream come true. You've brought my dream to life. How could I not love it? Pleased, Hu Yan handed back the towel after wiping his face and hands. Shen Moling, as if in her own home, returned to the restroom, washed the towel, and hung it to dry before picking up a mop to start cleaning the room. Hu Yan watched her and said, Are you here to work or to learn? Of course to learn. But as a student, it's normal to help the teacher with chores, right? Hu Yan nodded silently again. Shen Moling's family might not be as influential as Qin Zixuan's or as well off as Qian Xiao Ears, but they were still quite wealthy. Today's wealthy families pay more attention to their children's education, in contrast to some kids from ordinary families who, after achieving a little success, lose their way. 
After drinking a glass of water and resting a bit, Hu Yan said to Shen Moling, helping the teacher with chores is expected, but Zhao Peng isn't your teacher. Leave some for him. Shen Moling obediently handed the rag to Zhao Peng and sat down next to Hu Yan, who closed his eyes and thought. He was recalling the learning processes of various painting masters. Each one's path to success was different, but they all shared a passion for their art. Recalling their lives, Hu Yan saw that great artists often faced many hardships, which matched the saying, character determines fate. Artists, being emotional people, often struggle with interpersonal relationships and face many challenges in life. When Hu Yan opened his eyes again, Shen Moling noticed a deep, melancholic look in them, the kind of gaze that easily captivates women. As Shen Moling became lost in Hu Yan's eyes he spoke, mastering an art is simple in theory but hard in practice. It's all about passion. If you haven't reached a certain level, it's because you don't love it enough. Remember the time we saw Zheng Gofan's calligraphy at Qian Xiao Er's shop? He wasn't a genius but his diligence was legendary. He said to write well. You must understand the use of the brush and the structure of characters. Study the ancient master's works and practice copying them. Ho Yan continued, your grandfather was a calligraphy master, and you've been influenced by him since childhood. Your foundation is strong. Now you just need to practice diligently. Shen Moling nodded, then continued watching Hu Yan paint. To help Zhao Peng with his new business, Hu Yan spent these days painting, as he had time off work. Shen Moling treated this period like school, spending all her time learning from Hu Yan helping with chores, cooking and cleaning. During this time Yao Ru visited a few times. Knowing about Hu Yan's promise to teach Shen Moling, Yao Ru would sit quietly for a while and then leave. Every other day Yao Ru would visit, sometimes with Hu Ji Shaxin, sometimes alone. After Yao Ru left, Shen Moling would often compliment her, she's really beautiful. At first Hu Yan would just smile and nod, but after several comments he said, different environments nurture different people. Inner beauty comes from within. When you've mastered painting, your charm will surpass hers. Though Shen Moling admired Hu Yan greatly, she thought he was just being comforting in this case. However, when Hu Yan took her to a full-length mirror, she saw a reflection that looked more and more like the idealized version of herself in Hu Yan's painting. This realization shocked her. Immersed in painting she hadn't looked in the mirror for a while. She hadn't noticed how much she'd improved not only in skill but also in temperament. Thank you teacher Shen Moling bowed deeply. Ha Yan waved it off. A teacher opens the door the student must walk through it. Your progress is your own doing. Moved. Shen Moling shook her head vigorously. No, without you, I wouldn't have achieved this, or it would have taken years. Shen Moling was right. Hu Yan's method of teaching was tailored to her leveraging his unique vision to understand her mindset and adapt his instruction accordingly. With the successful acquisition of the cosmetic factory, Qin Zixuan had already prepared the first batch of products for Hu Yan, which he distributed to friends and family, including Shen Moling. Seeing her transformation, Hu Yan thought it was time to start promoting the product. Moling, the truth is, the change in your appearance isn't just due to your artistic growth. The cosmetic product I gave you is really effective. This revelation shocked Shen Moling, initially feeling disheartened, but she quickly rationalized it, understanding the long journey of mastering art. What product did you give me? It's a new product from Tianhai, after acquiring the original Tianyu Cosmetics Company. What I gave you is our latest development. Take some and share it with suitable people to help promote it. Shen Moling nodded, Tianyu's products were good. I used to use them, but knowing they betrayed us, I stopped. This new product is different, it's all natural and safe enough to eat, though it probably doesn't taste good Hu Yan joked, making them both laugh. This strategy, suggested by Hu Yan, involved giving out the product for free initially, creating demand and anticipation for when it hit the shelves, ensuring a successful launch. He also sent some to the rising star Kai Lai, who remained grateful for Hu Yan's help in getting her mentorship with Gu Yufen. Despite her busy schedule, she promised to endorse the product for free, with the only condition being lifelong access to it. Qin Zixuan praised Hu Yan for this clever move. The acquisition plan was executed exactly as Hu Yan had envisioned. The former Tianyu CEO thought securing 35% of Tianhai's cosmetics division was a windfall, not realizing his downfall was imminent. After Shen Moling left, Hu Yan sat on the sofa, thinking. He had many things to handle Zhao Peng's business opening, for which he had prepared seven paintings Qian Zhao Er's mother's birthday, for which he planned to make a special gift. On a day when Shen Moling was busy, Hu Yan visited Jade Street and found a raw stone worth over 200,000 yuan, priced at just 3,500 yuan. He bought it, 
much to the shopkeeper's delight, who thought he was a fool. Ho Yan refused the offer to cut the stone on sight, taking it home instead. The raw stone revealed a piece of ice jade, though not pure green, it was rare and beautiful with a mix of green streaks. It was small, but Hu Yan knew it would make a perfect gift for Qian Xiao Er's mother. During this quiet and peaceful period, Hu Yan's days were relaxed and routine. He began each morning with leg stretches and martial arts practice, spent the days painting, and reminisced about the great masters. Both his physical condition and his overall demeanor had significantly improved. One day, Qin Zixuan invited Hu Yan and the others for dinner. Although they lived in the same building, they hadn't met up, only communicating via their phones. In a private room at the Xuan Yudong Tian Hot Pot City, Hu Yan's entrance stunned everyone. Wow. Ho Yan, did you get plastic surgery? I barely recognized you. How did your physique change like this? It doesn't look like you got it from the gym. Ho Yan simply smiled and nudged Zhao Peng to explain. Zhao Peng chuckled and said, Every morning, I find breakfast ready because this guy goes to the park to practice Tai Chi. I don't know exactly what he does, but for my store opening, Hu Yan's been painting at home almost every day without stepping out. Qian Xiao Er exclaimed, Hu Yan, I want to learn painting too. I didn't realize the benefits were so great. When Shen Molin came over I noticed she looked even more beautiful. Sure, learn Hu Yan said. If you can endure the hardship you can become a master. Qian Xiao Er blinked her big eyes, does that mean you think I have talent? Hu Yan nodded with a smile not wanting to dampen her enthusiasm. Although Qian Xiao R had a good sense for art, her active nature might make mastering painting and calligraphy difficult. Hu Ji Yaxing came over and hugged Hu Yan's arm, brother. Why didn't you think of teaching your sister? I was confident, but seeing all these people around you is making me feel self-conscious. Everyone laughed at Hu Ji Yaxing's pout. Hu Yan, concerned for his sister, said, I think you should start by learning martial arts with Yao Ru, for girls. Good flexibility enhances both posture and body shape, plus it's useful for self-defense. Hu Jixin, puzzled, thought Hu Yan was joking, brother? Are you serious? Others become elegant and beautiful through painting, but you want me to do martial arts? It looks exhausting. Yao Ru always comes back drenched in sweat. No way. Besides, not everyone here learned martial arts. How come they all look so good? Seeing her pout further, Hu Yan sighed. I'm not lying. Except for you and Zhao Peng. Everyone here has learned martial arts. What Hu Ji Yaxin and Zhao Peng exclaimed in shock. Hu Ji Xin asked, Sister Xuan? You're the prettiest. Did you really learn martial arts? Qian Zixuan nodded, smiling. Yes, many well-off families have their children learn martial arts. It's not just about physical fitness but also about mental discipline. I'm glad I learned Tai Chi, Singji, and Sanda from a young age. I wanted to learn Bagua too. But I feared developing pigeon-toed feet, so I didn't. Hu Ji Yaxin was speechless. She then turned to Qian Xiao Er, Sister Xiao Er, you're the gentlest and cutest. Did you also learn martial arts? Qian Xiao Er nodded, yes, I learned karate, kickboxing, and judo. I think I can handle more than five guys like Zhao Peng. Xiao Peng looked dumbfounded. Why am I getting dragged into this? Ho Yan had mentioned before that Shen Moling had learned Baji Quan, and Yao Ru's skills were evident from the start. Finally, Hu Ji Yaxin accepted reality. Yao Ru, I'll stop sleeping in. Can you take me to practice in the mornings? Yao Ru nodded shyly. I've been telling you this all along. Hu Ji Yaxin's face flushed with embarrassment. Ho Yan said to his sister, No achievement comes easy. Behind every success is countless sweat and effort even with his special vision. Without practice, he wouldn't achieve a high level in painting, calligraphy, or martial arts. Everyone nodded in agreement, except Zhao Peng, who was still in shock. Growing up, his teachers always told him, if you don't study hard, how will you compete with the wealthy kids now? He realized there were many types of wealthy families. Seeing Hu Yan, Zhao Peng felt that effort still mattered. If not for himself, then for the next generation. Working hard might not catch him up in this life, but it could for his descendants. Feeling dejected, Hu Ji Yaxin nodded, ready to face future hardships. As they ordered and the aroma of spicy hot pot filled the air, everyone's appetites were whetted. Jiang Cheng's near zero temperatures made hot pot the perfect meal. Without heating yet, indoor temperatures were the coldest of the year. Ho Yan ordered sliced beef kidneys, which, when briefly cooked in the hot oil, became a tender delicacy. Zhao Peng enjoyed them too, competing with Hu Yan for the slices. The girls preferred fresh duck blood. After a short boil it turned into honeycomb-like pieces that, dipped in sesame oil, were spicy and nourishing. After a round of eating, 
Qin Zixuan raised her glass, Hu Yan, I toast you. But you need to return to work early. Ho Yan wasn't surprised. He had received messages from the appraisal team complaining about the increasing criticism online that the appraisers at Tianhai Pawn Shop were swindlers, as the recommended items dropped in value after purchase. Ha Yan just didn't expect it to happen so soon. Is Qin Tian unable to handle it anymore? Qin Zixuan said, he conceded before it got too late. After a talk with him, he decided to withdraw voluntarily. During their discussion, Qin Tian was still somewhat defiant, believing Hu Yan's success was merely luck. Qin Zixuan explained the cosmetics factory acquisition plan and asked Qiu Qin Tian for a solution. Qin Tian's response was to rely on the existing brand and technology. However, when he learned of Hu Yan's plan, he was stunned. It was something he couldn't have learned from books. His last question to Qin Zixuan was, why does Hu Yan have such miraculous prescriptions? Qin Zixuan's reply was, because he has the right intentions. She explained how Hu Yan met the Yao family. Qin Tian remained skeptical, seeing it as a coincidence. Qin Zixuan challenged him to go out and try to help people genuinely. Proud, Qin Tian went out that day, with Qin Zixuan secretly arranging protection. By the end of the day he had been swindled out of several thousand yuan, and all the contact information he received was fake. When he returned to Qin Zixuan, he looked older and defeated. Why can Hu Yan gain people's trust and receive ancestral prescriptions while I only get cheated? Qin Zixuan was tired of explaining, understanding that Qin Tian, talented yet inexperienced, needed to learn through setbacks. Think about what you aim for when you do things, and then think about what Hu Yan aims for she said. Remember the saying, to do things, first be a person. Qin Tian, understanding her point, knew his highly purposeful actions couldn't earn genuine trust. Meanwhile, people like Hu Yan, who acted without expecting anything in return, could. Qin Tian left quietly, without taking any earnings from Tianhai. His departing words were that he would return when he was ready to contribute again. Qin Zixuan knew his pride would lead to this outcome. She compensated for Tianhai's losses with what would have been Qin Tian's share. Even Qin Baoxiang said nothing, though he was eager to meet this Hu Yan who had bested two of his top talents. Qin Zixuan only mentioned Qin Tian's departure and that she would cover the losses. This outcome was something Hu Yan had anticipated. Confident in his field, he doubted anyone could surpass him there. As Qin Zixuan shared the story, omitting business secrets, Hu Jiaxin hugged Hu Yan's arm, her eyes moist. She hadn't realized how much her successful brother had gone through. Qian Xiao Air exclaimed, Hu Yan, you should work with me. I wouldn't let you suffer. Qin Zixuan felt embarrassed, but Hu Yan said, it's not your fault. You've been very good to me. Qian Xiao Er pouted, so sweet. Qin Zixuan, slightly irritated, said, This time, I refused all corporate guidance. Ho Yan and I will handle things ourselves and prove them wrong. Everyone cheered and raised their glasses. The next day, Hu Yan returned to work. His return, akin to that of a triumphant hero, naturally attracted both praise and envy. However, the marketing and appraisal departments were genuinely happy. During Hu Yan's month-long absence, they had all suffered various degrees of loss. Despite Qin Zixuan compensating them for their financial losses, the damage to their reputation was not something that could be easily remedied. Now, everyone was eagerly anticipating Hu Yan's return to turn things around. Ho Yan's first task was to select items that were sure to increase in value and sell well. He labeled these with the names of specific appraisers. Of course, these names had to be real and attributed to those who had actually evaluated the items. The goal was to eventually make the appraisers at Tianhai famous. This idea had occurred to others as well. But without Hu Yan's special vision, who could guarantee that the appraiser recommended items would sell well and appreciate in value? Collectibles, like the stock market and gold, are influenced by many factors, sometimes even more so. Therefore, even those with this idea had to abandon it. Going against the norm. Hu Yan sees this lull to work almost non-stop. He listed a large number of high-demand products daily and invited online players to supervise. If any appraiser recommended item decreased in value, Tianhai would buy it back at the original price. This move caused sales to skyrocket, and as time went on, the names of Tianhai's appraisers became well-known online. They became recognized as the most insightful and ethical appraisers in the industry. Previously reviled, the appraisers of Tianhai now walked with their heads held high their demeanor mysterious and revered by both buyers and sellers. Only when Hu Yan appeared would they humbly lower their heads, warmly greeting him, Master Hu is here. Master Hu, take care. Master Hu, how about a drink sometime? With matters finally settled, 
it was time for Qian Xiao Er's mother's birthday. On October 27, the lunar calendar's 29th day of the ninth month, known for auspicious dates for women, it seemed Qian Xiao Er's mother had indeed been quite fortunate. Legend has it that when Qian Xiao Er's father, Qian Jintang, had nothing, he married her mother, Yishu Bihua, who supported him with a few hundred yuan to learn jewelry making. Soon after their marriage, things went smoothly for him. Riding the wave of reform, he became a prominent jeweler in Jiangcheng. Qian Jintang, grateful to Zhu Bihua, remained faithful and became a doting husband, a rarity among wealthy men. Yishu Bihua's 60th birthday was a major event for the Qian family. Although she preferred quiet celebrations, Qian Jintang insisted on a grand event, hoping to use the opportunity to find a suitable match for their youngest daughter, Qian Xiao Er. Word spread, attracting young talents from not only Jiangcheng but also Shengcheng, and even farther. Qian Xiao Er's high beauty, cheerful disposition, and reputed fortune in marriage made many bachelors eager. Following the location Qian Xiao Er sent him, Hu Yan arrived at the Peach Garden Villas a secluded area filled with cars, mostly from out of town. Hu Yan wasn't surprised by the situation, given the context. He was only annoyed that Qin Zixuan mentioned she might not make it due to a meeting. Getting out of his car, Hu Yan noticed everyone holding bright red invitations. Great. Just what I need a cliché where I get stopped at the door, mocked, and have to call Qian Xiao Yi or to save face he thought, chuckling at the ridiculous scenario. Sure enough, at the entrance, he saw people presenting their invitations and entering gracefully. Feeling the potential awkwardness, Hu Yan decided to call Qian Xiao Er. Just as he took out his phone he heard someone shout, Hu Yan, over here. He saw Qian Xiao Er in a simple white dress, jumping up and waving at the staff entrance. Hu Yan walked over, drawing envious and disdainful glances from the crowd. Is this guy stupid? Bringing his girlfriend to this event. Maybe he's not here for Qian Xiao Er. That girl is pretty nice though. Having such a girlfriend, it's understandable he wouldn't care about the Qian family. Yeah, all those rumors about Qian Xiao are. Do we really have a chance? That voice. So sweet. If we ever. Oh man, just thinking about it gets me excited. Ignoring the comments, Hu Yan mischievously shouted, Qian Xiao R, have you been waiting long? The crowd turned to stare. Unaware of Hu Yan's ploy, Qian Xiao Er shouted back, Yes. My feet are killing me from standing in heels. Why didn't you come earlier? Seeing her pout, the crowd was stunned. Are we here to watch a couple's drama? Complicated feelings. Qian Xiao R is prettier than I thought, but the whole atmosphere feels weird. The dog food is real. Maybe I should save my gift and go home to my own partner. Hu Yan ignored the stunned crowd and warmly greeted Qian Xiao Er. You sent me the location early in the morning. How was I supposed to know it was this far? Qian Xiao Er pouted. If I lived closer, I wouldn't need to live separately from my family. Are you stupid? Linking arms, they entered through the staff entrance, leaving a group of confused guests behind. Inside, staff members respectfully greeted them, revealing that the hotel was owned by the Qian family and that the villas had been developed by them too. Qian Xiao R leaned in and whispered, Once we're inside I need to keep my distance. My parents and brothers told me not to get too close to anyone to avoid offending too many people. We're in business after all. Hu Yan found the situation amusing and nodded in understanding. He was sure the guests outside were fuming. He and Xiao Er led him to a private room with a view of the main hall. As they arrived, a 30-something, well-dressed man approached and grabbed Qian Xiao Er. Where have you been? Mom's been looking for you. Sticking out her tongue, Qian Xiao Er whispered to Hu Yan, That's my older brother. I'll go be with my mom now since it's her special day. Ho Yan nodded and watched her leave before entering the private room. Inside were several young people, including Wan Linchuan, who had always been close to Qian Xiao Er. Wan Linchuan warmly greeted Hu Yan. Hu Yan, come sit here. Though Hu Yan didn't particularly like Wan Linchuan, he was the only familiar face, so he obliged. The room had eleven people, some chatting quietly. When Hu Yan entered, they looked up, some nodding slightly, others ignoring him. Hu Yan didn't mind and sat beside Wan Linchuan. Wan Linchuan, you got here early. Wan Linchuan nodded. Yes, such a big event I had to be early. I wanted to see if I could help, but I was brought here instead. Ho Yan asked, Why are we here while most people are in the main hall? Wan Linchuan explained, At first I didn't understand either. But after listening for a while I realized everyone here knows Qian Xiao Er personally. The main hall is for those who came because of her reputation. After all, 
A family with a daughter has many suitors, especially one as outstanding as her he straightened his Armani suit, glancing at Hu Yan's casual attire without comment. Feeling slightly annoyed, Hu Yan said, why are there only young people here? Wan Linchuan replied, the older generation is at the chairman's house. He didn't invite many people, mainly using this event to find a good match for Qian Xiao Er. No wonder Hu Yan nodded. Knowing this, he felt there was nothing more for him to do and could relax and watch the proceedings. The main hall had a tea stage set up. Half an hour later, a group of beautiful young women in identical dresses appeared on stage. Among them were Hu Ji Yaxin and Yao Ru. What's going on? Hu Yan and everyone else were puzzled. As the MC's voice came through the microphone, a beautifully dressed woman stepped onto the stage. After a long string of welcoming words, she explained the reason for the gathering. Most attendees already knew. The Qian family's daughter had come of age, and in the fast-paced rhythm of modern life and work, many promising young people missed the best opportunities for marriage. Thus, the Qian family seized the occasion of the matriarch's 60th birthday to give eligible young people a chance. Ho Yan was secretly displeased. It's fine to give others a chance, but why drag Hu Jiaxin and Yao Ru into this what he didn't know was that Qian Xiao Er had deliberately brought them along to assist her. Given their relationship, Hu Ji Yaxin and Yao Ru couldn't refuse. The MC then announced the rules of the first game. Now, let's proceed with the first game. I know many of you are here for the eldest daughter of the Qian family, so keep your eyes wide open and see if you can identify who among these young and beautiful ladies is your eldest daughter. Hu Yan and Wan Linchuan both laughed, as did everyone else in the private room. So, this was a trap. There were indeed many beautiful girls below including top-tier beauties like Yao Ru and the impressive Hu Jiaxin. However, Qian Xiaoar was nowhere to be seen. Interesting. It's a good thing we already know Miss Qian. Exactly. Otherwise we'd probably be confused too. There are quite a few stunning girls down there. If it were up to you, which one would you choose? Right? There's no way to pick correctly. What's the point of this game? As people discussed, Wan Lynch Wan asked Hu Yan, Hu. I can't figure out what the chairman and his wife are thinking with this. Ho Yan thought for a moment and said, Haven't you heard the story of Chairman Qian and his wife? Wan Lin Chuan thought for a moment. You mean their arranged marriage story? Ho Yan nodded. I think this game is mainly for the chairman's wife to reminisce about her youth. It probably has some special meaning too. That story was one Wan Lin Chuan had often heard while accompanying Qian Xiao Er. Back then, he and Jin Tang was a down and out young man while Xu Biyua's family was quite wealthy. They were choosing a son-in-law for Xu Biyua, and a group of eligible young men was gathered. Qian Jintang was hired as temporary help, without any stage. It was just a group of young people chatting with their potential partners in a large courtyard. During the selection Yi Xu Biyua wasn't present, and Qian Jintang, while helping, witnessed a girl being knocked down by a wealthy young man. Without an apology, the rich kid blamed the girl for being clumsy. Qian Jintang argued with the guy and ended up getting beaten up. This incident won Yu Xu Bihua's heart. Of course, the girl disguised as a maid was actually Xu Bihua. Ho Yan chuckled. No wonder Qian Jintang was called a doting husband. Xu Bihua must be very happy seeing this scene this scene now. Indeed, as Qian Xiao R watched the stage from beside her mother, Yi Xu Bihua, she nudged her mother, who was squinting with laughter. Mom, dad really went through a lot of trouble for you. Yu Xu Bihua nodded. He's devoted most of his life to me, always saying that without me, there'd be no family. If not for this, our Qian group would probably be better off today. Qian Xiao Er laughed. So, do you like dad being like this, or do you blame him for not focusing on work? This girl Xu Bihua pinched Qian Xiao Er's cheek. Of course I like it. Do you know how rare it is for a man to devote himself to one woman? The smile lines around Xu Bihua's eyes deepened. But because of this he achieved his career. Among all the craftsmen learning the trade back then, he was the best because he said every piece he made was intended for me. He couldn't afford not to focus. Qian Xiao R was touched by this. She had no idea about these things. She couldn't help but think of the paintings and calligraphy Hu Yan had made for her. However, her smile faded quickly because Hu Yan wasn't making these just for her. What's wrong? Are you unhappy? Zhu Bi Hua asked, noticing her daughter's change in mood. It's not that Qian Xiao Er sighed. In this world, there probably aren't many men like dad, right? People are so practical now. With so many temptations, even women find it hard to stay faithful. Silly child. Why so pessimistic Xu Bihua said, hugging Qian Xiao Er. 
Your father is rare, but that doesn't mean there aren't others. Look carefully, and you'll find one. Today your father arranged many things, mainly for me to have fun, but also for you, our precious girl. Qian Xiao Er blushed. For some reason she wondered, even if there is a man as good as dad, would I really like him? Despite her carefree appearance, Qian Xiao Er had her own thoughts. If it weren't for the ambiguous relationship between Hu Yan and King Zixuan, she would have clung to Hu Yan, constantly making him express his affection for her. But girls often withdraw first when their feelings are the deepest. Whenever she was with Hu Yan, she would act cheerful and silly, never too forward or distant, fearing to get hurt or hurt others. It's time. You should go now. Xu Bihua's words brought Qian Xiao Er back to reality. Bidding her mother a quick goodbye, Qian Xiao Er said, Mom, I'll be back soon. The elegantly dressed girls on stage hadn't completed their first round when nearly 70% of the audience had already chosen their goddess. Whether or not that person was Qian Xiao Er, they believed she was their ideal woman. Many had chosen Yao Ru, who, with her natural elegance, stood out among the rest, including Hu Jiaxin. However, those who had seen Hu Yan and Qian Xiao Er outside were still unsure. Yao Ru, dressed in a pure white gown, with her perfect figure, stood out among the other girls, appearing like a lotus in an urban jungle, bringing tranquility to the harsh realities of life. Many fell in love instantly. My God, how can such a pure girl exist in this world? Totally worth it. Seeing her gives me a lifetime goal. Without her, there's no love in this world. As Yao Ru gracefully walked the runway, many couldn't help but shout her number. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. Ha Yan wondered what the Qian family had planned next. Watching from a distance, he noticed his sister, Hu Ji Yaxin, blushing with excitement for Yao Ru, tinged with a bit of jealousy. Suddenly, Hu Yan thought Qian Xiao Er's arrangement was quite good. Letting these girls experience this was a form of training. However, it might confuse Yao Ru later. Just as Yao Ru's cheers reached a peak, a bare-faced, flustered Qian Xiao Er rushed out and bumped into her. Hu Yan smiled, realizing the show was just beginning. The serene Yao Ru instantly transformed, angrily shouting, Are you blind? A hurried Qian Xiao Er quickly apologized, I'm sorry. I was in a rush. Yao Ru, with a disdainful look, pushed Qian Xiao Er away forcefully and walked off with her head held high. The crowd fell silent. People looked at each other, unsure of what to think. The lights dimmed, and the girls exited the stage. The MC returned to the spotlight. Everyone, please write down the number of the girl you believe to be the eldest daughter and hand it to our staff, along with your name. Soon, staff members in uniforms collected the cards from the guests. Wan Linchuan, resting his chin on his hand, asked, This story seems different from the chairman's experience. What's the deeper meaning here? Hao Yan didn't explain, but he had an idea. The Qian family was not as superficial as they appeared. They wanted Qian Xiao Er to find true love, at least a kind-hearted person. Clearly Yao Ru played the role of a beautiful but arrogant girl, while Qian Xiao Er was the polite but somewhat inept girl. Thus those who chose Yao Ru in the first round would be eliminated. That's why Qian Xiao Er involved Yao Ru, given Qin Zixuan's absence. Otherwise, Qin Zixuan might have performed even better. Sure enough, after collecting all the cards, the MC said, Those whose names are called, please move to the third floor hall for dining. Thank you once again for coming. They then called some names, directing them to the second floor hall for dining. The remaining people were invited to the private room where Hu Yan and the others were. The first group called were those who chose Yao Ru, the second group were those who chose other girls. Only the seven people who chose the real one remained in the private room. But Hu Yan didn't care. These people might not necessarily be good-hearted they might simply have sharp minds, noticing Qian Xiao Er's number in the brief moment. This might be another layer of the Qian family's intention. Then the MC's voice came from below. Thank you all for coming to celebrate Madame Qian's birthday. The chairman appreciates your thoughts, but gifts are unnecessary. The chairman and Madame Xu wish everyone good fortune and thank you again. Shortly after, the door to Hu Yan's private room opened, and a young man walked in. Hello everyone. I'm Qian Shiji, second son of the Qian group. Please join us at our home for a gathering. Except for Hu Yan, everyone else looked pleasantly surprised. Qian Shiji led Hu Yan and the others to the villa. The moment they stepped inside, it was clear how different it was from King Zixuan's home. The Qian family's house had a vintage style, filled with antiques due to their background in the pawn business. In contrast, the Qian family, who made their fortune in jewelry, 
had a luxurious and opulent design that was more appealing to a younger audience. Walking through a marble corridor, they reached a spacious pavilion. Four elegant MCs stood inside, with a marble square table in the center. Kian Shiji invited everyone to sit on the long benches around the pavilion, indicating that there was more to come. After everyone settled down, Kian Shiji began, First, thank you all for attending my mother's birthday celebration he bowed gracefully, showing refined manners. Unlike the arrogant airs often depicted in novels, Kian Shiji exhibited none of those traits. I know many of you have prepared gifts, but my mother insists she won't accept any. However, if anyone has a special talent, you are welcome to prepare a small gift here. My mother would be delighted. With a gesture, the four MCs brought out the four treasures of the study brush, ink, paper and inkstone. It was clear that while any skill was welcome, the focus was on calligraphy and painting. Hu Yan began to understand the Qian family's intentions. The previous selection process tested the candidate's intellect and character. Those who successfully identified Qian Xiao Er were either kind-hearted or highly rational individuals. Now, with this task, the Qian family sought to evaluate the candidate's personalities through their calligraphy. Rational people often lack the emotional depth needed for artistic endeavors, allowing the Qian family to filter them out. Clearly, the Qian family cared deeply about Qian Xiao Er's future happiness, focusing on qualities beyond wealth and status. Sensitive and emotional people, often more affectionate, would be a better match for Qian Xiao Er's pure and naive nature. Everyone looked at each other, and one person stepped forward. Well, I'll go first and set an example. Qian Shiji responded with a respectful bow. I've heard of Brother Shen Yu's exceptional talents. Today, we finally have the chance to witness them. Shen Yu, pleased by the recognition, replied, Qian Shiji, you're too kind. I'm just bold enough to go first. Qian Shiji shook his head. Courage is also a commendable trait. Your reputation is well deserved. Encouraged, Shen Yu declared, All right. No matter what, I've made a friend in you today. Qian Shiji Hu Yan nodded inwardly, impressed by Qian Shiji's business acumen and ability to make people feel valued. Soon, several guests were busy writing and painting, spreading rice paper on the large table. Whether intentionally or not, Qian Shiji glanced at Hu Yan multiple times. Hu Yan, maintaining an uninterested demeanor, silently observed the others. Surprisingly, some of the young men displayed impressive skills, creating works of significant artistic merit. However, by professional standards, they still had a long way to go. After about half an hour, most had finished their pieces, while eight people chose not to participate. Ho Yan noted that those who abstained were generally the more rational individuals. Qian Shiji's method of elimination was clever, allowing the unqualified to excuse themselves without offense, showing genuine concern for Qian Xiao Er's well-being. Ho Yan was also among those who did not participate. His purpose for coming was purely to celebrate the matriarch's birthday as a friend, nothing more. Interestingly, Wan Lin Chuan did submit a piece. Although not valuable in Hu Yan's eyes, it was mediocre among the group making Hu Yan more cautious about him. Wan Linchuan, a highly rational person, managing to produce decent calligraphy indicated he was indeed impressive. At this moment, an elderly man entered the pavilion. Qian Shiji greeted him respectfully, Uncle Wan and gestured for him to proceed. Uncle Wan inspected the works and placed numbered cards on each piece in order of quality. Unsurprisingly, Shen Yu's work was placed second. Curiously, there were only numbers 2 through 11, with Shen Yu placed second. Qian Shiji then said, please take your numbered cards. Those without a card, please follow the MCs to the dining area the ones who abstained, including Hu Yan stood up to leave. Qian Shiji suddenly called out, Ho Yan, wait a moment Hu Yan paused, puzzled. Qian Shiji handed him the number one card. Ho Yan reluctantly accepted, thank you Qian Shiji instantly. The others eyed Hu Yan with suspicion, clearly thinking, is this rigged? Qian Shiji explained, don't misunderstand. Hu Yan is a good friend of Xiao Er. He once created a magnificent Jin Huai Dewey painting for her, which you will see shortly. You'll understand once you see it. With the host's explanation, the others had no choice but to accept it. They followed Qian Shiji to the back garden, which was spacious and reminiscent of an imperial garden. A temporary dining area had been set up in the flower filled center, with a carpeted floor and a steel framed glass dome resembling a high end mall. In the center of the hall, a group of elders conversed with the Qian family. The much-anticipated Qian Xiao Er sat beside Zhu Biyua, flanked by the beautiful Yao Ru and Hu Jiaxin. Those without numbered cards did not appear here. Qian Shiji seated the guests at a large round table according to their numbers and then took their works to show Yi Shu Bihua. She reviewed each piece, smiling and nodding. From afar, 
Qian Xiao Er playfully stuck her tongue out at Hu Yan, drawing envious glances from many. Ho Yan could only shake his head in exasperation. The banquet officially began. The dishes, meticulously selected, included a variety of northern and southern cuisines, with many wild delicacies and seafood. The cost of this meal was certainly not less than 10,000 yuan. Just as Hu Yan hungry from the morning was about to eat, Qian Xiao Er called out, Hu Yan, come over here. Reluctantly, Hu Yan set down his chopsticks and walked over. Qian Xiao Er linked her arm with his, saying, Mom, this is Hu Yan, the one I told you about. It was Hu Yan's first time meeting Xu Bi Hua in person. She resembled Qian Xiao Er, explaining why Qian Jintang doted on his daughter so much. Ha Yan bowed. Hello, auntie. Good, good. What a fine young man. No wonder my Xiao Er speaks of you so often, Zhu Bi Hua said warmly. Qian Xiao Er, still holding Hu Yan's arm, said, Hu Yan, show my mom the gift you prepared. Ho Yan was taken aback, thinking, didn't Qian Shiji say they wouldn't accept gifts? Sensing his hesitation, Qian Xiao Er pouted, You're different from everyone else. I want to see what you got for my mom. An authoritative looking old man beside Zhu Bi Hua scolded softly, You child, where are your manners? Qian Xiao Er stamped her foot, Dad. Ho Yan isn't an outsider. Jiaxin and Yao Ru also gave mom gifts. The old man sighed, Ah, this child is spoiled. The elders chuckled, clearly fond of Qian Xiao Er. Hu Yan bowed again. Hello, Uncle Qian. Qian Jintang smiled and nodded, whispering something to his friends. Ho Yan took out a beautifully wrapped gift box and presented it with both hands. Before Xu Bi Hua could respond, Qian Xiao Er eagerly grabbed it. So small? Hu Yan, are you trying to fool my mom? Ha Yan smiled awkwardly. Yu Xu Bi Yua and Qian Jintang looked resigned. Qian Xiao E quickly opened the box and pulled out a small jade pendant. Holding it up to the light, the blue flowers within the clear, white jade looked like clouds in a blue sky, creating a serene and pleasant feeling. An elder praised, blue flower ice jadite, a nice piece. However, many were indifferent. While blue flower ice jadite is good, it's one of the more common types. Suddenly, Qian Xiao Er exclaimed, Hu Yan? Did you make this yourself? It's beautiful. She showed it to Zhu Bi Hua, mom. Look, Hu Yan even engraved something on it. Oh, Zhu Bi Hua put on her reading glasses to inspect it. Qian Jin Tang chided, This child always makes a fuss. No manners. But before he could finish, Yi Xu Bi Hua gasped, Oh my. It's not just a few words, it's a complete painting. What? Let me see. Qian Jintang took the pendant and examined it. What a pity the jade isn't top grade. Otherwise, this would be a true treasure. His words stunned the entire table, even catching the attention of the younger guests at the next table. When someone like Qian Jintang called something a treasure, it had to be extraordinary. In an instant, the elders at the table were all drawn to Hu Yan's gift. Their eyesight wasn't the best, so they squinted, many donning glasses to get a better look. Wow. This is incredible. The jadeite itself is already impressive, but this carving really makes it a treasure. Indeed, this is a long-lost craft. Whose work is this? Why isn't there a signature or seal? Where did you find this? It's definitely a collectible piece. Look at the craftsmanship it's so smooth and refined. It would take decades of skill to produce something like this. It's strange though. It looks new to me. Could it be freshly unearthed? But it doesn't show any signs of natural aging or weathering. Listening to the elders marvel at Hu Yan's gift, Qian Xiao Er felt proud. Clutching Hu Yan's arm tighter, she asked, If my mom doesn't want it, can I keep it? Ho Yan shook his head, It's your family's decision, not mine. Of course it's mine. Without me, you wouldn't even know my mom. Right, Qian Xiao Er said confidently. The elders, who had quieted down, now looked at Hu Yan with curiosity. Qian Jin Tang glanced at his wife, and Zhu Bi Hua, understanding the cue, asked Hu Yan, Dear nephew, did you really mean to give such a precious gift to me? Ho Yan nodded sincerely, I wish you good health, auntie. It's a small token of my respect. You're very thoughtful, like Xu Bi Hua said. Wonderful, Qian Jin Tang applauded. As a craftsman myself, I know that someone with such skill must have good character. Turning to his son, he said, Shiji, bring Hu Yan's chair over here, next to me. Ho Yan followed Qian Shiji, who said with a smile, No, I'll handle it. Today you are our guest of honor. All right, but let me help Hu Yan insisted. No, you're our guest, and a distinguished one at that Qian Shiji replied with a knowing smile. 
once you drop the Kian from my name and call me brother, you'll be part of our family. The elders laughed heartily, but the young people at the other table were left in a state of shock, unable to comprehend the situation. Some sharp-minded individuals began to ask Wan Linchuan about Hu Yan's identity. Qian Xiao Er's cheeks flushed, and she let go of Hu Yan's arm, giving her brother a playful glare. Qian Shiji pretended not to notice, setting the chair and inviting Hu Yan to sit. Brother Hu Yan, please take a seat. This spot is a rare honor even for us brothers. As Hu Yan settled, an elder asked, Young man, where do you work? Qian Jintang introduced him, This is Professor Yu Di Hai, the curator of Jiangqing Museum. Hu Yan stood up and greeted, Hello, Professor Yu. Professor Yu nodded, A specialized place like that Qian wouldn't employ just anyone. You must be very capable. Not at all, Hu Yan replied humbly. I majored in history, so working at the pawn shop is related to my field of study. Good Professor Yu nodded approvingly. Keep learning from the seniors. Maybe one day you'll become a great appraiser. Ho Yan smiled and nodded. But Qian Xiao Er was displeased. Professor Yu, Ho Yan is already a top appraiser at Tianhai Pawn Shop, she proudly interjected. Professor Yu was taken aback. That's remarkable. I thought you were much younger. Qian Xiao Yi beamed, and he's also the marketing director. The elders, except for Qian Jintang and Xu Bihua, were shocked. They all turned to Hu Yan with renewed interest. Old Qian, you found an impressive young man, Professor Yu said, raising his glass. Let's drink to that. Everyone laughed and toasted, though Hu Yan held a soft drink. Zhu Bihua suggested, Hu Yan, it's just us today. Have a drink with us. Hu Yan explained, I'd love to, but I drove here. Before he could finish, Qian Shiji poured him a glass of Mao Tai. Don't worry about it. We'll arrange for someone to take you home. With no way to refuse, Hu Yan accepted the drink and toasted with everyone. The others were amazed at Hu Yan's accomplishments. Given Tianhai's reputation, his achievements were indeed impressive. An older woman asked, Hu Yan, how long have you been working? Just graduated, Hu Yan replied honestly. Qian Jintang introduced her. This is Vice President Shen Jingxia of ICBC. She helped me a lot when I started. Hu Yan greeted, Hello Auntie Shen. Shen Jingxia nodded, Tianhai never hires fresh graduates. How did you get in? Ho Yan replied, I didn't have the courage to apply initially. I met Mr. Qian at an antique store, and he recommended me. Shen Jingxia, skeptical, continued, I find it hard to believe that Mr. Qian would recommend someone just like that. Feeling slightly offended, Hu Yan responded, Maybe you should ask him yourself when you have the chance. Shen Jingxia, though displeased, kept her composure. Young man, don't let your family's money get to your head. Pride should come after real achievements like Chairman Qian and Mr. Qin. Hu Yan chose not to respond, letting her remark pass. Others found it awkward to intervene, especially since Qian Jintang had just praised Shen Jingxia. But the younger guests seemed pleased, thinking Hu Yan was overstepping. Qian Xiao R couldn't hold back, Auntie Shen, let me explain. Shen Jingxia, genuinely fond of Qian Xiao Er, smiled and nodded. Qian Xiao Er recounted how Hu Yan became an appraiser and made a significant profit for the Qin family at a gambling stone event. Shen Jingxia's expression softened. So, this young man is quite capable, she said, not looking at Hu Yan but teasing Qian Xiao Er. The conversation moved on, saving face for everyone. Impressed, Hu Yan thought, experience truly speaks volumes. Another guest couldn't resist. Hu Yan, where did you find this gift? Qian Jintang quickly introduced, This is Qiu Changzi, a major antique dealer in Jiangcheng. He owns half of the big shops on Antique Street. He won't sleep until you tell him. Everyone laughed as Hu Yan stood up, Hello, Uncle Qiu Yu. No need for formalities. Just tell me where you found it. This piece looks new, which I can't understand. Hu Yan replied, You have a good eye, Uncle Qiu Yu. It's new, only made a few days ago. Those interested in antiques were stunned. Impossible. The craft of Jinhui Diwi has been lost. Could it be from Master Wang? But he's almost a hundred years old. Right, and the skill required smooth, refined, and natural takes decades to master. I may not know much about carving, but beauty is universal. This piece is harmonious and balanced, and the theme is perfect. The main Shu character looks like a phoenix spreading its wings. Surrounded by the characters for blessings and longevity clearly made for this occasion. Do you know any living masters of Jinwai D.Y.? Unlikely. If there were, it'd be all over the news. Qian Jintang laughed. There are still masters of Jinwai D.Y. If someone knows them, 
It's not surprising Hu Yan could get such a piece. Everyone looked at Qi and Jintang eagerly. Stop teasing us, old friend one elder joked. Yes. Don't give me a heart attack another added. Impossible. Mastering Jin Huai Diwai requires proficiency in various calligraphy styles. No such master exists today. All right, I'll show you Qian Jintang said, motioning to his son. Shiji. Bring my treasure out. Qian Shiji smiled, thinking, I knew he'd want to show off. He approached Shen Yu and whispered, brother. You're about to see the real number one piece. Qian Shiji took out a beautifully mounted scroll and placed it on the eight immortal table. Curious guests gathered around the table, eager to see what was inside. Slowly, Qian Shiji unrolled the scroll, revealing a pristine Jinhui Diwi painting. Qiu Chengzi, an expert in antiques and paintings, put on his cat eye magnifying glasses and carefully examined every detail of the artwork. Others pointed and commented, saying, Even if I don't understand Jinhui Diwi, I can tell this calligraphy is master level. This ancient and rustic feel must be a masterpiece from an old master. With such skill, it's surprising this artist isn't famous across China. This painting was done by Hu Yan after returning from Qin Zixuan's house, fulfilling his promise to give Xian Xiaowar a painting. Channeling the techniques of the great masters he had just studied, Hu Yan created this exceptional piece. Qian Jintang beamed with pride and asked Qiu Yu Chengzi, How is it? Qiu Yu Chengzi, slightly embarrassed, shook his head and said, Honestly, this is the best Jin Huai Diwi piece I've seen in my life, but I dare not comment further. A collective gasp went around the room. Given Qiuayu Chengji's stature, such praise was no small thing. Not only was he a major figure in Jiang Qingxing's antique market, but he was also a leading appraiser. Even Qian Jintang's family was shocked by the high praise. Qian Jintang grabbed Qiuayu Chengji's arm and asked, Old Qiuayu, do you mean this is better than those in your collection? Qiuayu Chengji nodded, From my perspective, artistically, this surpasses the old masters. However, it lacks the history and recognition of those works. Over time, it will surely shine. His words were subtle but clear to everyone. He meant that the craftsmanship was superior, but the artist was not yet famous, making the value lower. But once this artist gained recognition, their work would outshine the old masters. This was high praise indeed, causing Qian Jintang to look at Hu Yan differently no longer as merely acceptable but with growing admiration. Others, unaware of the details, were puzzled. Only one person seemed to have an inkling. When Qian Shiji retrieved the painting earlier, he mentioned, you'll see the best piece soon. Could this really be Hu Yan's work? How could he master eight different calligraphy styles to such a level? Did he start practicing in the womb Shenla wondered, skeptical yet intrigued. Qiu Chengzi's pleaded, old Qian, please introduce me to this incredible master. Meeting him would be the highlight of my life. Hao Yan felt uncomfortable, but Qian Jintang was visibly pleased. Meeting him? That's unlikely Qian Jintang laughed. Qiu Yu Chengzi sighed. A master of such skill, yet unknown, must be a recluse who shuns fame and fortune. How could he agree to meet someone like me? Erdado looked at Qian Jintang and added, You're lucky to know such an esteemed gentleman. Qian Jintang laughed heartily actually, I don't know this master personally, it's my daughter Xiao Er, who knows him. And this painting belongs to her I'm just holding it for her. She left it in the shop, not realizing its value. I brought it home, knowing it was special. Qiu Yu Chengzi pointed at Qian Jintang, you sly old fox. You wanted to show off at your wife's birthday party. You're shamelessly flaunting this. Everyone laughed, and Qian Jintang was elated, laughing uncontrollably. Seeing Qian Jintang enjoying himself so much, Qiu Yu Chengzi turned to Qian Xiao Er, dear niece, since you know this master, could you arrange a meeting? I'd be honored just to see him. Qian Xiao Er was caught off guard, realizing everyone was now looking at her. With a mischievous look, she said, Uncle Qiu, you actually know this master. You've dined and drunk with him before. What Qian Jintang was stunned. Could I have offended him, making him keep his talent a secret Qian Jintang wondered. Qian Xiao Er added, he's very easygoing and wouldn't hold a grudge. Qian Jintang gave his daughter a thumbs up. Qiu Chengzi was beside himself. I didn't recognize such a distinguished master. If I ever meet him again, I'll bow and apologize profusely. But will I have another chance? As if on cue, Qian Xiao Er spotted a tall, elegantly dressed woman with sunglasses approaching. Xuan Xuan, you're finally here, Qian Xiao Er cried, running to embrace her. It was Qian Zixuan. As they walked back, chatting and laughing, Qian Zixuan greeted, 
Hello, Uncle Kian and handed a beautiful gift bag to Zhu Bihua. Auntie, wishing you eternal youth. Such a sweet girl Zhu Bihua patted the seat beside her. Sit here. Xiao Air can sit with Hu Yan. Qian Zixuan, puzzled, sat down. Many guests recognized her and greeted her warmly. The focus then returned to the painting. Old Qian, how long will you keep us in suspense? Right old Chuayu is passionate about art. You can't let him suffer like this. You old rascal. Qian Zixuan had been briefed by Qian Xiao Er and was also pleased by the praise for Hu Yan's painting. Qiu Chengzi's looked at Qian Xiao Er, full of hope. Qian Xiao A asked her father, Shall I tell them? Qian Jintang nodded. Qian Xiao Er linked arms with Hu Yan and announced, Everyone, here's the master you've been talking about. Silence fell. Kate? After a moment, Qiu Chengzi coughed, Niece, that's not funny. He glared at Qian Jintang, as if to say, Is this some joke? Qian Jintang knew his friends thought he and his daughter were playing a prank, so he turned to Hu Yan, Hu Yan, we'll soon be family. This painting was your gift to Xiao Er and I shouldn't take it. But I love it. Could you make another one for me, right here? Qian Jintang's request was more convincing than any explanation. Everyone looked at Hu Yan. Some ladies whispered to Xu Bihua, is it really Hu Yan's work? Xu Bihua smiled and nodded. Qiu Chengzi still looked doubtful, Hu Yan, was that really your painting? It's impossible to master such skills without decades of practice. Hu Yan humbly replied, I was fortunate. He rolled up his sleeves and approached the prepared ink and brushes. Hu Yan wasn't new to drawing in front of crowds, but today's audience was the largest he had ever faced. Recently, painting had become second nature to him. With everyone watching in disbelief, Hu Yan dipped his brush in ink, paused to think for a moment, and then began to paint. Graceful lines flowed from his brush. Though few in the audience were experts, and even fewer understood painting, anyone could tell that Hu Yan's work was dot 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 completely incomprehensible. What is this? Fashion design. I knew it. How can an ordinary person master Jin Wai Di Wai? Eight different styles of calligraphy. No one his age could learn that. Looks like this will be interesting. Even Qun Zixuan, Qian Xiao R, and Hu Jiaxin had no idea what Hu Yan was doing. He was painting the shape of a person, with clothing as if draped on a body. Though many criticized him, some experts in the crowd could see his skill. This young man is remarkable. Even if he can't do Jin Wai Di Wai, his painting skills are top-notch among the younger generation. Indeed, his brushwork and strength are professional level. It's just lacking color. Otherwise, this would be an exceptional piece. As the crowd debated, Ho Yan finished painting the clothing. His soft, flowing lines depicted a traditional robe that looked as if it belonged to a woman. Even though he hadn't painted the face yet, most criticisms faded away. Just the robe alone conveyed such beauty and personality that even the untrained eye could see it was special. Yushu Bihua smiled kindly, nodding her approval. Others glanced at her, realizing that Hu Yan had captured her essence through just the clothing. No one spoke as they watched Hu Yan work his magic. Soon, the pants and shoes were complete, and finally, a familiar face appeared on the paper, drawing applause from the crowd. A figure strikingly similar to Xu Biyua sat serenely in the painting, her robe flowing elegantly. The only difference was that Yu Xu Biyua wore a moon white hanfu with embroidered longevity characters, while Hu Yan's painting featured a plain white robe. People praised Hu Yan. Even if he couldn't do Jin Wai Di Wai, he was still a talented young painter. Then, Hu Yan stretched and said, Now, I'll start the real work. Amidst puzzled looks, Hu Yan switched to a smaller brush and began painting on the hanfu. Soon, a hanfu with a Jin Wai Di Wai background emerged on the painted Zhu Bihua. Silence fell over the crowd. After about 30 seconds, the audience erupted in applause. The Incredible. E hundred longevity Jin Wai Di Wai and they said he couldn't do eight styles. There are at least 20 here. Remarkable. If this went to auction, I'd start at 50,000. Dream on. It wouldn't go for less than 100,000. And the owner isn't short on money. A treasure. Truly a treasure. Old Kian, your daughter has a good eye. She found a living gem. Amidst the congratulations, Qin Zixuan's face grew frosty. But Hu Yan was lost in the painting, immersed in his art. To him, the painting still wasn't perfect. It was missing something. He looked around and saw a gardener watering the flowers. Borrowing the watering can, Hu Yan began to spray water into the air. What's he doing? Ruining the painting. Is he mad? Painting someone's birthday portrait and then this. Stop him. 
Get down now. Ignoring the shouts, Hu Yan sprayed water mist into the air. The uneven droplets created a unique texture as they fell on the painting. The ink absorbed the water differently, creating a three-dimensional effect. Under the varying intensities of ink, Yishu Bihua's eyes appeared deep and kind, as if she were gazing lovingly at someone. The Jinhui Duai Diwai background, enhanced by the ink's layering, looked like an ancient, weathered scroll. No expert's opinion was needed the painting's mastery was evident. Even Xu Bihua, usually composed, stood up and walked closer to admire it. This is unbelievable she whispered, echoing everyone's thoughts. Only then did Hu Yan step down from the table, bowing to Qian Jintang. I apologize Uncle Qian. I got carried away. Surrounded by admiration and praise, Qian Jintang had no reason to scold Hu Yan. Ho Yan, what are you saying? We're family now, no need to be so formal. Feeling awkward, Hu Yan scratched his head. At that moment, a cool, smooth hand slipped under his arm, linking with his. Ho Yan, when it's my father's birthday you must paint something even better Qin Zixuan said softly, making Hu Yan's heart melt. He could hardly believe it was her speaking so tenderly. Everyone's expressions changed. Qian Jintang looked between Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan, puzzled. What's going on? Qian Xiao Er, having overheard the earlier praises, blushed and panicked but lacked the courage to deny anything. Now, with her father asking directly, she turned pale. Hu Yan is a good friend of mine in Shuang Shuan. He came for my mom's birthday, so naturally he'll come for Uncle Qin's too, Qian Xiao Er explained hastily. Pulling Hu Yan over, she added. Thank you for the painting. Could you leave your seal on it? Hu Yan took out his seal and stamped the painting. 3,000 years. Is this your signature? asked Huayu Chengzi. It's my name, not a title, Hu Yan replied. Having recovered from the earlier excitement, Qian Jintang said, Old Qiu, now you understand why you'll never meet that master you spoke of, because he's your junior. Everyone laughed, Qian Jintang included, despite his earlier unease. Knowing he couldn't compete with the Qing family for Hu Yu Yan's attention, he reluctantly accepted the situation. Yixu Bihua, sensing her husband's discomfort, whispered, Old Qian, you've done well. Let the children decide their fate. Qian Jintang patted her hand, nodding silently. Hu Yan, now standing aside, gently patted Qin Zixuan's hand. Old Qin, my life is in your hands. If you don't take responsibility, I won't let you have such an excellent man. Qin Zixuan, influenced by Hu Yan's earlier brilliance, did not retort but shyly nodded. Without you, I'd rather stay single forever. Filled with joy, Hu Yan grabbed her hand. Pinky promise. They locked pinkies and stamped their thumbs together, sealing their promise. A hundred years, no change Hu Yan declared happily. Qin Zixuan felt happy too, but was also aware of her family's constraints. I'll try my best. But if it doesn't work out, Xiao R is your best choice. She let go of his arm, not wanting Qian Xiao Yi to see their exchange. When Qin Zixuan finished speaking, Hu Yan felt a mix of emotions, both happy and sad. For the first time he truly understood Qin Zixuan's feelings, but when she let go of his hand, he also realized how much pressure she was under. Ha Yan wanted to see what Qin Zixuan had been through, but since she didn't show any technical skills he couldn't view her past. Now, he understood his ability better he could only trace back and replicate technical skills, but not knowledge or memories. Moreover, he felt that prying into such personal matters would be dishonorable. Good and bad news came together, and Hu Yan didn't know whether to be happy or sad. The banquet lost its flavor, and amid the praises, Hu Yan drank a lot. When it was time to leave, Qian Shiji arranged for someone to drive Hu Yan's car home, but Hu Yan himself rode with Qin Zixuan. At home, Hu Yan was quiet. Even Zhao Peng had his goals now, but Hu Yan felt like he was just passively going with the flow. How could he make things easier for Qin Zixuan and be accepted by the Qin family? The following days were uneventful until one evening, Zhao Peng excitedly told Hu Yan, Old Hu, you're famous. Ha Hu Yan was puzzled. What happened? Zhao Peng came over and showed him the trending topics on his phone. A video of Hu Yan painting at the Qian family event was going viral. Zhao Peng showed more clips, each with hundreds of thousands of views, the most popular one reaching over 10 million views. The headlines were varied a Jinhui Diwi master appears the heir of Jinhui Diwi rediscovered art the Jinhui Diwi heir comments flooded in. This guy is so handsome. Does he have a girlfriend? He's amazing. I want to learn this too. Where can I find classes? This is incredible. It looks even better than movie special effects. Is this real? These were the younger viewers' comments. 
Surprisingly, many older viewers also commented. This craft is a national treasure of China. It should be declared an intangible cultural heritage. Amazing. This young man embodies the spirit of our nation. Follow this artist. His work will be worth a fortune in the future. I'm a cultural relic appraiser in Beijing. If you miss out on his art, you'll regret it forever. Many people tagged the author, asking for prices, lessons, and to buy his paintings. Zhao Peng expected Hu Yan to be excited and proud, but he remained calm. Old Hu. What's wrong? Zhao Peng noticed something was off. Ho Yan shook his head. Nothing. I just can't seem to get excited about anything lately. That's odd. I remember even when you broke up, you weren't this down, Zhao Peng said, puzzled. Ho Yan lay back on the couch, not wanting to dwell on it. How's your shop coming along? Didn't I tell you? We're opening this Sunday. Oh, Hu Yan said. Remind me, then he closed his eyes. Zhao Peng nudged him. Old Hu, don't you see a business opportunity here? Ha Yan didn't open his eyes. What opportunity? Zhao Peng explained, I used to think your paintings were overpriced, but now I see they were undervalued. We should sell them for more. Ho Yan disagreed. No, even if I've gained a bit of fame, I'm not at the level of recognized masters. Selling at the previous prices and letting buyers see the value is the way to build a long-term business. Though Zhao Peng didn't fully understand, he nodded. Hu Yan had no reason to deceive him, and Hu Yan had already done a lot for him. Brother, what's really bothering you? Zhao Peng patted Hu Yan's leg. Hu Yan sighed. What if, no matter how hard you try, your goal keeps getting further away? That's not possible, Zhao Peng replied. Let me give you an example, Hu Yan said, sitting up. What if you earned 5 million a day, but could never catch up to someone like Jack Massachusetts? True, Zhao Peng said. As Hu Yan lay back down, Zhao Peng pulled him up. That's nonsense. The real goal in life is personal growth. As long as you're better than you were yesterday, that's enough. Seeing that Hu Yan still had his eyes closed, Zhao Peng added, I can't win a philosophical debate with you. But it's simple if you try, there's hope. If you don't, you're doomed. Think about it. I've got things to do. Watching Zhao Peng head out late at night, Hu Yan felt a twinge in his heart. He knew what Zhao Peng said was right effort brought hope while doing nothing ensured failure. He still had a chance. The Qin family consisted of five people old Qin, his wife, Qin Baxiang, his wife, and Qin Zixuan. At least, Hu Yan had Qin Zixuan's support, which was a 20% chance. Maybe old Qin would support him too. Sitting around wouldn't help, and Zhao Peng was right he had to make an effort. It was time to visit old Qin, whom he hadn't seen since getting the job at Tianhai. Hu Yan prepared some gifts and planned to visit on Saturday. Winning over old Qin and his wife would boost his chances to 60%. On Saturday, Hu Yan left early. Following the address Qian Zixuan had mentioned, he drove to the old town in the south of the city. This old street was once the most prosperous area in Jiangqing, now inhabited mostly by the elderly. Parking his car, Hu Yan walked through narrow alleys. The old weathered buildings with their blue bricks and green tiles were rare sights in modern times. This area, dating back to the Qing dynasty, was considered a historical treasure, preserved and maintained by the government. Temple Street, no, 216. This should be it, Hu Yan muttered, arriving at a large black door. He knocked. Who is it? An elderly woman's voice came from inside. Is this the home of Qin Anin? The wooden door creaked open, revealing a kind looking elderly woman. Who are you? My name is Hu Yan. I work at Tianhai Pawn Shop. Old Qin recommended me. Ho Yan the woman seemed to recall the name. Just then, Qin Anian's voice called from inside. Is that Hu Yan? Come in. The woman stepped aside, and Hu Yan entered. The first thing he saw was a screen wall inscribed with the Qin family's history. In old times, people believed that ghosts couldn't turn corners, so a screen wall at the entrance would keep them out. It also served as a fun shui element, blocking straight winds to prevent wealth from escaping. The courtyard was large, with five main rooms and four side rooms. Qin Anian was sweeping fallen leaves from the walnut, jujube and apple trees. How's work going? I heard from Zixuan that you're doing well old Qin said, smiling. Ho Yan modestly replied, it's going okay thanks to my leaders and colleagues. Old Qin laughed. We're a private business. No need to mention leaders. Ho Yan laughed along, not wanting to dwell on the topic. Old master, I brought a few things for you. Would you like to take a look? Qin Anian, a collector and pawn shop expert, was immediately interested. Great. Show me what you've got. They say you have a good eye, so I'm sure these are excellent. 
Hao Yan nodded and pulled out an item from his bag. As soon as he revealed it, a smile spread across Qin Anian's face. When old Qun saw Hu Yan take out an ancient-looking string of prayer beads, he could immediately tell it was made of precious Hainan Huangwuli wood. This is a fine piece old Qin said, playing with the beads in his hands. Hainan Huangwuli, also known as fragrant rosewood belongs to the subfamily Rosaceae. It has a soft color, a pleasant fragrance, and is easily adaptable to both dark and light tones, ranging from light yellow to deep brown and purple. It is ideal for inlay work, has excellent processing properties, is perfectly balanced in hardness and weight, and is resistant to deformation. These characteristics made it the preferred wood for making mortise and tinan joints. The fragrance of Huangwali is addictive, a scent that cannot be captured in a photo and can only be imagined and continuously smelled. A truly captivating fragrance confirms it is genuine Hainan Huangwali. At this moment, old Qin was sniffing the beads, a look of pure enjoyment on his face. In addition to its fragrance, the mesmerizing grain patterns of Huangwali can be quite enchanting. Few can resist its stunning beauty. The wood features intricate and unique patterns that resemble ghost faces, dense eyes, or tiger stripes. This string of beads, originating from Guo Songling had the rarest pattern burl wood grain. A bowl with similar patterns once sold for 300,000 yuan. Seeing old Qin's delighted expression, Hu Yan couldn't help but ask, Do you like it, old Qin? Old Qin nodded. Honestly, in all my years, I've never seen such fine burl patterned Huangwuli beads. These are top tier collectibles in the current market. Old Qin wasn't exaggerating. Ho Yan had initially valued these beads at 100,000 yuan, thinking that was a fair price. However, after meticulous restoration, their value had increased several times over, now estimated at 450,000 yuan. To restore these beads, Hu Yan had even visited Tianhai to seek advice from Master Tao, the top expert in restoring cultural relics at the Tianhai Museum. He didn't ask Master Tao to work on the beads himself, as they were a personal find and not an official piece from the shop. Instead, Hu Yan aimed to learn the master's techniques. After watching Master Tao for a while, Hu Yan had essentially mastered 80 to 90% of his restoration methods. Old Qin continued, These beads are interesting. They appear to be made from old materials but have been re-polished. There's a blend of the old and new. Why is that? Hu Yan explained, This string of beads is actually a historical artifact with a well-documented provenance. Old Qin's interest was piqued. Oh? Do tell. The original owner of these beads was Guo Songling, a trusted subordinate of Zhang Zulin. The warlord of northeast China Hu Yan began, recounting how the beads had been passed down through Guo Songling's family and how he had traced their history. Of course this alone isn't enough to prove the beads belong to Guo Songling. I did extensive research in the library to verify this Hu Yan said, showing some photos on his phone. Take a look he offered. Old Qin put on his reading glasses and examined the photos carefully. In the black and white images, Guo Songling was seen in his Northeast Army uniform, with a significant portion of the beads visible at his wrist, looking exactly like the string Hu Yan had brought. Remarkable. It's rare to see a young person being so thorough and diligent old Qin said, looking at Hu Yan with admiration. You helped me find a gem when we first met. Name your price for these beads, and I won't haggle. Hu Yan was taken aback. He realized old Qin thought he had found a bargain, but couldn't get a good price at the pawn shop, and was now trying to sell it directly to him. Smiling, Hu Yan said, Huangguli is used in traditional medicine for its aromatic properties, which can help lower blood pressure and cholesterol, and prevent coronary heart disease and hypertension. It's also used in Chinese medicine for pain relief and improving circulation. Given these health benefits, especially for the elderly, I thought it would be wasted on me and wanted to give it to you as a token of my respect. Old Qin scrutinized Hu Yan, then said, I thought you were special when we first met. Didn't expect you to be so generous. Tell me what do you need from me? Ho Yan shook his head. Old Qin, you're overthinking it. This is simply my way of thanking you for recommending me to Tianhai Pawn Shop. You're giving me something worth tens of thousands just to thank me old Qin and eyed Hu Yan curiously. You're destined for great things. Old Qin, you flatter me Hu Yan replied, waving his hand. Old Yao Old Qin called out. What is it? Old man the elderly woman answered. Prepare some good dishes for lunch. I want to have a drink with Hu Yan. The old woman glanced at Hu Yan. Good dishes are no problem, but the doctor said you shouldn't drink too much. I know my limits. Just go and prepare old Qin insisted. With that, the elderly woman left with a basket. Old Qin. I'll stay for lunch then Hu Yan said. Good. Being too polite would be insincere. 
But I must insist on paying you for this old Qin said. Without arguing, Hu Yan took out a painting from his bag. Old master, take a look at this. Old Qin eagerly unrolled the painting on the wooden table in the courtyard. As he examined it closely, his eyes widened in amazement. Whose masterpiece is this he exclaimed, studying the intricate details. The painting depicted Qin Anian himself, with a calm expression and wise eyes, perfectly capturing his likeness and spirit. Where did you get this? Such delicate brushwork. Could it be a secret admirer old Kuhn joked? Hugh Yan chuckled. Old master, the artist is a young man. Such a pity old Kin shook his head. But I appreciate the sentiment. Actually, old master, I painted this for you Hu Yan admitted. Old Kin was skeptical. I appreciate the gesture. But you expect me to believe this? Unless you think I'm senile. Hu Yan saw the humor in old Kin's eyes and showed him the viral videos of his painting skills. After watching for a while, old Kin nodded. Kian's son seems decent. Maybe he'll have talented offspring. Should I play matchmaker for you? Seeing Hu Yan's embarrassed smile, old Qin changed his tone. I see. You think being Qian Jintang's son-in-law isn't good enough for you. Well, perhaps there are better options out there. You're young and have plenty of time to achieve your goals and choose wisely. Though his eyes were still on the painting, old Qin's words seemed to pierce through Hu Yan's thoughts. Hu Yan realized he had been too self-assured. Old master, I painted this specifically for you. Let's not talk about money. Old Kim replied, I didn't bring it up. I accept your kind gesture. Talking about money would spoil it. Hao Yan was speechless, realizing he wasn't a match for old Qin's wit. Carefully rolling up the painting, old Qin said, I'll keep this safe and show it to those boastful old friends of mine. None of them have a portrait like this. Ha <laughs> ha. He put the string of beads on his wrist, tucked the painting under his arm, and looked as if he feared someone might snatch them away. Old master, take a look at this Hu Yan said, handing over another box. Old Qin opened it and said, You really know how to please. If only I had a grandson like you I'd be thrilled. Isn't Zixuan capable enough Hu Yan asked. Old Qin sighed. She's excellent, but managing such a huge company alone is worrisome. He began examining the seal inside the box. It was a South Redigate seal, a rare treasure Hu Yan had found at Lu Yushu's junkyard. After cutting it open, he discovered a small but high-quality piece of South Redigate, perfect for carving a seal. He had carved it with a Jinwai Diwi Diwi pattern, a nearly lost art form. This persimmon redigate is already rare, but the intricate Jinwai Diwi pattern makes it exceptional. I heard there's a successor to this craft, but I didn't believe it. Turns out it's you. Old Q marveled at the seal. I have accomplished sons and granddaughters, but they don't understand my interests. You have the heart. Ho Yan smiled, seeing that his gifts had truly pleased Old Kin. It's not that they don't care, they just don't have the time. Old Kin sighed again. I understand. But you, with your painting and carving skills, must spend a lot of time on these. Even if they don't have such skills, a simple handmade gift would make me happy. Ho Yan realized that the Kin family's lack of attention wasn't due to a lack of filial piety, but rather a lack of understanding of Old Kin's passions. Before long, the sound of the front door opening was heard. Old Kin knew his wife had returned. Just as he was about to get up, Hu Yan quickly ran over and took the basket of groceries from the elderly woman's hands. Although she insisted that Hu Yan continue chatting with Old Kin, he still carried the basket to the kitchen before coming back out. The old man and the young man chatted idly for a while, and soon, the aroma of food began wafting from the kitchen. There were no servants here, nor any signs of wealth. It was completely different from what Hu Yan had imagined. The elderly couple lived just as they had decades ago. Ho Yan asked Old Qin why he didn't live with his son. Old Qin replied that he was used to living here. Indeed, Qin Anin had grown up here. Most of the old neighbors in this alley had known each other since childhood. Qin Anin had realized that rather than watching his son and family rush about their careers every day, he preferred playing chess and chatting with old friends. At mealtime, Granny Yao warmed a pot of wine for Old Qin. However, she limited him to only three cups, regardless of how much Old Qin tried to bargain. Eventually, he complied with her wishes. After two cups, Old Qin's speech became slurred. He began recounting how difficult it had been to do business back in the day, facing challenges that modern people could hardly imagine. At that moment, Hu Yan understood why Granny Yao limited Old Qin's alcohol intake his tolerance was truly not impressive. Drinking with someone on a different level was no fun. Ho Yan also had three cups with Old Qin, mainly to fill his stomach. Granny Yao's cooking was excellent focusing on light and healthy dishes. 
The elderly couple seemed to be in good health. After finishing his third cup, old Qian couldn't resist showing off the gifts Hu Yan had brought. The beads and the seal were impressive enough, but when Granny Yao saw the portrait, she was astonished. She insisted on knowing where it came from. This time, old Qian simply said it was painted by Hu Yan. Ho Yan quickly chimed in, Granny Yao, isn't it normal for someone as handsome and charming as old Qian to have an admirer paint a portrait of him? Old Qian was momentarily stunned. Granny Yao didn't seem to mind. She even praised Hu Yan for being sensible and honest. Seeing old Qian pretend to be asleep in bed, Hu Yan bid farewell to Granny Yao and left. The next morning, the doorbell rang. When Hu Yan opened the door, he was surprised to see Qin Zixuan. Hey! Zixuan here so early. Qin Zixuan replied, Grandpa said he owed you a favor, so I'm here to repay it. What do you want? Ho Yan thought about how Qin Zixuan might repay the favor, likely by taking him shopping. Though those high-end brands were nice, they felt out of place with his current status. For example, Qin Zixuan might buy clothes and bags worth tens of thousands of yuan, but given Hu Yan's current income, such items were impractical. Generally, a person's clothing expenses should be less than 20% of their income. Based on Hu Yan's earnings, a single outfit shouldn't cost more than 40,000 yuan. Zixuan, I don't want expensive clothes or bags. Even getting a haircut would be fine. Just let me sleep a bit longer. Aren't you going to get ready for Zhao Peng's store opening today? Some classmates will be there. Ho Yan understood what Qin Zixuan meant. Last time, she had helped him out by pretending to be his girlfriend when he ran into his ex, Sun Jiaki. Qin Zixuan didn't want Hu Yan to be bullied again. Thanks, Zixuan Hu Yan said. But I really don't like those luxury items. If I need them, I'll earn the money myself. Qin Zixuan seemed to understand Hu Yan's underlying message and said, All right, let Zhao Peng know I might be late. There's a lot going on at the cosmetics factory. Hu Yan nodded. No problem. Zhao Peng will be happy you're coming at all. Indeed, Zhao Ping had wanted Qin Zixuan to help make the event more impressive. Knowing Hu Yan's special relationship with her, he couldn't ask directly. Hu Yan had mentioned it to Qin Zixuan, and when she agreed, Zhao Ping was thrilled. His partner was a local from Jiangcheng with some connections, and Zhao Ping feared relying solely on a few college friends might look bad. Young people still cared about appearances. At 8.30, Hu Yan had gotten a haircut, dressed appropriately, and headed to the antique market. Stepping out of the taxi, he immediately spotted the bright sign Dong Peng Antiques a combination of Wang Dong and Zhao Peng's names. The sign below read, Antiques, Paintings and Gifts. This was Hu Yan's suggestion, as relying solely on antiques made business too difficult. The entrance was crowded, indicating Wang Dong had considerable connections. Ho Yan also noticed many well-dressed women, likely friends of Wu Yuan Yuan, who was known for her generosity and reputation in the commercial district. Congratulations, Sister Wu, on your grand opening. Thanks. Come inside, Wu Yu Yuan greeted her guests. Sister Wu, here's my gift. It's enough that you're here. No need for gifts, she said, but still accepted the red envelope. Seeing this, Zhao Peng's classmates were puzzled. Zhao Peng, didn't you say we didn't need to bring gifts? Yeah, why didn't you mention it earlier? I'll transfer the money to you. Zhao Peng was at a loss. But when he spotted Hu Yan, he felt relieved. Ha Yan. You're here. Hey everyone Hu Yan greeted them with a smile. Zhao Pan quickly pulled Hu Yan aside. What should we do about the gifts? Wu Ji is accepting them, but we said we wouldn't. Hu Yan thought for a moment. Since you said no gifts, stick to it. But we're splitting the cost of the banquet, and they're getting gifts. What do we do Zhao Peng asked. That's on you for not discussing this with your partner beforehand. You can't blame them. Plus. Accepting gifts means you'll have to reciprocate later Hu Yan explained. Zhao Peng looked reluctant. Yeah, that means we'll have to return the favor. I told you to be more cautious. It's done now, so let's not worry about it. Come on, let's not keep everyone waiting. They rejoined the group, showing them around the store. Among the guests were Sun Jiaki and Lu Lili. Despite the previous awkward incident, classmates couldn't cut ties over such matters. Also present was Lu Yu Yu whose wedding Hu Yan and Zhao Peng had attended, accompanied by Zhao Peng's former crush, Feng Li. At Lu Yu Yu's wedding, Zhao Peng had hoped to pursue Feng Li, but the spotlight had been stolen by Hu Yan and the celebrity, Kai Lai. Later Zhao Peng had quarreled with friends over Hu Yan and drunk too much, sidelining his plans. Today Zhao Peng proudly showed off the paintings marked 3,000 years in the store. His confidence soared, hoping to catch Feng Li's eye. 
seeing the high price tags, everyone was astonished. Wow. Zhao Peng, these paintings are worth tens of thousands each. Why not just rob a bank? Yeah, you'll get rich if you sell even one. Art is so profitable. Zhao Peng could be a millionaire soon. Hearing this, Fun Li looked at Zhao Peng with newfound interest and moved closer. Zhao Peng, where did you get these paintings? Can they really sell at such high prices? Zhao Peng glanced at Hu Yan, seeing that he didn't mind, and boldly said, Don't underestimate these paintings. This is just the starting price. They could appreciate several times over. Fun Li's eyes sparkled. Really? Do you have a steady supply? What's your profit margin? Zhao Peng whispered. The artist is a close friend. We get 70% of the profits. Zhao Peng was being honest, considering the partner's share too. But Fun Li was stunned. That's more than my annual salary. I can't believe how much you've advanced in just a few months. Zhao Peng scratched his head. It's just the beginning. Their conversation warmed up quickly, and soon Fun Li suggested they meet up later. Zhao Peng felt like he was dreaming. His drive to succeed was partly fueled by his feelings for Feng Li. While Zhao Peng and Feng Li chatted, Wu Yu and Yuan arrived with her friends. Wow, Sister Wu, your shop is impressive. These paintings are out of my league. Yeah, who can afford this stuff? I heard people lost everything gambling on art. This is too high end. Can people really buy this stuff? Wu Yu and Yuan looked displeased. Zhao Peng had mentioned the painting's high prices, and though Wu Yu and Yuan Yuan had initially opposed it, she had deferred to Wang Dong's opinion. Now, seeing Zhao Peng showing off, she felt frustrated. Zhao Peng, these paintings are yours and not part of our partnership. Zhao Peng was stunned. The atmosphere became awkward instantly. Previously, Zhao Peng had discussed with Wu Yui Yuan about bringing in some paintings, claiming they had a significant profit margin. However, Wu Yui Yuan had never agreed to it. According to their partnership arrangement, Zhao Peng was responsible for procurement, and all other goods had verifiable sources. But these paintings had no known manufacturers or famous artists. Back then, Hu Yan hadn't yet gone to Qian Xiaoer's house to celebrate, so there were no videos of his painting. Despite not being knowledgeable about art, Wu Yu and Yuan did her research and found no artist named 3000 Years. It was understandable Hu Yan had even warned Zhao Peng to be cautious of scams. Wu Yu and Yuan, with her network, received plenty of advice to avoid potential pitfalls. Wang Dong also disapproved but refrained from telling Zhao Peng directly to avoid creating tension in their partnership. Wu Yu Nuan, curious about Zhao Peng's mysterious paintings, decided to wait and see. That morning upon seeing the paintings she was disappointed. To her, valuable paintings were typically abstract, unlike Hu Yan's realistic ones. Suspicious of their authenticity, Wu Yu and Yuan consulted her friends and ultimately decided against including the paintings in their inventory. Zhao Peng, riding high on his success, was abruptly brought back down to earth by Wu Yu and Yuan's rejection. His face turned red, but he saw Hu Yan's warning glance, urging him to stay calm. Had Hu Yan not signaled him, Zhao Peng might have immediately called Wang Dong and rashly told him to control his wife. But realizing the futility of confrontation, Zhao Peng reconsidered. This business involved Hu Yan's money if it failed, Zhao Peng knew he would owe Hu Yan for life. Taking a deep breath, Zhao Peng said, Sister-in-law, if you don't accept these paintings, I'll consider them mine. But let me be clear, if they make money, I won't share the profits. Wu Yu and Yuan, aware that her previous remarks might have been hurtful despite her calm tone, replied, Zhao Peng, rest assured, we're not biased. We just don't understand this kind of thing. I hope you understand. No matter how much you earn, I won't be envious. I wish you great success. Zhao Peng nodded all right sister-in-law, it's a deal. The tension eased somewhat, though Feng Li subtly distanced herself from Zhao Peng. She asked with feigned concern, Zhao Peng, are you sure you can sell these paintings? Zhao Peng whispered, I actually prefer her not being involved. This way, I get 50% of the profits, with the remaining going to my best friend. He won't deceive me. This was something Hu Yan specifically instructed Zhao Peng not to disclose to anyone. Otherwise, everyone would request Hu Yan's paintings, overwhelming him. Feng Li, skeptical of Zhao Peng's naivety, thought, in today's world, it's always friends who deceive you her disappointment grew, and she distanced herself even more. Ho Yan observed all of this quietly. Meanwhile, Wu Yu Yuan's side continued whispering. This was the right call, Sister Wu. Who knows how much those paintings cost? If they don't sell, you'll lose thousands. Exactly. 
With no provenance or renowned artist, selling them for tens of thousands is absurd. Making money isn't that easy. I know a bit about art. These paintings look too real, almost like photographs. Modern technology can do this. They aren't worth much. Ho Yan merely smiled while Zhao Peng, though annoyed, kept his faith in Hu Yan. However, their classmates were less confident. Zhao Peng. They have a point. How much did you pay for these? Can you return them? I've never seen paintings this realistic. They seem like modern tech rather than hand-painted. Right? They even have a 3D effect. If these are hand-painted, I'll eat them. Zhao Peng laughed. Thanks for your concern. But I trust this person more than myself. I saw them paint these with my own eyes. They are real. Fun Li shook her head again, thinking, Zhao Peng, with your naivety, any opportunity is wasted on you. She moved closer to Sun Jiki and Lu Lili. Since their previous confrontation with Hu Yan, they had become best friends, striving to succeed and find partners better than Hu Yan. Hey Feng Li, weren't you talking to Zhao Peng? Why step back? Yeah, it's obvious Zhao Peng likes you. Don't pretend you don't know. Feng Li smiled bitterly, knowing doesn't help. I thought Zhao Peng was established, but he's just unrealistic. Lu Lili asked, you don't trust Zhao Peng's paintings. Feng Li replied, we studied history. We know the nature of true art masters, this doesn't fit. Lu Lili and Sun Jiaki nodded. Historically, art masters wouldn't casually gift their works, unless it was a mutual exchange. By the way Lu Lili suddenly said, did you notice Hu Yan? Feng Li nodded, yes, what about him? He's alone, right? Yeah, what's up? Don't you find it odd Lu Li sighed and recounted their previous encounter with Hu Yan and his stunning girlfriend. He came alone today. Jiaki, do you think we were deceived? Sun Jiaki hesitated but didn't speak. She believed Hu Yan wasn't that kind of person. Feng Li added, Hu Yan wouldn't do that. Besides, it seems unlikely. People change after entering society. And Hu Yan dumped by Jiaki, wouldn't he seek revenge? Sun Jiaki said, let's forget it. I was at fault too. It's more important to focus on our own lives. Feng Li agreed, true. I can't forget Lu Lili said. He insulted us by saying we wore fake brands to attract rich guys. Accidentally, Lu Lili revealed the truth. Feng Li was shocked, really? Hu Yan did that? People do change. See? Believe me now? Look at Hu Yan's clothes today. And where's his stunning girlfriend? Today, Hu Yan wore a simple AJ tracksuit, consistent with his income. Expensive clothes felt inappropriate, and he wanted to help Zhao Peng move around easily. Even Sun Jiaki began to doubt. So, you're saying Hu Yan hired someone to impress us? Exactly Lu Lili said. He lives at Tianhai Garden, but it's not his place. Maybe a dormitory. He avoided us before, then set this up to embarrass us. Sun Jiaki frowned. You mean, he hired people to show off? Why not? He didn't wear his expensive clothes today. Renting is too costly. He thought we wouldn't show up. In truth, Sunjiaki didn't want to come, fearing another encounter with the successful Hu Yan. Is that why you insisted I come? Lu Lili nodded, yes, I wanted to see how Hu Yan acts without us around. He arrived by taxi. I want to expose him. Sunjiaki shook her head, no need. Even if true, there's no point. Let's just focus on ourselves. Seeing Hu Yan surrounded by classmates, Lu Lili's jealousy grew. I can't stand his smug face. We're from ordinary families. He's not better than us. Why should he lecture me? Feng Li laughed. You're amazing, Detective Lu, you're right. Society is harsh. We endure its cruelty. Why should classmates play mind games? Jiaki's reasons were practical. Who wants to marry into debt? Lu Lili high-fived find Feng Li. That's it. Smart women named Li think alike. Let's expose that hypocrite. Lu Lili dragged Sun Jiaki towards Hu Yan, with Feng Li following behind. Seeing their classmates surrounding Hu Yan and calling him Boss Hu Lu Lili was fuming. A fresh graduate being called Boss? More like bloated Boss if you ask me. Ho Yan, unaware of the brewing storm, thought back to their last encounter. Though he regretted the incident, he believed that such spiteful women only existed in novels. He didn't realize that real-life jealousy could be even worse. Approaching Hu Yan, Lu Lili sarcastically exclaimed, Oh wow, it's our esteemed Boss Hu. Didn't see you there. Sensing her hostile tone, Hu Yan felt uncomfortable but remembered his previous over the top actions. Realizing that Kyun Zixuan's participation might have hurt them deeply, he chose to be conciliatory. Lily, Jiaki, you're here too. He had already greeted Feng Li earlier, so he just nodded to her now. 
Sunji Aki and Lu Lili, lost in their thoughts, didn't return his greeting. Hu Yan genuinely noticed them just now. We've been here for a while, but you, Boss Hu, have been too busy to notice Lu Lili continued sarcastically. Ho Yan smiled apologetically. I'm sorry for ignoring you two lovely ladies. I'll drink three cups later to make up for it this should have been enough to smooth things over, but Lu Lili wasn't satisfied. By the way Boss Hu, where's your long-legged beauty of a girlfriend? Not here today? She wasn't a hired actress last time, was she Lu Lili's words, now laced with a certain sharpness, showcased her recent growth in verbal sparring. Ho Yan chuckled. Yes, her appearance fee was too high to afford. Their classmates laughed, seeing Hu Yan's calm deflection as a form of gentle evasion admitting nothing while conceding everything. Lu Lili was momentarily stunned but quickly retorted, you admit it. Hu Yan nodded. Sure. What else should I do? Summon her here as proof. Her status means I can't just command her presence. And even if I could, it's unnecessary to damage our friendship over this. Ho Yan's response was both an acknowledgement and an appeal to camaraderie. But Lu Lili wasn't swayed. What kind of status is so high that even Boss Hu can't summon her? Is she a CEO? Did your boss really play your girlfriend just to embarrass us? Their classmates, sensing drama, began whispering. Uninformed about the backstory, they turned to Zhao Peng for clarification. Zhao Peng, under pressure, reluctantly recounted the story, prompting Lu Lili to clap in mock applause. Bravo, good buddies indeed. So, that stunning woman is really your superior the daughter of Tian Hai's boss. Zhao Peng, taken aback, replied, that's the truth. Wow, Zhao Peng, you've changed too. Is deceiving old classmates your new hobby Lu Lili's anger escalated, now roping Zhao Peng into her ire? Ho Yan now genuinely upset, struggled to contain his anger but restrained himself for Zhao Peng's sake. Lu Lili, today is Zhao Peng's big day. Can we discuss this later? Lu Lili scoffed, why should I hold back? It's not that serious. By now Wu Yu Yu and Yuan's group had also gathered around. Zhao Peng's face burned with embarrassment. Lu Lili, for the sake of our old friendship, can you give me some face today? Lu Lili nodded, fine. I just have a few questions for Hu Yan, then I'll stop. She turned to Hu Yan, who realized she wouldn't back down. All right, ask away. Hu Yan, tell the truth. When Jiaki dumped you, did you resent her Lu Lili's question hung in the air, making the onlookers freeze in anticipation? Wu Yu Yuan's guests started gossiping, adding fuel to the fire. Wu Ji, you said this Hu Yan was impressive. How could he have been dumped? That girl is pretty, but she doesn't look like she comes from a wealthy family. Why would she dump someone so capable? Wu Ji, you sure you weren't deceived? Many antique shops here barely make ends meet. Wu Yu Yu and Yuan felt dizzy with regret. She had heard similar warnings about the risks of the antique trade. Now, seeing the unfolding drama, she questioned her judgment in partnering with Zhao Peng and Hu Yan. Lu Lili's persistence annoyed Hu Yan, but he answered calmly, At first I was upset. I thought love could overcome everything. But later I realized we still need to eat. So, you did resent Jishaki Lu Lili pressed. Yes I did. If I didn't feel anything, I'd be lying. What do you want? Nothing much Lu Lili continued. Did you ever think of revenge? I did. A collective gasp ensued. Hu Yan continued, but my idea of revenge was to succeed, buy a house in Jiangqing, and show her I could build the happy home I once promised. Fine, I don't care about your revenge plans Lu Lili said. But boss who, you relish being called boss what are you the boss of? Aren't you just a junior appraiser? Hu Yan, barely holding his temper replied. I'm a senior appraiser and the marketing manager at Tianhai Pawn Shop. This revelation stunned Lu Lili, who hadn't anticipated that a junior appraiser could hold such a high position. You say so, but we can't verify that. Let me ask, where's your G-Wagon, and your expensive suits? Zhao Peng, seeing Hu Yan struggle, intervened. Lu Lili, enough is enough. I told Hu Yan not to drive because today's my big day, and I want to celebrate with my best friend. His Hermes suits and bags are at home. Even Sun Jiaqi felt Lu Lili had gone too far. Lu Lili, let it go. We're all classmates. Classmates Lu Lili yelled. Did they consider that when they humiliated us at the restaurant, accusing us of wearing fake brands to attract rich guys? Zhao Peng, unable to take more, retorted, Lu Lili, can you be more unreasonable? If you hadn't pushed Hu Yan he wouldn't have exposed you. In his frustration, Zhao Peng detailed the restaurant incident, escalating the conflict and making Wu Yu and Yuan's guests even more skeptical of their business venture. Wu Yu and Yuan's heart sank. 
she had trusted Zhao Peng's reliability based on Wang Dong's assurance, but now felt she might have been deceived. She regretted pushing for this business to recover her past spending. Lu Lily, enraged by Zhao Peng's revelations, turned on Hu Yan again. What's so great about you? Living in company housing at Tianhai Garden doesn't make it yours. Driving a company car doesn't impress me. And your boss playing your girlfriend? Who knows what kind of person she is? Your talents aren't special. Slap. The sharp sounds startled everyone. Lu Lily clutched her face, blood trickling from her mouth. Silence fell. Hu Yan hadn't been close enough to strike her. The obvious suspect was Zhao Peng. Everyone turned to Zhao Peng, who was equally shocked. It wasn't me. Really, it wasn't though he had wanted to. Zhao Peng feared it would ruin his business. Seeing Lu Lily's bleeding lip, Zhao Peng felt a mix of satisfaction and fear. He had invested over 200,000 yuan and now feared losing it all. Wu Yu Yuan stepped in. Zhao Peng, what's going on? Are we continuing this business or not? If not, let's split now but remember, all investments are shared equally, excluding those worthless paintings. Zhao Peng felt his stomach churn. Was the business world truly this fickle? Excluding them? Fine came a cold voice. I'll buy all the paintings. It wasn't just Zhao Peng who had encountered such setbacks early in his career. Many fresh graduates fall into the trap of thinking they've found a kindred spirit to start a business with, only to be pushed out if the venture becomes profitable or saddled with debts if it fails. This dynamic is especially true when there's a significant disparity in backgrounds, like that between Wu Yu and Yuan and Zhao Peng. Wu Yu and Yuan was a local with deep roots in Jiangcheng, while Zhao Peng was an outsider, a university graduate. At present, Zhao Peng couldn't see this far ahead, but the current situation had already left him feeling deeply disappointed. However, the sudden declaration, I'll buy all these paintings had silenced everyone in the store. The voice belonged to none other than Qin Zixuan, who entered with a group of stunning women. Qin Zixuan walked up to Hu Yan and said, Good job. Indeed, it was Hu Yan who had slapped Lu Lili. He felt a bit regretful afterward, as his nature wasn't to be so domineering. But Lu Lili's slanderous remarks about Qin Zixuan had infuriated him to the point where he acted without thinking. His training had made him exceptionally quick, and despite Zhao Peng standing between them, Hu Yan's strike had been swift and precise. Qin Zixuan, addressing Lu Lili, said, I'm the CEO's daughter you mentioned. Today I'd like to see what you can do. Even Hu Yan had never seen Qin Zixuan so angry. Her icy demeanor, combined with her intense fury, made the room feel significantly colder. Lu Lili, who had just called her new boyfriend for backup, was stunned when she saw Qin Zixuan. If this woman wasn't a hired actress but really the heiress of Tianhai Group, Lu Lili's situation would be far worse than she anticipated. Qin Zixuan and Qian Xiaowar had arrived earlier but had stayed back, observing the ongoing drama between Lu Lili and Hu Yan. Hu Ji Jackson and Yao Ru had also joined them, with Hu Ji Yaxin attending because Zhao Peng had previously attended her graduation celebration and Yao Ru having become quite familiar with Zhao Peng recently. Additionally, Shen Muling arrived later due to some morning errands, just as Qin Zixuan and her group were getting there. Even with all these people, Zhao Peng's guests were still outnumbered by those of Wu Yu and Yuan. However, the quality of vehicles parked outside leaned in Zhao Peng's favor. Qin Zixuan had driven the latest Bugatti Veyron SUV, a luxurious and impressive vehicle, to boost Zhao Peng's morale. Qian Xiao R had also brought her orange Porsche. Yet, everyone's attention was focused on Lu Lili and Hu Yan, leaving the intended show of support unnoticed. Qin Zixuan, already displeased, became further irritated upon seeing Lu Lili targeting Hu Yan. To her, Hu Yan was perfect except for his lack of assertiveness. She observed silently to see how Hu Yan would handle the situation, ready to step in if necessary. Not content? Lu Lili, still in disbelief at Hu Yan's sudden rise, demanded proof of Qin Zixuan's identity. Qin Zixuan smirked and pressed the button on her car key, causing the Bugatti's locks to beep loudly, drawing everyone's attention to the sleek, high-tech vehicle outside. Qin Zixuan then instructed Hu Jiaxin to fetch a gift from the car, handing Zhao Peng a gold-plated certificate. This is my gift to you, Zhao Peng. Certified by Tianhai Pawn Shop, guaranteeing all items sold here are genuine. If you sell fakes you'll be tarnishing our reputation too. Zhao Peng, filled with gratitude, assured her. Thank you, Qin Zixuan. I'll uphold this promise. Qin Zixuan replied, no need for formalities between friends. This display significantly boosted Zhao Peng's standing, affirming Qin Zixuan's identity and support. No one dared to underestimate Zhao Peng now. Hu Yan nodded appreciatively, thank you, Qin Zixuan, 
for supporting Zhao Peng? Qing Zixuan, still visibly angry, asked Hu Yan, What do you want to do about that annoying woman? Ho Yan hesitated but finally said, Let it go. We were classmates after all. Qin Zixuan shook her head, disappointed in his leniency but respecting his decision. She then turned to Zhao Peng, I'll buy all these paintings. Is that okay? Caught off guard. Zhao Peng looked at Hu Yan, who indicated it was fine. Qin Zixuan nodded and instructed to leave a few for Zhao Peng's store. Shen Muling, anxious, asked, Can I buy two paintings? I gathered money just for this. These will appreciate significantly in value. Qin Zixuan considered and agreed to leave one painting for her. Shen Muling continued to bargain, but Qin Zixuan stood firm. Meanwhile, Wu Yuan Yuan and her friends were taken aback. Could Zhao Peng's paintings actually be valuable? Are they just putting on a show? Regardless, Zhao Peng's financial status had visibly improved. Wu Yuan Yuan, feeling increasingly frustrated, approached Zhao Peng, attempting to mend fences and secure a share in the painting's profits. However, Zhao Peng, having learned a hard lesson, firmly declined her offer. Determined not to collaborate further, Zhao Peng removed all the paintings from the walls, selling them to Qin Zixuan and Shen Muling. As transaction notifications chimed on his phone, Wu Yuan Yuan was filled with regret and frustration. She called Wang Dong, explaining the situation. He advised her to make amends with Zhao Peng, emphasizing the importance of maintaining a good working relationship. Though feeling even more disheartened, Wu Yuan Yuan hoped that Lu Lili's boyfriend would handle Zhao Peng. Coincidentally, just as she thought this, a Mercedes-Benz and a GL8 pulled up outside the store, and Lu Lili eagerly rushed to meet them. When Lu Lili ran to the Mercedes, a short, overweight middle-aged man with a big belly stepped out. Seeing him, she threw herself into his arms, crying and complaining about what had happened. Sun Jiki shook her head at the sight. A few days ago, Lu Lili had boasted about having a wealthy boyfriend, which Sun Jiaki had envied. She never expected him to be a greasy middle-aged man. From a distance, Lu Lili's face was visibly swollen, with a clear handprint on it. Ho Yan felt a bit embarrassed, muttering to himself, Did I hit her too hard, but it wasn't really his fault. In the heat of the moment, he hadn't used much force. Qin Zixuan, standing next to Hu Yan, frowned and said, I think it was too light. Leave the rest to me I'll handle it. The middle-aged man, holding Lu Lili, entered the store and demanded, Who's the owner here? Zhao Peng and Wu Yuan Yuan exchanged glances. Zhao Peng knew the trouble stemmed from him and saw Wu Yuan Yuan wasn't willing to step up, so he did. I am Zhao Peng said, stepping forward. The middle-aged man, face full of anger, sneered you? Running a little store, you think you're something special? How dare you hit my woman? Zhao Peng blushed, unaware that it was Hu Yan who had hit Lu Lili, otherwise he would have admitted it immediately. No. No matter what, Lu Lili is here to support me, and we're classmates. I wouldn't hit her Zhao Peng stammered. The man snorted, enough nonsense. Since it happened in your store, find the person who did it, or this store won't be open for long. Ha Yan stepped forward, it's not Zhao Peng's fault. I'm the one who hit her despite Qin Zixuan's warning, he couldn't just stand by. Looking at Lu Lili, Hu Yan, trying to be reasonable said, I'm sorry I acted on impulse. Let's settle this outside without disrupting business. A crowd had already gathered outside, typical of onlookers curious about the commotion. The middle-aged man, scrutinizing Hu Yan, asked, Why did you hit my woman? Just then, Hu Yan noticed a number five above the man's head with five women's names listed. He realized his eyes had unlocked a new ability. He glanced at Qin Zixuan, curious if she had any boyfriends. The number was zero. The same was true for Qian Xiao R, confirming his suspicion. Thinking that if Lu Lili's boyfriend was decent, he could settle this peacefully. Hu Yan discovered the man was a scoundrel and even had a wife. I hit my classmate, but your woman. Sir, you have too many women for me to keep track of Hu Yan retorted. Everyone was stunned, including Lu Lili, who was bewildered. Zhu Yukai, her boyfriend, was a minor real estate developer who had pursued her for a long time. It was only after the incident with Hu Yan that she realized how difficult it was to make a mark on her own and eventually agreed to date Zhu Yukai. Yi Shu Yukai, sweating and nervous, said, don't change the subject. This is about Lu Lili. Hu Yan responded, she insulted my friend, which I couldn't tolerate. What do you want to do? Settle privately or involve the authorities? Qian Xiao R praised Hu Yan, good job. I'm proud to have a friend like you. Even though Qian Zixuan still looked upset, she nodded in agreement. Yi Shu Yu Kai, seeing an opportunity, said, 
All right, then give me a hundred thousand yuan as compensation. Lu Lily was shocked, realizing this wasn't what she wanted. Taking money would make her seem like she was extorting her classmates. Old Shu, that's not necessary. I still value our friendship. An apology will do Lu Lily intervened. Yu Shu Yukai dismissed her, saying, face is worthless. Did any of your classmates stand up for you? Money is what matters. Hao Yan offered, fine I'll pay you now. Lu Lily, give me your bank account number. I won't send it to anyone else. Qin Zixuan interjected, Hu Yan, let me handle this. This happened because of me she took out a stack of cash checks. Zhu Yukai's eyes widened. Wait he exclaimed. That hundred thousand is for medical expenses. The psychological trauma is worth much more. This isn't just about money it's about her lost happiness. Anyone could see Xu Yukai was trying to extort more money, seeing the cash in Qin Zixuan's hands and her expensive attire. Not wanting to waste more time, Qin Zixuan asked, Name your price. Yi Xu Yukai pondered and said, 500,000. Qin Zixuan agreed, Fine, but don't change the amount. Everyone was astonished, especially Lu Lili and Zhu Yukai. Lu Lili, realizing how wealthy Qin Zixuan was, felt powerless and regretted her actions. She pulled Zhu Yukai, saying, forget it, old Zhu. It's just a slap. If you take the money, I'll never face my classmates again. Yi Shu Yukai hesitated, thinking whether to ask for more, fearing Qin Zixuan's reaction. Ho Yan stopped Qin Zixuan, this isn't right. I'll take responsibility. I'd rather go to court than be extorted. Yu Shu Yukai, angry and defensive, shouted, I'm single. Lu Lili, shocked, asked, is it true? Ho Yan confirmed. Yes, I have no reason to lie. Yushu Yukai has a wife and several girlfriends. Lu Lili, devastated, confronted Zhu Yukai, who tried to dismiss her. Qian Zixuan, calling her security team, ordered, get Zhu Yukai's wife here immediately. Within moments, several young men surrounded them, blocking Yixu Yukai's associates. After witnessing what happened, Qian Zixuan's first action was to send a message to Qian San, asking him to investigate everything about Zhu Yukai immediately. Qin San, an expert in such matters, quickly unearthed all the details about Zhu Yukai's family history. Though Ishu Yukai didn't appear particularly impressive, he had a reputation for being unfaithful outside. However, he was also known as a typical henpecked husband. This made sense, as all his success relied heavily on his wife's family resources. His father-in-law was a bank executive. Perhaps the psychologists were right. Feeling undervalued at home, Yi Shu Yukai sought solace with young beautiful and gentle women outside, to fill the void in his life. When Zhu Yukai heard about contacting his wife, his expression changed immediately. Gentlemen, let's not make things difficult. Let's discuss this calmly. His tone softened, but Liu Lili went completely berserk. Yu Shu Yukai, you really have a wife? Didn't you say you were divorced? We're separated, in the process of handling the paperwork. I've just been too busy to complete it Zhu Yukai explained. Liu Lili, realizing she had been deceived, exclaimed, You tricked me, Zhu Yukai. I'm going to make you pay. She lunged at Zhu Yukai's face. Hu Yan restrained Liu Lili. Don't be impulsive. Tears welled up in Liu Lili's eyes. Hu Yan, I was wrong. I can never compare to you. Are you really stopping me from punishing this scum? Ho Yan shook his head, of course not. I just want you to get what you deserve without losing more due to impulsiveness. Really Liu Lili clung to this hope like a lifeline. Really, trust me. Consider it my apology to you Hu Yan said, then turned to Xu Yukai. Now, let's talk about how you deceived my classmate. Yuxu Yukai's lips trembled, nonsense. It was consensual. Even the police won't intervene. What can you do? Ho Yan smiled, I can report you for bigamy. Liu Lili isn't the first your previous three affairs resulted in children. The authorities won't ignore that. Hearing this, Liu Lili shook with rage. Yuxu Yukai was drenched in sweat, his mind racing for a solution. The onlookers were stunned by the turn of events, as the roles of victim and perpetrator suddenly reversed. At this moment, Sunjiaki hugged Liu Lili, comforting her. Don't worry, Hu Yan will ensure you aren't wronged. But I spoke so harshly to him before Liu Lili regretted her previous arrogance. Sunjiaki reassured her, Ho Yan's character is kind, but he won't be bullied. Liu Lili recalled Hu Yan's past, and nodded. Yuxu Yukai, after much deliberation, asked Hu Yan, what do you propose? Ho Yan replied, you've caused my classmate emotional trauma that she'll remember whenever she sees her friends. Only a few million yuan can heal that. 
Xu Yukai thought, this is just like my own negotiating tactics. Millions? That's impossible. I don't have that much. My liquid assets don't exceed 200,000. Yu Xu Yukai's voice grew smaller, fearing his companions might overhear. This made Hu Yan pause. Just 200,000 was too little. Qun Zixuan stepped in. As you said before, if you don't have cash, you can write an IU. We're not in a hurry. Yu Xu Yukai breathed a sigh of relief, thinking, an IU? Let's see if you can get any real money from me. Fine. Name your amount he agreed readily. Ho Yan remained silent, deferring to Qin Zixuan's judgment. Since she spoke she must have a plan. Indeed, Qin Zixuan said, 325,000. Yuk Xu Yukai gritted his teeth, fine. But getting money from me? Dream on. I don't even repay bank loans, who do you think you are? All right. Write the I.O. Yu Xu Yukai said. But Lai Yu Lily quickly warned Hu Yan, don't listen to him, he clearly intends to default. Ho Yan shook his head at Lai Yu Lily, staying silent, and looked at Qian Zixuan. Qian Zixuan gestured for Qian San, who brought out a contract. Sign it Qian Zixuan said to Xu Yukai. Yu Xu Yukai scoffed, taking the contract and pen, but upon reading it, he was stunned. It detailed multiple mortgages, including a construction site and several properties, far exceeding 325,000. Virtually all his assets were listed. Moreover, the red seal on it was from the Tianhai Group's legal team. Damn. You've offended the Tianhai Group? Are you trying to ruin me? Xu Yukai was genuinely terrified. He had underestimated Qiu and Zixuan, thinking she was just a typical wealthy kid. But he had heard about the Tianhai heiress's formidable reputation. Although Lai Yu Lili was furious, she felt a sense of fear seeing Xu Yukai's near madness. She knew these contractors often engaged in shady dealings. Seeing Li Yu Lili's silence, Yu Xu Yukai realized the crux of the matter was with Qin Zixuan. Are you President Qin? Qin Zixuan nodded, Yes, I am. Any issues? Yi Xu Yukai, almost crying, admitted, President Qin, I didn't recognize you. I apologize, he slapped his face repeatedly, making it swell even more. Li Yu Lili felt nauseous seeing him now. Qin Zixuan watched him slap himself, then said, We're all adults here, stop wasting time. You can refuse to sign, but I assure you, I can make you pay a higher price. This wasn't an empty threat. With Tianhai's power, they could crush Xu Yukai's small company easily. Just a thorough inspection of the project's quality would suffice. Yi Xu Yukai, now truly terrified, trembled, President Qin, please give me a way out. You don't want to push me to the brink, do you? He glanced at Lai Yu Lili, implying he'd harm her if pushed too far. Still threatening Qin Zixuan took out her phone, I'll have you arrested now. Wait Xu Yukai gritted his teeth, fine. I'll pay. He then signed the mortgage contract. He promised to pay within three days, then left in disgrace, under scornful gazes. As long as his wife didn't discover his misdeeds, Yi Xu Yukai had a way to cover the debt. But whether Qin Zixuan would let him off easily was another matter. After handling this, Qin Zixuan revealed another side to Hu Yan. Then, she instructed to pack up Zhao Peng's paintings and load them into the car. Wu Yu and Yuan hurried over, wanting to meet Qin Zixuan. But Zhao Peng, learning from past events, pretended not to see her, avoiding introductions. Wu Yu and Yuan felt awkward. Qin Zixuan chatted with Zhao Peng and others. Zhao Peng, if anything happens again, let old Hu inform me. My friends in Jiangsheng shouldn't be bullied. Zhao Peng repeatedly thanked her. Wu Yu and Yuan felt even more embarrassed as her friends shared her discomfort. They had underestimated Zhao Peng, who now had connections they could only dream of. Ho Yan's classmates saw Zhao Peng in a new light, including his idol Feng Li, who stayed by his side. Feng Li, a pragmatic and rational woman, recognized potential not only in one's abilities but also in their social circle. Hu Yan was Zhao Peng's loyal friend. Seeing Qin Zixuan, Qian Xiao Er, Shen Muling and others, Feng Li believed Zhao Peng had a promising future. If he couldn't rise with such connections, he'd have to be a fool. Even if he were foolish, as long as she could influence him, Feng Li wasn't worried. Thus, Dongkang Wenwan's grand opening concluded successfully. Zhao Peng's paintings alone earned him tens of thousands. Others supported him by buying items, making the day's revenue exceed a million. Zhao Peng got the main earnings, while Wu Yu and Yuan received the leftovers, which she had to split with Zhao Peng. Later they went to a hotel Zhao Peng had reserved. Despite the earlier discord, it all turned out beneficial for Zhao Peng. Wu Yu and Yuan now had to be more cautious with him. 
Liu Lili didn't join them at the hotel, speaking a few words to Hu Yan before leaving. Qin Zixuan asked Hu Yan what Lai Yu Lili said. Hao Yan replied, she said she doesn't want to stay in this sad city anymore. People are their own worst enemies Qin Zixuan sighed. Hao Yan agreed, nodding. What do you plan to do about Zhu Yukai? Qin Zixuan responded, scum like him should lose everything. I'll use his money to compensate Liu Lili and distribute the rest to the workers he owes. You're a good person, old Qin Hu Yan smiled. Qin Zixuan smiled back, and so are you, old Hu. They both laughed. That night, Zhao Peng insisted on sharing half of the money from selling his paintings with Hu Yan. After some thought, Hu Yan accepted but reminded Zhao Peng that the initial investment had now been repaid. Though Zhao Peng tried to refuse, he eventually followed Hu Yan's suggestion. In the following days, Feng Li met with Zhao Peng almost daily, and Zhao Peng's face was always lit up with a happy smile. Ho Yan had intended to advise Zhao Peng, feeling that despite Feng Li being their classmate, she was more pragmatic and not an ideal match for him. However, seeing Zhao Peng so spirited and confident, Hu Yan decided against it. During this period, Hu Yan frequently visited Lu Xu's scrap yard. As urban development progressed, the exposed scrap at the yard became increasingly problematic. Several departments had already visited to demand Lu Xu make changes. One day, Hu Yan received a call from Lu Xu. Hao Yan, my brother, I need you to come over. I can't hold on any longer. Hu Yan agreed and drove to the scrap yard. They had discussed this many times, but Liu Xu never accepted Hu Yan's offer to invest, despite Hu Yan assuring him that nothing would change in the yard's operations and that it would still serve the local community. When Hu Yan arrived, he saw the main gate had been sealed. It seemed Liu Xu wouldn't seek his help until he was truly desperate. Entering through a side gate, Hu Yan found Liu Yu Xu sitting at the door of a makeshift hut, smoking a cigarette. You're here. Yes, I am. Ignoring the poor conditions, Hu Yan sat on a rock beside Lu Xu. Lu Xu offered Hu Yan a cigarette, which he accepted and lit. What's going on? Hu Yan asked, seeing Lu Yu Xu's troubled face. Lu Xu sighed, I can't hold on anymore. The combined enforcement from city planning, sanitation, and law enforcement has made it impossible to operate without proper permits. Hu Yan sighed, brother, it was never legal to begin with. If the land weren't yours, they'd have torn it down long ago. Yes, you've said that before. And you're right Liu Yu Shu took a deep drag of his cigarette, but you don't know how complicated it is. They want me to build a factory and store the scrap inside, but without construction permits from city planning, it would still be illegal. Ho Yan, fresh out of university, didn't realize the intricacies, thinking it was just a matter of money. Can't you bribe someone to get the permits Hu Yan asked? Liu Shu sighed deeply, it's not that simple. I've been trying for a long time. Getting construction permits is impossible. The only option is to invest in building a factory, but approvals take ages, and someone doesn't want me to succeed. Finally, Liu Yu Xu revealed the real issue. A wealthy developer wanted to buy his land, claiming it was a prime location for a villa due to its fun shui. But Liu Xu had fought hard for this place, sacrificing a leg in his youth. Though offered three million, he felt it wasn't enough. Moving and setting up a new life would leave him with little. How much does it cost to build a factory? Hu Yan asked. You need to show you have 5 million first. Only then will they approve the project, and even then, it could take ages. Someone is definitely pulling strings against me, Lu Xu explained. It was clear the developer was using influence to make things difficult for Lu Xu. While they talked, a taxi arrived, and Yao Ru and Hu Jiaxing got out. Entering the yard, Yao Ru called, Brother Hu, you're here. Hu Jiaxing smiled and sat beside Hu Yan, leaning on him. Yao Ru brought two cushions from inside the house and handed them to the siblings, giving another to Lu Xu. It's getting cold sitting on the stones isn't good. Everyone nodded, feeling a bit down due to Lu Xu's situation. Hao Yan asked Yao Ru, how are your fellow villagers adjusting to working at Tianhai Cosmetics? Yao Ru nodded enthusiastically, they're very happy. They're now training new employees, earning 5,000 a month plus benefits. They never dreamed of such good jobs. They all thank you and want to treat you to a meal. It's enough that they're doing well, Hu Yan smiled. Blushing. Yao Ru said, Brother Hu, can you help with Brother Liu's situation? Liu Xu, referred to as brother in law by Yao Ru, was their only support in this unfamiliar city, and she had no choice but to ask Hu Yan for help. Hao Yan said, There's a way. But I worry Brother Liu might not trust me. Liu Xu sighed, As long as this place isn't torn down, I have no more reservations. All right, Hu Yan said. I'm not a local. 
and this matter isn't easy to solve quickly. If it drags on for a year or more, it's better to sell. Exactly. The developer is betting I can't hold out Liu Xu said. As Hu Yan was about to speak, three administrative enforcement vehicles pulled up at the gate, followed by a black BMW 5 Series. Officials got out and posted notices on the walls. A plump middle-aged man entered, holding a stack of documents. Liu Xu, here's a notice for rectification. If you don't have proper permits in a month, this place will be forcibly demolished. Sign here. What? A month? Wasn't it three months Liu Xu asked? The man looked troubled. We have no choice. New leadership and urban renewal demands completion, or I'll lose my job. Liu Xu got agitated. I won't sign. Let's see who dares demolish this without me. That's your choice the man's expression hardened. Refusal is illegal. After three refusals we can demolish any time. That was precisely what the developer wanted. The man took the notice and left. Then, people from the BMW leisurely entered the yard, ignoring Lu Xu and inspecting the area. Ha Yan asked, Is that the buyer? Yes. The man with glasses is Chen Tao, a real estate developer. He wants to build villas here, claiming it's prime land Lu Xu said angrily. Ho Yan thought, billions from villas? This place could generate billions annually if managed well. Lu Xu asked, Hu Yan, what's your plan? I'm desperate. Let's see what they say first Hu Yan replied as Chen Tao and his men approached. Chen Tao's eyes lit up at the sight of Yao Ru and Hu Jiaxin but quickly focused on Lu Xu, showing off their strength before making their move. Lu, have you decided? I'm offering a fair price. Other developers won't offer even 2 million. This area's old buildings are valued under 2,000 per square meter. I'm offering 3.5 million. Deal. Lu Xu replied curtly, no sale. Chen Tao persisted. You've put a lot into this place, but it's worth more as money. How much can you earn from scrap? Lu Xu ignored him, turning away. Hu Yan dialed Qin Zixuan's number. Hey Qin, I found a prime location, said to be great for making money. Qin Zixuan replied. Where? We at Tianhai are looking for good spots. Ho Yan put the phone on speaker, and Chen Tao's face changed hearing Tianhai. Lu, you should be fair. We were the first to negotiate. There should be an order Chen Tao said. Lu Xu replied, sure, but the price has to be right. Chen Tao fell silent. It's in the south of the city, an old area surrounded by demolished buildings, with a scrap yard left Hu Yan said. Qin Zixuan responded, I know the place. The owner is Lu Xu, right? We asked before but he didn't want to sell. It's not about the price. We don't force people. If he wants to sell, we'll pay a fair price. Even Hu Yan didn't know Tianhai had bought the surrounding properties and knew Lu Xu by name. Is that so? Well Lu is a good friend. If your offer is fair he might sell. Ho Yan winked at Lu Xu, indicating they should play along to get rid of Chen Tao. Qin Zixuan thought for a moment, it's central to our project. We planned a commercial center there, we can pay more. How about 10 million? If agreed, I'll send someone to sign this afternoon. Great Qin. Consider it done. Hu Yan hung up and looked at Chen Tao, whose face was dark. They stormed out, muttering, damn, making a deal for others. His colleague suggested, should we increase our offer? Chen Tao shook his head, how? We can't outbid Tianhai. Watching them leave, Hu Yan and the others laughed, but Liu Xu still looked worried. It was understandable that Liu Xu was upset because, even if Tianhai offered him millions, it wasn't what he initially wanted. Seeing this, Hu Yan said, we were just acting for their benefit. That's not my real plan. Lu Xu took out another cigarette and lit one for Hu Yan. The two began smoking, causing Hu Jiaxin to move away. After a drag Hu Yan explained, here's my idea. We could let Tianhai invest. They can develop the outer area commercially, while you keep the inner area. This would improve the location's value, ensuring you always profit. As Hu Yan explained, Lu Xu gradually understood. The plan was to let Tianhai develop a commercial zone around his land, connecting it with adjacent areas. The central part would remain Lu Xu's, benefiting from being in a commercial hub. The scrap from the malls alone could be lucrative, and with the old buildings being demolished, there would be plenty of valuable items to salvage. Nodding, Lu Xu said. You're the smart one. I'll follow your lead. With Liu Xu's agreement, Hu Yan proceeded. After briefing Qin Zixuan, the plan was set. Out of over 2,000 square meters, Liu Xu would keep 300 square meters for the scrap yard. Tianhai would build a factory for him for free and give him 3 million yuan for relocation. This arrangement benefited both parties. 
Liu Shu also agreed to let Hu Yan invest in the scrapyard. Hu Yan contributed 1 million yuan, making him a partner, though Liu Shu retained majority control. Hu Yan didn't take profits from the scrapyard's regular income but wanted first rights to any valuable finds. This was fair, as without Hu Yan's expertise, Liu Shu might miss valuable items and sell them as regular scrap. In fact, Hu Yan had already profited more than a million from his finds at the scrap yard, helping Liu Shu was partly to support Yao Ru's community, but Hu Yan also genuinely saw potential in the business. What others saw as scrap, Hu Yan saw as treasures. After dropping off Hu Jiaxin and Yao Ru at school, Hu Yan drove back to Tianhai Garden. When he arrived home, he heard voices from inside the apartment. Hu Yan coughed loudly and waited outside for a moment. Soon, Zhao Peng opened the door. Why didn't you come in Zhao Peng asked. Hu Yan joked. I didn't want to walk in on something inappropriate. Blushing. Feng Li glared at Hu Yan from behind Zhao Peng. Scratching his head, Zhao Peng said, If anything like that was happening, I'd have warned you. As Zhao Peng spoke, Feng Li pinched his waist, making him grimace. Watching the couple's interaction, Hu Yan teased, Am I interrupting? Xiao Peng laughed, Come on, this is your place. I just brought Feng Li over to show her. She didn't believe me when I said I was living well. Turning to Feng Li, Zhao Peng added, Isn't that right? Feng Li nodded, Yes, I saw Zhao Peng spending money extravagantly and wanted him to save up for a down payment. Ha Yan nodded, That's a good idea. I'm also planning to buy a place eventually. No matter how nice it is here, it's not the same as owning your home. Zhao Peng nodded too. Though Hu Yan sensed something was troubling him. Changing the subject, Hu Yan asked, How's business? Zhao Peng brightened up, Business is good. The items you helped me select are popular, and the prices are reasonable. As you said, once we targeted the right customer base, word spread. Our daily revenue is between 2 and 5,000 yuan, minus expenses. Ho Yan interrupted, Good to hear you're making money. No need for details. Zhao Peng smiled and dropped the subject. Later, Zhao Peng treated Hu Yan to dinner and then took Feng Li home. When Zhao Peng returned in the evening, he collapsed on the couch, exhausted. Hu Yan couldn't resist teasing, tiring date? Overexerted. Enough, Hu Yan. I'm stressed, Zhao Peng sighed. Putting down his phone, Hu Yan asked, What's bothering you? You're your own boss now. Xiao Peng replied, You wouldn't believe the issues. It's like you said, just minor annoyances. But Wu Yu and Yuan's friends insisted on socializing. Since we're business partners, I didn't want to cause trouble, so I agreed. After a few drinks, we got acquainted. It turned out Zhao Peng had been busy since then. Besides the social obligations, his new friends kept sending messages promoting their products. Brother Peng, our new winter collection just arrived. You'll look great in it. Brother Peng, I have a watch perfect for you. Come see it at wholesale price. My scarves will make you look like a movie star. I have a nearly new second-hand car, selling at cost. Blinded by these sweet offers, Zhao Peng ended up spending most of his earnings. And that's not counting the restaurant invitations. They expect me to show up daily. That's why I've been coming home drunk lately. Ho Yan laughed. Traditional businesses are tough. Everyone supports each other. Didn't I warn you about this? Zhao Peng shook his head. It's not about falling for it. These people are smooth talkers. I've been avoiding them by spending time with Feng Li and sending photos to keep them at bay. Hu Yan said. Isn't that great? You've always liked her. Zhao Peng replied, Remember that song? Pretending to be carefree about what you've lost and suffering in silence about what you've gained? That's how I feel. Seeing Zhao Peng's distress, Hu Yan laughed, You're complaining after getting what you wanted. Of course not Zhao Peng said, gulping down water. But Feng Li's talk about buying a house worries me. What's wrong with buying a house? Hu Yan asked. Zhao Peng sighed. It's good. But she wants the house in her name before committing to our relationship. Typical Hu Yan said, she wants security. If you don't understand that, what will you offer? Talent? Nowadays talent means making money. Zhao Peng nodded true, but if I buy the house in her name and we break up, what then? Ho Yan thought for a moment. Such issues were common nowadays, with many women ending up with multiple properties. I think you need to do two things. First, check if Feng Li already owns a property. Zhao Peng looked uneasy. You think she's a fraud? We're classmates. Ha Hu Yan said. Just to be sure. Not everyone is trustworthy. Zhao Peng, though uncomfortable, agreed. And the second. Second, if you can't let her go, 
Clarify if buying a house will confirm your relationship. Zhao Peng nodded, she agreed to that. Good. Then buy an off plan property, one that's ready in two years. That gives you time to see how things go. Buy a small one, so if things go wrong, it's not a huge loss. Zhao Peng considered this, that might work. I'll ask her. Wait, Hu Yan stopped him. Do the first thing first. Check if she owns a house. Is that necessary? Zhao Peng asked reluctantly. Absolutely, Hu Yan insisted. If she already has a house, you'll know what to do. Seeing Zhao Peng's discomfort, Hu Yan added, I'm just saying, if. After thinking it over, Zhao Peng agreed, Okay, you check for me. This was easy. Any insurance agent could find out. Since Zhao Peng was hesitant, Hu Yan agreed to handle it. The next morning, Hu Yan visited Wang Quanxing at the company. Wang, a local with many connections, quickly discovered that Feng Li did own a house, transferred to her by Wu Degui a year ago. Hu Yan then asked Hu San to investigate Wu Degui. It turned out Wu Degui was divorced, with his daughter living with his ex-wife, leaving him with a small, loan-free apartment. Hu Yan couldn't help but feel sorry for Zhao Peng. He wondered how Zhao Peng, experiencing love for the first time, would react to this news. When Hu Yan got home, Zhao Peng hadn't returned yet he was probably out socializing again. That's the difference between reality and perception. People think big business deals involve constant socializing, but it's actually the smaller businesses that spend more time drinking and socializing. It was almost nine when Zhao Peng came home, reeking of alcohol. After a shower, Zhao Peng lay on the couch and asked Hu Yan, So, does Fun Li own a house? Hu Yan replied, Is this really the best time to talk about it? Zhao Peng said, It's fine, I've prepared myself for the worst. All right then, Hu Yan said. It's quite normal for someone as practical as Feng Li to own a house, isn't it? Still holding on to some hope, Zhao Peng asked, she didn't buy it herself. It was transferred to her by someone named Wu Degui Hu Yan said casually. Zhao Peng was silent for a long time before saying, Do you think he could be a relative of hers? Hu Yan was unsure how to respond. I don't know. If you're not convinced, why don't you ask her directly? After thinking it over, and with some liquid courage, Zhao Peng picked up his phone. Soon Feng Li's sweet voice came through, miss me already. Zhao Peng asked directly, Lily, do you know someone named Wu Degui? He had put the call on speaker. There was a moment of silence before Feng Li replied, That's my uncle. Your uncle must be really nice to give you a house, Zhao Peng said. Zhao Peng. Are you investigating me? Feng Li snapped. Thanks to his prior discussion with Hu Yan, Zhao Peng quickly responded, I wasn't trying to investigate you. I wanted to buy a house and needed a loan, so I checked your credit report. The bank was thorough and found you already own a house. Why didn't you mention this? Besides, if you already have a house, why buy another? We could save the money for our future children. Feng Li was silent for a while before saying, I didn't want you to waste money. Investing in real estate ensures we have assets. Zhao Peng gave his trademark goofy smile. You're so good to me. But Hu Yan says with the right resources, investing in anything else is more profitable than real estate. He also doesn't see a bright future for housing prices. All right, let's discuss it later, Feng Li said. After chatting for a bit, they hung up. Zhao Peng looked at Hu Yan, asking silently if he believed her. Ha Yan just shook his head. Ha Yan wasn't sure how to comfort Zhao Peng. This hard won love didn't seem as beautiful as it should be. Then, Zhao Peng talked about the antique shop. Today, Wu Yu Yuan had told Zhao Peng that her friend's constant gatherings were hard to handle. She understood Zhao Peng's struggles, so she had used the shop's funds to host everyone in Zhao Peng's name. Hu Yan felt something was off but couldn't pinpoint it. He advised Zhao Peng to avoid such situations in the future, as they wouldn't benefit him. Hu Yan knew avoiding these gatherings completely was impossible. They were all business associates, frequently visiting his shop. He couldn't just run away. That night, both Hu Yan and Zhao Peng couldn't sleep. Zhao Peng, of course, was troubled by love. Hu Yan was preoccupied with the upcoming birthday banquet for Qin Baxiang. Qin Baxiang usually kept a low profile and never hosted birthday parties. But this time, like Qian Xiao Er's family, he was throwing a grand banquet, possibly to find a suitable match for Qin Zixuan. Hu Yan had a rough idea of Qin Baoxiang's attitude but wasn't sure. Qin Zixuan's comment, Qian Xiao Er, is actually quite nice had left him conflicted for a long time. Even without Qin Zixuan saying it outright, Hu Yan knew that marrying her would be extremely challenging. Qian Xiao Er wasn't just favored by Qin Zixuan Hu Yan's family, including his sister Hu Ji Yaxin, also thought highly of her. 
If Hu Yan hadn't met Qin Zixuan, he would have considered Qian Shao R the best choice. However, fate seemed to play a trick on him. Because of Qin Zixuan, he met Qian Shao Er. Because of them, his standards had risen so high that he barely noticed other beauties on the streets. Even on TV or his phone, Hu Yan often thought these people couldn't hold a candle to Qian Xiao Er, let alone Qin Zixuan. Now, the only women he considered beautiful were Qin Zixuan, Yao Ru, and Qian Xiao Er. Shen Moling counted as half. It seemed the difficulty of being with them ranked in the same order. Ever since realizing Qin Zixuan's feelings, Hu Yan had tried to limit his interactions with Yao Ru and Qian Xiao Er, especially after Qian Xiao Er's mother's birthday party. It was clear the Qian family was very satisfied with Hu Yan. If he gave them a clear answer, he and Qian Xiao Er could become a couple. Yao Ru was a bit more complicated due to the distance, but Hu Yan wasn't blind. He could sense her feelings. However, he always felt Yao Ru's feelings were more of gratitude since he had helped her during tough times. If it had been Zhao Peng who helped her, she might have liked Zhao Peng instead. Hu Yan felt Yao Ru was still young. Once she graduated, she might change her mind like many of her classmates. Therefore, Hu Yan, who was determined to be with Qin Zixuan, tried to keep his relationship with Yao Ru and Qian Xiao Yi are strictly platonic. Chen Moling frequently called Hu Yan, asking him to let her know when he was painting. Hu Yan kept his promise, teaching her everything he knew. This sense of passing on knowledge was gratifying for Hu Yan. With all these thoughts swirling in his mind, Hu Yan didn't know when he fell asleep. It felt like he had just closed his eyes when the alarm woke him. It was already 5.30 a.m., Hu Yan had agreed to meet Qin Zixuan at 6 in the parking lot. After all, it was a long drive to Shengcheng. Hastily, Hu Yan got up washed and dressed, picking out the clothes Qin Zixuan had bought him. Despite not usually caring for brand names, he felt he needed them now. When he saw Qin Zixuan downstairs, his mood lifted. She was wearing a matching Hermes suit with a trench coat over it. Seeing Hu Yan, Qin Zixuan asked, didn't sleep well. Hu Yan replied, would you sleep well if you were in my shoes? I would Qun Zixuan said matter-of-factly. I slept best when I stayed at your place. That's different Hu Yan sighed. My family wishes you'd stay with us forever. Your family might be annoyed just seeing me. Have some confidence Qun Zixuan said, surprisingly taking his arm. You've won over two of my family members already. You knew. K. Of course Qin Zixuan smiled. Thanks for your efforts. Hu Yan often visited the Qun elders, and they had grown fond of him. Even when Hu Yan teased them, they didn't mind. After the last incident, the couple had a cold war for several days. When Hu Yan visited again, he explained that he was the one who admired Qin Baoxiang. The couple, finding their lives a bit dull, welcomed Hu Yan's liveliness. Even if they sometimes got genuinely upset, they appreciated the added excitement. Even Mrs. Yao would ask, where's Hu Yan? He hasn't come by for a meal lately. Mr. Qin would joke, Maybe your cooking is getting worse. He's tired of your bland food. She'd retort, I'm just watching out for your health. You can't handle rich food anymore. And so, Hu Yan became a part of their lives. Having been in business for a lifetime, the couple had seen all kinds of people, but Hu Yan, young and talented, was a novelty. In their eyes, Hu Yan was not only skilled but quick to learn. Often he'd master something better than expected. Recently, when Mrs. Yao felt unwell, Hu Yan cooked a meal that left the couple praising his culinary skills. They didn't know Hu Yan had spent considerable time learning from top chefs to master those dishes. Combining his keen eye for detail with his martial arts discipline, Hu Yan had become one of the top chefs in Jiangcheng. Qin Zixuan hadn't believed it until Hu Yan confirmed he could cook. They planned for Hu Yan to cook for her after the banquet. On the way to Shengcheng, Qin San drove while Hu Yan, exhausted, fell asleep after chatting briefly with Qin Zixuan. He woke up to find they had arrived at Jingshan in Shengchengcheng, where the largest hotel, a seven-star Tianhai hotel, hosted Qin Baoxiang's birthday banquet. Qin San parked in a designated spot next to a Rolls-Royce Phantom, likely Qin Baoxiang's car. Qin Zixuan took Hu Yan to the styling room upstairs to get his hair done. Though there wasn't time for a perm, the stylist did a great job with his hair. Seeing his refreshed look in the mirror, Hu Yan felt more confident. Qin Zixuan then went to handle the birthday preparations, leaving Hu Yan in the banquet hall. At this time, few people were there. In one corner sat members of the Qin family's inner circle, the most outstanding young generation, according to Qin San. Unlike Qin San, who worked behind the scenes, 
these people were in management and didn't know each other well. Qin San, having no interest in mingling, sat with Hu Yan. Soon, someone entered. He looked to be in his thirties. Seeing him, Qin San perked up. Big brother, you're here. The man looked ordinary, but had a sharp aura. Nodding to Qin San, he asked, has the second brother arrived? Qin San answered honestly, not yet. Maybe he's with father. The man suddenly asked, are you Hu Yan? When this man appeared, Hu Yan noticed him immediately. His toes pointed inward, a sign of someone who had practiced Bagua Zhang from a young age and had achieved a high level of skill. This was also why King Zixuan didn't learn Bagua Zhang. Clearly this man was Qin Dia. Yes, I'm Hu Yan. Are you brother Qin? The man scrutinized Hu Yan again before nodding. Yes, that's me. Qin Bo praised your perception. You don't seem bad. Shall we spar sometime? Ha Yan nodded. Sure, I'd love to learn from you, brother Qin. Qin Di nodded and sat down. It was evident that he was more interested in martial arts than in attending the banquet. However, he understood the occasion and didn't push Hu Yan for a sparring match immediately. Moreover, perhaps due to professional habit, Qin Di chose a seat where he could observe everyone in the room. Though he appeared still, his eyes continuously scanned each person. Ho Yan asked, Brother Qin, do you know everyone here? Qin Da nodded, more or less. I've reviewed their profiles. It's part of my job. Qin Da wasn't very talkative, so Hu Yan resumed his casual chat with Qin San. Being close to Qin Zixuan, Qin San knew more details than Hu Yan. From Qin San, Hu Yan learned that King Zixuan had been extremely busy lately. Tianhai Chemicals was on track, generating profits, and the cosmetics factory was thriving. She had also acquired several stores in Jiangchang, aiming to build the best cosmetics brand starting from there. This time, the car trunk was filled with gifts for today's guests. During Qian Xiao Er's mother's birthday, King Zixuan had only gifted the birthday lady. This was her style. If she had given many gifts that day, it would have devalued them. By giving one gift and letting time build its reputation, and now that Tianhai's cosmetics had gained some fame, giving them at this birthday banquet would make the recipients feel honored and valued. The Qun family, being prominent businessmen, differed from Qian Xiao Er's family. There were no complicated rituals. As guests arrived, elegantly dressed hostesses escorted them to their designated seats. Hao Yan and the others sat towards the back, with Tianhai employees. Even among tens of thousands of employees, those seated here were distinguished. Soon, a group of formally dressed middle-aged and elderly men entered and were seated in the front row. According to Qin San, these were Tianhai's elders, now shareholders, each worth over 10 billion yuan. While chatting with Qin San, Hu Yan learned that much of Qin Zixuan's recent challenges stemmed from these elders. Their wealth was tied to the Qin family, and as Tianhai's helm, the Qin family was responsible for them. Thus, Tianhai's future heir needed these people's approval. If there were a male heir in the Qin family, they wouldn't interfere. But with only Qin Zixuan, her future husband would determine their fate, making them wary. They couldn't be sure if he would manage Tianhai well. Qin San mentioned that with Qin Baoxiang's declining health, the elders had repeatedly urged for a suitable match for Qin Zixuan. This wasn't just about family preferences. The chosen one needed approval from most of these elders. Otherwise, if many withdrew their investments, Tianhai would suffer greatly. Listening to this, Hu Yan felt a pang of stress. It felt like an ancient prince selecting a consort. However, considering their lifelong investments, it was reasonable for them to care deeply. Unless Qin Zixuan gave up on leading Tianhai, she couldn't escape these complex interests. Hu Yan laughed at himself. He initially thought winning over the four elders in the Qin family would be enough. Now, it seemed the journey had just begun. Qin San pointed to a tall, handsome young man entering the hall. See that guy? He's the only son of Dong Kao Group's chairman. Their company is second only to Tianhai. They've always wanted to form an alliance with our family. Initially, Li Dong Zhe's wasn't interested. But after meeting the young lady once, he now frequently asks his father to contact our master. Hu Yan nodded, noting Li Dong Zhe. So, what is Mr. Qin's stance? Qun San glanced at Qing Da, who didn't object and said, There are many like him. But the master hasn't leaned towards anyone. I think since the young lady is his beloved, her opinion matters most. Unexpectedly, Qin Da, who hadn't spoken much, interjected. Her opinion is important, but ultimately, the master will decide. The Qin family's legacy is more crucial than her personal happiness he glanced meaningfully at Hu Yan. Unlike Tianhai's formal employees who called Qin Baoxiang chairman 
and Qin Zixuan President Qin Dei, as the Qin family's private staff, referred to Qin Baoxiang as master and Qin Zixuan as young Mississippi. Just then, another notable figure entered. Qin San said, That's Song Tianlin from Huayang Technology Group. Their company is even stronger than ours. However, he's the second son. His elder brother is already married. Rumor has it, Song Tianlin leads a rather decadent life. I doubt the master will approve of him. Qin Da muttered, seemingly to himself, to a businessman, profit surpasses all. They can even forget national grievances and personal vendettas. Qin San fell silent, knowing King Da, as someone close to the master, had more insight into his thoughts. Ho Yan felt Qin Da had a point. In business, as in ancient times, for the sake of profit, people could overlook serious grievances. The modern business world wasn't much different. In the face of the entire group's interests, anything could happen. Ho Yan felt the weight on his shoulders increase. Whenever he felt unworthy of Qian Zixuan, he had consoled himself by thinking she might find someone better, using it as self-deprecation. Now, he realized it wasn't that simple. He recalled Qian Baoxiang's words, a martial artist must fight now, he understood the elder's intentions. Qian Baoxiang, despite his position, cared deeply for Qian Zixuan's happiness. That's why he said and did those things. Clenching his fists, Hu Yan resolved that he wouldn't let Qian Zixuan end up with someone undeserving. Qin San introduced a few more strong contenders, all with various entanglements, making Hu Yan realize the complexity and the stakes involved. At this point, it was time for the banquet. From a distance, Hu Yan saw King Zixuan escorting an elderly man onto the stage, feeling a surge of emotion. King Zixuan, having removed her trench coat, wore a matching tailored suit with Hu Yan. Under the spotlight, she looked ethereal and pristine. King Zixuan's beauty had always stunned Hu Yan keeping any improper thoughts at bay. However, the eyes of those promising young men were filled with greed and desire. Never had Hu Yan felt such a strong urge to protect Qiu and Zixuan. She deserves better than to be desecrated by those who don't understand her. Unconsciously, Hu Yan clenched the bone china cup in his hand until it made a cracking sound. Qin Di exclaimed softly, HMM. Qun San, noticing Qin Di's expression, asked, What's wrong, big brother? I've never seen you like this. Qin Dia looked deeply at Hu Yan, then at Qin San with frustration. You really have no progress. Always the third. He shook his head repeatedly. Puzzled, Qin San asked, What's wrong? Is there someone suspicious? Qin Da shook his head, picked up the bone china cup Hu Yan had set down, and gently squeezed. Crack. The cup shattered into pieces. Qin San was stunned. Big brother, have you developed inner strength? Qin San asked, feeling wronged. I can't compare to you, but has our second brother. Qin Di shook his head, looking deeply at Hu Yan. He did it. I haven't reached that level. Qin San turned to Hu Yan, his mouth agape. Hu Yan, is it true? Ho Yan, seemingly indifferent, nodded. It's no big deal. With the right method you all have a chance. Despite his mood, Hu Yan spoke the truth. His eye for the essence had allowed him to perfect many techniques he observed. Traditional martial arts had declined partly due to lost transmission, as masters feared their students surpassing them, often holding back knowledge. Over generations, the arts weakened. But Hu Yan's enhanced vision could perfect these techniques. Thus, he achieved internal strength, a concept Qin Da and Qin San considered legendary. Yet, Hu Yan's thoughts were elsewhere. He was contemplating how to protect the exquisite, porcelain like Qian Zixuan. When Hu Yan said they all had a chance, Qin San started trembling with excitement. Re. Dot 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 really. However, Hu Yan's attention was now entirely on Qin Zixuan, so he didn't hear Qin San. Seeing no response, Qin San tried to pull Hu Yan's sleeve to get his attention. But Qin Da stopped him, saying, Don't. We may not all have a chance, but if you want a chance, you need to do your part. Qin San looked at Qin Da in confusion. He was quick to solve physical tasks, but thinking things through was challenging for him. Big brother. Qin Da patted his shoulder. Just do your job well for the young miss then. He glanced at Hu Yan and added, Serve Hu Yan well, and one day you might become Qin Da. Suddenly, a light seemed to go off in Qin San's mind. Big brother, do you support Hu Yan too? Qin Da took a cigarette but didn't light it. What else? Should we watch the young miss fall into a trap? She is the princess we swore to protect since childhood. Qin San nodded. He and Qin Zixuan had grown up together but he never had any improper thoughts about her. He just wanted her to find someone she truly liked, and it was clear Hu Yan was that person. 
Big brother, don't worry. If I gain Hu Yan's skills, anyone who dares to covet the young miss will he made a slicing gesture across his neck. Just then, Hu Yan seemed to hear their conversation. Come on, brother Qin San, let's go outside for some fresh air. I'll show you how to develop internal strength. Ha Qin San was stunned, overwhelmed by the sudden opportunity. Since deciding to protect the young miss for life, Qin San had devoted himself to martial arts, making it his ultimate dream. Achieving his current level, given his incorrect methods, was already impressive. But Hu Yan's words presented Qin San with a chance to reach the legendary stage, making him ecstatic. Okay, Qin San stuttered with excitement. Ha Yan glanced at Qin Da and asked Brother Qin, do you want to learn too? Qin Da shook his head. My thoughts don't matter. My task is to fulfill the master's wishes. Hu Yan replied bluntly, all right, then don't join us. Qin Da was speechless but appreciated Hu Yan's straightforward approach. Learning Hu Yan's skills was tempting, but Qin Da had his principles. His duty was to protect and execute Chairman Qin Baxiang's vision. Learning skills only to oppose Hu Yan later wasn't something he could do. It was better to stay out. Watching Hu Yan and Qin San leave, Qin Da sighed, Master, I hope you don't force us into a situation where we turn against each other. Hu Yan and Qin San were back after just one cigarette. Hu Yan had quickly assessed Qin San's martial arts background. By filling in the gaps, Qin San's talent would eventually lead him to success. Upon returning, Hu Yan's focus returned to the stage, where Qin Zixuan stood, ignoring the Qin brothers. Qin Da looked at Qin San. Qin San said, Sorry, big brother. But what Hu Yan taught me is different from what you practice. Qin Da shook his head. I'm not interested in the techniques. If I were, I would have joined you. Qin San nodded awkwardly. Qin Di asked, What did you promise Hu Yan? Qin San replied, To ensure no one the young miss dislikes gets close to her. If necessary, eliminate them. Qin Da nodded, sighed, and said nothing more. By this time, Qin Baoxiang had finished his lengthy introduction, mainly welcoming everyone and thanking them for coming. Then he said, As the saying goes, A family with a daughter attracts a thousand suitors. I only have one precious daughter. Anyone who believes they can be responsible for her and Tianhai can step forward. I won't interfere. But let me warn you, if you have ulterior motives and are pretending, you'd better keep up the act for life and not mess it up. The audience burst into laughter, though many eyes reflected a complex mix of emotions. Rumor had it that after giving birth to Qian Zixuan, her mother could no longer conceive. Back then, Tianhai was just starting to make its mark. At that time, Qin Baoxiang decided to adopt orphans, raising them as his own to support Qin Zixuan in the future. Many of these orphans were trained in martial arts and even lethal techniques. Qin Baoxiang's words, though joking, carried a clear warning. However, those present today had come prepared. They saw Tianhai as a valuable prize and viewed Qin Zixuan as a rare beauty worth pursuing. Qin Baoxiang continued, Now, let's all enjoy ourselves. This was the confidence of the Qin family. Unlike Qian Xiao Er's family, they didn't need to be overly polite. At that moment, the curtain behind Qin Baxiang slowly opened, revealing a stage set up like a museum. These are some of my lifetime collections. Feel free to take a look, Qin Baxiang said with a self-deprecating laugh. I've always liked collecting things so forgive me for showing off. But don't leave empty-handed. Anyone who can accurately appraise the value of an item can take it home as my gift to you. The crowd erupted in cheers. Chairman Qin is so generous. Indeed. Nothing here could be subpar. Even if we don't win the lady, this trip won't be in vain. This was exactly what Qin Baoxiang wanted. Guests brought gifts, and instead of rejecting them outright like the Qian family, he invited them to earn a better one, making the event enjoyable and memorable. After the initial excitement, the atmosphere calmed down. Qin Zixuan said, For those who don't win, don't be disappointed. We have prepared a gift for each guest from Tianhai's first batch of all-natural, side-effect-free cosmetics. Everyone will receive one. This was the first time many saw and heard the legendary ice beauty, Qin Zixuan, speak. Her words were met with applause, further boosting the guests' favorable impressions of the Qin family. Simple yet grand gestures by the Qin family won everyone over. Qin Baoxiang's openness to letting anyone pursue Qin Zixuan was appreciated, and the added treasure hunt and consolation prizes made everyone feel welcome. Those present had already passed the initial vetting by the Qin family. Now, no one minded the fair competition. After stepping off the stage, Qin Zixuan escorted Qin Baoxiang to the back. Qin Baoxiang patted his daughter's hand and asked, Child, 
You're not upset with me for doing this, are you? Qin Zixuan's face was cold, but she quickly replied, I understand the basic principles of business. Qin Baxiang sighed softly and said nothing more as they reached the backstage area. The table there was set with light dishes, not looking like a birthday feast but rather a healthy meal. Experts could tell the meal included rare medicinal herbs and delicacies hard to find in the market. Seeing Qin Baoxiang, Qin Yanin shook his head, clearly worried about his only son, whose health was worse than his own. Mrs. Yao took her son's hand and pulled him to a seat beside her. Qin Zixuan sat next to Qin Yanin. Holding his mother's hand, Qin Baoxiang said, Dad, Mom, I've worried you. I'm not a good son. Mrs. Yao sighed, I told you countless times, business is just making a living. Why work so hard? In front of his parents, Qin Baoxiang was like an obedient child. Mom, you're right. But back then, I was afraid of ruining all of dad's hard work. Old Qin waved his hand, knowing his son's words were meant for someone else. All right, let's eat. Qin Zixuan's mother served the rice. It's my fault. If I could have given Bao more children, it wouldn't be like this. He wouldn't listen to me about taking a second wife. Mrs. Yao scolded, what nonsense. Our Qun family doesn't have unfaithful men. Qin Zixuan's mother turned away, clearly holding back tears. Old Qin said, let's eat. This was why Qin Zixuan didn't like coming home. The family situation weighed heavily on her, making her lose her appetite. Holding her rice bowl, she couldn't enjoy the food and instead found herself counting the grains. Her gaze wandered to the stage below. The dining area was arranged in a transparent room above the stage allowing them to see everything below without being seen. As she scanned the items on display, she noticed a few genuine treasures. These items had been in the family for years, their value uncertain. Other items, not genuinely cherished by Qin Baoxiang, weren't truly valuable. Then, Qin Zixuan exclaimed softly, H.M. Mei, Mrs. Yao, noticing her granddaughter's distraction, wanted to scold her but refrained, knowing how hard she worked. Instead, she asked, What caught your eye, dear? Blushing, Qin Zixuan replied, Nothing, I just saw a familiar painting. Qin Baoxiang perked up, Which one? Could it be that painting? Following her gaze, Qin Baoxiang saw the painting. You know the artist? I thought you wanted to surprise me. Qin Zixuan pouted, If you really believed that, would you put it out for appraisal? Qin Baoxiang laughed, I've asked countless experts, and none could identify it. I doubt anyone can take it away. Qin Zixuan nodded, acknowledging her father's cunning. Qin Baoxiang continued, I just wanted to see if anyone recognized it. Didn't you say you didn't know last time? Blushing again, Qin Zixuan realized she had forgotten that detail. Ho Yan had overthought things. The Qin family's secret room didn't have surveillance. Initially, Qin Baoxiang hadn't noticed anything unusual. One day on a whim he inspected his treasures and, upon picking up a bamboo screen, felt something off. Qin Baoxiang grew up in the pawn shop business under his father, Qin There's an old saying, if you want to be wealthy, open a pawn shop which shows just how lucrative the business can be. Over time habits from this trade became deeply ingrained in Qin Baoxiang. Despite his strong business acumen that led to expanding the pawn shop into a massive publicly traded company, his passion for collecting valuable items remained. As he got older, Qin Baoxiang became increasingly obsessed with art, especially calligraphy and paintings. He prided himself on his sharp intellect and his achievement of building a vast business empire. However, the relentless pursuit of success took a toll on his health. Many traditional medicine experts and wellness scholars advised him that cultivating an appreciation for art was one of the best ways to promote longevity and health. This only fueled his obsession with calligraphy and paintings. Unfortunately, he lacked any real talent in these areas. As mentioned before, successful business people often excel in strategic thinking and foresight while artists are typically more emotional and intuitive. Although his artistic skills were average, his eye for quality had developed over the years. A painting that appeared almost real had never crossed his path before. He immediately took out a magnifying glass to examine it. What he saw left him even more astonished. Qin Baoxiang had seen countless works by master painters, but this piece was exceptional. Under the magnifying glass, the bamboo's texture and details were so lifelike it seemed as if he was examining a real bamboo stalk. Qi Baishi's painting of a cicada once sold for 800 million yuan. While comparing these two works was challenging since Qi Baishi's painting depicted an animal, and this one a plant, both had their unique appeal. In Qin Baoxiang's mind, this painting was beyond comparison. He didn't even consider probing its origins, 
assuming it was a surprise from his daughter for his birthday. His first step was to get the painting authenticated. With his background he knew many experts. He called upon all the renowned appraisers and artists he knew, including curators from major museums. To his shock, none of them could identify the painting style. Yet, they unanimously agreed that its artistry rivaled that of the world's best realist painters. This was to be expected since Hu Yan's keen eye could integrate various artistic techniques, creating a unique piece rather than mere imitation. Interestingly, because Qin Baoxiang used traditional ancient brushes, ink and paper, many experts assumed it was the work of a forgotten historical master. A few however recognized it as a contemporary piece, sparking heated debates among them. At that time, Qin Baoxiang had to call Qin Zixuan to confirm whether the painting was hers. She answered affirmatively. Hu Yan hadn't mentioned it to her, but since no one else had access to the collection room, it had to be Hu Yan's work. In her mind, Hu Yan intended to surprise her father, and revealing this would spoil his plan. So, she brushed it off, saying she'd explain when she had time. Qin Baoxiang asked about the painting's origin, and Qin Zixuan, thinking it was Hu Yan's work, said it was by a modern artist. This ended the argument, though some experts continued to stubbornly believe it was an ancient piece. Hearing Qin Zixuan's mention of the painting, Qin Baoxiang's interest was piqued again. Xuang Xuan, that painting earned me quite a reputation. When I had numerous appraisers and famous contemporary artists look at it, none could identify it. Even the masters praised it, saying it was beyond their skill. Where did you find it? Qin Zixuan recognized Hu Yan's work immediately, not due to her expertise, but because of an intuitive feeling developed from seeing many artworks. It was also prominently displayed and well-framed among the other paintings. It was a gift from a friend, she replied. Qin Baoxiang nodded. Making friends in business is good, especially those with good taste. Do you know the artist? His choice of words showed his high regard for the artwork. While Qin Baoxiang already knew she knew the artist, he wanted to maintain composure, as he had taught her. Despite her father's admiration, Qin Zixuan felt indifferent, as she didn't see any business benefit in it for Hu Yan. The artist himself gave it to me. Why? Do you want him as a son-in-law? She joked, lightening the mood. Her comment made everyone relax, especially her mother, who decided not to chide her daughter for being too forward. But Qin Baoxiang still chided, young ladies should speak more reservedly. Qin Zixuan, her heart pounding, had hoped her father would say something she wanted to hear. His reprimand silenced her, and she pretended to focus on her meal. Seeing her reaction, Qin Baoxiang couldn't resist scolding, your mother spoils you. Old Qin intervened all right, we're family. No need for formalities. Speaking freely shows we're a real family. With old Qin speaking, Qin Baoxiang had to agree. Yes, you're right. He then turned to his daughter, if the artist is as talented as you say and is your age, I wouldn't mind having him as a son-in-law. This remark was meant to ease the tension, making everyone smile again. Qin Zixuan, blushing pretended to pick at her food, saying, he just graduated from university, so he should be around my age. What Qin Baoxiang and Qin Anian exclaimed simultaneously. Qin Baoxiang looked at his father, signaling him to speak first. Old Qin said, that's rare. Most people that age are still children or carefree. To have such achievements at that age is truly remarkable. Earlier, when discussing the painting, Qin Baoxiang mentioned the high praise from appraisers and artists. To old Qin, this person might be even more talented than Hu Yan, whom he already considered a rare genius. Qin Baoxiang nodded, indeed. If what you say is true, I wouldn't mind giving him a chance. For Qin Zixuan, this was overwhelming. She didn't know how to continue. Seeing the awkward atmosphere, old Qin suddenly remembered Hu Yan. By the way, what about that young man, Hu Yan, working under you? He's impressive. Is he here today? Qin Zixuan praised her grandfather's timely intervention, thinking he had caught on to her feelings. She quickly said, yes, he's here. Father allowed me to bring one person, and he's the best I know. Old Qin had just thought of Hu Yan, not with any deeper intention. Why not call him over? He's been visiting me often, and is more filial than you all. Qin Zixuan was about to agree when she noticed her father's displeased expression. Not wanting to ruin his birthday, she looked to old Qin for help. Cough dot 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 hey Ju Yan is doing well, and we will remember his efforts. But today is a family day so let's not invite outsiders said Qin Baoxiang, glancing at his father. Old Q nodded, it's your birthday, so you decide. Right old Qin pointed towards the stage, that lad is checking out the items. Let's see what he picks. They say he has a good eye. Seeing his father's enthusiasm for Hu Yan, 
Qin Baoxiang felt uneasy. To him, Hu Yan's background, education, and experience were lacking. He hadn't considered Hu Yan a potential son-in-law. When he couldn't identify the painting, he had briefly thought of asking Hu Yan but quickly dismissed it. To him, Hu Yan's so-called miracles were flukes, not consistent knowledge or skill. He believed Qin Zixuan would realize this, if Hu Yan ever made a mistake. They were simply not from the same world. Ho Yan, meanwhile, was examining the items on display. He ignored the paintings, having already seen them at Qin Zixuan's home. Most items here didn't pique his interest until he spotted an old, tattered book, which immediately caught his eye. This was an item no one had identified. A very old, decayed book, its pages falling apart with time, and the handwriting wasn't by any renowned master. To the untrained eye, it seemed like an ordinary antique. Not all antiques are valuable. Their worth lies in artistic or historical significance, and this book seemed to lack both. However, in Hu Yan's eyes, this was a true treasure. Thanks to Hu Yan's perceptive eyes, he realized that this medical book was not written by just one person. The initial drafts were by a man named Ren Jiai, who was a disciple of Ji He Hong. Ji Hong was a prominent Taoist scholar, alchemist, and physician from the Eastern Jin dynasty. His courtesy name was Ji Xuan, and he called himself Bei Puzi. He was from Danyang Commandery. Jurong modern-day Jurong County, Jiangsu. He was the great-nephew of the famous Three Kingdoms-era alchemist Gao Yuk Suan, often referred to as the lesser immortal Ji He Shang was once bestowed the title of Marquis within the pass, but later retired to Luofu Mountain to practice alchemy. He authored the well-known medical text Emergency Prescriptions Kept Up One Sleeve. According to legend, Ji He Hong's ancestors were disciples of the Three Kingdoms-era immortal Zuo Ci, specifically Ji He Zhiek Suan. Ren Ji, an ardent follower and personal disciple of Ji Yi Hong, compiled this medical book. Unfortunately, Ren Ji's works were not widely recognized or preserved. As dynasties changed, various physicians added their notes to the book. However, these were often modest individuals who did not make a mark in history, leaving the book and their contributions largely unknown. Eventually, during the Qing dynasty, the book fell into the hands of Wang Qingren, a physician who became known as the medical king of the Qing dynasty sadly, Wang left only a few notes in the already incomplete book. Consequently, it was dismissed as a common medical record by later generations. However, Hu Yan's keen insight saw its true value. The fact that so many esteemed physicians throughout history had contributed to and respected this book signified its importance. Through his unique ability to trace and integrate knowledge, Hu Yan could even uncover the teachings that Ren Jiai received from Ji Hong. Ji Hong was known as the living immortal and Wang Qingren had achieved his title of medical king partially due to the knowledge in this book. This alone demonstrated the book's profound worth in traditional Chinese medicine. Legend has it that Wang Qingren's real name wasn't originally what we know it to be, and that some mysterious event prompted the name change. This, too, was intricately linked to Ren Ji's notes. As Hu Yan's mind absorbed the experiences of numerous ancient physicians, he found himself awash in a sea of knowledge at times joyous and at times troubled. The lives of these medical practitioners were fascinating and challenging. To an observer however Hu Yan appeared lost in thought, staring blankly at an old medical book, seeming like a fool. Qin Baoxiang, already skeptical of Hu Yan, shook his head in disappointment. Yet, Qin Zixuan watched Hu Yan intently, remembering how he had once told her that he learned everything quickly. Could Hu Yan be studying that medical book she wondered? Despite her confusion, she felt immense gratitude towards Hu Yan, believing his interest in medicine stemmed from concern for her father's health. As she thought about how Hu Yan had previously studied painting just to impress her father, she smiled gently. Seeing his daughter's tender expression, Qin Baoxiang felt inexplicably irritated. Why are you not eating properly? He scolded. Qin Zixuan snapped out of her reverie, her cheeks slightly flushed, and pretended to eat a few more bites. I'm full. You all continue, she said. Despite her mother Wen Lingji and grandmother Yao's protests that she had eaten too little, Qin Zixuan insisted she was full. Thinking about all Hu Yan had done for her, she found it difficult to eat. About half an hour later, Hu Yan finally emerged from his state of deep contemplation. Nearby, a group of people was examining the bamboo screen painting. Is this really a painting? I thought it was a real bamboo screen at first. Me too. The Qin family's collection never ceases to amaze. Indeed, I looked at it through a magnifying glass, and it's on par with Qi Beishi's cicada. So, this must be the most valuable piece here. Not necessarily. That guy over there seems deeply engrossed in that old medical book. Laughter erupted as people glanced at Hu Yan. Ho Yan smiled and turned away, unperturbed.
He had no need to take the incomplete medical book because he had already assimilated its knowledge and more. This book's true value lay in its medical content, which had been almost entirely unlocked by Hu Yan. While the physical book was not worth much, its knowledge was invaluable. In China, traditional medical texts were often undervalued, leading many precious items to end up in other countries like Korea and Japan, where they became integral parts of Korean medicine and Japanese medicine. Next, Hu Yan found a medicine pot an old, common vessel used for brewing medicinal concoctions. Its humble appearance belied its historical significance. It had once belonged to Chen Zhuyuan, a renowned Qing dynasty physician. Through his unique ability, Hu Yan traced and mastered Chen Zhuyuan's decoction techniques. Finally, he discovered a box of golden acupuncture needles. These were standard, seemingly unremarkable needles, but Hu Yan recognized them as once belonging to the Republican era acupuncturist Huang Shipping. Huang Shipping was an extraordinary master, renowned for his three unique acupuncture characteristics, including using exceptionally fine gold needles. With this knowledge, Hu Yan had absorbed a vast portion of traditional Chinese medical wisdom. All that remained was practice and experience. Meanwhile, Qin Zixuan's family had finished dinner. Qin Zixuan brought out the prepared gifts, including a calligraphy piece by Zheng Gufan and a Jinhuatui painting by Hu Yan. Seeing the calligraphy, Qin Baoxiang beamed. You're so thoughtful, my dear daughter. Qin Anian, an enthusiast himself, leaned in. This is wonderful. Why didn't you think of your grandfather when you found this? Qin Zixuan laughed. It's for dad's birthday. I'll get you something even better for your big day. All right, I'll hold you to that Qin Anin chuckled. Seeing the joy on her grandfather's face, the family's mood lightened. However, Qin Zixuan then said, but this painting wasn't actually my find. Oh Qin Baoxiang asked, examining the calligraphy through a magnifying glass. Who was it then? Hao Yan Qin Zixuan replied, recounting how Hu Yan had acquired the piece in vivid detail, making her family feel as if they had been there themselves. Qin Anin said, I knew that young man was special. No wonder he could give me so many good things without a second thought. I have an eye for talent. Although Qin Baoxiang felt uneasy with his father's high praise for Hu Yan, he had to agree. Indeed, you have a keen eye. I've heard how much Hu Yan has contributed to the pawn shop. Quite impressive. Absolutely, Qin Anin said, enjoying the compliments. I like that kid. I'd say he's just as good as that young artist you mentioned, if not better. Seeing his father's approval, Qin Baoxiang felt compelled to temper expectations. There's still a difference. That artist is a once-in-a-century genius. Qin Anin had to agree, given the crowd still admiring the bamboo screen painting. Without arguing, Qin Zixuan brought out Hu Yan's Jin Hu Tui painting. Dad, look at this. Qin Baoxiang's eyes lit up at the sight. Exquisite. Absolutely exquisite he quickly shifted his magnifying glass to the painting. After a long examination he said, this is by your artist friend, isn't it? It's incredibly detailed. I wish he could be here. As Qin Baoxiang was speaking, the expression on Qin Anian's face was quite telling. Besides Qin Zixuan, no one had the opportunity to thoroughly examine Hu Yan's paintings, but Qin Anian had studied them meticulously. While he wasn't an expert in art, he could tell from comparing this Jin Huatui painting with a similar one he owned that there were distinctive similarities in technique and style. This painting looks quite similar to the one Hu Yan gave me Q and Anin remarked. Qin Baoxiang, sensing something was amiss, asked, Could Hu Yan also know that artist the idea that the artist might have given Qin Zixuan face because of Hu Yan was troubling? That would completely disqualify him. No Qin Anin said thoughtfully. Hu Yan mentioned that it was his own work. Qin Baoxiang was unsettled by this revelation and turned to his daughter for confirmation. Qin Zixuan, with a mischievous smile, said Dad. You just said it would be great if the artist was here. I'll go get him. She turned to leave. Qin Baoxiang raised his hand, but the words wait didn't come out. After all, he had just expressed a desire to meet the artist, and to backtrack now would make him seem insincere. Knowing his son well, Qin Anian said, Baoxiang, how old are you now? Why are you still so narrow-minded? Let the young ones make their own choices. Hu Yan is quite a capable young man. I trust my judgment in people. Qin Baoxiang shook his head. Dad, you don't understand. When Hu Yan first joined the company, I had high hopes for him. But everything he's done since then seemed too much like cheating. I don't believe relying solely on luck can get someone very far. Qin Anin disagreed. I see it the opposite way. Every great achievement requires a bit of luck. Pure talent alone has rarely led to sustained success throughout history. Though reluctant, 
Qin Baxiang couldn't deny the truth in his father's words. Fine, let's meet him then he conceded. Qian Zixuan made her way around the backstage area, pausing before stepping out in front of the many young men present, all hoping to win her favor. She decided against making Hu Yan any unnecessary enemies and instead called him on her phone. Hu Yan, still examining the items for any further learning opportunities, answered, What's up? Come to the southeast corner. I'm behind the curtain Qin Zixuan said. Ho Yan hesitated, old Qin, we'll have plenty of opportunities in the future. No rush. If people see us together it might not look good. After all, they're all here for you. Qin Zixuan, momentarily confused responded, what are you talking about? Ho Yan clarified I mean are you trying to force your dad's hand by you know making something happen? What nonsense are you talking about Qin Zixuan snapped, frustrated. Does your dad want to see me Hu Yan asked, finally understanding, just as Qin Zixuan hung up. Deciding to comply, Hu Yan picked up Huang Shipping's gold needles. The manager nearby asked sir, do you know the value of this item? With his keen eyesight, Hu Yan effortlessly calculated, 5,432. The manager was taken aback. That precise. As this was an item without a preset price, the manager needed to check with the owner. Director Qin, someone wants to take the box of gold needles. He named a price of. Qin Baxiang, observing from above, replied, give it to him. All right the manager carefully packed the box and handed it to Hu Yan respectfully. Thank you Hu Yan said, accepting the box graciously. The manager nodded, you've earned it. Given its unclear origin and recent manufacture, the box's value was slightly higher than its weight in gold. Even if Hu Yan identified it as belonging to Huang Shipping, he had no proof, making his price estimation quite fair. Ho Yan smiled and left, lifting the curtain to find Qin Zixuan waiting, her cheeks still tinged with pink. She shot him a sharp look and turned to lead the way. Ho Yan, amused, followed, appreciating her graceful figure. Soon, they reached the Qin family's private room a space that offered a panoramic view. Even Hu Yan, with his thick skin, felt a bit flushed, realizing the family had likely seen his admiring gaze. Despite this, he composed himself. With Qin Zixuan's introduction he bowed slightly and greeted, Uncle Qin, happy birthday. Wishing you good health and longevity. Auntie, may you always remain youthful and radiant. He then turned to the elder Qin Anian and Yao, saying Grandpa Qin, Grandma Yao, it's been a while. I'll come by soon for another meal. The elders smiled warmly at him, while Wen Lingzhi scrutinized him intently. Qin Baoxiang, with a stern expression, said, You work in my company. Is this how you should address me? Qin Zixuan hadn't expected her father to start with a reprimand. Ho Yan, however, smiled and replied, If I were just an employee, I might never get the chance to stand before you. Today, since I'm here, it means you don't see me merely as an employee. Qin Anin nodded approvingly and even Qin Baoxiang had to admit Hu Yan's response was well measured. Nonetheless he wasn't ready to let Hu Yan off the hook, fair enough. But Qin Baoxiang feigned sorrow, I'm in poor health. How can I hope for good health and longevity? Ho Yan, realizing he was still being tested, said, Uncle, you're not sick, just overworked. If you trust me, I can help with these minor issues. Qin Baoxiang chuckled, minor issues? Do you know how much I've spent on my health? More than you'll earn in a lifetime, and yet nothing has worked. You call these minor issues. Qin Anian and Yao both shook their heads, and Wen Lingzhi's eyes welled up. In contrast, Qin Zixuan was excited and surprised. Can you really cure my father? She asked, eager to believe. Hao Yan nodded confidently. After mastering various skills, he had full faith in his abilities. Uncle, I believe that while famous doctors might treat serious illnesses, they might overlook simpler issues that I can address. Qin Baoxiang his hope diminished by what he saw as Hu Yan's arrogance, said, have a seat and drink some tea. Ho Yan thanked him and sat next to Qin and Anian, understanding Qin Baoxiang's skepticism. He knew the elder Qin's symptoms well general weakness and difficulty walking, despite all medical tests showing normal results. Western medicine found nothing wrong, while traditional Chinese medicine offered vague diagnoses like QI and blood deficiency, blocked meridians, and imbalance of yin and yang. Having tried countless treatments to no avail, Qin Baoxiang was understandably frustrated by Hu Yan's casual dismissal of his condition as a minor issue. Qin Zixuan, aware of her father's temperament, knew his polite demeanor masked his rejection of Hu Yan. Meanwhile, Hu Yan conversed with Qin Anin. Ho Yan, do you truly understand medicine? The elder Qin asked. Yes, I have some knowledge, Hu Yan replied. Is that bamboo painting yours? Yes. 
How do you rate your skills in painting and calligraphy? Just a little understanding. And your cooking. A little understanding. Appraising treasures. A little understanding. Hugh and Onion then pulled his son aside. Let Hu Yan examine you. If something goes wrong, I'll take responsibility. Qin Baoxiang was shocked. Dad, you can't be serious. I've witnessed everything Hu Yan claimed to understand. No one I know surpasses him. If he says he understands medicine, you should listen. Qin Baoxiang sought his mother's opinion. Yao said. Hu Yan is a bit playful but never lies. If he says he can do it he can. Realizing he had little choice, Qin Baoxiang thought, Hu Yan has certainly won over most of my family. Even when Lingji hopeful said bow, let Hu Yan take a look. What's the harm in trying? Turning to his daughter, Qin Baoxiang asked, You support Hu Yan too? Qin Zixuan nodded. If Hu Yan can't cure you, I'll abide by your decisions regarding my future. Her implication was clear if Hu Yan failed, she would submit to her father's will in all matters, even marriage. Qin Baoxiang, though frustrated, laughed. All right, let's try it. But he added, If Hu Yan fails, what then? Hu Yan responded, I'll also abide by your decisions. Very well. Do what you need to Qin Baoxiang said, resigned. As Hu Yan prepared to take Qin Baoxiang's pulse, Qin Zixuan interjected, Wait. If he fails we accept your decisions. But what if he succeeds? What will you do then? Hu Yan had actually been quite considerate of those so-called famous doctors, and was telling the truth. Most elderly people suffer from back pain or other ailments. Many of these individuals are financially well off. However, how many have actually found relief for their ailments? Whether through Western medicine or traditional Chinese medicine, the usual advice is to maintain a balanced diet, rest regularly, and exercise more. But a permanent cure? That's a dream. This is precisely why Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan have high hopes for their cosmetics company and future wellness center. If there were a place that could truly cure these ailments, how many people would flock there? Qin Baoxiang's ailments are similar to those of most elderly people just more severe. The medical consensus is that he's overworked, accelerating his aging process. Aging isn't a disease and can't be cured. Therefore, when all doctors said his condition was untreatable, and Hu Yan claimed it was a minor issue, how could Qin Baoxiang believe him? All right, Qiu and Baoxiang said. Since you all have such faith in Hu Yan, if he really cures my illness, I'll hand over all major decisions in the Qin family to Zixuan. This will prove I'm a blind fool. Is that fair? Qin Baoxiang's tone was clearly one of frustration. Years of suffering had made his family indulgent towards him, nurturing his temper. Even the elder Qin couldn't stand it but couldn't bring himself to speak against his son, which is why he remained living at the old house. Seeing how Qin Baoxiang spoke, no one else dared say anything. Qin Zixuan carefully considered her words before speaking up, Dad. Whether you like it or not, we're doing this for your own good. Hearing his daughter's words, Qin Baoxiang's expression softened a bit. Sigh. I also want to be healthier so I can help you for a few more years. That way you can find a suitable partner and live a good life without having to work so hard. Maybe you could even have a few more kids and I can pick an heir from them. Qin Baoxiang's heartfelt words moved everyone present, especially Qin Zixuan, who started to cry. Dad, I'm not tired. I'm a Qin family member, and it's my duty to support this family. You're at the age where you should be resting. Once I take over the company, you and mom can travel and enjoy life without worrying about anything. Leaning on Qin Baoxiang's shoulder, Qin Zixuan sobbed as he gently patted her back. No matter how old you get, you'll always be my little princess. I hope someone can take better care of you than I can. But in today's world, I'm afraid of those with ulterior motives. Sigh. A long sigh ended his speech, filled with fatherly love, which softened his stance towards Hu Yan. Despite considering Hu Yan among those with ulterior motives, Qin Baoxiang felt he owed him a chance. Uncle, why not wait until the treatment works before deciding anything Hu Yan suggested? Seeing his daughter genuinely care for him, Qin Baoxiang felt better. All right, let's hope you're right, he said, patting Qin Zixuan before sitting down. Let's see how our little miracle worker performs. With Qin Baoxiang's mood lightened, the atmosphere relaxed, and everyone focused on Hu Yan. Hu Yan extended a finger and placed it on Qin Baoxiang's wrist. One finger pulse diagnosis Q and Anian exclaimed. This diagnostic technique had been lost for many years and was now almost legendary. Realizing he might disrupt Hu Yan's concentration, Qin Anian quickly fell silent. Ho Yan, seemingly unaffected, continued to diagnose with his eyes slightly closed, first on Qin Baoxiang's left wrist and then his right. 
After about half an hour, he finally released his hands. Qin Baoxiang, with a wry smile, asked, Not as easy as you thought. Ho Yan nodded. It's more complicated than it appears, but it's manageable. Though still skeptical, Qin Baoxiang didn't argue. The rest of the family, however, were keenly interested. Can it be treated? The elder Qian asked first. Yes, Hu Yan replied. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. What's the treatment plan, and what's the expected outcome? The elder Qian continued. After a moment's thought, Hu Yan said, It depends on the extent of the treatment. The elder Qian pressed, To return to a normal state, how long will it take? To achieve a state of normalcy without any pain but still somewhat weak, three days should suffice. Three days the entire Qin family was stunned. The elder Qin, shaking with excitement, asked, Do you mean he'll be free of pain and move normally? Yes, Hu Yan confirmed. True normalcy means no pain or discomfort and free movement. Comparing to those in suboptimal health wouldn't be worthwhile. The Qin family exchanged incredulous glances. The elder Qin asked, And if his body were as strong as a healthy peer, how long would that take? With full cooperation, about half a year Hu Yan estimated. The family was once again taken aback. The elder Qin, Carefully phrasing his next question asked, could it be even better? Of course Hu Yan replied. With absolute cooperation, he could surpass the average physical strength of someone 10 years younger within three years. The family's faces lit up with joy, unable to contain their smiles. Qin Baxiang said, all right, if you can relieve my pain and restore normal movement, I'll be eternally grateful. Hu Yan nodded. All right, let's start by relieving the pain and numbness. He then turned to Qin Zixuan. Could you get some basic medical sterilization supplies? Before she could respond, Qin Baoxiang said, No need to worry, I've got it covered. He pulled out a device that resembled a remote control and pressed a button. That's my dad's private medical team, Qin Zixuan explained. They're always on standby and will be here soon. Within a minute, five people arrived, even bringing a stretcher. Qin Baoxiang chuckled, Sorry, I hit the emergency button by mistake. The five medical staff, sweating, looked relieved. Mr. Kin, are you feeling unwell? The middle-aged doctor inquired. No, it's nothing. A young friend is here to check my health. I just need some sterilization supplies, Kin Baoxiang explained. The doctor, adjusting his glasses, glanced at Hu Yan, who seemed too young to be credible. Mr. Kin, I advise against trying anything unproven. Your condition has stumped many experts. Kin Baoxiang dismissed the concern. I've decided. Stay and observe. If anything goes wrong, you're here to help. The doctor, seeing Qin Baoxiang's determination, complied without further objection. A young nurse brought over the medical kit, preparing the sterilization materials. Ho Yan placed the gold needles from Huang shipping into a box and poured alcohol over them for thorough sterilization. He then used alcohol wipes to clean his hands meticulously, followed by the needles. He asked Qin Baoxiang to remove his shirt and lie on the stretcher. Qin Baxiang felt a cool sensation on his back as Hu Yan disinfected the area, but otherwise felt nothing. Next, Hu Yan disinfected Qin Baxiang's feet. The others watched as Hu Yan swiftly inserted the soft gold needles deep into Qin Baxiang's body, making it look effortless. Despite the rapid needle insertion, Qin Baxiang felt no pain. The treatment continued as Hu Yan manipulated the first needle at the Dejui point. This ancient needle technique required inner strength to insert the gold needles and stimulate the acupuncture points. Even the initially skeptical medical team began to pay closer attention. The middle-aged doctor picked up a gold needle with tweezers, marveling at its craftsmanship. It's really gold. How could this penetrate the skin he muttered to himself? No one answered as all eyes were on Qin Baoxiang. He, initially expressionless, began to relax as a warm sensation spread from his Dejou point. As the warmth traveled down to his waist, Hu Yan manipulated another needle, enhancing the sensation, which continued down to his ankles. Ho Yan then moved to the needles in Qin Baxiang's feet, creating a flow of warm energy throughout his body. Qin Baxiang, covered in sweat, could smell a salty, fishy odor as the blocked energy channels cleared. After what seemed like an eternity, Hu Yan began removing the needles. With each removal, he pressed down to prevent any backflow of energy. As he extracted the last needle, a thin line of dark red liquid spurted out which Hu Yan quickly collected in a vial. Qin Baoxiang felt a newfound vitality as the warm energy coursed through his body, clearing blockages. Uncle, you can get up now. Dress warmly to avoid catching a chill Hu Yan advised. While the nurse initially assisted in lying down, Hu Yan signaled for her to stop. To everyone's amazement, Qin Baoxiang got up effortlessly, stretching and moving freely. 
Am I really cured? He asked, incredulous. Ho Yan shook his head. Not completely. We need at least three more sessions to fully clear your meridians. Tears welled up in Qin Baoxiang's eyes. Three more sessions? I've suffered for thirty years, and you say just three more. Qin Baoxiang lifted his head, trying to hold back his tears. However, Grandma Yao and Wen Lingji couldn't hold back any longer and embraced him. Qin Zixuan joined them as well. Only the old man nodded continuously, smiling as his eyes turned red at the sight of his crying family. Ho Yan, my Qin family owes you a great debt of gratitude. Thank you. Ho Yan shook his head. It's not that serious, Elder Qin. The old man patted Hu Yan's shoulder. Good lad. In the future, if you ever need anything from the Qin family, just say the word. Hu Yan was a bit puzzled. This wasn't what he had expected. Elder Qin, are you saying that after I cure your son, that's it? The old man was taken aback. What do you mean? Ha Yan replied. Have you forgotten what we discussed earlier? The old man asked. What did we discuss? Ho Yan had no choice but to remind him. I mentioned that I could make him even healthier. It's possible for him to have the vitality of a young man. Right, the old man suddenly remembered. In my excitement I forgot. Tell us, how can we make Bao Xiang as healthy as a young man? Hu Yan shook his head and said, I don't want to say anymore. Why not? Hu Yan continued shaking his head, for just a simple thank you, it's not worth it. Ha the old man slapped his forehead and laughed. My mistake clearly Hu Yan was not willing to exert more effort for just an empty promise. It's not that Hu Yan was petty. He was willing to do anything for Elder Qin and Qin Zixuan, but Qin Baoxiang's stubborn attitude made Hu Yan feel it was better to be clear. After everyone had finished crying, the old man said, Why are you all crying over something good? This is a happy occasion, not the time to be weeping. Our benefactor is here, and we're just standing around. How rude is that? Reminded by the old man, Qin Baoxiang wiped his eyes, and the family members stepped back from their embrace but still stayed close as if worried Qin Baoxiang might collapse again. Qin Baoxiang said, Everyone, take a seat. Hu Yan is still here, and we don't want to embarrass ourselves in front of him. Grandma Yao wiped her eyes and sat down, while Qin Zixuan and her mother stood protectively beside Qin Baoxiang. Qin Zixuan, with her tear-streaked face, looked more delicate than ever. By now she fully understood Hu Yan's intentions and was deeply grateful. Realizing everything Hu Yan had done for her, she decided she needed to show her appreciation as well. Biting her lip and blushing, she boldly said, Hu Yan is not an outsider. There's no need to be so formal. Although Qin Zixuan spoke indirectly, no one in the Qin family was foolish enough not to understand. Wen Lingzhi, who had always sensed something special between Qin Zixuan and Hu Yan, couldn't miss the affection in her daughter's eyes when she looked at Hu Yan. Though Wen Lingzhi had a gentle nature and usually followed her husband's lead, she had always opposed Qin Zixuan marrying someone she didn't love. Taking this opportunity, Wen Lingzhi said, I like this young man, Hu Yan. Ho Yan quickly responded, Thank you, auntie. Wen Lingzhi nodded, Come over with Zixuan when you can. I'll make soup for you both. Thank you, I will. Seeing that her mother understood her feelings, Qin Zixuan couldn't help but hug Wen Lingzhi and lean on her. Wen Lingzhi gently stroked Chu and Zixuan's hair, her eyes full of love. Sweetheart, because of your father's illness, I haven't taken good care of you these years. You've been through so much. Qin Zixuan shook her head. It's not hard, mom. We're a family. We should bear things together. The elderly Qin couple smiled at the harmonious scene, while Qin Baoxiang, though looking much better, still had a conflicted expression. Hu Yan. Mi Yan. Hu Yan nodded, yes, uncle. Qin Baoxiang continued, technically, I owe you a great debt. But Zixuan will be the future head of Tianhai. Tianhai doesn't owe you anything. Please understand that. Ha Yan replied, I understand. Please continue. Qin Baoxiang nodded, I won't obstruct your relationship with Zixuan, but I won't actively support it either. If you can accept that, great. If not, name your price, and I'll pay for your medical services. Not only Hu Yan, but everyone in the Qin family was shocked. The old man slammed the table. You fool! Do you think money can solve everything? Can money buy you health? Show me if it can. The old man, ready to lash out, was held back by Grandma Yao. Qin Baoxiang deeply bowed to his father. Dad, I apologize for upsetting you. But we run a business, a corporation. I have shareholders to consider. I've already promised some old friends to evaluate a few candidates tonight. The old man, shaking with anger, said fine. You have dinner with them. 
Let's go Hu Yan, we're going back to Jiang Qing, we're not treating him, and we're not attending his matchmaking dinner either. I dare anyone to marry Zixuan off to someone else. Hu Yan was caught between a rock and a hard place, unsure whether to leave or stay. Qian Zixuan, stuck between her father and grandfather, was at a loss. Grandma Yao tried to calm the old man, while Wen Lingji attempted to persuade Qin Baoxiang. The situation reached an impasse. Suddenly, Hu Yan held the old man's hand and said, Grandpa, don't be angry. Regardless of what Chairman Qin decides, I must cure him. The switch from Uncle Qin to Chairman Qin was noticeable. The old man, desperate, said, Are you crazy? Let him suffer. Although everyone knew the old man wanted Hu Yan to cure his son and even make him stronger, Qin Baoxiang's behavior had left him fuming. Hu Yan patted the old man's hand to calm him. I understand your love for me as a junior, and I am deeply grateful. Hu Yan then looked around at everyone. Since I've studied the art of medicine from ancient sages, I must use this skill to help others. As a doctor, I cannot abandon my patient. Both Qin father and son bowed their heads in shame, while Wen Lingji clasped her hands together and said, May the gods bless you with happiness, child. Though she didn't say it outright, it was clear she supported Hu Yan. Grandma Yao added, Child, you've been wronged. From now on, consider us your family and Jiang Cheng. The old man nodded, Indeed. Even if my son is ungrateful we cannot be. Hu Yan, trying to maintain a smile despite the awkward situation, said, I understand and appreciate everyone's kindness. I'm very tired today so I'll retire to my room. Before arriving, Qin Zixuan had booked a room for Hu Yan, planning to stay overnight and return the next day. Seeing Hu Yan about to leave, Qin Zixuan offered to walk him to his room. After bidding farewell, they walked to the 22nd floor in silence. Qin Zixuan opened the door with a room card but didn't leave. Seeing her troubled expression, Hu Yan felt bad and tried to lighten the mood. What's wrong? Do you really want to cook up something to force your dad's hand? Biting her lip, Qin Zixuan's pale face flushed. She clenched her hands tightly. Hu Yan had never seen her so nervous before. Suddenly she looked up, meeting his gaze. Hu Yan, I'm grateful for everything you've done for me. I swear I will marry no one but you. Hu Yan chuckled don't swear. In dramas, those who make vows often don't end up together. Better to be practical. Though Hu Yan tried to sound casual he was exhausted. He took off his coat, threw it on the bed, and lay down. After a day of dealing with various young heirs, pursuing medical knowledge, and using his energy to treat Qin Baoxiang, Hu Yan was truly tired. He was on the verge of sleep when he felt a soft body fall into his arms. Opening his eyes, he found Qin Zixuan's beautiful face inches from his. Before he could react, her lips met his. The wonderful sensation was fleeting, followed by the sound of rapid camera clicks. Before Hu Yan could fully grasp what had happened, Qin Zixuan pushed him away. Sorry, I'm not ready yet. But my heart belongs to you. Hao Yan lay there, stunned, until the door closed with a click. The lingering fragrance on his lips and body felt like a dream. He texted Qin Zixuan, I think I just got kissed while I wasn't fully awake. Do you know who it was? After a while she replied, no idea. Another message quickly followed, don't blame my dad, he has his reasons. Ho Yan responded, I don't blame him. He has love for his family and loyalty to his business partners. Who could fault a man like that? After a long pause she replied, you are more loyal and loving. I will remember this forever. I hope to cook with you one day. After sending this message, Qin Zixuan didn't reply. Back at home, Qin Baoxiang looked at his daughter apologetically. I know it's unfair to you and Hu Yan but you understand, I have to keep my word to my partners. Qin Zixuan asked, Do you know what Hu Yan said about you? What did he say? Everyone looked at Qin Zixuan. He said you are a man of love and loyalty. With that, she turned and said, I'm tired too. Good night. Was he mocking me? Qin Zixuan returned and showed him the chat log. After reading it, Qin Baoxiang was silent for a long time. He felt a strange sense of kinship with Hu Yan. But the last message, I want to cook with you left him feeling a sense of loss, as if something precious was slipping away. Old Master Qin asked Qin Baoxiang what Hu Yan had said about him. Qin Baoxiang truthfully repeated Hu Yan's words he said I am affectionate towards my family and loyal to my friends. The old man snorted. I think you are heartless towards your daughter and ungrateful to your benefactor. Do you still feel any pain? Are your movements still difficult? There's nothing worse than being sick. Have you forgotten how many times you felt so hopeless and wanted to end it all when you were ill? It was thee. 
warmth of your family that kept you going. You once swore that whoever cured you would be your benefactor for life, and you would always be grateful to them. Have you forgotten that? The old man, filled with anger, picked up a slipper, but Grandma Yao quickly stopped him. Qin Baoxiang knelt down in front of his father. Dad. I am your son don't you understand me by now? Yes, Hu Yan is my benefactor for treating my illness, but if it weren't for my old friend's support, Tianhai wouldn't be where it is today. Hu Yan is my benefactor. But so are they. I need to prioritize things. Although I am letting Zixuan down now, I will find a way to repay Hu Yan properly once I have honored my commitments to my old friends. Please trust me. Qin Baoxiang's reasoning made sense. And Qin Anin couldn't stay angry. All right, Hu Yan advised you to stay active but not overexert yourself. Take care of yourself despite his earlier anger, old master Qin still cared deeply for his son. Wen Lingji accompanied Qin Baoxiang on a walk in the courtyard, while the rest of the family went to rest. When Hu Yan woke up, it was already past three in the afternoon. He quickly got ready and went downstairs. He wasn't particularly interested in attending the matchmaking banquet that evening, but he hadn't forgotten his promise to treat Qin Baoxiang's illness. When he arrived at the Qin family's villa, he rang the doorbell. Shortly after, Uncle Qin opened the door for him. Ha Yan, you're here. Yes, it's been a while, Uncle Qin. Uncle Qin looked Hu Yan up and down. I heard from Qin San that you've mastered internal energy? That's remarkable. I never expected to see such a talent in the mundane world. Ho Yan was surprised. Uncle Qin, do you mean to say there really are hidden families with extraordinary abilities? Uncle Qin smiled and shook his head. I can't say for sure. China is vast, and what people see is just the tip of the iceberg. Who knows if they exist or not? It's all just rumors. Ha Yan nodded, understanding that Uncle Qin had heard some stories. In fact, Hu Yan himself had witnessed something similar. The Yao family village, although not exactly a hidden family, had preserved their martial arts and traditions intact. Just as Uncle Qin said, in a country as large as China, there might indeed be people who, during times of war or chaos, hid away in remote mountains and forests, living in seclusion. If they had great abilities, it's possible they passed down their complete knowledge and skills. In the mundane world, Hu Yan had heard of other hereditary skills apart from martial arts. For example, in his hometown of Yangqing, there was a traditional Chinese medicine clinic that specialized in treating burns. Their treatments left almost no scars or rarity. Many people, both domestically and internationally, had tried to buy their formula, but the family adhered to their ancestral rule of not sharing their secret. Even during the war of resistance against Japan, they did not reveal it under threat of death, let alone in peaceful times. As they talked, they soon saw Qian Baoxiang and his wife walking in the courtyard. Good afternoon, Chairman Hu Yan greeted politely. Until Qin Baoxiang accepted him, Hu Yan decided to approach him as an employee. Qin Baoxiang understood the implication. Ho Yan, thank you so much. For years I had to rely on others for support. You don't know, if not for my family and this company, I would have. He waved his hand. Let's not talk about the past. Thanks to you those days are over. Ho Yan nodded slightly and followed them into the living room of the villa. Uncle Qin personally brewed tea and served it to Hu Yan, who accepted it respectfully. After taking a sip of tea, Ho Yan took out a prescription. Please chairman have someone get these herbs as soon as possible. The sooner you take them, the better. Qin Baoxiang nodded. Uncle Fu, please call the pharmacy and have the herbs delivered. Uncle Qin nodded and made the call. This prescription is Wang Qingren's Tongqiao Zuyu decoction it will be very beneficial for your condition. The herbs are mild and suitable for you to take now Hu Yan explained. Qin Baoxiang nodded. Thank you for your effort. Ho Yan then took out a bottle from his bag and handed it to Qin Baoxiang. Take a look. These were extracted from your body during the acupuncture treatment. Qin Baoxiang looked inside and saw four long blackish blood clots resembling leeches. Is this the root of my illness? Hu Yan nodded. You could say that. These are caused by long-term overwork and strain. You have more in your body which I will gradually remove. After you finish the decoction you'll need some tonics to strengthen your body. I'll prescribe those for you too, and soon you'll be as healthy as a normal person. Qin Baxiang nodded, I won't say more about gratitude. I'll do my best in return. At that moment, the old couple and Qin Zixuan came downstairs. The old man warmly took Hu Yan's hand. How are you feeling? Rested well. Hu Yan nodded. Yes, thank you. I didn't want to delay the treatment. Although Hu Yan spoke politely, the sense of distance was evident, which made the old man feel uncomfortable. 
Both the old man and Qin Zixuan understood Hu Yan's feelings and felt guilty rather than resentful. After some small talk, the herbs were delivered. The Qin family had a special pot for decoctions, and Hu Yan personally prepared the medicine, explaining the process carefully to Wen Lingji. Once the medicine was ready, Wen Lingji thanked Hu Yan and took it to Qin Baoxiang. After drinking the medicine, Hu Yan had Qin Baoxiang lie on the sofa. While the medicine worked to clear his meridians, Hu Yan performed a massage edge and bone adjustment. Ho Yan had already mastered these techniques with Yao Ru, and with the additional knowledge he gained, his skills had improved even further. The decline in traditional bone-setting techniques was largely due to the decline of martial arts. In the past, bone-setting doctors often came from martial arts backgrounds. As martial arts faded, so did the essence of these techniques. Uncle Qin, or Uncle Fu was also from a martial arts background. His technique was sound, but without internal energy, it was difficult to fully clear blocked meridians. After taking the decoction, Qin Baoxiang felt warm all over, sensing a flow of heat through his chest and abdomen, though other areas still felt somewhat stagnant. Ha Yun began by massaging Qin Baoxiang's thighs, where many blood vessels didn't participate in circulation. Under Hu Yan's internal energy, the blood flow gradually became more active. Qin Baoxiang felt the heat in his chest and abdomen flow downwards, connecting with the warmth from Hu Yan's hands, creating a circulating flow. The sensation was so soothing that he couldn't help but let out a sound of relief. Uncle Qin, observing Hu Yan's skillful technique, smiled approvingly. Next Hu Yan had Qin Baoxiang turn over, working from his back down to his ankles. Qin Baoxiang felt warmth spreading through his back, loosening previously stiff areas. Then, Hu Yan lifted Qin Baoxiang's legs, placing one foot on his waist while pulling his legs upward with force. Crack. 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 Three loud pops were accompanied by Qin Baoxiang's cries of pain. Ow. 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 The Qun family was terrified, breaking into a cold sweat. But after the cries, Qin Baoxiang sighed with relief. That feels great. So comfortable he felt warmth and strength returning to his previously weak waist. Then Hu Yan's movements became even more dynamic. He had Qin Baoxiang lie on his side, pressing his arm inward while pushing the hip bone in the opposite direction. Crack, crack, crack the sound of vertebrae aligning filled the room. Though it was painful, Qin Baoxiang felt incredible relief. After the treatment, Qin Baoxiang stood up, stretched, and wiped his sweat with a towel when Lingji handed him. To everyone's shock, Qin Baoxiang jumped twice. Slow down. Be careful. Stop that. Amidst the exclamations, Qin Baoxiang waved them off, I'm fine. I feel full of energy. I need to move around or I'll be uncomfortable. He turned to Hu Yan and asked, Am I fully recovered? Hu Yan shook his head, Chairman, don't rush. I said it would take at least three days. Qin Baoxiang nodded, rubbing his hands together, pacing the living room, doing movements he hadn't been able to do before, looking rejuvenated. Everyone watched, thrilled. Qin Zixuan pulled Hu Yan aside. Hu Yan, my mother's health has also deteriorated over the years. Can you help her? Ho Yan nodded, years of worry and an unharmonious life can do that. A few doses of decoction will help. Blushing, Qin Zixuan whispered, what about my dad in the future? He'll be vigorous. You might end up with a little brother, solving our problems Hu Yan teased. Stop it Qin Zixuan playfully punched Hu Yan. She happily ran to tell Wen Lingji, who blushed but was clearly pleased. Zixuan, I truly like Hu Yan. If you can be with him, you'll be very happy when Lingji said. Qin Zixuan's expression darkened. I want that too. But you know dad's temper. When Lingji hugged her daughter, don't worry. Your dad will come around. Qin Zixuan nodded. As evening approached, the hotel called to say the banquet was ready. The Qin family walked to the hotel, with Qin Baoxiang leading the way confidently. When the grand doors of the banquet hall opened, and Qin Baoxiang walked in, the room fell silent. The sight of Qin Baoxiang, who had previously struggled to walk and needed help, now striding in full of vigor, shocked everyone present, whether acquaintances or close friends. Old Master Qin hadn't wanted to come, but he was curious to see how his son would balance his commitments to his old comrades without neglecting his daughter and their benefactor, Hu Yan. Hu Yan too, was reluctant, but couldn't refuse Qin Zixuan's invitation and Wen Lingji's hopeful gaze. Qin Baoxiang stood in the center of the hall, with Qin Da, Qin Er, and Qin San standing just behind him. As people realized the situation, they stood up and gave a round of enthusiastic applause. Qin Baoxiang bowed slightly and said, Thank you all for coming. Once the applause subsided he continued, 
You must be wondering how I, a sick man, have miraculously recovered. After a round of laughter, Qin Baoxiang continued, My old friends, do you think I was faking my illness? Yes. Of course. You fooled us all. Chairman, what kind of show is this? Seeing that Qin Baoxiang was in a good mood, everyone joined in the teasing. Qin Baoxiang smiled and shook his head, I wasn't faking it. I encountered a benefactor. He is an excellent employee personally selected by my dear daughter, the current executive president of Tianhai, Qin Zixuan Hu Yan. Hu Yan was taken aback by the unexpected spotlight. When Qin Baoxiang gestured towards him, Hu Yan smiled and nodded, acknowledging the crowd with a wave. After a round of modest applause, Qin Baoxiang continued, Tianhai is not something I insist on keeping in the family. It's just that, after working with some old friends for a lifetime, I don't want to see it fall apart. Now that my health has improved, some previously made decisions will change. At this he paused, and the crowd began to murmur. The discussions were about personal interests, particularly among those interested in Qin Zixuan. They were anxious to know if the plans to choose a son-in-law were still valid. Rest assured my words are like water spilled on the ground they can't be taken back. So, those interested can try to get to know my daughter, but only if both parties are willing. Finally the crowd relaxed. Many people had already been texting updates. Now, even more so, especially those from competing industries. In truth, the number of attendees was less than 1% of those who came to wish Qin Baoxiang a happy birthday. Among the shareholders, three were selected, and seven were outsiders people Tianhai couldn't afford to offend. Hearing that Qin Baoxiang wouldn't interfere with their interactions with Qin Zixuan, many were eager to try. Qin Zixuan cooperated by writing her WeChat number on a board. Soon, amidst a chorus of notification sounds, everyone had added her as a friend. Hu Yan felt uncomfortable watching this. But as Qin Baoxiang said, since he had promised, he had to follow through. There was nothing wrong with that. Finally, Qin Baoxiang announced, Hu Yan is not only an outstanding employee but also highly accomplished in many areas. So, I've decided to include him as a potential son-in-law. After all, a fair competition could use one more contender. The crowd thought it reasonable and didn't object. After all, those present were people of status and knew better than to say something that could backfire. Only a few shareholders seemed displeased. They had worked hard to secure three spots, and now Qin Baoxiang had added another with a single sentence. But what could they say? After all, it was his daughter, and they were already grateful for the opportunity. This eased Hu Yan's discomfort considerably. Many started looking up Hu Yan's background, but only Tianhai employees could access that information immediately. Just as Qin Baoxiang was about to announce the start of the banquet, Qin Zixuan stepped forward. I have a few words to say. Suddenly, the lavish hall seemed to dim as Qin Zixuan stood in the center, her ethereal voice reaching everyone's ears. Ho Yan is not only my father's choice but also mine. Since my father wants to give everyone a chance I can't refuse. But like any game there must be rules. Everyone was intrigued. After all, they were all elite individuals who had passed various tests to reach this point. They loved challenges. They were drawn to Qin Zixuan, reputed as the most beautiful second-generation heir. Fair competition made it even more exciting. In fact, not many were seriously aiming to win her heart. Most were there for the thrill of the challenge and the prestige. Qin Zixuan continued, Anyone who can outperform Hu Yan in any area will get to know me, starting as friends. She finished speaking, and her meaning was clear. If you can't even outperform my employee, then don't bother. Qin Baoxiang didn't stop her, knowing that Qin Zixuan's approach wouldn't offend anyone but would spark their competitive spirits. This way, even if someone truly excellent emerged, it was fine. If not, and Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan ended up together, Qin Baoxiang was no longer opposed. Because his health was better, he could hold out for another 10 or 20 years. By then, Qin Zixuan's children would be grown, and the situation would be less complicated. Ho Yan hadn't expected Qin Zixuan to use such a method to refuse these suitors. Others didn't know. But Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan did beating Hu Yan at anything was extremely difficult. Can't do it? Hu Yan could learn. No one said the competition had to be immediate. Even Qin Baoxiang hadn't thought of this. Sure enough, after Qin Baoxiang announced the start of the banquet, someone immediately asked Qin Zixuan what Hu Yan was good at. Qin Zixuan replied confidently, we won't compete in what Hu Yan is good at. Compete in what you are good at. Ho Yan remained by old master Qin's side, sharing a table with the Qun family. People occasionally came over to offer toasts. Although Qin Baoxiang's health had improved, he still couldn't drink, 
So Hu Yan took over. Already having a decent alcohol tolerance, and now with martial arts skills, Hu Yan handled it easily. After a few rounds, people stopped coming over. Just then, Song Tianlin from Huayang Technology approached. He greeted the Qin family before turning to Hu Yan. Brother Hu Yan, if we want to get to know Miss Qin, we must get past you. So, I won't hold back. Hu Yan nodded, please, go ahead. Song Tianlin said, I like stocks, funds, and futures. I've done pretty well over the years. How about we play a little game? Hu Yan had never dealt with such investments but had heard of them. Sure, how do you want to play? Song Tianlin explained, I'll pick 10 stocks. We each choose 5. The one with the higher returns wins. The loser not only withdraws from pursuing Miss Qin but also loses the investment. How about it? Qin Zixuan knew Hu Yan had never dealt with such investments, no matter how quickly he learned. Mr. Song, can we take a few days? I'll explain things to Hu Yan first. Song Tianlin laughed. I remember Miss Qin said we could compete in what we are good at. Ha Yan glanced at his phone and said, No problem, we can start right now. Great. Quick decision Song Tianlin quickly picked 10 stocks. Hu Yan agreed readily because he had tested his ability to see stock trends on his phone. Although he couldn't see exact prices, he could see the trends in different colors. So, Ho Yan quickly picked the ones with the deepest green, indicating the best rising trends and easy transactions. After Hu Yan swiftly made his picks, Song Tianlin was surprised. I didn't realize you were an expert in this field, brother Hu Yan. Ho Yan replied, I've never played before. I just chose randomly. Song Tianlin smiled wryly and shook his head. At that moment, another person approached Li Dongzi from Dong Hao Group. This method is good, fair, and interesting. It also tests luck. I don't have any particular skills so let's go with this. Ho Yan had heard about Li Dongzi's character from Qin San. Not wanting to cause trouble for the Qin family, and since it was Qin Zixuan's idea, Ho Yan agreed to continue. Li Dongz took out some stock data. 10 stocks aren't fair. Here are 20. You pick first, then I'll pick. That's fine Hu Yan said. Ha Yan quickly chose 5 stocks again. Song Tianlin slapped his forehead. Why didn't I think of that? 10 stocks are indeed too few. Ha Yan replied, we can pick again if you want. Song Tianlin gave a thumbs up. You're generous. Win or lose, we'll be friends. If Miss Qin marries you, I'll accept it. Ho Yan smiled Mr. Song. I like straightforward people too. Hu Yan genuinely liked Song Tianlin. Among these people, although their private lives weren't spotless, Song Tianlin was relatively better. He didn't have a formal girlfriend, just indulged occasionally. Li Dongz asked, how big are we playing? Song Tianlin looked at Hu Yan, knowing he was just an employee and might not match their wealth. However you like Hu Yan replied. Li Dongzi's tone turned challenging all right. Let's play with 5 million each his eyes questioned whether Hu Yan could match the amount. Ho Yan didn't mind and turned to Qin Zixuan old Qin, can you lend me 5 million to play? Qin Zixuan replied, 10 million from both sides, that's 1 billion. Sure, I'll use my account to help you buy the stocks. Don't forget to share the winnings. No problem, 50-50 split. Song Tianlin and Lai Dong smelled a hint of romance in the air. Their natural conversation suggested they were confident, as if playing them for fools. Li Dongz and Song Tianlin exchanged glances, wondering if there was already something between Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan. Song Tianlin and Li Dongzi agreed with Hu Yan on a one-month time frame. In that month, they would sell all their stocks, and the person with the most money left would win. This arrangement suited Hu Yan well. Stocks were unique his eyes could only see short-term trends and couldn't predict long-term values. Over a longer period, the outcome would be uncertain. Song Tianlin and Li Dongs went back to drinking, forming a new acquaintance. Such events were not just about the primary goal but also about making new connections that might prove beneficial in future business battles. Ho Yan enjoyed a brief respite before another young man approached. Seeing that no one recognized him, Qin San came over to introduce him. Master, this is Hua Xiaokyang, the son of Hua Dong Industrial Group. Hua Xiaokyang greeted Qin Baoxiang. Hello, Uncle Qin. Qin Baoxiang nodded. I've heard good things about you, Hua Xiao. Please, have a seat. Hua Xiaokyang sat down beside Hu Yan. Qin San explained. Hua Xiao's company operates in various sectors, including construction, shopping malls, and entertainment. Hua Xiao himself loves the entertainment industry and owns several popular live streaming platforms. Ha Yan nodded. 
Qin San's introduction reminded him of who Hua Xiaoqiang was. This was a well-known second-generation rich kid who changed girlfriends like clothes. He enjoyed making movies, though they were more about style than substance, relying heavily on popular actors to draw in viewers. Most of his ventures were driven by his whims. Yet, despite his frivolous approach, Hua Xiaoqiang was not entirely without merit. For instance, even if his films were subpar, Hu Yan couldn't match his experience and skill in a short time. Hua Xiaoqiang looked at Hu Yan and said, Brother Hu, I envy you for having such a beautiful woman interested in you. Don't be shy everyone knows I'm just a passerby in the world of flowers. I thought I had seen all the beauties in the world until I met Miss Qian. She's truly out of my league. Ho Yan smiled awkwardly. He had noticed Hua Xiaoqiang earlier and knew that despite his reputation, he showed no predatory interest in Qin Zixuan. Hua Xiaoqiang, seemingly oblivious to what others thought, continued speaking openly. This was consistent with his online persona, always blunt and never concerned about offending people. Given his status, no one in their circle dared to cross him, so he naturally ignored others' opinions. Not wanting to create enemies for the Qin family, Hu Yan nodded slightly. Hua Xiaoqiang carried on, I'm not particularly good at anything. Chasing girls? I just throw money at it. Making movies and live streams? I hire whoever's popular. When Miss Qian mentioned her rules today, it was an eye-opener. I used to think I was something special. But now I realize I don't have any real skills. Haha. <laughs> Ho Yan responded, you're being modest. You've made many profitable investments, something not everyone can do. This wasn't flattery, it was true. Despite his frivolous ways, Hua Xiaoqiang had a knack for making money. Pure luck, I tell you. Pure luck Hua Xiaoqiang laughed. People talk about being talented or having a great business sense. That's all nonsense. In life it's all about fate, like the emperors of old. His words echoed Q in Anian's views, prompting the old man to glance at his son and say, Hua Xiao sees through life at such a young age. I couldn't agree more. Hua Xiaoqiang was surprised. May I ask who this elder is? Qin San replied. This is my master's father. Hua Xiaoqiang immediately stood up. I apologize. I didn't know you were here, sir. My father always said you were a legend. Even in the old days when others struggled, you always managed to make a living. The old man waved his hand, ha ha, indeed. Some people worry too much. Life has many predetermined aspects. Hua Xiaoqiang clapped his hands exactly. Take me, for instance. I do what I want, and money just comes my way. I've never missed out on a girl I fancied, except today. Your granddaughter, sir, makes me feel unworthy, but I can't resist giving it a try. The old man chuckled. The Hua family indeed has remarkable children. I like your straightforwardness. Hua Xiaoqian cupped his hands. Thank you, sir. If I tell my dad you like me, he won't believe it. The room burst into laughter. Hua Xiaoqian was indeed different from his online persona, showing a genuine side. Ho Yan found him quite likable, despite his flaws. He was an open book, without the pretense some people had. After some small talk, Hua Xiaoqiang said, Brother Hu, since Miss Qin said you could compete in any field, you must be truly talented. Unlike me, I rely on luck. Let's test our luck, shall we? Ho Yan replied, Since Miss Qin has spoken, I must comply. What's the plan? Great. Let's each spend the same amount on lottery tickets. Whoever wins the most wins. Fair. Fair Hu Yan agreed, thinking to himself, Fair indeed. It's a challenge for others but not for me. Let's do it Hua Xiaoqiang said, slapping his thigh. We'll buy lottery tickets worth 5 million each. By 9 o'clock we'll know the result. The loser not only quits pursuing Miss Qian but also forfeits the winnings. All right Hu Yan agreed. They quickly purchased the tickets online, each spending 5 million. Hua Xiaoqiang generously handed his phone to Hu Yan to check, ensuring there was no cheating. Hu Yan examined the phone closely, making sure to note the significant numbers. Surprisingly, Hua Xiaoqiang had indeed chosen a combination worth over 67 million. Ho Yan remembered the numbers and made his purchases, including multiples of the significant combination and some similar ones, totaling over 4 million in tickets. Handing the phone back, Hua Xiaoqiang joked, Brother Hu, you even doubled up. Just in case we both hit the jackpot, Hu Yan replied. Better to be safe. True, Hua Xiaoqiang laughed. Hu Yan silently thanked Hua Xiaoqiang for making it easy. Without his lucky picks, finding a winning combination would have been nearly impossible. Let's wait for the results then Hua Xiaoqiang said, excusing himself to return to his table. Qin Zixuan, worried about relying on luck, asked Hu Yan, can you really win this? Hua Xiaoqiang is known for his incredible luck. 
Ho Yan reassured her, when it comes to luck, no one beats me. Cho off Qin Zixuan playfully punched him. Despite her words, she felt more at ease. Their affectionate interaction didn't go unnoticed by the Qin family. They realized that Hu Yan's humble demeanor might mean Qin Zixuan was more proactive in their relationship. Reflecting on his life, Qin Baoxiang acknowledged the role of luck. Despite crises, he often found a way out, largely through opportunistic investments. Maybe luck is real he thought, feeling more accepting of the idea. Just then, another person approached. Even before the person got close, Hu Yan felt a sense of unease. This feeling of alarm was a reflex developed from years of martial training, a natural self-protective response. Hu Yan glanced at the approaching man. Standing around 1.8 meters tall, with hair spiked like steel needles, his physique was evident even through his black sportswear. The muscles on his neck and the taut lines of his body hinted at explosive power. His face, dark with a hint of red, and his slightly splayed walk, showcased the tension in his leg muscles with every step. Ho Yan immediately recognized him as a seasoned martial artist. Qin San quickly positioned himself in front of Hu Yan. Master Wu, it's been a while. Ho Yan sensed the tension in Qin San's voice. At the same time, Qin Dei and Qin Yi are moved to stand beside Qin Baoxiang and Qin Anin. The man called Master Wu fixed his piercing gaze on Hu Yan. My name is Wu Zhaonan, second son of the Wuxi group in Jiangnan. People say the second son matches best with the eldest daughter. Our family started with a pawn shop, just like yours. We're a perfect match, north and south. As he spoke, the strong smell of alcohol wafted from his breath. While Hu Yan had been drinking, Wu Zhaonan had kept pace from afar, never wanting to take advantage. Ho Yan met Wu Zhaonan's gaze without flinching. What does Master Wu want to compete in? Wu Zhaonan clenched his fists, making them crackle. I only know how to fight. Qin San, as if reminding Hu Yan, said, Master Wu's elder brother was kidnapped not long ago. Wu Zhaonan went alone with the ransom and left a group of kidnappers crippled, all suffering from multiple fractures. Yesterday, he thought Miss Qin was at home and broke into the villa. Second brother tried to stop him and got seriously injured with a single punch. No wonder Hu Yan had noticed Qin Yi's pale complexion earlier. Wu Zhaonan sneered, he should have spoken sooner. Apparently, because Qin Yi er didn't mention that Qin Zixuan wasn't home and tried to block him, he got beaten up. No wonder Qin Dia had been so tense when Hu Yan arrived. He was wary of Wu Zhaonan causing trouble. Wu Zhaonan continued, if you can't take a beating, Qin Zixuan is mine. My father told me to marry her and bring her back. It was now clear to both Qin Anin and Hu Yan that Qin Baoxiang's troubles were more complex than they had imagined. Qin Baoxiang smiled, Young Master Wu, I've known your father for years. We've talked on the phone about this, but these things require mutual consent. Wu Zhaonan, clearly a blunt person, seemed to have no understanding of decorum. Uncle Qin, I don't care about anything else. My father said I must marry Qin Zixuan. He thinks I'm not cut out for business, and only with her help can I bring glory to our family. Everyone present felt embarrassed for the Wu family. Hua Xiaoqiang, never one to hold back, spoke up first. The Wu family? Depending on a wife to make a comeback, that's a new low. Wu Zhaonan turned to Hua Xiaoqiang, my father said if anyone talks too much, I should just beat them up. Hua Xiaoqiang laughed incredulously. Your father is something else. Doesn't he know this is a law-abiding society? You think you can just beat up whoever you want? Is your dad the king? Wu Zhaonan thought for a moment. Are you Hua Xiaoqiang? My father said the only one who might interfere is you. He told me not to hit you too hard. Come here. Hua Xiaoqiang was dumbfounded. He never expected someone like Wu Zhanan in their circle. Seeing Wu Zhanan about to make a move, Hua Xiaoqiang, who often worked out to stay fit, wasn't one to fight. Five burly men in training gear stepped in front of him. The Hua family, aware of Hua Xiaoqiang's temper, never skimped on bodyguards. Hua Xiaoqiang stepped back. Show him what you've got clearly, he trusted his bodyguards. Wu Zhanan grinned, and in a flash, one of Hua Xiaoqiang's bodyguards was sent flying, crashing into a table. Too weak Wu Zhanan retracted his foot and looked at the remaining four. The four exchanged glances and charged at him together. In a flurry of movements, all four were down on the floor. Wu Zhanan, showing a row of white teeth, turned to Hua Xiaoqiang, your turn. Hua Xiaoqiang gulped and instinctively stepped back. For the first time he felt genuine fear. In their circle, getting beaten and then calling the police wasn't an option. He remembered his father calling the Wu brothers two brats raised by an old fox. Q and Da stepped in front of Hua Xiaoqiang. He's our guest. You can't touch him. 
Without a word, Wu Jianan threw a punch. Bang. Qun Die took the hit head on, stepping back three steps. Regaining his stance, he looked at Wu Jianan, eyes wide with disbelief. Qun Fu had said Qin Die's strength was unmatched without internal energy, unless someone had reached the peak of external martial arts. Clearly, Wu Jianan was such a person. Qun Baoxiang, with a bitter smile, glanced at his father, meaning, Now you see my predicament. Wu Jianan looked at Qun Die, You're pretty good, better than him. He was referring to Qin Er. Qin Er, clutching his chest, coughed but stood beside Qin San. Qin San said, You're strong. But if you want to cause trouble here, you'll have to get through us first. Wu Jianan shook his head disdainfully. Don't think I won't. He pulled out a badge. Even if I kill you, I won't be punished. Seeing the badge, the Qin brothers were stunned. Wu Jianan was part of a special department. If he labeled them criminals, they could indeed be killed with impunity. Wu Jianan wasn't stupid, just unconventional. He didn't like trouble, preferring direct action. The Qin brothers, raised by the Qin family, had a deep sense of loyalty. They were ready to fight to the death. At that moment, Hu Yan stood up. Wu Jianan, I believe the challenge is between us. Wu Jianan nodded, that's best. I hate trouble. If I beat you, Qin Zixuan will be my wife. Qin Baoxiang ground his teeth in frustration. The situation was more complex than Qin Zixuan had realized. Now she regretted her decisions, fearing Hu Yan might get hurt. Hu Yan, she grabbed his hand. Ho Yan patted her hand, it's okay. If I can't protect you now, how can I marry you? Tears welled up in Qin Zixuan's eyes. Be careful. The crowd made a circle, and Hu Yan and Wu Jianan stood in the center. Wu Jianan scrutinized Hu Yan. You don't look like a fighter, but I can sense you're dangerous. We were evenly matched in drinking. I know you saw it. Ho Yan nodded, yes, I respect that you don't take advantage. Let's add stakes to this fight. If I lose, Qin Zixuan will try to get to know you. But if I win, your family must keep away from her and refrain from interfering in northern business. Deal Wu Jianan agreed. If I win, she becomes my wife, not just a date. A hint of murderous intent emanated from Wu Jianan. Ho Yan knew this man had killed before and probably more than once. Given his background, it was expected. Agreed, Hu Yan said, raising a cup of wine and handing it to Wu Jianan. Let's drink to seal our duel. Whatever happens, no hard feelings. Cheers Wu Jianan raised his cup. You're a good man. I'll try not to kill you. Thanks Hu Yan replied, raising his cup. Tears streamed down Qin Zixuan's face. She was terrified, her heart clenched with worry. The world wasn't as simple as she had thought. She wanted to tell Hu Yan to leave, to lie and say she liked Wu Jianan more, but she knew he wouldn't believe her. She had already doubted him once before. Biting her lips she tried to stay calm, but her emotions got the better of her, and she found herself moving closer to Hu Yu Yan. Xuan Xuan, come back. It's dangerous. Come back. Come. Quick, come back. Despite her family's calls, Qin Zixuan kept moving forward. The Qin brothers quickly stopped her. Qin San said, Miss, Hu Yan will be fine. Wu Zhonan is not his match. Qin Die added, Miss, I guarantee with my life, Hu Yan will be okay. Qin Zixuan murmured, I'm not trying to stop him. Men do what they must. I'm just afraid. I want to protect him. The brothers thought, love makes even smart women foolish. Miss, this isn't a movie. If Hu Yan can't stop him, you won't have a chance. Qin Er coughed, miss. We won't let anything happen to him. Qin Die and Qin San nodded in agreement. At that moment, Hu Yan and Wu Jianan's cups clinked together with a clear sound, sealing their duel. When Hu Yan and Wu Jianan's glasses clinked together, Qin Zixuan's mind went blank. She stared at Hu Yan, not blinking, as if everything else faded away. Ho Yan and Wu Jianan each downed their beer in one gulp. The crowd, though tense, was also excited. Wu Jianan wasn't foolish, just brazen. He wouldn't start trouble without cause, so this showdown between him and Hu Yan promised to be quite a spectacle. They all hoped Hu Yan would win, because if Wu Jianan did, They'd have no chance at all he had made it clear that he wanted Qin Zixuan as his wife, not just for a trial relationship. The Qin family felt even more conflicted. Qin naturally hoped for Hu Yan's victory, and the others shared similar sentiments. Qin Baoxiang, however, was deep in thought. To him, neither of these men were ideal sons-in-law. As everyone anticipated a quick result, they were taken aback when Wu Zhanan didn't immediately start fighting after finishing his drink. Instead, he clutched his stomach, looking bewildered and pained. Speculations arose among the onlookers. 
Did Hu Yan poison him? That's against the rules, right? Forget the rules. If he did poison him, Wu Zhanan might go on a rampage. Run. Just as some were considering fleeing, Wu Zhanan spoke. Impossible. How did you do that? He picked up the beer bottle Hu Yan had used, placing it against his face. I can't believe it, he muttered, pouring himself another glass of beer. The confused crowd watched as Wu Zhanan poured the beer into the glass, which began to emit faint cracking sounds. Suddenly, with a pop, the glass shattered. Everyone was stunned. Impressive skill, someone exclaimed. Wu Zhanan stared at Hu Yan in disbelief. Why? Ha Yan smiled. Pour another glass yourself. Wu Zhanan, still in disbelief, grabbed another bottle of chilled beer, opened it with a flick of his fingers, eliciting more applause from the audience. Ignoring the cheers, he poured the beer into a new crystal glass. As the cold beer filled the glass, it fogged up from the sudden temperature drop. Wu Zhanan respectfully handed the glass to Hu Yan, who took it and handed it back in the same manner. As soon as the glass returned to Wu Zhanan's hands, his face changed dramatically. After several deep breaths, he raised the glass high, making a circle with it before finally pointing it at Qin Baoxiang. From now on, where the Qin family is present, the Wu family will retreat. The room erupted into murmurs. What? Did I hear that right? How did a simple toast settle this? Not so simple. Didn't you hear him ask why and how? Hu Yan probably poisoned him, warning that while Wu Zhanan might be a great fighter, Hu Yan could kill him without a trace. True. It's a fearsome tactic. No matter how good a fighter, no one can guard against poison. Better not mess with Hu Yan. As the crowd gossiped, their eyes filled with pity for Wu Zhanan and a mix of fear and disdain for Hu Yan. Shut up. Anyone else talks? I'll break their teeth. Wu Zhanan's command silenced the room. He turned to the Qun family. As long as Hu Yan remains accepted by the Qun family, the Wu family will avoid them. But if he is replaced, all bets are off, and I will return. Then he downed his glass in one go. Those who suspected poison were stunned. Why drink it if it's poisoned? Wu Zhanan held the empty glass with both hands, bowing to Hu Yan. Ho Yan? Thank you for sparing me. I owe you a great debt. If you ever need anything, I won't refuse. He handed Hu Yan a business card and bowed again before leaving. Not seeing you off, Hu Yan returned the gesture. Walking away, Wu Zhonan called his father. Dad, I failed. I can't beat him. Yes, he could kill me easily. From now on, we avoid the Qin family. I don't care, I promised. Wu Zhonan's voice faded as he walked away, leaving the crowd in turmoil. His candid confession to his father cleared Hu Yan of any poison allegations. Qian Zixuan rushed into Hu Yan's arms, sobbing uncontrollably. It's okay, it's over. See, I'm fine Hu Yan reassured her, patting her back gently. Qian Zixuan's words about not interfering in men's affairs and wanting to shield him had touched Hu Yan deeply. He loved her all the more for it. Despite Hu Yan's reassurances, Qian Zixuan couldn't stop crying. Eventually Hua Xiaoqiang approached. Hey Qian Zixuan, stop hogging the spotlight with your tears. We're all still in shock here. How did that brute just leave? Hu Yan, what did you do? Qin Zixuan, finally calming down, glared at Hua Xiaoqiang before sitting back down, her eyes never leaving Hu Yan, her smile returning. Hu Yan glanced at Hua Xiaoqiang. It's almost nine. Aren't you curious about our bet results? Well, Hua Xiaoqiang said, If Wu Zhanan is scared of you, I won't fight over Qin Zixuan either. I withdraw from the contest. Everyone laughed, and several others also announced their withdrawal. Hu Yan raised a toast. Here's to you all. Decide for yourselves. He handed Hua Shuk Yang the beer Wu Zhanan had opened, instructing him to pour a glass. Though puzzled, Hua Shuk Yang complied. Give it to me, Hu Yan said, taking the glass and then handing it back. When Hua Shuk Yang held the glass again, his face mirrored Wu Zhanan's shock. It's warm. Yes, Hu Yan nodded. If it were Lu Qian, it'd be hot. With that, he returned to Qian Zixuan who clung to his arm. Hua Xiaoqiang remained baffled. Is Hu Yan a magician? But Wu Zhanan isn't stupid enough to be scared by a magician. Qin Die approached, tapping Hua Xiaoqiang's glass. With a ting the glass shattered, spilling beer over Hua Xiaoqiang's pants. Damn. The Qun family really is full of surprises. Can you find me a bodyguard like you? Qin Die shook his head. I can't beat Wu Zhanan, nor can I shatter a glass. It's all Hu Yan's doing. The Qin brothers then retreated. Hua Xiaoqiang and the others finally understood. 
Hu Yan had shattered Wu Zhanan's glass with internal energy and heated his beer, proving his superior skill. Though Wu Zhanan told his father Hu Yan could kill him easily, it was an exaggeration. Hu Yan might have narrowly won, given his lack of combat experience compared to Wu Zhanan. As Qian Zixuan leaned on Hu Yan, someone reminded the crowd, Hey, it's 9 o'clock. Let's see the results. Hua Xiaoqiang checked his phone. Damn. I knew my luck was good. I won over 6 million. Even if I can't compete for Qin Zixuan, it was worth coming. The room buzzed with excitement. Really? Let me see. Wow. What luck. I thought it was a scam. Someone actually wins the jackpot. Amid the commotion, Hua Xiaoqiang approached Hu Yan. Hu Yan, we're brothers now, so I won't hold back. Pay up. Hu Yan smiled, recognizing Hua Xiaoqiang's gesture to bond. Who said you've won? Come on, you're lucky in love. Losing a bit here isn't so bad. I hit the jackpot. You can't beat that. Why not Hu Yan handed him his phone? Damn Hua Xiaoqiang was stunned. Hu Yan not only won five first prizes but also dozens of second and third prizes. Having predicted the winning numbers, Hu Yan's winnings totaled over 40 million, covering taxes and Hua Xiaoqiang's share. Were you just here to help me pay taxes? Hua Xiaoqiang laughed. You win. You're the luckiest guy I know. Qin Zixuan is lucky to have you. Qin Zixuan beamed, leaning on Hu Yan's shoulder. Oh, Hu Yan Hua Xiaoqiang added. If you invest in any projects, think of me. He handed Hu Yan a business card. Hu Yan nodded, pleased to have made a friend without creating enemies. Hu Yan naturally agreed to Hua Xiaoqiang's friendly request without hesitation. Hua Xiaoqiang, being quite the sociable character, threw an arm around Hu Yan's shoulder, leaving Qin Zixuan to fume with indignation. Realizing he might have overstepped, Hua Xiaoqiang quickly addressed Qin Zixuan, Miss Qin, you and Hu Yan have plenty of time together in the future. Let's not flaunt it too much now. Things aren't settled yet, and we don't want to incite others' displeasure. Qin Zixuan understood. Her earlier display of affection was perhaps a bit too public. Hua Xiaoqiang was, in fact, trying to smooth things over and prevent further animosity towards Hu Yan and the Qin family. She glanced around and saw the remaining contenders looking at Hu Yan with visible resentment. The outsiders were already planning to withdraw, recognizing that antagonizing Hu Yan now allied with Wu Zhanan was unwise. They didn't want to provoke Wu Zhanan. Soon enough, most guests took their leave, leaving only the three candidates chosen by Tianhai's major shareholders. These three were in a unique position, groomed by Tianhai since childhood and determined to win Qin Zixuan's hand. These men differed from Qin Xu and Qin Tian, in that they were not aligned with the Qin family but were instead direct protégés of the shareholders. At crucial moments, while Qin Xu and Qin Tian Tian might prioritize the Qin family's interests, these men might not. A pot-bellied elder approached, smiling cunningly. Brother Qin, this Hu Yan seems promising, but shouldn't we clarify your son-in-law criteria? Qin Daoxiang had established strict criteria to ward off unwanted suitors. He coughed lightly, Hu Yan, I haven't mentioned this before. But besides needing to be well matched in status, anyone who wants to marry into the Qin family must become part of it. What Hu Yan was stunned. Not just him, but Qin Zixuan was also shocked. Dad, what era do you think this is? How could you keep this a secret? Qin Baoxiang nodded toward the elder. Ask your uncle Wang. Wang Jiangguo cleared his throat. Back when we built Tianhai with your father, we established a plan to protect our legacy. Your father, a sharp mind, suggested that since he wouldn't have more children, we needed to secure the company's future. At that time, patriarchal thinking was dominant. Wang Jiangguo and the other shareholders didn't want their hard work to benefit outsiders. They struck a deal with Qin Baoxiang if he couldn't produce a male heir, Tianhai would be handed over to the shareholder's offspring, with Qin Baoxiang compensated for his shares. Qin Baoxiang, a true businessman, refused to see his company fall into others' hands. They proposed that any suitor must either be of equal status or become part of the Qin family relinquishing rights to control Tianhai but still supporting its operations under Qin Zixuan's leadership. Wang Jiangguo summarized, Hu Yan, you've surpassed outside competitors, but now you must join the family or build your own business empire in three years. Otherwise, you must marry in and follow our rules. Qin Zixuan looked at Hu Yan apologetically. I had no idea about this. Hu Yan thought for a moment. So, my choices are to join the Qin family or catch up with Tianhai within three years. Wang Jiangguo raised three fingers. Three years to create a comparable business empire or marry in. This was an impossible dilemma. 
creating a billion-dollar company in three years was nearly unattainable without a groundbreaking technological breakthrough. Qian Zixuan gripped Hu Yan's hand. Why should you decide my future? If I want to marry Hu Yan, I will. If not, I won't marry at all. Wang Jiangguo squinted, smiling. Miss Qian, if you don't marry your family line ends, and the company falls to others. Stunned, Qin Zixuan realized that despite her efforts, she might still lose her family's legacy. But she couldn't marry someone she didn't love just to maintain the family line. Qin En, visibly shaking with anger, grabbed his wife. Let's go. I can't stand this, and left the room. Qin Zixuan, biting her lip, looked at Hu Yan. She had thought their toughest challenges were over, but now it seemed their path was still blocked. She didn't want to pressure Hu Yan into accepting such an unfair demand. Taking a deep breath, she declared, You think you can take my family's legacy? Dream on. If I don't marry I can still have children. Grabbing Hu Yan's hand, she stormed out, shouting, Let's go make a baby. Ha Yan, confused but amused, followed. Even Qin Baoxiang didn't stop them. Once outside, in the cold autumn night, Qin Zixuan aimlessly led Hu Yan toward an artificial lake, its surface covered in mist. Suddenly she turned and hugged him. I'm sorry. Ho Yan held her tightly. You have nothing to be sorry for. You've done so much already. After a moment of silence, Qin Zixuan pushed back, looking at him intensely. Mary Qian Xiao Er, She really likes you. Are you serious? Just because she likes me Hu Yan laughed. A lot of people like me. Should I marry them all? Qin Zixuan giggled, playfully punching his arm. You wish. She grew serious. I'm not joking. Xiao R is my best friend, and her family likes you. It's the best option. Ho Yan, staring at the lake, said, I'm thinking about how to build a business in three years. It's hard. But if we don't try, we'll never know. Moved, Qin Zixuan leaned into him. Meeting you is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Same here. People. As the temperature dropped, she tightened her grip. Let's give it three years. If we can't do it, you can marry Xiao Er. And you. I'll be your mistress, she said, burying her head in his chest. That's not fair. Xiao R should be the mistress. With a playful twist, she pinched his side. I'm kidding. I won't let you think about her when you're with me. All right, whatever you say. Let's go back, she sighed, pulling him along. As they returned to the hotel, Qin Zixuan stopped at Hu Yan's room. Rest well. Hao Yan hesitated. Weren't we going to? Blushing, she fled down the hall. Women's words can't be trusted Hu Yan muttered, resigned, as he returned to his room alone. When Qin Zixuan defiantly declared, I won't marry. Who says I can't have children without getting married and dragged Hu Yan away, saying, let's go make a baby, when Ling Ji immediately stood up to follow them. However, Qin Baoxiang firmly said, sit down. When Ling Ji obediently sat back down, Wang Jiangguo shook his head and sighed. This is a mess. Brother Qin, I'm sorry for all this trouble. Qin Baoxiang, seemingly unbothered, replied, It's fine. It's all for Tianhai. I trust that Zixuan will handle her feelings properly. That's for the best Wang Jiangguo said, before leaving with his entourage. Left alone with his family. When Lingji pulled out her phone to call Qin Zixuan, Qin Baoxiang stopped her again. Don't disturb them. When Lingji, her eyes welling up with tears, protested, She's your daughter. Aren't you afraid she might do something she'll regret for the rest of her life? Qin Baoxiang's eyes twitched. If she does, she's not fit to be my daughter or to take over Tianhai. Let's go home. He stood up and walked out. Wen Lingji had no choice but to follow. The Qin brothers followed at a distance, ensuring their safety. With his health just beginning to improve, Qin Baoxiang went to bed shortly after they got home and slept soundly. Wen Lingji, however, sat by the window, anxiously watching the gate. She couldn't go against Qin Baoxiang's wishes by calling their daughter. Although she knew waiting like this was pointless, what else could she do? In her long wait, Wen Lingji contemplated that if her daughter did something drastic, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Giving the best of herself to the person she loves, could that really be a mistake? She glanced at the peacefully sleeping Qin Baoxiang and sighed. As a father, he always thought differently. However, his calm sleep reassured her that nothing terrible would happen. A man who could manage a vast company was adept at controlling people, even his daughter. This realization saddened her. When Lingji reflected on her daughter's childhood, her smile alternating between joy and sorrow. Time passed slowly. When the gate finally opened, Wen Lingji quickly threw on a coat and went downstairs. As Qin Zixuan entered, she turned on the living room light. You're back. 
Wah! Qian Zixuan nodded. I didn't want you to wait all night. Wen Lingji sighed, realizing that in some ways, her daughter had inherited her father's keen insight. Wash up and get some sleep. Qin Zixuan paused. Aren't you going to ask what happened? Your father trusts his judgment. If he's sleeping soundly, it means you didn't do anything rash when Lingji muttered, you think you're the monkey king, but you can never escape Buddha's palm. She then went upstairs, leaving Qin Zixuan puzzled. For the first time she felt as though she had disappointed her mother by doing nothing. The next morning, Hu Yan arrived early. Regardless of the situation he wouldn't neglect Hu In Baoxiang's treatment. Qin Baoxiang greeted him as if nothing awkward had happened the previous day. Good morning, Hu Yan. Good morning, Chairman. Qin Baoxiang gestured for him to sit. Make yourself at home. Even if you can't be my son-in-law, you're still close to my father. Ho Yan nodded and suggested that Qin Baoxiang take a walk in the garden to relax his muscles before starting his treatment. After the session, Qin Zixuan joined them for breakfast. During the meal, Wen Lingji couldn't help but ask, What's your plan? Qin Baoxiang shot her a disapproving look, but Wen Lingji needed to know. Ho Yan answered candidly, I'll do my best to achieve success within three years. If I fail, I'll accept whatever comes. Wen Lingji nodded. Your resolve honors Zixuan's feelings. Qin Baoxiang agreed. Yes, it's a difficult position, balancing between love and family duty. The old man was less patient, throwing down his chopsticks in frustration. This is all your fault. Fearing an argument, the old lady quickly handed him back the chopsticks. Qin Baoxiang sincerely apologetic said dad, I have my reasons. Please understand. What reasons? You have enough wealth to last generations. Is this just about pride? Qin Baoxiang sighed. In the early days of the company we made some questionable deals. Seeing the old man about to explode he quickly added, Dad, I regret it deeply. But hear me out please. The old man, still fuming, remained silent. Qin Baoxiang continued. Those deals are why we're in this bind. Only Wang Jiangguo and the other two original shareholders know. Do you know why your daughter-in-law lost her second pregnancy and couldn't have more children? Or why Zixuan has always had bodyguards? And why Qin Da has been secretly protecting you? The old man was speechless. Are you saying they did this? Qin Baoxiang turned to Hu Yan. You're a skilled physician. What caused my condition? Ho Yan thought for a moment. It seems to be a rare poison. Though the poison was neutralized, your body's functions deteriorated. Qin Baoxiang slapped his thigh. Exactly. And that's just one of the things they've done. Remember this as a story, Hu Yan. Don't follow in my footsteps. I've suffered enough. Ho Yan had already suspected as much. The Kyung family's vault contained many contraband items, which Qin Baoxiang had hinted at. In the early days when funding was tight and connections were few, Qin Baoxiang and his partners resorted to smuggling. Afterward, their bond seemed unbreakable. But as Tianhai grew, so did their greed. When Qin Baoxiang realized he'd been poisoned and his wife miscarried, he saw the truth. Everyone now understood. So, if we remain in charge of Tianhai, they'll hold back. But if we lose control, they'll become even more ruthless. Qin Baoxiang nodded. Exactly. They want power and status. Once they have it they'll eliminate us as a threat. After a long silence the old man demanded, and you haven't retaliated. Their sons all have congenital issues. Was that you? Qin Baoxiang lowered his head, confirming it. Ho Yan felt a chill. The Qin family's story was more twisted than he'd imagined. He'd heard rumors about the other shareholders' children having severe issues. Now it made sense. The old man shook his head. What goes around comes around. They all sat in silence. Qin Baoxiang sighed. I've made many mistakes and you've all suffered because of me. Taking Wen Lingji's hand, he continued. I'm not as good as people think. I've had other women and children. This revelation left the old man shaking with rage. Even when Lingji was devastated. It's true. And those boys were born with severe issues. I was more ruthless than them. That's why I have no sons now. Ho Yan shivered. Qin Baoxiang's sacrifices for Tianhai were enormous. I'll do everything to catch up with Tianhai, Hu Yan vowed. Otherwise, I'm not worthy of Zixuan. Qin Baoxiang smiled. Hu Yan, don't misunderstand. You and Zixuan clearly care for each other. I'm not blind. He paused. But if you love her, agree to become my son-in-law. This surprised everyone. Let me finish. I mean only in name to appease appearances. Once the crisis is over, you'll be a son-in-law in name only. Deal. Hu Yan was unsure, but Qin Zixuan firmly said, absolutely not.
or from the extreme conditions Qin Zixuan imposed for choosing a husband, it was evident that Qin Baoxiang, despite his flaws, valued his promises highly. As he mentioned, integrity is essential for a businessman. This meant that whatever he promised Hu Yan would likely be fulfilled. When Qin Zixuan firmly said, absolutely not Qin Baoxiang's expression changed slightly, but he didn't glance at her. Instead, he looked at Hu Yan. That's right, Zixuan is thinking of you, and it's best not to agree hastily. My intention in asking you to agree is to draw the attention of those with ulterior motives towards you, giving me time to handle some hidden threats. In Hu Yan's mind, his future father-in-law was indeed a formidable figure. Previously, he had exposed his own scars to make his family realize how much he had sacrificed for them. Now, he was straightforwardly laying out the pros and cons for Hu Yan. The implication was clear I've told you the ugly truth up front. If you agree, you'll face those ruthless people. If you don't, you'd better build a company as successful as Tianhai within three years. Agreeing meant gaining a formal title, albeit as an in-law. The downside was dealing with those who had ambitions for Tianhai and Zixuan. The title was superficial, and those aiming for Tianhai and Zixuan would still pose a threat. Moreover, being an in-law would bring its own set of troubles. Suddenly, Qin Zixuan asked Hu Yan, Have you finished eating? If so, let's go for a walk. Ho Yan nodded. I'm done eating but let's not go for a walk just yet. He then looked at Qin Baxiang and said, I agree. A smile spread across Qin Baxiang's face. I knew you were trustworthy, a good lad to depend on initially, Qin Baxiang hadn't thought highly of Hu Yan due to his modest background in education. But after Hu Yan's second treatment, Qin Baoxiang saw a new strategy that could be even more effective than finding a suitable son-in-law using Hu Yan as a distraction while he made his moves in secret. Qin Baoxiang believed that if he recovered fully and even exceeded his peers in health as Hu Yan suggested, he could turn the tide himself. He trusted his experience to elevate Tianhai to new heights without relying on anyone else. After all, alliances were risky and could backfire. This way Tianhai would always remain under Qin family's control. Even if Hu Yan's children inherited the company, they would still carry half of the Qun family's bloodline. At this point, Qin Zixuan tugged on Hu Yan's sleeve. No. Hu Yan saw the anger in her eyes and couldn't help but smile. I've already agreed. What's the problem? I said no. And I mean it Qin Zixuan bit her lip. Didn't you hear what my father just said? Do you know what you're up against? Ho Yan nodded. I do. But if I don't face it who will? it would either be your father or you. So it's better that I handle it. At least I know medicine, so poisoning me won't be easy. I also know martial arts so I'm not afraid of physical threats. Seeing Hu Yan's nonchalant smile, Qin Zixuan realized he was even more devoted to her than she had imagined. You are so foolish. Am I Hu Yan scratched his head? Maybe. When I saw those wealthy heirs and their lifestyles, I vowed to protect you. If I'm going to protect you, I must also protect your family. They are part of you. So, let me be foolish. Qin Baoxiang patted King Zixuan on the shoulder, but she shrugged him off. He felt a bit awkward, thinking, indeed daughters tend to side with outsiders. He 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 chuckled awkwardly. I will ensure Hu Yan's protection. From now on he's family. I wouldn't let anything happen to him. Qin Zixuan coldly replied, are you treating him as family or bait? You know the answer. Qin Baoxiang remained unflustered, smiling, both. If he were my son, I'd do the same. For the family's future, everyone must make sacrifices. Even you, as a girl, are doing everything you can for this family. Qin Baoxiang's words left Qin Zixuan speechless. Exactly Hu Yan said. Since I'm to be part of this family, I should help with its burdens. Good. It's settled then Qin Baoxiang raised his teacup. I toast to you as my future son-in-law. Wait Hu Yan interjected. I have two conditions. Hear me out first. Qin Baoxiang nodded. Go ahead. Hu Yan stated, first, while I'm your nominal son-in-law, I'll follow your rules. But if Zixuan and I marry, our children can inherit the Qin family business, but I don't want any shares. Second, our children must carry my surname Hu, not Qin. Qin Baoxiang was taken aback, expecting harsher demands. These were straightforward. If that's your wish, I agree he raised his teacup again, visibly relieved. Hu Yan clinked his cup with Qin Baoxiang's, and they both took a sip. Everyone else watched in disbelief, feeling as if they were witnessing a surreal drama. Later, Qin Zixuan took Hu Yan to the artificial lake by Jingshan Villa. Seeing the stone tablet with the words Jingjian Lake Hu Yan learned the lake's name. 
King Zixuan explained that the place was named after a legendary immortal who ascended here, leaving behind a lake. It was once a small pond, transformed into this picturesque site, and the immortal story was likely a marketing ploy. The lake's daytime charm differed from its nighttime mystique. During the day it reflected a serene yet melancholic beauty, with floating leaves adding a touch of earthly transience. Suddenly, Qin Zixuan asked, Why are you so foolish? Hu Yan scratched his head. Because I empathize with others he knew her reference to foolishness meant his conditions to Qin Bei Oxiang. If I were a billionaire heir, I might doubt if my girlfriend loves me for my money. By stating those conditions, I wanted to ease our minds. Qin Zixuan shook her head. I've never thought that way. I believe you Hu Yan said. Also, my second reason might sound silly. I think three years is short, but given enough time I can build a company that rivals Tianhai. I don't need your family's wealth, all I want is you. Qin Zixuan was deeply moved by his calm declaration, believing in his ambitious dream. Without realizing she nestled closer to him. My father. I never understood him growing up. Now. I'm even more confused. He's a capable businessman Hu Yan said. Qin Zixuan opened her phone, showing Hu Yan a news article Qin Baoxiang had released. Tianhai chairman Qin Baoxiang announces daughter's fiancé is Jiang Cheng Pawn Shop's senior appraiser and marketing manager, Hu Yan. If no one surpasses Hu Yan in all aspects within three years, Hu Yan will become Qin family's son-in-law. The article also mentioned the stipulations about not owning private shares and children bearing the Qin surname. Despite this, most online comments expressed admiration, given Qin Zixuan's beauty exceeding that of top celebrities. However, some sensed an underlying scheme. Three years to surpass Hu Yan? Isn't this just a way to attract better suitors? Seems like a publicity stunt to lure more qualified prospects. Becoming an in-law under such conditions is harsh. But seeing her beauty, I'd agree. It says if one matches the wealth, in-law status can be avoided. Ulterior motives. Qin Zixuan asked Hu Yan, is it worth it? She looked up at him with her enchanting face. I can't imagine how we'll face your parents when they find out. Hu Yan reassured her. Leave it to me. I want to bear the storm so you can be a happy housewife. Qin Zixuan blushed, dreaming of a future together. But you'll be busy having and raising our children Hu Yan added. Her smile vanished, and she huffed, why don't you marry a so then? Hu Yan, appearing to seriously consider it, said, if there's a so as beautiful as you maybe. As soon as Hu Yan answered the phone, he heard Yang Yajun's voice. Yan Yan, what have you been busy with lately? I'm at Xuan Xuan's place, celebrating the chairman's birthday Hu Yan replied, not intending to hide anything. We are your parents. You don't need to report every little thing, but for significant matters, you should let us know Yang Yajun said. Then, Hu Feng Chun's voice interrupted, sounding annoyed. Why are you beating around the bush with him? Just ask directly. Next, Hu Yan heard his father's gruff voice. Ho Yan, our surname is Hu because your grandfather was Hu, and his father was Hu. Let me ask you, what will your future child's surname be? Ho, of course. Why do you ask? Ho Feng Chun, initially furious, was taken aback by Hu Yan's response. He then said, I've been hearing rumors that you're becoming alive and son-in-law for the Qin family, and that your future children will take their surname. Ho Yan reassured Dad, I promise your grandchildren will carry our surname. As for what others say, how can I control that? Good, now talk to your mother. Yang Yajun came back on the line. The weather is getting colder wear more clothes. It's best if you can marry Xuan Xuan and bring her into our family. If not, we don't want to lose a son. I understand mom. You and dad take care too after saying that? Hu Yan hung up the phone. Looking at Qian Zixuan, Hu Yan said, You don't mind, do you? Qin Zixuan nodded, of course not. You've done enough already. That's good to hear. Trust me, I'll handle everything in the future. Qin Zixuan nodded in agreement. Time flew by when the two lovers were together. When they realized they were hungry, it was already dark. After dinner at the hotel, Qin Zixuan, afraid Hu Yan might ask her to stay, went straight home. Three days passed quickly. Qin Baoxiang's health had significantly improved. Hu Yan prescribed a few more herbal remedies to strengthen his constitution, believing he would soon be as healthy as a normal person. However, Hu Yan did not mention the method to bring Qin Baoxiang to his peak condition, and Qin Baoxiang did not ask. During this time, the Qin family treated Hu Yan exceptionally well, seemingly feeling indebted to him. But Hu Yan knew this was only on the surface. He was aware that Qin Baoxiang was using him, but he didn't mind. 
Despite Qiu and Baoxiang's cunning, he was still an ordinary person. Ho Yan, with his altered vision, was no longer ordinary. Ho Yan believed that with absolute power, all schemes and plots would be futile. Hu Yan had tried several times to look into Qin Baoxiang's past. Surprisingly, his usually infallible ability failed on Qin Baoxiang. He concluded that to trace someone's origins, the person must be authentic and Qin Baoxiang's facade was too thick to penetrate. Analyzing Qin Baoxiang's blood, Hu Yan found a substance called decayed corpse bug excrement a product of a type of gu poison. Initially, it made the person feel energetic, but over time, it accumulated in the bloodstream, affecting circulation. Modern medicine couldn't detect it because it was broken down into harmless inorganic substances. Tracing the origins of this gu poison, Hu Yan discovered glimpses of Qin Baoxiang's past. Aside from Wen Lingji, Qin Zixuan's mother, Qin Baoxiang had more than two other women. The yu poison was given to him by a mysterious woman. Thus, Hu Yan realized that Qin Baoxiang was an enigma, his words often misleading. He wouldn't be surprised if more sons appeared once everything settled. Three days later, Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan returned to Tianhai. While Qin Baoxiang might have used Hu Yan as a decoy, Qin Zixuan saw things differently. To her, Hu Yan had been her chosen partner since the announcement of their engagement. Even on their way back, Qin Zixuan clung tightly to Hu Yan, fearing someone might snatch him away upon their return to Jiangqing. Understanding her feelings, Hu Yan did his best to be supportive, avoiding any inappropriate comments. Both treasured their time together, making the long highway journey feel unusually short. They wished the road would stretch endlessly, allowing them to stay entwined forever. However, before they knew it, they were back in Jiangqing. Qin Zixuan glared at Qin San. Why are you driving so fast? Caught off guard, Qin San protested, miss. This is slower than our trip here by half an hour. Ho Yan, sensing Qin Zixuan's sentiments, teased her, shall we walk back? It's only 30 kilometers. We might not reach home by dark. Though it was her first love, Qin Zixuan blushed, realizing Hu Yan had guessed her thoughts. Still, she couldn't bring herself to move away from him, muttering, why rush back? We rarely get to rest for a few days. Once back, I need to start building a company that surpasses Tianhai. I need to earn the right to marry you. I can't really become alive in son-in-law, can I? Holding Hu Yan's hand, Qin Zixuan gazed out at the desolate scenery, lost in thought. Finally arriving at Tianhai Garden, Hu Yan joked about visiting Qin Zixuan's place, which was right above his. Qin Zixuan, blushing, refused. She knew some things would inevitably happen if not declined in advance. She wasn't ready, perhaps due to her upbringing. Even though she had decided that Hu Yan was her only choice, she wanted to wait until after they received everyone's blessings. Hu Yan didn't push. After parting with Qin Zixuan, he returned to his dorm. Back in his room, Hu Yan found it covered in dust, indicating Zhao Peng hadn't been around. After being away for a few days, Hu Yan called Zhao Peng. Hey Zhao, are you living with Fun Lai now? Zhao Peng's familiar voice came through. Hey, Hu Yan, it's a bit noisy here. Let's talk when we meet. Ho Yan ended the call, guessing Zhao Peng was with Feng Li. Given their history, it was hard for Zhao Peng to end things with her abruptly. Tired from the journey, Hu Yan took a nap. When he woke up, Zhao Peng had returned. Hu Yan. How did things go at the Qum family? Ho Yan replied, not as expected. I'm now Tianhai's prospective son-in-law, but it's an in-law arrangement. Zhao Peng was stunned thinking Hu Yan was joking. When he realized Hu Yan was serious, he said, It's okay. True love is worth any sacrifice. I get it. Hu Yan nodded, not explaining further. The complexities were best kept secret to prevent jeopardizing Qin's plan. And how are things with Feng Li? Lighting a cigarette, Zhao Peng said, I went to see her so-called uncle. Turns out he's not. Hu Yan understood without needing more explanation. So, what are you going to do? Zhao Peng took a deep drag, exhaling a thick cloud. What can I do? It's true love, right? If you can become alive in son-in-law, what's my problem? Besides, who doesn't have a past? Ho Yan laughed, patting Zhao Peng's shoulder. Brother, once you've made a choice, don't regret it. Yet yeah, Zhao Peng sighed, lighting another cigarette. When I saw that greasy old man I wanted to delete her contact. But then, I spent the whole night smoking in my room. Hu Yan nodded. You never know unless you walk the path. Zhao Peng nodded, true. But whenever I'm with her, I can't stop thinking of that old man's face. If this keeps up, I'll be impotent. Seeing regular advice wouldn't work, Hu Yan teased, wow, you've scored a home run already. Zhao Peng laughed. Get lost. 
I'm just venting. Ho Yan shook his head. What's the problem? You're a man, not at a loss here. No one said you have to marry. Just take it as it comes. Zhao Peng wanted to smoke more but realized he'd finished his cigarette. Lighting another, he said. I used to despise those who grovel for love. I'd think, if it were me, I'd have dumped her ages ago. But now I understand, it's not easy. No one understood Zhao Peng better than Hu Yan. He was willing to do anything for a stable life, despite their brotherly bond. Ho Yan couldn't give him the feeling of home that Feng Li did, despite her flaws. At a loss for words, Hu Yan suggested, want to go for a drink. Sure Zhao Peng said, stubbing out his cigarette. As they headed to the elevator, Zhao Peng asked, aren't you calling Qin Zixuan? Ho Yan, despite being in the lovey-dovey phase with Qin Zixuan, thought for a moment and said, nah, let's not involve her in our drinking. Zhao Peng understood, patting Hu Yan's shoulder as they entered the elevator. He knew Hu Yan didn't want to embarrass himself if he got too drunk. Soon, they arrived at a hot pot restaurant. Just as they sat down, Zhao Peng's phone rang. It was obviously Feng Li. Ho Yan just got back. We're having a drink, so I won't be back tonight. A while later, Zhao Peng hung up. She mad Hu Yan asked. No, she's probably relieved. Lately she's been asking what you're up to, why we're not together. If I didn't know you, I'd suspect something between you two. Seriously? With that look on your face there's no way Hu Yan chuckled. Zhao Peng knew that Hu Yan was surrounded by top beauties, so there was no way he had anything to do with Feng Li. I just find it strange. Not only Feng Li, but even my business partner Wang Dong's wife, Wu Yu and Yuan, talks about you all the time. She keeps asking when you're coming, and if we can all have a meal together when you're not busy. Ho Yan shook his head with a smile. I've told you before, you might not like to hear it, so it's better left unsaid. Old Hugh, that's not fair. We're close enough that there's no need for secrets. Besides, you have this annoying habit of stopping halfway through your sentences, which is really frustrating. Don't be so coy. Zhao Pun wasn't angry this was how close friends talked. All right. But you might get upset after I tell you. Seeing that Zhao Peng was unmoved, Hu Yan continued, it's simple. They think I'm quite capable. By staying on good terms with me, they believe they might open up many money-making opportunities. Like you, selling paintings for profit who wouldn't be envious. Zhao Peng thought about it and realized it made sense. The shop's net profit was around 30,000 yuan a month. After splitting it, each of them earned less than 15,000 yuan monthly. However, Hu Yan's paintings were now all pre-ordered. Customers specified the dimensions and waited for Hu Yan to find the time to paint. Even so, Zhao Ping already had tens of thousands of yuan in advance payments. There were orders lined up for half a year. This way Hu Yan easily made over 100,000 yuan a month, even after insisting on splitting the profits evenly with Zhao Ping. If we're talking about this, I really should thank you. Without you, I wouldn't have had the chance to start my own business and earn so much each month. Sometimes I feel like I'm being kept by you. Ho Yan shuddered. Gross. Don't disgust me. Zhao Peng laughed and shook his head. I'm serious. I don't have many relatives, and you're the closest thing I have to family. Without your help, I wouldn't have been able to buy a house. And if I hadn't bought a house, Feng Li probably wouldn't be with me now. Ho Yan was at a loss for words. Just as he expected, Zhao Peng had indeed bought a house for Feng Li. Although it was an off-plan property with a two-year wait, Zhao Peng ended up paying the mortgage on his own due to his higher earnings. No worries. Don't overthink it Hu Yan patted Zhao Peng, who was feeling a bit inferior. Since we're brothers, I'll give you some advice life short, so enjoy it while you can. If you're happy now no matter the cost it's worth it. Ho Yan paused and looked Zhao Peng in the eyes, but if you ever feel it's not worth it, I suggest you let go. Zhao Peng lit another cigarette, took a deep drag and finally nodded. He understood what Hu Yan meant. Whether it was Wu Yu and Yuan or Feng Li, there was an element of self-interest in their friendships and love. This impurity meant it wouldn't last long. As they chatted, the dishes they ordered started to arrive. A traditional northern hot pot with lamb and sauerkraut pork. The two had just opened a bottle of Baiju when Hu Yan's phone rang. Its old Qin Hu Yan's eyes lit up. Zhao Peng, who was as close as a brother, could see Hu Yan's genuine happiness and was glad for him, regardless of any awkward situation Hu Yan might be facing. At least to Zhao Peng, the relationship between Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan was pure. That was a rare gem in today's world. Qin Zixuan's voice, usually cold, sounded lazy and playful. Hu Yan, where did you go? I knocked on your door but no one answered. I took a nap and got hungry when I woke up. 
Zhao Peng wanted to drink, so we came out. I didn't want to disturb you in case you were still sleeping and didn't want to deal with your morning grumpiness. Zhao Peng watched, amazed at how Hu Yan had matured since they graduated from university together, while he himself felt stunted in comparison. Ho Yan's kind lie made Zhao Peng admire him greatly, giving him a thumbs up. Qin Zixuan wasn't fooled all right, say what you need to say. Are you done? Nothing escapes you, my lady. We're almost done. We're at the hot pot place, a hundred meters east of the neighborhood gate. Okay. I'll be there soon. Zhao Peng and Hu Yan didn't touch the food, starting instead with a bottle of beer each. Before long, Qin Zixuan arrived, followed by Qin San and two young men. Long time no see, old Qin Zhao Peng greeted Qin Zixuan warmly. Long time no see Qin Zixuan wore slim-fitting light jeans, a knitted top, and a loose long sweater. She also had a silk scarf to avoid any wardrobe mishaps and wore new comfortable sneakers. Ho Yan, who had never seen Qin Zixuan in this style, couldn't help but glance a few more times. Qin Zixuan blushed slightly, what are you looking at? Ho Yan scratched his head, you look great. You really know how to dress, but mainly, you're just beautiful. Qin Zixuan smiled, clearly pleased by Hu Yan's compliment. After taking off her sweater, she looked at Qin San and the others, you guys sit at the next table. She then explained to Hu Yan, it's too cold outside, so I invited them to join us for dinner. Ho Yan nodded and looked at Qin San, sit with us, we're all friends here. Qin San quickly shook his head, no thanks. We'd prefer to eat peacefully. After what happened last time, I don't want to get caught in the crossfire again he insisted on sitting at the next table. Hu Yan didn't press further and nodded. Old Qin, see if there's anything you like and order it. King Zixuan looked at the menu and said, the sauerkraut broth is best with dried shrimp and dried crab for the best flavor she called the waiter to add these items. Knowing they might not have many chances to be together in the future, Qin Zixuan was especially close to Hu Yan, sitting near and continuously serving him food. She even ordered beer, seemingly intent on drinking to her heart's content. Zhao Peng kept signaling to Hu Yan brother. Here's your chance he knew Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan were engaged but had only held hands and hugged so far. Ho Yan shook his head, signaling, don't worry about it. Qin Zixuan raised her glass, Zhao Peng, how's business? Not bad. After a toast, Zhao Peng said, I don't know what's up with Wu Yu and Yu and Yuan. Whenever there's socializing she charges it to the store. For gifts she uses store items claiming it's product promotion. But I think she's just trying to make amends for past issues. This was the first time Zhao Peng mentioned this in front of Qin Zixuan. Unexpectedly, Qin Zixuan pondered for a moment and said, You should keep records and have Wu Yu and Yuan sign for everything. Why Zhao Peng was puzzled, could there be a problem? I hope I'm overthinking it. But just in case, it's best to do so Qin Zixuan advised. As someone who studied history you might not know but in business everything needs to be documented. Using company assets without proof of consent is illegal. Really Zhao Peng was surprised. Qin Zixuan asked, does Wu Yu Nuan always attend these social gatherings? Zhao Peng thought, she used to, but hasn't for a long time. She says frequent drinking is bad for her skin, and she wants to have a baby. Qin Zixuan nodded, from now on, for any company social events, make sure she signs off. Your actions could be seen as embezzlement. Oh, oh Zhao Peng nodded repeatedly. However, Hu Yan, knowing Zhao Peng well, shook his head. Clearly Zhao Peng hadn't fully grasped it. He thought he was helping out, but if the other party had ulterior motives, Zhao Peng would suffer. Zhao Peng. Old Qin is looking out for you. You should listen to her. Zhao Peng nodded, raised his glass, and said, Let's drink and relax, no more unpleasant topics. It was clear Zhao Peng hadn't taken their words to heart. Outside, the cold wind howled, but the hot pot restaurant was warm and bustling. After a few drinks, Qin Zixuan's fair face flushed like a peach blossom. Zhao Peng, having socialized a lot recently, could hold his liquor better. After a bottle of Baiju and several beers with Hu Yan he was still standing. In the past he would have been down by now. However, his speech was becoming slurred. Old Hu. I really envy you two, a perfect match, so talented and beautiful together. Unlike me. Never mind, let's not talk about unhappy things. Drink. Hu Yan and Qin Zixuan had another toast with him. Hao Yan looked at Zhao Peng and said, Let's wrap it up soon. We've had enough. No way Zhao Peng shook his head tonight. We drink until we're done. He loudly called the waiter, another round of beer. Ho Yan shook his head and said to Qin Zixuan. When Qin San and the others are done, 
you should go back. Don't lose sleep over this. You've missed work for a few days, and there must be a lot waiting for you. Qin Zixuan wanted to stay with Hu Yan, but she understood the need to give him face and nodded. Just then, the waiter arrived with another round of beer and a plate of mixed lamb offal. The owner added this dish. It's our specialty, please try it. Although Qin Zixuan didn't like offal, most men did. But Hu Yan suddenly grabbed the waiter's wrist. Was this added by the owner or someone else? Explain. The young waitress, around 20, was frightened. Sir, please be respectful. Qin San and the others quickly surrounded the waitress. What's going on? Qin San asked. Ho Yan pointed to the plate of offal. There's something in it. Qin San, trained for such situations, knew what to do. Don't go anywhere. Get your boss here. As he signaled to a young man nearby to secure the plate as evidence, Hu Yan murmured, I didn't expect them to act so quickly. Qin Zixuan frowned, what is it? The offal was clean, showing no obvious issues. However, Hu Yan, aware of potential threats, had become very cautious with his food. The lamb was fed a rare drug before slaughter. It's not lethal but will weaken the body. It seems your father's enemies are quite formidable. Understanding Hu Yan's explanation, Qin Zixuan realized some people were already making moves to weaken Hu Yan before striking further. Find out who did this she ordered Qin San. Qin San nodded don't worry my lady. After that, Qin Zixuan and Hu Yan stood up, leaving the matter to Qin San. Given Qin Zixuan's status, it was best to avoid public attention. Ho Yan helped Zhao Peng out of the restaurant. Hi guys, your opinion means a lot to me. I'm working on improving the stories to make them more interesting for you. Please leave a comment and let me know what you liked about this story. Your feedback helps me get better and create content that you'll enjoy. Your feedback is very important to me. Thank you for your support and attention. If you enjoyed this story, I can't wait to share its continuation with you.